Section 1 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brian Keenan. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2, Section 1. Virginia, January 1, 1787. Preached at Brother Moss's on Second Chronicles 15, 12, 13, on the people's entering into covenant with God. Tuesday 2. We rode near fifty miles on our way to Westmoreland. Next day, by hard riding, we came to Pope's in Westmoreland. But I have not been more weary many times in my life. Saturday and Sunday. Attended the quarterly meeting in the Northern Neck. There were many simple and loving testimonies delivered in the love feast. Thursday 11. Rode through the snow to Fairfield. Here a Captain R. had turned the people out of the barn in which worship was held, and threatened to take Brother Pop to jail if he did not show his authority for preaching. After all this vaporing of the valiant Captain, when the affair was brought before the court, Captain R. found it convenient to ask pardon of our brother, although he sat upon the bench in his own cause. So the matter ended. The Lord is at work in the neck. More than one hundred have been added to the society since conference, who are a simple, loving, tender people. We had a good time on Friday the 12th. I spoke on Acts 26, 18. I think God has spoken by me to S.S., a wild man, but the Lord can tame him. O Lord, speak for thyself. Sunday 14. We had a crowd at the Presbyterian Meeting House in Lancaster, to whom I delivered a very rough discourse. It was a close and searching time, and we had many communicants, both white and colored. Tuesday 16. Preached at the church on the love of Christ. I find it hard to the flesh to ride fifteen or twenty miles every day and perform the duties of my station especially when indisposed and suffering therefrom the bodily pain incident thereto. Lord, give me patience. I feel uncommon affection for the people here. Wednesday 17 I had a crowd of careless sinners at Mrs. Ball's, who was a famous heroine for Christ. A lady came by craft and took her from her own house, and with tears, threats, and entreaties urged her to desist from receiving the preachers and Methodist preaching but all in vain. She had felt the sting of death some years before, and was a most disconsolate soul. Having now found the way, she would not depart therefrom. Thursday 18. Rode ten miles to the ferry, but being unable to cross, I returned to Mrs. B's. Next morning I came away before day, and reached Shackford's. Saturday 20. Reached at Douglas's, very low in body and spirit. Sunday and Monday, 21-22. Cold times in religion in this circuit, Gloucester, compared with the great times we have had in Lancaster. Tuesday, 23. Came off early and preached in Yorktown to some well-behaved women. Dined with Mr. Mitchell and went on to dear brother Weldon's, whose heart and hands were open. Wednesday, 24. According to appointment, I attended at Williamsburg. I had about five from the country, and about fifteen hearers from the town, besides a few blacks and children. I spoke with freedom on, they made light of it. I returned through the rain, but hoped to receive no harm. He guards our souls, he keeps our breath, where thickest dangers come. Go and return, secure from death, till God commands thee home. Friday, 26. We waited four hours in the rain before we could cross the ferry at Old Jamestown. It was two hours after night when we came to Brother Moorings. Tuesday, 30. We held a quarterly meeting at Craney Island. The weather prevented many from attending. I was blessed in the company of the preachers. Wednesday, 31. I enlarged on... What shall the end be of them who obey not the gospel of God? I observed to them that the gospel had once been taken away from them, and that they ought to lay it seriously to heart, lest it should be the case again. 
we had some quickening in the sacrament and at the love feast. Thence I went through Portsmouth, and preached on, Ye are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Saturday, February 3. Visited my old friend Fulford. He is feeble in body, and not much at ease in his worldly possessions, yet happy in God. Brother Poitras frightened me with the idea of the great swamp, the east end of the dismal, but I could not consent to ride sixty miles round. So we ventured through, and neither we nor our horses received any injury. Praise the Lord. Our passing unharmed through such dangerous and unhealthy weather feelingly assures me that I am kept by the immediate interposition of his providence. I preached in the new chapel. I hope not in vain. I am now surrounded with waters and hideous swamps near the head of Pasquotank River. North Carolina, Thursday 8. Came on, wet and unwell, to Proby's. Went on to Nixonton, where I had many to hear, and was blessed in my own soul, and, I think, spoke to the cases of some of my audience. Friday 9. I had a long ride of nearly fifty miles to Gates County. We stopped at one newbie's, one of the Society of Friends, who entertained us kindly. We reached Sister Gibson's, cold and weary. The poor flesh complains, but my soul enjoys peace and sweetness. Sunday 11. We had a large congregation and an open time at Naughty Pine Chapel. Here we have a little revival. Tuesday 13. I had about sixty people at Wicocon. I spoke as I felt on Jeremiah 13, 11. I mourned over the people and left them. I came to Hardy's where I spoke with some light on Matthew 22, 5. I unhappily ran a splinter into my leg, which has alarmed me. I found we had to go twelve miles by water and send the horses another way. Oh, what a world of swamps and rivers and islands we live in here. I met Brother B and A, two devoted young men, the former a native of Maryland, the latter of Virginia. At the desire of several of the brethren, I preached at Washington, where many collected in the courthouse, whom I addressed on my favorite text, 1 Timothy 1, 15 three miles on the water, and riding three more on roads under the water, such is the inundated state of the country, made our jaunt unpleasant. Thursday 22. We set off for Newburn. Stopped at Kemp's Ferry, kept by Curtis, where we were kindly entertained gratis. I feel heaviness through labor and temptation, yet I am given up to God. Friday 23. I arrived at Newburn. I felt the power of death as I journeyed along. We rode round the town and could get no certain information about preaching, Brother Cole being absent. We were at last taken in at Mr. Lathrop's. The place and people were in such a state that I judged by my own feelings it would be as well to leave them just as I found them, and so I did. Tuesday, 27. It was rather a dry time at the love feast and sacrament. There was some life and melting while I enforced, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth. We then rode to H's on Island Creek. I went alone into the woods, and had sweet converse with God. At night we were poorly provided against the weather. The house was unfinished. And, to make matters worse, a horse kicked the door open, and I took a cold, and had the toothache, with a high fever. Thursday, March 1. I had more hearers, and they were more attentive than I expected. I trust it was a profitable time. Road to Brother Johnson's, without the labor of slaves, he manages to have abundance for man and beast. Tuesday, 6. My horse is stiff, and almost foundered, and there is an appearance of a swelling on his head. I've always had hard struggles to get to Charleston. Lord, give me patience, and bear me up. Wednesday 7. Crossed the main fork of Black River, and came through a wild country to Colonel R's. The Colonel's wife is a tender, devoted woman. Thursday and Friday, 8, 9. Directed our course to the south. Crossed Cape Fear, and reached Downing Creek. 
rested a day at W's, a kind people, but without religion. South Carolina, Sunday 11. Preached at Robinson's new courthouse. Rode in the evening to M's. Crossed Little P.D., stopped at S's, ate a morsel, and came on to Buck Swamp. Thursday 15. Preached at the new church at S's. Here I heard that Dr. Coke was in Charleston. Proceeded thence to the Widow Ports, where I had much ado to prevail on Brother H. to stay. We rode nearly fifty miles to get to Georgetown. Here the scene was greatly changed. Almost the whole town came together to hear the word of the Lord. We arrived in Charleston and met Dr. Coke. Here we have already a spacious house prepared for us, and the congregations are crowded and solemn. Sunday 25 I enlarged on, I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. At night again on Isaiah 45, 22. We held our conference in this city. Tuesday 27. We exchanged sentiments on matters freely. Wednesday 28. The doctor treated on the qualifications and duties of a deacon. Thursday 29. Our conference ended. Friday 30. I left the city and rode 30 miles, although my horse had been injured by overfeeding. Next day I rode 40 miles through the rain and begged a lodging with Dr. W. Sunday, April 1. We came to Santee Ferry, and there was such an overflowing of water in our route that we had to swim upon our horses several times. My horse performed so well that I was not wet much higher than my knees. That day we rode 30 miles, and the next day 50 miles, and came to Moores. Here we met with Brother R. Swift, who had been near death, but then was recovering. We advised him to go with us for his life. The people here begin to feel, and yield to the power of truth. Wednesday 4 At Camden I preached on, They Made Light of It. Thence we rode on to quarterly meeting, where I met with a multitude of people who were desperately wicked. But God hath wrought among them. We had little rest by day or night. Friday 6 Rode forty miles to preaching at Jackson's, and then to Brother Pace's. Saturday and Sunday, 7, 8. Attended Anson Quarterly Meeting in North Carolina. The doctor preached on the love of Christ, and I on the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Sacrament followed. From Saturday to Saturday, I have ridden about 300 miles, and have preached only about half the time. Oh, may the Lord seal and water his own word, that all this toil of man and beast be not in vain. Tuesday 10. The doctor and myself preached to a few simple people at W's, I hope not in vain. At our next meeting we had many hearers. We have scarcely time to eat or sleep. North Carolina, Thursday 12. I preached at Salisbury. Afterward rode to Huggins's, where we had many hearers, and a melting among the people. Good Friday, 13. I was much led out at Catons, thence to M. Knight's Chapel, where we found a living people. Saturday 14. We hasted to C.Y. Church, where we had many people. After riding twenty-two miles, we had another meeting about six o'clock, and about midnight got to bed. Sunday 15. Rose about six o'clock and went to Newman's Church, where the doctor and myself both preached. The people were rather wild, and we were unwell. I came to Arnett's about eight o'clock, having ridden forty miles. The doctor went by Dick's Ferry, and did not get in until near midnight. Monday 16. Rode to Jeremiah White's, and on Tuesday about fifty miles to Page Mann's, in Charlotte County, Virginia. Virginia, Wednesday 18. Rode to Rough Creek. On Thursday the 19th, our conference began at William White's. We had much preaching, morning, noon, and night, and some souls were converted to God. Saturday 21. 
I gave them a discourse on Jeremiah three fifteen, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. Sunday 22 The doctor spoke on the qualifications of a deacon, and I gave them a charge. Some said there were three thousand people to hear. It was a solemn, weighty time. Monday 23 We called at Hampton and Sydney College in Prince Edward. The outside has an unwieldy, uncommon appearance for a seminary of learning. What the inside is, I know not. The president, Mr. I. Smith, is a discreet man who conducts himself well. About half past eleven o'clock we reached John Finney's in Amelia, having ridden about sixty miles. I want to live more constantly in the spirit of prayer. Wednesday, 25. Preached at IA's, and then rode to Manchester, where I preached again. The doctor preached in Richmond. Thursday, 26. Went onwards to the north. We have made it a point to pray in the families where we lodge, whether public or private, and generally where we stop for refreshment. Saturday, 28. At night the doctor preached in Alexandria, and again on the Sabbath morning to many hearers. We were kindly entertained on Sunday night at S. Turner's, near Bladensburg, Maryland, and on Monday reached Baltimore about noon. Maryland. We had some warm and close debates in conference, but all ended in love and peace. After much fatigue and trouble, our conference ended on Monday, the 6th of May. We went forward to Perry Hall. Thence we went to Cokesbury, drew a deed for the conveyance of the property of the college, and settled our temporal matters there. Wednesday, May 9. Many attended at Elkton, and we were received by the Rudolph family with great respect. Thursday, 10. We attended at Wilmington at noon, and at Chester at night. Friday, 11. We reached Philadelphia, where the doctor preached that and the following evening. We spent the Sabbath in the city, and on Monday came to Trenton, where we found a lifeless people. New Jersey, Tuesday, 15. The doctor preached with life in the Episcopal Church at Elizabethtown, and we had a good time. New York, Wednesday, 16. Arrived in New York and rested. On Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, the doctor preached with great energy and acceptance. Tuesday, 22. After long silence, I preached on, For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest. Rode twenty miles on Long Island to Hempstead Harbor, and preached with some liberty in the evening. I am now out of the city, and have time to reflect. My soul turns to its rest, and to its labor for souls, in which I can live more by rule. Thursday, 24. I rose very sick, felt solemn and devoted to God. I preached in a paper mill on, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God. I preached at Mosquito Cove, where many attended notwithstanding the rain. There was a power went with the word. Saturday, 26. Road to blank. Our friends had procured the Presbyterian Church for me. I felt a spirit of life on these words, Be ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. I called to see my old friend and assistant, James Glacebrook, who was the first preacher I traveled with upon a regular appointment in England. He is now a Presbyterian minister. Much changed in his outward man, but I believe his sentiments are much the same as when I first knew him. The Lord be with and bless him. Sunday 27 I came to Harper's, where we have a little new house, and about thirty members. I hope and expect in a few years to see a circuit of six weeks formed here, and four or five hundred members in society. The people on this island who hear the gospel are generally poor, and these are the kind I want and expect to get. I have had great assistance and freedom in speaking. Monday 28 Came to York. Preached at night on They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, and they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. 
I found it necessary to stop Brother Hickson from going to Nova Scotia. Brother C. is married, and I expect Brother Jessup will go alone. Tuesday, 29. I delivered a close and awful discourse on They shall come from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south, and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, etc. 1. A scriptural view of the kingdom of heaven. 2. The subjects or citizens thereof. 3. Sit down with Abraham, famous for faith, Isaac for justice, truth, meditation, and walking with God, and Jacob, mighty in prayer. I was in prayer until near midnight. O Lord, make me all life and love, patience and resignation under the troubles of the church, and disappointment of its ministers. Sunday, June 3. I had a gracious time on 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 4. Ordained E. Cooper a deacon. In the afternoon, my soul had peace whilst I enlarged on Matthew 18, 15, to the end. Tuesday 5. Preached on, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. I felt freedom and power in speaking. Wednesday 6. Met leaders and trustees, and after some explanation, settled matters relative to singing in public worship. I preached at the poorhouse on, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. My soul has peace. I keep myself busy in visiting the families of the society, or the sick, or meeting class, if some other business does not call me. Sunday 10 I had some life in preaching on Luke 4, 18, and in the afternoon on, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, etc. I left the city in great union with the Lord and with the church. My soul is variously exercised. I want the country air, and to live more in the spirit and solitude of prayer. Came to Eastchester and preached in the shell of the new church on, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The power of God was felt. I came to the widow Bartos, where I lay sick fifteen years ago, and was treated with the greatest tenderness. May the Lord reward them all a hundredfold, and convert their souls. Tuesday 12. I found it the same at New Rochelle Town as in time past. Will it always be so? If there is no change, I shall trouble them no more. In the afternoon I rode to Seas, where I labored many years ago, and there is some fruit remaining to this day. Wednesday 13. We had a long and warm ride to North Castle. Here a multitude were gathered together, to whom I spoke in an orchard on... Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, to give repentance unto Israel, and remission of sins. I was quite unwell, faint yet pursuing. Rode to ours of the Society of Friends, who received us with great love. At H's a multitude came to hear, whom I exhorted to seek the Lord while he might be found. I was happy in being alone. I poured out my soul to God for the whole work, and the dear people and preachers of my charge. My body is weak, my soul enjoys peace. I have power over all sin, and possess a spirit of prayer and watchfulness. I feel myself dead to all below, and desire to live only for God and souls. End of section 1. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 2 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Friday 15. I preached to a listening multitude at Peekskill, and was alarming and close on, By grace ye are saved through faith. I thought there were no people here of spiritual understanding, but I was informed, to my comfort, that a number of simple-hearted people had formed themselves into a society for prayer. Perhaps these will be some of the first fruits in this place. Saturday 16. Rode over the mountain, and was gratified with the sight of a remarkable recess for the Americans during the last war. 
the names of Andre and Arnold, with which misfortune and treachery are so unhappily and intimately blended, will give celebrity to West Point, had it been less deserving of notice than its wonderful appearance really makes it. It is commanded by mountains rising behind, and appears to be impregnable. There are blockhouses on the east, and on the west, stores, barracks, and fortifications. From West Point we crossed a high mountain and came to Newburgh. Sunday 17. In the love feast, sacrament, and public exercises, we were employed nearly seven hours. There was some life in the love feast, but the congregation appeared very little moved under preaching. Monday 18. I presume I had nearly seven hundred hearers at Allen's, to whom I spoke with some power on Luke 11, 13. I baptized several adults and some children, and came to W's and baptized others. Thence to Mr. Ellis's, whose wife, a Dutch lady, entertained us like a queen. I visited Colonel P., supposed to be at the point of death. After a close examination, I administered the sacrament to him. New Jersey, Wednesday 20. I came to Warwick, where I suppose not less than a thousand people were collected. I was very low both in body and spirit, but felt stirred up at the sight of such a congregation, and was moved and quickened while I enlarged on Galatians 1, 4. I baptized some, and administered the sacrament to many communicants. Thursday 21. A multitude attended at B's in a barn. Here God hath wrought a great work for a poor, blind, ignorant people. Friday 22. I preached at the Stone Church after riding upwards of thirty miles. We then rode until ten o'clock in the night through a heavy rain. I was much tried in body and mind. I had nothing to eat but a little bread and milk, and that made me sick. Saturday 23. We had a good time at Sweezy's. After administering the sacrament, we had another long ride after night. Sunday 24. I preached in the woods to nearly a thousand people. I was much oppressed by a cold, and felt very heavy in body and soul. Like Jonah, I went and sat down alone. I had some gracious feelings in the sacrament. Others also felt the quickening power of God. I baptized a number of infants and adults, by sprinkling and by immersion. I felt my body quite weary in, but my spirit not of, the work of God. Tuesday 26. Preached at W. Wallace's to a dull, contracted people. Since last Monday two weeks, I have ridden about 350 miles. Pennsylvania, Wednesday 27. We had a warm ride through a fertile, pleasant country to Trenton, and on Thursday the 28th to Philadelphia. Here I found T.V. had scattered firebrands and thrown dirt to be spatter us. Friday and Saturday, 29, 30. Taken up in writing letters, packing up books, and begging for the college. Sunday, July 1. Preached three times in the city of Philadelphia. On Monday, too, to a few simple-hearted souls at Radnor. Tuesday 3. We had a flat time at the valley. Wednesday 4. We had a few feeling souls at Oakland. Afterward went to Coventry Forge. Saturday 7. I had some energy in preaching to a few people at Morganstown. Sunday 8. Preached at Evans's rich land. A poor people for religion. I hope, nevertheless, that God will visit them. Monday 9. Preached at I. Miller's, who has a pious wife. Friday 13. We rode to Hagerstown, and found it a journey of about fifty miles. We and our horses were weary enough. I was sorry to hear that the people came twice to hear me last year, and the lameness of my horse caused me to disappoint them. Saturday 14. At five o'clock in the evening, the courthouse was open. A few of the great and many of the poor attended, to whom I spoke with divine assistance. 
I preached again on Sunday at eleven o'clock. I find T.V. has misrepresented us as having cast off Mr. Wesley, making this a plea for his reordination. Virginia, Monday, 16. Set out for the springs. In the first place we missed our way. Then my baggage horse ran back two miles. I was tried not a little. Oh, how sad the reflection, that matters trifling as these should make a person so uneasy. We reached the springs about seven o'clock. I preached the two following days with some satisfaction. By advancing nine pounds, for nails and planks, I engaged Brother Eaton to have our chapel covered by the first of August. Maryland, Friday 20. We had a heavy ride to Old Town. We met with a kind reception and had a reviving season in the family. Saturday, 21. Was a day of rest to my soul and body. Preached on Canticles 4, 16. Sunday, 22. We had sacrament attended with some power in the evening. Tuesday, 24. There were to have been great doings at Cumberland, but Mr. B., a minister, failed coming. I had a good time in Mr. Bell's mill on Thou Art Fairer Than the Sons of Men. We had feeling and weeping at Barrett's. My subject, I sleep, but my heart waketh, etc., eight or nine verses. I feel a sweetness of spirit and much of the love of Christ. Came to Cresseps. Friday 27. Ordained Brother Phoebus deacon and had a serious time. Sunday 29. At Jones's, all death, death, death. My mind was devoted to God. I administered the sacrament, but could find no openings. Road to Old Town. Six years ago, I preached in this place, when there was scarcely a soul that knew anything of God. Now there are sixty in membership, many of whom are happy in the knowledge of the truth. We held a love feast, and had a quickening time. Tuesday, 31. Road to the Springs, Bath, much tried in spirit. I gave myself to reading and prayer. Wednesday, August 1. Preached at Bath. Sunday, 5. Preached on Peter 3, 9, to a large congregation, with but little liberty. Monday, 6. I began my lectures on the prophecies by Bishop Newton, and had more hearers than I expected. The weather is very warm, many are sickly, and continued changes of comers and goers. All this leaves but little opportunity for prayer. I forbear reading on account of my eyes, lest I should not be able to read in public. Tuesday and Wednesday, 7, 8. Had very few to hear, so I gave them up. Everything that is good is in low estimation at this place. I will return to my own studies. If the people are determined to go to hell, I am clear of their blood. My soul is clothed in sackcloth and covered with ashes before the Lord. Thursday 9. I enjoy some peace. Friday 10. I feel a calm within, and the want of more life, and more love to God, and more patience with sinners. I read my testament. Oh, what a weariness would life be without God, and love, and labor. The first two weeks of my time at Bath have been spent in carrying on the building of the new chapel, reading Newton on the prophecies, visiting, bathing, etc. My soul has been under great trials at times, but hitherto the Lord has helped. Tuesday 21 Oh, how sweet will labor, and Christian society, and the solitary woods be to me. Thursday, 23. I have been under great exercises, but was divinely assisted in preaching on The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, etc. Sunday, 26. I preached on How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, etc. It was a solemn time. My soul was stayed upon God. We had a melting sacrament and love feast, and many spoke. The devil is angry, and so are his children. 
Brother Watcote spoke at the steps, and it was with difficulty the people kept themselves within decent bounds of respect. Virginia, Friday 31. I gave them my farewell address at Bath, and had many hearers. Saturday, September 1. I set out in the rain, and came to the widow Stroud's, where I met with T.V., who made some acknowledgments for what he had said in the heat of his zeal at Philadelphia and at Bath. Sunday, too. I attended at a place where everyone has liberty to preach, but it so happened that no one had an appointment there but myself. The Methodists would do well to withdraw from this as a preaching place in their circuit. I had a large congregation at Shepherdstown, to whom I spoke on Luke 4:18. I have had some trials and great consolations, and at times it is a paradise regained with me since I left Bath and the wicked there. Maryland, Friday 7. I had a cold time at Reister's on Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Thence I rode to the new church, where I had much more life. Came to Baltimore. The weather is extremely warm. Sunday 9 preached in the morning, my text, Thou art fairer than the sons of men, in the afternoon at Mr. Otterbein's church, and at night on, they shall come from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south, etc. Large crowds attended. I was straightened in speaking. The following was a week of haste and business. Wednesday I went to Perry Hall, thence to Cokesbury, fixed the price of board, and the time for opening the college. On Friday I return to Baltimore. In the midst of business my mind is calm. Sunday 16. Preached at town and point. On Monday the people waited nearly two hours at Evans's before I arrived, owing to my horse being out of the way. I found he had stuck a nail into his foot, so that I had to leave him. Under these discouraging circumstances I was much exercised. Nevertheless, I had liberty in speaking, and there was a melting time among the people. Thence I hastened to Hunt's Chapel, where I enlarged on, I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I rode by I C's gate, an old stand of mine. It is now, in two senses, fallen into decay. The want of religion oftentimes causes the want of economy. Ah, how do the persons and fashions of this world pass away? Tuesday, 18. I found the work of God in a reviving state at G's. Wednesday, 19. I had a liberal opening at Wilson's on Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thence I hasted to the Fork Church and preached on Canticles 3, 1 through 6. I lamented the gaiety of the children of Methodists, but yet they do not appear to be so full of enmity against God and his people as other children. I hasted to Cokesbury, it being the examination. Some gentlemen and some triflers were present. Friday I preached at Joseph Dallam's. Saturday 22. I preached at Havre de Grace on Acts 2.23. Sunday 23. I had a large congregation at Elkton, and some power attended the word. In the evening spoke at Isaac Harshay's. Monday 24. I had a large, solemn congregation at Wilmington. I feel a persuasion that God will revive his work at this place. Tuesday 25. I attended at Chester, and next day came to Philadelphia. I had liberty in speaking on Canticles 5, 6 through 10. On Thursday and Friday, I had not freedom as I wished. I was seized with a violent headache, exceeding anything as I thought I had ever felt. Saturday 29. I felt a little better. My mind was stayed upon God. Sunday 30. We had a good sacramental occasion. In the afternoon, Brother Willis preached, and at night I had some enlargement on Ephesians 4, 17-19. Wednesday, October 3. I met the people, and explained the nature and design of the college. 
Thursday 4. I preached on the primitive design of the church. Friday 5. We had an uncommon love feast, a gracious season, much speaking. On Saturday I met a class, and on Sunday 7 there was life in the administration of the sacrament. I felt humbled before the Most High. I trust the Lord will revive His work and make His power known. Monday 8. I came to Chester and preached on My Grace is Sufficient for Thee. Delaware, Tuesday 9. I had unusual freedom in speaking at Aaron Matson's. Thence I pushed on through the rain and was sorely tempted to complain. Wednesday 10. I was at Wilmington, and next day came late to Dickinson's. I visited Duck Creek Crossroads, where we have a comfortable house, which cost about two hundred pounds. Saturday 13. Came to Dover very unwell, and Brother I. E. preached in my stead. Sunday 14. I read prayers and preached on 2 Timothy 3.10, and solemnly set apart Jacob Brush and Ira Ellis, for the office of deacon. I trust it was a profitable time. I spent two days at Thomas White's. Tuesday 16. I preached the funeral sermon of Joshua Barak, a faithful, steady man, who had followed the Lord about ten years. My text was, These all died in the faith. Thursday 18. I had divine aid in preaching at Milford's. The house was open, and the day was cold. Friday 19. Came in the evening to Shanklin's. Here I found the people in disorder and violence about the election. Some had gone so far as to take up firearms. Sunday morning, 21. Before sacrament I preached on Psalm 2, 24, 25, and then in Lewistown on God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, etc., Tuesday and Wednesday, 23-24. I had a good time at quarterly meeting at the Sound Church. Thence, through a barren, sandy country, we came to Evans's church, where we had a good and gracious time, more so than I have felt for some time. From Evans's we rode to the beach, and gratified our curiosity with a sight of the raging, roaring sea. Wednesday, 24. I spoke closely upon the discipline of the church. My subject, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, etc. After meeting, we had a very long ride to Brother Bowen's. Maryland, Friday, 26. After preaching at Pennell's on, I will give them a heart to know me, etc., I rode in the evening to Downing's. Saturday, 27. Reached Paramours at night. Sunday, 28. We had a gracious time, indeed. Monday, 29. There were life and power among the people in the sacrament and love feast. I was greatly comforted to find the Lord had greatly blessed the labors of Brother S., and that a revival had taken place all around the circuit. In the evening I rode to Burton's in Virginia. The former inhabitants have gone to the dust. It seemed as if I was let into heaven while I enlarged on, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. We have twenty miles, and sometimes more, a day to travel. But we have fine roads, kind friends, and good entertainment. Thursday, November 1 The people coming in still after I began caused me to lengthen out my discourse came afterward to Captain Burton's, and spoke with life and consolation. Friday, too, was a day of sore exercise of soul, and barren preaching. I visited Mr. R., and administered the sacrament to him. Rested that evening with Mr. Curtis. Saturday, 3, quarterly meeting. I was close on keeping the feast, and on discipline. Some felt the word. Sunday 4. Preached on, Thou shalt arise and favor Zion. I believe God will make his power known, and I trust Brother Everett will be made a blessing, as well by strictness of discipline as by faithful preaching. 
Monday 5. I had a few living people at Phoebus's. My soul is given up to God, but I have felt Satan near. Lord, help, or I perish. Sunday 11. I had some light in preaching at the Fork Chapel. Spent the evening with Brother Enel. Monday 12. I preached at Hooper's. Thence I rode to Johnson's Chapel and spoke on Second Timothy 8-12. through I had some enlargement. After riding thirty miles and preaching twice, we held a watch night at Todd's. Sunday 18. We went to church at Cambridge and heard a sermon. Afterward, I spoke to a large congregation at Tucker's on Romans 10, 1 through 4. Upon the whole, it has been a laborious, trying time of late. Tuesday 20. We rode through excessive rain 30 miles. Our quarterly meeting at Fraser's Chapel was large and lively. I had very few to hear at Dr. Allen's. The fiery edge is greatly worn off there. Thursday 22. We had a feeling time at Bolingbrook, but it is not here as in months past. Oh, how soon does the power of religion decline! I came to Easton, Talbot County, where we had a watch night, and the gentry had a ball. Friday 23. We had a gracious season at the Bayside, where many attended. Saturday 24. My soul is dejected. Oh, that it were perfectly resigned to the will of God! Sunday 25. I stopped at Keats on my way to Kent Island. Although under a great depression of spirits, I was uncommonly let out whilst I enlarged on Woe to them that are at ease in Zion, to a large assembly of people. Monday 26. My mind is still depressed. I called on poor Colonel H., who bears his imprisonment for debt with great fortitude. I had a good time at Bordley's, notwithstanding two drunken men came in and made some disturbance. Friday 30. Cold straightened for time at Tuckahoe. Something better at Chop Tank. I here heard of the conduct of A.C.S.O. He is gone from us at last. There were many people at Barrett's Chapel during quarterly meeting, but I had little life in speaking. Monday, December 3. We had a melting time at Queen Anne's Chapel. I enforced, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Tuesday 4. At Chestertown I had but little life on Isaiah 53, 1 through 5. At night the Lord was with us indeed, while I enforced, Let your moderation be known to all men. Wednesday 5. After preaching at Warden Chapel, we set out to cross the bay, and were on the water until ten o'clock at night. Thursday 6. We opened our college and admitted twenty-five students. I preached on, Trust in the Lord and do good. On the Sabbath I spoke on, O man of God, there is death in the pot. And on Monday, they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. From Cokesbury I came to Baltimore, where I was closely employed, and much in haste about temporal concerns. Saturday 15. I had a cold ride to Annapolis, and but few to hear me on Sunday morning. Brother H. attempted to travel with me, but was soon glad to resign. My soul has been kept in peace, and for three weeks past I have enjoyed a most devoted frame of mind. Thursday 20. We must now direct our course for Lancaster, Virginia, through a barren route of sixty miles. This is the only uncultivated part of Maryland, and God will surely visit these people, and bless them in his own time, if they hear his voice. We crossed Patuxent River at sunrise. Brother James, having undertaken to be our guide, led us ten miles out of our way. Bearing near to Port Tobacco, we came to the ferry, crossed about sunset, and put up at Mrs. H.'s, where we paid eight shillings for our oats, and six for our fodder, all this exclusive of charge for lodging, as she said. End of section two. Recording by Brian Keenan.
Section 3 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Friday, 21. Reached Pope's sometime in the night. On Saturday I read the Apostolical Canons, published by Johnson. Curious enough. He is a violent churchman, and appears to have little charity for the Presbyterians, upon whom he is unmercifully severe. I have been sorely tempted, and at sword's point with the enemy. Sunday, 23. I had very little life in preaching to a few dead souls at Pope's. On Monday, at Hutt's, it was nearly the same both in preaching and sacrament. In the evening, at Brother Cannon's, the Lord powerfully broke into my soul, and the cloud disappeared. That night, while sleeping, I dreamed I was praying for sanctification and God very sensibly filled me with love, and I waked shouting, Glory, glory to God. My soul was all in a flame. I had never felt so much of God in my life, and so I continued. This was on Christmas Day, a great day to me. I rode to the widow Wallard's and preached on, For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. During the last five days, we have ridden 140 miles. We crossed Wicomico and came to G's. Death prevails here. My spirit was clothed in sackcloth. Saturday and Sunday, 29.30 Held quarterly meeting at Lancaster Meeting House. There was a large gathering and some life on the first day. On Sunday there was much snow and only about 300 people attended. I ordained E. Ellis a deacon. Tuesday, January 1, 1788. Preached at the Widow Balls on Psalm 90, 12. Thursday 3. Crossed the Rappahannock and came to G's, but did not feel free to stay. I went on to Blake's. Came to Brother Billups's in Kingston Parish, Gloucester County. Here we were at home, and happy in our religious exercises. During the last 100 miles of our journey, we have preached very little for the want of appointments. We left Brother Billups's, and, after riding forty miles, and preaching by the way, we came to Capahokee Ferry. But being unable to cross, we rode on ten miles to the Widow Rose. Tuesday 8 There being a storm of rain and a thaw, we set out to cross the river at York. We succeeded, but with some difficulty. I had had some distressing apprehensions of this. I preached at B's on How Beautiful Upon the Mountains Are the Feet, etc. We came to James River. The ice was in the way, yet we pushed through safely to the opposite shore, and arrived at moorings just as the quarterly meeting ended. Nevertheless, we too had a meeting, and the cry of glory was heard in great life. God is among these people. Brother Cox thinks that not less than 1,400, white and black, have been converted in Sussex Circuit the past year, and Brother Easter thinks there are still more in Brunswick Circuit. I preached at Pease in Nansiman Circuit, thence to Cowlings, and preached on Isaiah 53, 1 through 4. We came on to Sleepy Hole Ferry. Being unable to get our horses over, we walked five miles to Turner's. Sunday 13. I had some liberty on Isaiah 52, 6 through 8. Monday 14. We continued our meeting nearly four hours, but had little satisfaction by reason of the extreme cold. There is a growth in religion here since last year. We came to Portsmouth, but too late. The ice hindered. However, I preached at three o'clock. Next day it rained, and few attended so that, upon the whole, we had but a low time there. I preached at N. Wilson's. Here I had an interview with I. M. He wants to go into the old church. I had a great and good time at Brother Williams's on Isaiah 35, 3-5. The power and love of God were manifested and felt. North Carolina, Sunday 20. I preached at Colonel Jarvis's, and on Monday at Saunders's, dull times at both these places. Tuesday, 22. 
At Koenjok, there is a death here. Blank has been experimenting on extremes. Wise doctrine, hard discipline. I doubt whether it will end well. I have ridden about eighty miles and preached four times to about eight hundred people, most of whom were dead and ignorant. Yet I hope God will arise. Currituck, a pleasant place. I rode along the shore and enjoyed the view of its banks of evergreen. I preached at Camden Courthouse with freedom, but the people appeared insensible. After meeting, we rode, hungry and cold, to Brother C's. Thursday, 24. We had a violent storm, so we kept within doors, and man and beast were well provided for. Friday, 25. Was an uncommonly cold and windy day. I nevertheless attempted to preach at Richardson's Chapel. In the evening visited W.P. Saturday, 26, and Sunday, 27. We had cold weather, and a cold people at the quarterly meeting at Flatty Creek Chapel. On Sabbath evening, I preached at Nixonton. Monday, 28. Rode to Gates's, and next day preached at Knotty Pine Chapel. There were but few people, and it was a barren meeting. Wednesday, 30. Preached on, The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Alas for the rich! They are so soon offended. Rode to Winton, a little town on Chowan River. Here I had a dry meeting with a few people in the courthouse. I housed for the night with W. I seldom mount my horse for a ride of less distance than twenty miles on ordinary occasions, and frequently have forty or fifty in moving from one circuit to the other. In traveling thus I suffer much from hunger and cold. I preached at W's with some liberty. Our brother Chastain stamped to purpose. Saturday, February 2. At Wicocon I enlarged on Peter's Fall. Sunday 3. I preached on Hebrews 6, 11, 12. I rode that evening to friend Freeman's, whom I had not visited for five years past. I found him still an honest Baptist, and we were kindly entertained. Rode to Ross's in Martins County. The rise of the waters of the Roanoke River had inundated the lowlands more than a mile from the banks, and made the ferry altogether a wonderful sight. We came to our lodging about nine o'clock, and found a plain, kind-hearted host. I preached a funeral sermon. My text, The Sting of Death is Sin. I spoke on the nature of the law, of sin, its guilt, power, nature, and punishment, and the victory through Christ. Does it not appear that those who live in sin, which is a breach of the law, wish to abolish the law, seeing they must know the necessary consequence of its violation? And if this postulation is just, what saves them from theft, murder, rape, self-preservation? Alas, poor world, is this all thy virtue? Wednesday 6. Rode twenty miles and had the ice to break in two swamps. Preached at Lloyd's near Washington. Saturday 9. I had a very unfeeling people at Mr. O's, to whom I preached with some freedom on Luke 4, 18. Death, death, death in the lowlands. Sunday 10. I had many to hear at S's, but it was an uncomfortable time. Thence I rode to Cox's on Noose River, where we had an open time, and there is a prospect of good. We then had to move towards Trent. Our rides are still long, from fifteen to twenty miles a day. Wednesday 13. We had many dead souls at the quarterly meeting at Lee's. Thursday 14. My heart melted for the people. They do not, will not pray, and if they so continue must be undone. Friday 15. Came to poor Jay's, where I spoke dreadful things to a lifeless people on Isaiah 53. Saturday 16. We rode to Tees, an old stand in Duplin County, where I was met by a few souls. We had naught to eat, 
nor where to lodge short of Colonel C.'s. We pushed for that shelter, and reached there about nine o'clock at night. A poor place for religion it is, but we met with good entertainment. Sunday 17. I had about five hundred hearers at Sampson Courthouse, to whom I enlarged on Peter's denial of his master. One, he was self-confident. Two, followed afar off. Three, mixed with the wicked. Four, denied his discipleship, and then his lord. Tuesday, 19. At Fayetteville, I was unable to preach. Wednesday, we pushed on for the South State, but being unacquainted with the way, we fell ten miles too low. After riding as many in the night, we ended our blunders and our fatigue for that day at S's, who used us kindly. South Carolina, Thursday, 21. We rode twenty miles in the rain through the woods and sands, and had but a poor time at Colonel M's. Thence we descended to the Green Ponds, fifteen miles, where we were very comfortable at seas. Saturday, 23. I attended the quarterly meeting at the beauty spot. The weather was cold, but I had great assistance on Isaiah 35, 1 through 6. Sunday, 24. I preached on Zechariah 11, 12. We had a gracious moving time. Monday, 25. We crossed Pedy at the Long Bluff and rode nearly 50 miles to Brother Gardner's. I preached at Black Creek on Psalm 145. I was much fatigued and had a high fever, but my soul had peace and was stayed upon God. Wednesday 27. After preaching at Dee's, I had to ride ten miles out of my way to cross Lynch's Creek. We moved forwards to our worthy friend Remberts, who entertained us kindly, and supplied us with horses to ride to our appointments at Lenoir's and Moore's, where we had few hearers and dead times. After our meetings at these places, we returned to Remberts, at whose house our quarterly meeting began, on Saturday the 1st of March, which was not without some life. In our love feast there appeared to be more feeling than speaking. Monday, March 3. We rode through the snow to Bradford's, and next day had no small difficulty in crossing the swamps in order to get to Santee Ferry. We made it a ride of about fifty miles to H's, and did not get in until about nine o'clock at night. Wednesday 5. I passed Dorchester, where there are the remains of what appears to have once been a considerable town. There are the ruins of an elegant church, and the vestiges of several well-built houses. We saw a number of good dwellings, and large plantations on the road leading down Ashley River. In the evening, we reached the city of Charleston, having ridden about fifty miles. Sunday 9. Brother Ellis preached in the morning. In the evening, I felt some liberty in enlarging on Romans 10, 1 through 3. On Monday, my soul and body enjoyed some ease and rest. Friday 14. Our conference began, and we had a very free, open time. On Saturday night, I preached on, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, etc. On the Sabbath, on, the Lord turned and looked on Peter, etc. It was a gracious season, both in the congregation and in the love feast. While another was speaking in the morning to a very crowded house, and many outside, a man made a riot at the door. An alarm at once took place. The ladies leaped out at the windows of the church, and a dreadful confusion ensued. Again, whilst I was speaking at night, a stone was thrown against the north side of the church, then another on the south. A third came through the pulpit window, and struck near me inside the pulpit. I, however, continued to speak on my subject, how beautiful upon the mountains, etc. Upon the whole, I have had more liberty to speak in Charleston this visit than I ever had before and am of opinion that God will work here. But our friends are afraid of the cross. Monday 17 Preached in the morning, and took my leave of the city. When I reached Mr. Givens, the congregation had been dispersed about ten minutes. 
I preached at ours, at L's, and at C.C. Church, in the Edisto Circuit. The people are insensible, and I fear are more in love with some of Christ's messengers than with Christ. I now changed my course, and went through Orangeburg by the Congarees to Seluda, and thence up to Broad River quarterly meeting. We rode till one o'clock on Friday, the 21st of March. I believe we have traveled about two hundred miles in five days. Dear Brother Smith accompanied me. I was so unwell that I had but little satisfaction at the quarterly meeting. My service was burdensome, but the people were lively. Wednesday, 26. We rode from Finch's to Odell's new church, where we had a good time, whilst I enlarged on Titus 2, 14, and administered the Lord's Supper. Thence to Smith's, 30 miles. After preaching, we had a night meeting that prevented our getting to bed until about 12 o'clock. We had a comfortable cabin, and were very well entertained. Thursday, 27. I had but little freedom on The Foundation of God Standeth Sure. Brothers Mason and Major spoke after me. I went alone into the woods, and found my soul profitably solitary in sweet meditation and prayer. Friday 28. Rode about thirty miles to Bees. My soul was tried, but it was also comforted in the Lord. I was much led out on Ephesians six eighteen and we were employed till nearly twelve o'clock at night. Sunday 30 I had some liberty in preaching, but the people began to move about when they were pointedly dealt with. Brothers Mason and Major spoke after me. I found it good to be alone by the solitary stream and silent woods, to study the welfare of Zion, and to pray for her prosperity. Monday 31 we rode within a mile of Savannah River. The land in general, during our route, is very fine. We were benighted, and moping in the woods made our journey a long one of about fifty miles. Tuesday, April 1. We crossed the Savannah at the Forks, and came where I much wanted to be, in Georgia. Nevertheless, I fear I shall have but little freedom here. Georgia, Wednesday 2. I rested, and compiled two sections which I shall recommend to be put into our form of discipline in order to remove from society by regular steps either preachers or people that are disorderly. Saturday 5. I was let out in preaching at the quarterly meeting on Zechariah 12.10. Sunday 6. There was a moving on the souls of the people and I felt much life on Isaiah 45, 22. I have been told that during the last rupture the Indians butchered nearly 100 people. Wednesday 9. Our conference began at the Forks of Broad River, where six members and four probationers attended. Brother Major was sick and could not meet us. Soon after, he made his exit to his eternal rest. Thursday and Friday, 10, 11. I felt free, and preached with light and liberty each day. Many that had no religion in Virginia have found it after their removal into Georgia and South Carolina. Here at least the seed sprung up, wherever else it may have been sown. Our little conference was about sixty-one pounds deficient in their quarterage, nearly one-third of which was made up to them. South Carolina Sunday, 13. I called at a Presbyterian meeting house, and heard Mr. Hall, the minister, preach a good sermon on Isaiah 55. After meeting, we rode to Brother Moore's, twenty miles on the Saluda. Monday, 14. Was almost entirely occupied with writing letters to the north. Tuesday, 15. I had many people at the Widow Bowman's. While here we had a most awful storm, I was afraid the house would come down. We rode in the night to M. Moore's. I was seized with illness on the way, which continued during the night. Next day, however, I was able to pursue my journey. Friday 18 We rode along crooked paths to Casey's, 
where we received the afflicting account of the death of dear Brother Major, who departed this life last Saturday. He was a witness of holiness, and died in peace and love. Saturday 19 I preached at Wilson's, with some liberty, on Peter 3, 7. Sunday 20 I spoke with little enlargement. Our friends here on Tiger River are much alive to God, and have built a good chapel. We rode to Buffington's in the evening, on Fair Forest Creek, and were kindly entertained. North Carolina, Tuesday 22 Rode to Rutherford Courthouse, and the next day to Burke Courthouse. It being court time, we went on, and reached Brother White's, on John's River, about ten o'clock at night. Here I found both the saddles broke, both horses foundered, and both their backs sore, so we stopped a few days. I preached on Revelations 22, 5 through 8, and had liberty in speaking to the people. Our souls were blessed in a near access to the Lord. Our preachers in the Yadkin circuit have been sick. They have had hard traveling the past winter, and the work has consequently suffered. I have read Dee's Study of Divinity. The catalogue of books at the end I thought of more value than all the rest of the work. Sunday 27 I preached at the Globe, on the main branches of John's River, where there are a few who fear God. There was some stir, and I hope some good done. Monday 28 After getting our horses shod, we made a move for Holstein, and entered upon the mountains, the first of which I called Steel, the second Stone, and the third Iron Mountain. They are rough, and difficult to climb. We were spoken to on our way by most awful thunder and lightning, accompanied by heavy rain. We crept for shelter into a little dirty house, where the filth might have been taken from the floor with a spade. We felt the want of fire, but could get little wood to make it, and what we gathered was wet. At the head of Watauga we fed, and reached wards that night. Coming to the river next day, we hired a young man to swim over for the canoe, in which we crossed, while our horses swam to the other shore. The waters being up, we were compelled to travel an old road over the mountains. Night came on. I was ready to faint with a violent headache. The mountain was steep on both sides. I prayed to the Lord for help. Presently a profuse sweat broke out upon me, and my fever entirely subsided. About nine o'clock we came to Greer's. After taking a little rest here, we set out next morning for Brother Cox's on Holstein River. I had trouble enough. Our route lay through the woods, and my pack horse would neither follow, lead, nor drive so fond was he of stopping to feed on the green herbage. I tried the lead, and he pulled back. I tied his head up to prevent his grazing, and he ran back. The weather was excessively warm. I was much fatigued, and my temper not a little tried. I fed at I. Smith's, and prayed with the family. Arriving at the river, I was at a loss what to do. But providentially, a man came along who conducted me across. This has been an awful journey to me, and this a tiresome day. And now, after riding seventy-five miles, I have thirty-five miles more to General Russell's. I rest one day to revive man and beast. Friday, May 2 Rode to Washington, where I met Brother Tunnel on the way to Mr. C.'s. We have to put up in houses where we have no opportunity for retirement. Virginia Saturday 3. We came to General Russell's, a most kind family in deed and in truth. Sunday 4. Preached on Philippians 2, 5-9. through 9. I found it good to get alone in prayer. Tuesday 6. I had many to hear at Eastley's on Holstein. I was much wearied with riding a strange horse, having left mine to rest. It is some grief that I cannot be so much in prayer on the road as I would be. We had a good time, and a large congregation at Kay's. Tennessee The people are in disorder about the old and new state. 
two or three men, it is said, have been killed. At Nelson's, I had a less audience than was expected, the people having been called away on an expedition against the new state men. My subject was Hebrew 6, 11, 12. Rode to Owens's and met our brethren from Kentucky, where I preached on Psalm 145, 17 through 19, with some fervor came to Half Acres and Key Woods, where we held conference three days, and I preached each day. The weather was cold, the room without fire, and otherwise uncomfortable. We nevertheless made out to keep our seats until we had finished the essential parts of our business. End of Section 3 Recording by Brian Keenan Section 4 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Thursday, 15. We came to General Russell's, and on Friday to I. Smith's, on the south fork of Holstein River. Sunday, 18. Rode to a chapel near New River, where I preached on, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet, etc., after eating a morsel, we hasted on our way to F's. A twenty miles ride through the mountains brought us to our lodgings for the night at K's, near the Flower Gap. Monday, 19. We rode about fifty miles to S's. The weather was warm in the extreme. We had rain, thunder, and lightning, and were weary enough. Tuesday, 20. After riding nearly thirty miles, we came to M. Knight's Chapel in North Carolina. Here I preached on Peter's denial of Christ. Thence we went to Hills. After meeting, we proceeded to the neat and well-improved town of Salem, making a journey, besides the labors of the day, of nearly forty miles. I came to the quarterly meeting at Seas, where I spoke feelingly and pointedly, and the word appeared to have effect. Thursday, 22. Preached at Pease Chapel, we then rode to Seas, about seven miles from Guilford Courthouse, where we had a good time. Friday, 23. Was a damp, rainy day, and I was unwell with a slow fever and pain in my head. However, I rode to Smith's Chapel and preached, and thence to Brother Harrison's on Dan River and preached. In the space of one week we have ridden through rough, mountainous tracts of country, about three hundred miles. Brothers Poitras, Tunnel, and myself have had serious views of things, and mature counsels together. Sunday 25. Preached and had a love feast and sacrament. I then rode to the widow Dix's. Many were waiting here, and the power of God was felt by some, whilst I enlarged on Isaiah 55, 1-3. Monday, 26. We had a good time at Martin's. Leaving this, on our way to Stamfield, we were obliged to swim our horses across Dan River, and losing our road made it late before we arrived. Riding thirty miles it brought us to Hammond's. Here we had a serious feeling time, while I spoke on Isaiah 61. Thursday, 29. Reached E.T.'s about two o'clock, and gave a short discourse on, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. Thence to Pope's, to Hill's, to Long's, and to Jones's chapel. On our way to the latter place we got out of our route when within a mile of the chapel, and did not reach it till two o'clock. Sunday, June 1. At Clayton's there are a hundred blacks joined in society, and they appear to have real religion among them. Here Ethiopia doth stretch out her hand unto the Lord. I suppose there were not less than a thousand souls at preaching. North Carolina, Monday 2. Preached at Moores in Northampton, once a poor dead people, but now revived, and increased from eleven to sixty members. We had much of the power of God at Clark's, sixty members, among whom are some children, are the subjects of this work. I feel life among these people. Preaching and praying is not labor here. Their noise I heed not. 
I can bear it well when I know that God and Christ dwells in the hearts of the people. Thence I passed through Southampton, where I also beheld the power of God manifested in several lively meetings. Virginia Rode to and rested with Philip Davis. On Saturday I had a feeling living time on Psalm 85, 9, 10. Sunday 8 We had a gracious season. It was a memorable day, and my soul was much blessed. After meeting, we hastened to Petersburg, where I preached on 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Our elders and deacons met for conference. All things were brought on in love. The town folks were remarkably kind and attentive, the people of God in much love. The awful circumstance of B.C.'s losing his religion, and lately attempting to pull out R. Swift's eyes, may yet be sanctified to some, and explained by his conduct hereafter. Friday 13 I preached a pastoral sermon under a large arbor near the borders of the town on 1 Timothy 4, 13-16 with considerable consolation. Ordained Henry Ogburn and John Baldwin deacons, and Edward Morris and Ira Ellis elders. Sunday 15. I preached at the Manikin Town, then rode to Maxie's. Monday 16. Rode about fifty miles to Brother Agee's in Buckingham County, and thence to Bedford Circuit. In our route we were compelled to ford the James River not without danger. We were hospitably entertained. Wednesday, 18. At night I had some opening whilst I enforced, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Heavy rains, bad roads, straying, bewildered in the woods. Through all these I worried to Murphy's. Great was the cross under which I spoke on, the grace of God that bringeth salvation, etc., I had a high fever, and was otherwise distressed in body, and ill at ease in mind. I was afraid the medicine I had made use of would be injurious to me in consequence of my getting wet. Saturday 28. I had considerable liberty, though unwell, at Ayres's new chapel. Sunday 29. After preaching, I went to V's, and after trying, had to silence him. Oh, my God! What awful subjects come before me! Monday 30. Crossed the high mountains, and came to H's in Greenbrier. Tuesday, July 1. I enlarged on Galatians 3 at 22. We then rode to Emphirsons, a serious family on Sinking Creek, where I preached with some freedom. After crossing some considerable mountains, and preaching occasionally, on Friday we arrived at the Sweet Springs. Here I preached, and the people were very attentive. Saturday and Sunday, 5-6. I had large congregations at Rohoboth. I preached with some satisfaction. Monday 7. Our troubles began, it being the day we set out for Clarksburg. Thirty miles brought us to W's on the Great Levels. Tuesday 8. Reached M. Neal's on the Little Levels, where almost the whole settlement came together, with whom I found freedom on Matthew 11, 28-30. Our brother Phoebus had to answer questions propounded to him until evening. Wednesday 9. We rode to the Clover Lick, to a very remote and exposed house. Here we found good lodgings for the place. The former tenant had made a small estate by keeping cattle, horses, etc., on the range, which is fertile and extensive. Thursday 10. We had to cross the Allegheny Mountain again at a bad passage. Our course lay over mountains and through valleys, and the mud and mire was such as might scarcely be expected in December. We came to an old forsaken habitation in Tiger's Valley. Here our horses grazed about while we boiled our meat. Midnight brought us up at Jones's after riding forty or perhaps fifty miles. The old man, our host, was kind enough to wake us up at four o'clock in the morning. We journeyed on through devious, lonely wilds, where no food might be found, except what grew in the woods, or was carried with us. 
we met with two women who were going to see their friends, and to attend the quarterly meeting at Clarksburg. Near midnight we stopped at A's, who hissed his dogs at us. But the women were determined to get to quarterly meeting, so we went in. Our supper was tea. Brothers Phoebus and Cook took to the woods. Old Blank gave up his bed to the women. I lay along the floor on a few deerskins with the fleas. That night our poor horses got no corn, and next morning they had to swim across the Monongalia. After a twenty miles ride we came to Clarksburg, and man and beast were so outdone that it took us ten hours to accomplish it. I lodged with Colonel Jackson. Our meeting was held in a long, close room belonging to the Baptists. Our use of the house, it seems, gave offense. There attended about seven hundred people, to whom I preached with freedom, and I believe the Lord's power reached the hearts of some. After administering the sacrament, I was well satisfied to take my leave. We rode thirty miles to Father Haman's, after three o'clock Sunday afternoon, and made it nearly eleven before we came in. About midnight we went to rest, and rose at five o'clock next morning. My mind has been severely tried under the great fatigue endured both by myself and my horse. Oh, how glad should I be of a plain, clean plank to lie on, as preferable to most of the beds. And where the beds are in a bad state, the floors are worse. The gnats are almost as troublesome here as the mosquitoes in the lowlands of the seaboard. This country will require much work to make it tolerable. The people are, many of them, of the boldest caste of adventurers, and with some the decencies of civilized society are scarcely regarded, two instances of which I myself witnessed. The great landholders who are industrious will soon show the effects of the aristocracy of wealth by lording it over their poorer neighbors, and by securing to themselves all the offices of profit or honor. On the one hand, savage warfare teaches them to be cruel, and on the other, the preaching of antinomians poisons them with error in doctrine. Good moralists they are not, and good Christians they cannot be, unless they are better taught. Tuesday 15 I had a lifeless, disorderly people to hear me at Morgantown, to whom I preached on, I will hear what God the Lord will speak. It is a matter of grief to behold the excesses, particularly in drinking, which abound here. I preached at a new chapel near Colonel Martin's, and felt much life, love, and power. Rode to the widow R.'s, and refreshed with a morsel to eat. Thence to M. Hardin's, where, though we had an earth floor, we had good beds and table entertainment. Friday, 18. Rode forty miles to quarterly meeting at Doddridge's where we had a melting season. Sunday 20. From twelve o'clock today we rode forty miles, my soul in sweet peace. Tuesday 22. Our conference began at Uniontown. We felt great peace whilst together, and our counsels were marked by love and prudence. We had seven members of conference and five probationers. I preached on 1 Peter 5, 7 and Brother Watcote gave us an excellent discourse on, O oh, man of God, flee these things. Friday 25. We concluded our conference. Saturday and Sunday, 26-27. Attended quarterly meeting. Monday 28. Came over the mountains along very bad roads. Brother Watcote and myself were both sick. We stopped at Simpkins's, and were comfortably entertained. Virginia, Tuesday, 29. Reached Barrett's, where we had a little rest and peace. We had left our horses at Old Town, on the other side of the river, but I thought it best to have them brought over, and so it was. For that night there were two stolen. On Monday we rested. On Tuesday rode down to Capon. And on Wednesday visited Bath. I took lodgings at Brother Williams's, was well fixed, and found the waters to be of service to me. Sunday, August 10. Preached at Bath. I received heavy tidings from the college. Both our teachers have left. One for incompetency, 
and the other to pursue riches and honors. Had they cost us nothing, the mistake we made in employing them might be the less regretted. I have read one volume of church history by Mosheim, containing an account of the state of ecclesiastical matters in Germany and the different churches. Sunday 17 I attempted to preach at Bath on The Lame and the Blind. The discourse was very lame, and it may be I left my hearers as I found them, blind. I am now closely engaged in reading, writing, and prayer. My soul enjoys much of God. We have great rains and are obliged to keep close house, but we have a little of almost everything to improve the mind. The languages, divinity, grammar, history, and belletre. My great desire is to improve in the best things. Sunday 24 Preached at Bath on Isaiah 63, 1, with little liberty and poor attendance. But we have some stir among the poor people in the country. Friday 29 We left Bath, and on the Saturday and Sunday following attended a quarterly meeting. I felt enlargement on Peter's case, and also in the love feast. Monday, September 1 I enlarged with some freedom on the case of the man who brought the child to our Lord. Wednesday 3 Road from Eye Heights to the Blue Ridge. The weather was warm, and so were the hearts of the people. Thursday 4 I preached at Leesburg, and was very warm, on Thou wilt arise and favor Zion, and the people appeared to be somewhat stirred up. Today I received a letter from Brother Tunnel, informing of the spreading of the work of God in West New River, and several parts of North Carolina. Glory be to God for His great and glorious power. Maryland, Wednesday 10 Our conference began in Baltimore. I chose not to preach while my mind was clogged by business with so many persons, and on so many subjects. Sunday 14 I felt considerably moved at our own church in the morning, and in the Dutch church in the afternoon. The Spirit of the Lord came among the people, and sinners cried aloud for mercy. Perhaps not less than twenty souls found the Lord from that time until the Tuesday following. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday were spent at Cokesbury in examining and arranging the temporal concerns of the college. Pennsylvania, Sunday 21 I preached with some satisfaction, morning and evening, in Philadelphia. On Monday, our conference began and held until Friday, 26. Saturday, 27, we left the city. New Jersey, Sunday, 28. Preached with some assistance in Elizabethtown. New York, Monday, 29. Road to New York. Next day, Tuesday 30, our conference began, and continued until Saturday the 4th of October. New Jersey, Sunday and Monday, October 5, 6. My soul was uncommonly led out in prayer and preaching. I found it a very gracious season. My return brought me through Elizabethtown, Amboy, Hydestown, Crosswex, and Burlington. Delaware Sunday 12. I was much depressed in spirit whilst in Philadelphia. I left there on Wednesday and preached at Chester, where I had some energy, and had openings at Wilmington and Duck Creek, where I also administered the Word of Life. Monday 20. Our meeting in Dover was attended with some power. At Milford we had liberty and love. At Johnstown I was very unwell, and was under the necessity of going to bed, but our friends were alive. God is with them of a truth. Preached at Shanklin's. My soul enjoys great peace and love. On Sunday I was under bodily affliction, but I went to the courthouse and spoke a few words on, Ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. We have a house now building, and I hope something will be done here. Monday was remarkably warm weather and I was ready to faint whilst I rode to the sound. 
We reached Powell's about three o'clock. Wednesday, 22. I was very alarming. Seldom, if ever, have I felt more moved. We came away and rode twenty-five miles, having nothing to eat from eight o'clock in the morning till six at night. My body was weak, but my soul was kept in peace. Knowing the obligations I am under to pay money to several persons to whom the college is indebted, my mind is much exercised, and I feel very heavily the weight of such responsibility. The Lord opened the heart of blank, and I thankfully received the kindness as from God and man. Maryland Preached at Bowen's, and I trust the Lord was present, as also at the Lord's Supper. We then hasted to the widow Paramours, about nineteen miles. The people were moved, whilst I exhorted them to come boldly to the throne of grace. On Friday I met with an engaged people at Pernell's, and they appeared tender whilst I enlarged on, My grace is sufficient for thee. After meeting we rode to Bees, nineteen miles. Virginia, Saturday, November 1. Attended a quarterly meeting at Garrison Chapel. Oh, how changed! A preacher absent nearly nine weeks from his circuit, failing to give proper notice of the quarterly meeting. Other persuasions are less supine and their minister boldly preaches against the freedom of the slaves. Our brother Everett, with no less zeal and boldness, cries aloud for liberty, emancipation. Sunday 2 Brother Watco preached, and I exhorted a little. My soul and body are deeply impressed. We rode fifteen miles that evening, and held meeting again. Monday 3 Myself and the people were comforted at S's. We had a meeting in the evening. Wednesday 5. I preached at the schoolhouse on Peter's denial of Christ. It was a time of refreshing. There were few present that did not feel the word. Spoke again in the evening at S's to a very unfeeling people. Friday 7. Preached at the courthouse to many people with liberty. We have had heavy riding, dust, heat, and fevers. Our meeting at Downings almost overcame us with heat and fatigue. Maryland At Adam Essex quarterly meeting, I was at liberty on Revelations 3, 20. Again I preached on Fear Not Little Flock, etc. Most of our members in these parts have freed their slaves. Wednesday 12 we had a precious season at the Line Chapel on Revelations 3.18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, etc. After meeting, I rode to Broad Creek. We have traveled little less than two hundred miles a week. Thursday 13. At quarterly meeting, I preached on, Thy teachers shall not be removed into a corner. Friday 14. My subject was, Is my hand shortened at all that I cannot redeem, or have I no power to deliver? There was some moving on the souls of the people. Rode twelve miles to Els, and preached at night on, Search the Scriptures. Delaware After preaching at Northwest Fork, I rode twenty-five miles to quarterly meeting at Ease. Here we had a good time. I preached at Johnson's, Todd's, and at the chapel. I feel myself weak, but the Lord is present. Friday 21 I felt some power in speaking on Matthew 11, 5, 6, at Mr. K's. We came on to Hooper's, where we had a time of refreshing. Saturday and Sunday, 22-23 Attended quarterly meeting at William Fraser's. There was some quickening among the people each day. We crossed Chop Tank to Bolingbroke. Death, death. The second day of our meeting, a great power went through the congregation, and a noble shout was heard among the people. I was much led out at the bayside. At Dr. Allen's I was greatly comforted, after a wet ride of thirty miles. I preached at Queenstown to a few people, who appeared to be far gone in forgetfulness of God. Maryland 
I went to Kent Island, and found about two hundred and fifty people, among whom were some of the rich and great. We had a good meeting. I then returned to Queenstown, and gave the citizens another rally. There were more to hear than before. Saturday, 29. I felt some power in preaching at Bordley's. We had a little move among the people at Chop Tank. My soul is kept in peace. In times past I have felt some disagreeable impressions on my mind about the college being burnt. Now I have heard of an attempt to do it. But I trust the Lord will encamp about the house. We had a very good meeting at Dover, although the weather was very cold. We had meeting again that night in town. I hope not in vain. Next day I rode to Dudley's church, Queen Anne's, and thence to Chestertown, and preached on, Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear. End of section 4. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 5 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Saturday, December 6. I had some freedom in preaching at Still Pond Church on Simon, Satan hath desired to have you, that he might sift you as wheat, etc. Sunday 7. I preached at the Widow Woodlands, was not in a good frame of body or mind. At Georgetown I felt still worse, and to crown all I had a long dispute with Mr. B. about ordination and experimental religion. Monday 8. Road to Cecil Courthouse, and had, I trust, a profitable time. We crossed Elk River to Brother Ford's, and had a gracious meeting at his house. Tuesday 9. We had a damp ride to Cokesbury, and found it was even as it had been reported to us. An attempt had been made to burn the college by putting fire into one of the closets. But some of the students made a timely discovery, and it was extinguished. I stayed two days and expended more than one hundred pounds, and felt my spirit tried. I put the young men to board in the college. We have some promising youths among them for learning, but they want religion. I came to Baltimore, and found some tokens of the Divine Presence, at the quarterly meeting, on Chronicles 15, 8. Thou canst save by many, or by those that have no might. Monday, 15. Came to Cromwell's, and preached with some satisfaction. Thence I hasted to Annapolis, where the Lord was present, while I declared, The Lord's hand is not shortened. Tuesday, 16 rode to Weems's chapel, and preached with fervor on, O Zion, that bringest good tidings, etc. Thence to Calvert quarterly meeting. The weather was very cold, but there was some spiritual heat among the people. Virginia, Friday, 19. Rode thirty miles to Hose Ferry, and thence to Pope's, about thirty miles more. The weather is still excessively cold. Sunday, 21. I preached to a few tender souls at Pease, on Isaiah 29, 17. Yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be a fruitful field. Tuesday 23. Had a few lively people at Woolard's. I read, write, pray, and ride, and hope to see much of the power of God on this journey. Christmas Day. I preached in the open house at Fairfield's, on Isaiah 9, 6. I felt warm in speaking, but there was an offensive smell of rum among the people. Saturday, 27. At the Presbyterian Church in Lancaster, there was a divine stir in the congregation. Envy and disputation had been injurious to the work of God in these parts. Oh, may the Lord yet help us and revive his work. I found our opposing the doctrine of final perseverance had given offense. A house of our own will alone fix us properly. January 1, 1789 After waiting about two hours, the wind suddenly calmed, and I crossed Rappahannock and came to Cheesecake. 
we had a comfortable meeting at R. M.'s in Kingston, thence to B.'s, and afterward to D.'s, where, although I had an unfeeling audience, I had satisfaction in my own soul. We came to James City, where God has wrought a glorious work, as also in New Kent County in the same circuit. A number of young people have been made the subjects of this grace. Thursday 8. I had a most agreeable passage for the season across James River. Arrived at Moonings about three o'clock, and found a lively people. Christians here appear to stand faithful, but sinners are not brought in. Friday 9. Was a good day at Ellis's. My soul felt peace and I was happy to find our old friends standing fast. Saturday, 10. We had a happy meeting at Lane's Chapel. I went to the Widow Lane's. I felt uneasy, but I found it needful for me to be there. Sunday, 11. Preached on Kiss the Sun, etc., and afterward rode fifteen miles to Mosses. They are a dear people at Lane's Chapel. Slavery is greatly on the decline among them. Tuesday, 13. An appointment had been made at Maybury's Chapel, but the sleet and rain hindered the people from attending. So I preached at Brother Thewet's to about six preachers, and as many members. Wednesday, 14. I had about three hundred hearers at the Low Ground Chapel. Our brethren shouted whilst I enlarged on Isaiah 63, 1. I felt very solemn for two or three days past as though God would speak through me to the souls of the people. Thursday, 15. Road to Moors had a dead, dull people, except those few who came from a distance. Crossed Roanoke, and arriving at the place of preaching a little after night, I spoke on, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, etc. North Carolina, Saturday and Sunday, 17, 18. Preached at Whitaker's Chapel, where we had a profitable time. I found God had been working, and that many souls had been awakened. We came to Jay's. In this neighborhood, the Christians are singularly devoted, but sinners yet stand it out. The Lord has begun to work on Sandy Creek, in Franklin County, where twenty souls have been lately brought to God. Came to Bennett Hills, hungry and unwell. My soul enjoys much of God. We had a shaking time at H's, a sweet love feast and sacrament. Thence I went to Pope's Chapel. I came to G's. Saturday, 24. Rode to Kimborough's, 20 miles, where there were many people, and but little engagedness among them. After attending a few appointments on Tuesday, 27, I crossed Haw River and rode 20 miles to Brother Kennan's in Chatham County. I had not been in this county for eight years. We had a meeting at night, but I was strangely shut up. Thursday, 29. Road to W's, wet and water-bound. We found the poor antinomian drunk. However, as the rain was great, we made out to stay. Friday, 30. Road through the rain to Bowdoin's. Deep River was very high, and we had an awful time in crossing it. Saturday, 31. Came to Fair Creek, which was nearly swimming high. Then to Little River, but we could not cross. We stopped at MD's and ate our own morsel. Afterward, we rode down the river and were thankful to be housed. Monday, February 2. I attended an appointment made for another preacher at Masks, where there were a few serious souls. Tuesday, 3. I stopped on my way at Dr. King's, and took dinner, and had my horse shot. By some means my appointments have not been published. South Carolina Came to the Green Ponds, where there was an appointment for me. I felt a little comforted. I have ridden about 140 miles in the last seven days, through a very disagreeable part of the country to travel when the waters are high. I have had various exercises, and in have suffered hunger, fatigue, and fever, and have not had a comfortable bed for a week past. Wednesday 4. 
I was much moved at the beauty spot on ye did run well, etc. I found it had been the case here, but ah, the use of strong liquor. We rode to ours, a long stretch across a deep swamp. We came in late, and I preached with little liberty. I lodged at blank, a poor, kind man. Sunday 8. Notwithstanding the rain, we had many to hear at Flowers's. It was in due season that I was led out here on Peter's denial of his master, for there has been a great falling away, particularly by drunkenness. This was not told me till after preaching. Monday 9. Road to Rule's Meeting House. My soul was in peace, and uncommonly led out in preaching. Thence to Port's Long Ferry, three miles across P.D. The inundation of the river, occasioned by the rains, has made a mere sea. My mind has been variously tried and strongly exercised by dejection. Lord, give me faith and patience. Tuesday 10. Came, after a ride of forty miles, to Georgetown, and lectured on Isaiah 40, 1 through 9. Friday 13. Rode forty-five miles to Wapita, and next day arrived in Charleston in sweet peace of soul. Sunday 15. Preached in the morning with some light, in the afternoon on Matthew 11, 28-30. I preached again on Tuesday and on Wednesday. My heart was drawn out greatly for these people. Friday 20. I spoke very pointedly on Revelations 3, 20 through 22, but the people are of small spiritual understanding. Lord, stir them up. I was closely employed in making my plan and arranging the papers for conference. I made out a register of all the preachers on the continent who bear the name of Methodists. Saturday 21. I was very ill with a fever and colic, and it being rainy, I kept within doors. Sunday 22. Very rainy, but I had about a hundred blacks and nearly fifty whites to hear me. I preached also in the afternoon and at night. Tuesday 24. I set out for Edisto Circuit, journeying up the south side of Ashley River. Here live the rich and great who have houses in the city and country and go backward and forward in their splendid chariots. The land, however, with the exception of the rice fields, is barren. The weather is cold. But my soul has peace, full and flowing peace. After riding thirty-six miles, I was kindly entertained by Mr. Givem. But there was still something wanting. Wednesday 25 They were out of bread at peas, and we found our own stores of use. We had to send one of our weary horses eight miles to fetch the flour from the mill. Thursday 26. Rode to Bruton's and enjoyed uncommon happiness in God. Sometime in the night Dr. Coke came in. He had landed in Charleston about three hours after I left the city. Next day he and myself both spoke at Rigel's. Sunday, March 1. We spent the day at Chester's. We had very few hearers, occasioned in part by a black man's preaching not far distant. Monday 2. I was violently exercised. The doctor and myself both preached at Puckett's. Thence we set out with the design to reach Treadways, but were greatly deceived, and went up the road that leads to 96. At last we thought we had gone far enough, and stopped at a house twenty-one miles from the place whence we started, and still farther from the place we aimed at. Georgia Came to Dr. Fuller's at Beach Island, and next day arrived in Augusta, Georgia. Riding late two nights past has much disordered me. Having taken a cold, attended with a fever and pain in the head. Thursday 5 I obtained a little rest at Brother Haynes's. Friday 6. Although it rained, we had a few people at Brownsboro. Next day there was some life at Scott's. Here they have built us a large chapel. 
Sunday 8. Our conference began at Grant's. Here we have a house for public worship, and one also at Merriweather's. On Thursday we appointed a committee to procure 500 acres of land for the establishment of a school in the state of Georgia. Conference being ended, we directed our hasty steps back to Charleston, calling at the several places we attended on our journey hither. South Carolina, Sunday, 15. We reached the city, having ridden 200 miles in about five days and two hours. Here I received a bitter pill from one of my greatest friends. Praise the Lord for my trials also. May they all be sanctified. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 17, 18, 19, were spent in conference. It was a time of peace and love. My mind was much hurried with book and other temporal concerns. We had an unkind attack published against us relative to our slave rules. It was answered to purpose. I had not much doubt who the author of this unworthy work was. Saturday 21 was spent in preparing to move on Monday next. Sunday 22 Dr. Koch preached an ordination sermon in the forenoon and in the afternoon I felt lively in soul, whilst I enlarged on Ezekiel 33, 5. Monday, 23. We left the city and rode upwards of 40 miles. Tuesday, 24. Crossed the Santee and came to Brother Bromans. Wednesday, 25. Preached at Gibson's, then rode to Ramsey's, near Statesburg, 16 miles. Thursday, 26. I was hurried away to preach a funeral sermon. I have ridden about 150 miles, and preached three times since I left Charleston last Monday morning. I am at times tempted to lightness, yet, blessed be God, my soul has sweet communion with Him. Saturday, 28. At Bradford's Chapel I preached on Hebrews 11, 16, 17. At Rembert's on Isaiah 40, 1. My soul was blessed among the people. Sunday 29. I was led out in preaching and prayer. The people were melted, and the work of God progresses. I trust the Lord will get himself great glory here. Monday 30. We rode about 50 miles to Colonel Marshall's. The weather was very warm, and we were hungry and weary. North Carolina, Wednesday, April 1. The people came together at Jackson's at 12 o'clock. I did not reach there until 3. I enlarged a little on Zechariah 13, 12, and was somewhat severe. I rode to Savannah Creek and met with an antinomian people. Reached Threadgills, having been out 12 hours and ridden nearly 40 miles without food for man or beast. Friday 3. Preached by the way and came to Randall's, 20 miles. We have ridden 300 miles in about nine days, and our horses' backs are bruised with their loads. I want more faith, patience, and resignation to the will of God in all things. I wish to send an extra preacher to the Waxhaws to preach to the Catawaw Indians. They have settled amongst the whites on a tract of country 12 miles square. Sunday 5. We had a move whilst I was speaking on Isaiah 33, 14, 15. Some souls were brought to experience peace with God. Here Dr. Koch came up with us. We expect to continue together for some time. We had a long ride to Jones's. I preached there and continued on to M. Knight's, on the Yadkin. Friday 10. We opened our conference and were blessed with peace and union. Our brethren from the westward met us, and we had weighty matters for consideration before us. Virginia We left M. Knights, having about 200 miles to ride in four days. We had a tedious ride to Almond's and a blessed season of grace. Set out from Almond's and reached Goods. Saturday, 18. We rode 36 miles to Petersburg. On Sunday, the doctor preached. 
I had nothing to say in public. We met the preachers on Saturday and Sunday evenings and brought our work forward. I had disagreeable feelings while here. There is a spiritual death among the people. I spoke a little on Monday and on Wednesday. Thursday, 23. We came to Manchester. My exertions, want of rest, and distress of mind brought on a violent headache. Instead of preaching, I found myself under the necessity of going to bed. Dr. Coke had gone over the river to Richmond and preached there. Friday, 24. We rode about fifty miles, and next day reached Fredericksburg, but found no door open. We met with one soul in distress. Sunday, 26. Having no appointment to preach, we pushed on and rode forty-five miles and lodged in Prince William County. Monday, 27. Arrived at Leesburg and opened the conference. We found a little rest comfortable to man and advantageous to beast. Maryland, Thursday, 30. We crossed Potomac into Maryland. My soul cleaves to God, but I am again afflicted in my head. Reaching Brother Nicholson's in Montgomery, we were kindly entertained. Friday, May 1. I felt life in speaking. Saturday, 2. We attended quarterly meeting. Not being permitted to use the chapel, we went into a tobacco house. Many attended, and the young converts shouted aloud. Sunday 3. Was a great day to saints and sinners. God has wrought wonderfully in Brother Pigman's neighborhood. Fifty or sixty souls have been suddenly and powerfully converted to God. Came to Baltimore and had very lively meetings. Multitudes came to hear, and great cries were heard among the people, who continued together until three o'clock in the morning. Many souls professed to be convicted, converted, sanctified. On reaching Cokesbury, we found that here also God was working among the students. One, however, we expelled. We revised our laws and settled our temporal concerns. Tuesday, 12. We were detained at Susquehanna Ferry, so that we were compelled to ride in the night to reach Chestertown. We had a blessed work of God on our way. Loud shouting was heard in almost every meeting. At Sacrament especially, the Lord's power and presence were great indeed. At Duck Creek we had a good season. Saturday 16. Dr. Coke preached in Wilmington. Sunday 17. The doctor preached at Chester and in Philadelphia in the evening. Wednesday 20. In the evening the Lord's power came down among the people in the city, and I hope to hear he is doing great things. New Jersey, Thursday, 21. Rode to Burlington in Jersey. In crossing the Delaware, we encountered an uncommon storm, but were providentially brought safely over. We were comfortable in our meeting, but we had a painful interview and explanation with L.H.H. O oh, my soul, keep near to God. Friday, 22. We rode to Trenton, and on Saturday, 23, opened our conference in great peace. We labored for a manifestation of the Lord's power, and it was not altogether in vain. Sunday 24. We had abundance of preaching. Monday 25. We rode through a heavy rain to Elizabethtown, and next day reached New York. I was under great travail of soul for a revival of religion. New York Thursday, 28. Our conference began. All things were conducted in peace and order. Our work opens in New York State. New England stretcheth out the hand to our ministry, and I trust thousands will shortly feel its influence. My soul shall praise the Lord. In the midst of haste I find peace within. Sunday, 31. We had a gracious season to preachers and people, while I opened and applied Isaiah 25, 6-8. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, 
a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. Friday, June 5. Dr. Cope left us and went on board the Union for Liverpool. My soul retires into solitude, and to God. This evening I was enabled to speak alarmingly, and felt my heart much engaged for about thirty minutes on Isaiah 29, 17 through 19. The power of God and a baptizing flame came among the people. I have lately read Whiston's translation of the Apostolical Institutions, so-called. Also, Caves' Lives of the Apostles and Fathers. Sunday 7. Was a good day. I felt inwardly quickened towards the close of my morning's discourse, and the people were moved. In the afternoon many were divinely drawn, and my own soul was humbled and filled with the love of God. Several souls have been stirred up this conference. I trust the Lord will claim the people of York for his own. Tuesday 9. We left the city of New York and came to Kingsbridge. After refreshing ourselves and our horses, we pushed on to Eastchester. The appointment for us was to have been made at these. There came together about two hundred people, among whom there was a considerable move. Wednesday 10. My horse was lamed, by fetters, I suppose, so that I had to walk part of the way to New Rochelle. Proper notice of my coming not having been given, I had but one hundred and fifty hearers. We have a good house here, a large society, and several of the old members, whom I formed into a society some years past, are still alive to God. End of Section 5 Recording by Brian Keenan Section 6 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Thursday, 11. My horse continues lame. The journey is long, and the day unfavorable. Yet I must go. I came on to Crumb Pond, and expected to have preached at Oakley's Church, but my appointment was made at Pease, where I had but few. Returned to F's. We had a comfortable time at Oakley's Church at seven o'clock. We rode four miles and stopped at K's for some refreshment. Then hasted on to Peekskill Hollow, where I found a poor, simple-hearted people, to whom I enforced, Repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. There was a power attended the word. We rode about twenty miles to Brother Jackson's, where Brother Cook lay sick. We had heard that he was dead. I labored under violent temptation. Vast consolation followed. Glory, glory to God. He bears me up, body and soul. In our way we stepped into a house, exhorted and prayed with the mother and daughter, who appeared thankful for our services. Sunday 14. Preached at Jackson's, in Dutchess County, to a considerable number of quiet hearers. I hope not in vain. Brother Cook is low in body, but his soul is solidly happy in God, who will be glorified in his life or death. The people here are a still kind of folks, but God can work in a storm or a calm. Monday 15. We rode about twenty miles to Dover. The settlers in this neighborhood are mostly low Dutch. It is a day of small things with us, yet I trust there are a few feeling souls. We had very alarming meetings at noon and at night. Thence to Oblongs, where I found a dull people. I exerted myself, sick as I was, and had I been well, I should have made no little noise. After meeting, we rode to Blank, where an antinomian came, drunk as he was, to tell his experience. He gabbled strangely until I stopped his mouth. He then left us. Rode to L.S. and preached on... Seek ye first the kingdom of God, etc. The people appeared like rocks. Oh, that the hammer and fire of God's word and love might come down among them. Friday 19. I preached in a barn on the North River. My hearers were chiefly low Dutch. Our congregations are small. The craft is in danger. 
we are therefore not to wonder if we meet with opposition. To begin at the right end of the work is to go first to the poor. These will, the rich may possibly, hear the truth. There are among us who have blundered here. I feel as if I wanted to get across the river. I am pressed in spirit, and pity our preachers who labor here. It seems as if I should die amongst this people with exertions and grief. Sunday 21 Preached at Latin Town to a poor, dull people. Some, however, appear to be moved. At Allen's I was more enlarged, and many wept, and felt the word. We have had a trying, warm day to ride in, and preach twice. Monday 22 Rain and business prevented most of the people from attending at Newburgh, except a few women. I felt moved while I spoke on Isaiah 63. I hope the Lord will water the word so. New Jersey, Thursday 25 I was sick. Brother Watcote gave them a sermon at Warwick on the wages of sin, and I gave them a finishing exhortation. I have no desire to see them again until there is some change. Friday 26 The power of God came down among the people at Bees, and there was a great melting. After meeting, we rode through the heat fifteen miles to Pepper Cotton. Saturday 27 Rode to the Stone Church, and found stony hearts. The Methodists ought to preach only in their own houses. I have done with the houses of other people. Brother Whitecoat bore the cross, and preached for me here. When I see the stupidity of the people, and the contentiousness of their spirit, I pity and grieve over them. I have hard labor in traveling amongst the rocks and hills. Sunday 28 My body is weak, my spirits are low, and I am burdened under the spiritual death of the people. Yet, O oh my soul, praise the Lord. I spoke a few words with freedom at Sweezy's to insensible people. We then drove through the heat to Axford's, where I found life and liberty amongst my hearers. Monday 29 We had a heavy ride to Seas, where Brother W. preached, while some of the audience slept. Thence we came to M. Cullux. I had no small trial with A. C., who was once a preacher amongst us and disowned. He had, in some instances, fallen short of his quarterage during his ministry, and now insisted on my paying him his deficiencies. I did not conceive that in justice or conscience this was required of me. Nevertheless, to get rid of him, I gave him fourteen pounds. Pennsylvania, Wednesday, July 1. I had a good time at Newman's, near Hunt's Ferry. We crossed the ferry on Thursday, about six o'clock, got some refreshment at Inkletown, whence we proceeded to Climbers, where we had a good meeting. Friday 3. Came to Philadelphia. Here I found enough to do. My soul longs for more religion in this city. I am distressed for these people. Twenty years have we been laboring in Pennsylvania, and there are not one thousand in society. How many of these are truly converted, God knows. Sunday 5 We had a dead time. Oh, that the Almighty would bless and stir up this people. Rode to Randon, where there were a few feeling souls. Tuesday 7 It being harvest home, and short notice, we had few hearers. I love God supremely, and feel myself greatly weaned from earth. I have a glorious victory, sweetly resting and suffering in Christ. Yesterday I felt so unwell that I could scarcely sit on my horse. My soul was so filled with God that it appeared as if all sense of pain was suspended by the power of faith. I was so let out in speaking at the Valley Church that all my sufferings were forgotten. I spoke very loud a part of the time. We had a gracious season. Wednesday 8 After riding thirty miles, I preached at Rodfong's at night, with satisfaction, and souls were brought to God. Friday 10 I called on Mr. H., a Dutch Presbyterian minister. He and his wife were both very kind. 
I believe they are children of God. I had an interview with Mr. M., a Lutheran minister and teacher of languages. He is a childlike, simple-hearted man, and has a considerable knowledge of the arts and sciences. We came to York, but I felt no desire to preach. I proceeded on to Carlisle. In the morning I was permitted to preach in the church, but in the evening this privilege was denied me. It was said, the reason was, because I did not read prayers, which I had forborne to do because of my eyes. I apprehend the true cause might be found in the pointed manner in which I spoke on, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. I went to the courthouse and called them to repentance, from, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all ye ends of the earth, to the great offense of all who set themselves up for judges, and who declared it was no preaching. Wednesday 15 Came to Juniata River. We were well nigh being lost in the woods, but kind providence brought us safe in company with Brother W. to I. C.'s, and we lodged there. Thursday 16. Came to G.'s, nine miles from Bedford, and being informed that the people thereabouts were willing to hear, we yielded to the persuasion of some who desired us to stay and preach. Friday 17. We rode on to Wells's, a place visited by our preachers. Here we had a good night's rest. Saturday, 18. We passed Greensburg, stopping at Hanover Davis's, a man who has had trouble and conviction. His three sons were killed by the Indians, his wife and two children taken prisoners, and detained from him 18 months. Sunday, 19. Came to Rowlett's and dined. Thence we set out and reached Pittsburgh, twenty-five miles. I preached in the evening to a serious audience. This is a day of very small things. What can we hope? Yet, what can we fear? I felt great love to the people, and hope God will arise to help and bless them. Monday 20 I preached on Isaiah 55, 6-7, had some zeal, and the people were very attentive. But, alas, they are far from God, and too near the savages in situation and manners. We were not agreeably stationed at Blank, who was continually drunk, and our only alternative was a tavern. Tuesday 21 I spoke on, The Son of Man is come to seek, and to save that which was lost. We were crowded, and I felt more courage. The night before, the rude soldiers were talking and dancing about the door, but now they were quiet and mute. This, I judged, might be owing to the interference of the officers or magistracy. Wednesday 22 We left Pittsburgh and came by the Allegheny River to Wilson's, who was formerly an elder in the Presbyterian Church. Brothers Green, Willis, and Conway were my companions on the road. Thursday, 23. We had a number of poor, attentive people at M.G.'s. The weather was excessively warm, and we were in a close log house, without so much as a window to give us air. Saturday, 25. We rode through a heavy rain to Yohogany, to Brother Moore's quarterly meeting. We had a shout amongst the people, and I felt much liberty of soul in speaking. In the love feast, the Lord manifested his power. One woman, in particular, was so wrought upon that she fell to the ground. We came to Uniontown, where there appeared to be some melting love among the people. Now I believe God is about to work in this place. I expect our circuits are better supplied than formerly. Many of the people are alive to God, and there are openings in many places. I wrote a letter to Corn Planter, chief of the Seneca Nation of Indians. I hope God will shortly visit these outcasts of men, and send messengers to publish the glad tidings of salvation amongst them. I have constant consolation, and do not feel like my former self. Maryland, Friday, 31. I crossed the mountain and lodged, I trust for the last time, at S's preached at Barrett's to a dry, unfaithful people. 
the number of candidates for the ministry are many. From which circumstance I am led to think the Lord is about greatly to enlarge the borders of Zion. Monday, August 3. Preached at Cumberland. It is partly fulfilled. None cared to give us aught to eat. My poor countrywoman, who sometimes heard and trembled, was absent this time. In her sickness she cried out, It is too late, and rejected prayer. It was a time of refreshing at Old Town, in Maryland. The Lord is among this people. Brother Willis preached the funeral sermon of Mrs. Sprigg, a blooming fair woman. At her own desire she was interred in our burying ground. She died greatly lamented by her family, to whom her death is one loud call to turn to God. I trust she died in peace. Virginia, Friday 7. Came to Bath. I took lodgings with our Virginia friends, Adams and Summers. Saturday 8. My soul has communion with God, even here. When I behold the conduct of the people who attend the springs, particularly the gentry, I am led to thank God that I was not born to riches. I rather bless God that I am not in hell, and that I cannot partake of pleasure with sinners. I have read much, and spoken but little since I came here. The water has been powerful in its operation. I have been in great pain, and my studies are interrupted. August 19. I left Bath, which was much sooner than I expected. God was powerfully present at Hendricks, where there were twelve or fifteen hundred people. Many professed to be converted to God. Glory be to his name. My body enjoys better health, and blessed be God, my soul is wholly kept above sin. Yet I blame myself for not being more watchful unto prayer, and I sometimes use unnecessary words. We made a tour through Berkeley Circuit, where I had some freedom, and where we found not a little living affection in the congregations. Sunday 23 We had alarming words at Winchester, from Ezekiel 33, 11. I feel the worth of souls, and their disobedience gives me sorrow of heart. O Jehovah, work for thine own glory. Saturday 29. Our quarterly meeting began in the woods near Shepherdstown. We had about 700 people. I felt energy and life in preaching, and power attended the word. Brother Willis spoke, and the Lord wrought powerfully. Sunday 30. Was a high day. One thousand or fifteen hundred people attended. Sinners began to mock, and many cried aloud, and so it went. I was wonderfully led out on Psalm 145, 8-12, and spoke first and last nearly three hours. Oh, how the wicked contradicted and opposed! Maryland Wednesday, September 2. I came to Brother Phillips's in Maryland and had a quickening time. God has preached to the whole family by the death of his daughter, and the fire spreads throughout the whole neighborhood. We must needs go through Samaria. I called at Fredericktown and had a number of wild, unfeeling hearers. Thence to Liberty, where the Almighty is working among the people. I preached in the day and again at night. I hope not in vain. Friday 4 I wrote to Seneca, Oh, what hath God wrought for these people! Many precious souls have been brought to the knowledge of salvation. Monday 7 Preached at Rolls, here fifty or sixty souls profess to have been brought to God in a few weeks. We had a shout, and a soul converted to God. I preached in the evening at Baltimore on, Lord, increase our faith. Tuesday 8. Preached in town and at the point. The last quarterly meeting was a wonder-working time. Fifty or sixty souls, then and there, appeared to be brought to God. People were daily praying from house to house, some crying for mercy, others rejoicing in God, and not a few, day after day, joining in society for the benefit of a religious fellowship. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul! I spent some time in visiting from house to house, and begging for the college. 
the married men and the single men, the married women and the single women, I met apart, and was comforted. Many of the children of the Methodists are the happy subjects of this glorious revival. We have more members in Baltimore, town and point, than in any city or town on the continent besides. Sunday 13. I preached three times, baptized and administered the sacrament twice, and ordained A.F. and W.L. the deacons. I trust it was a profitable time to many. I took cold and was much hurt by labor, so that I could hardly move my body. Monday 14. Came to Daniel Evans's, one of our oldest members, and his house one of our oldest stands. To this day he has continued to be steadfast. The Lord has now made bare his arm, and brought in forty or fifty young people, among whom are some of his own children, for whom so many prayers have been offered up to God. The fire of the Lord spreads from house to house, and from heart to heart. Tuesday 15 I had but few hearers at Hunt's Chapel, but the Lord was present and I am persuaded there was not an unfeeling soul in the house. I spent the evening with one of the great. The Lord and his own conscience will witness that I did not flatter him. Oh, that his soul were converted to God! Friday 18 At G's we had a solemn time. The power of the Lord has been displayed here to great purpose. Sunday 20 was an alarming time at the Forks Church. A number of serious people. No trifling here now. How many dead souls restored from a backsliding state, and their children converted too. Monday 21. Rode in the evening to Cokesbury. I found I. Steward had gone to his final rest. He was a pious lad who kept too close to his studies. He praised God to the last even when he was delirious. It made the students very solemn for a season. Sunday 27 Preached at Gunpowder Chapel in the forenoon, and at Abingdon at three o'clock. Monday 28 After a long absence, I preached at Bush Forest Chapel. This was one of the first houses that was built for the Methodists in the state of Maryland, and one of the first societies was formed here. They had been dead for many years. Of late the Lord has visited this neighborhood, and I suppose from report fifty souls have been converted to God. I preached at Havre de Grace with divine illumination and authority. Thence I went to blank. I was hardly welcome. Perhaps I wrong him. I shall know when I call again. Called at I and S. Hersey's, and found the Lord had not departed from these houses. I hope their children will all come to God. Wednesday 30 At Wilmington I was warm in spirit. Thence I rode to Philadelphia, where I gave a short discourse on another man's appointment. My subject, Jacob's Wrestling with God. On Friday night I spoke on Who May Abide the Day of His Coming. Sunday, October 4 we were not without the presence of the Lord at our love feast and sacrament this day. Brother Willis spoke feelingly in the afternoon. Monday 5 We had a meeting of the principal members in order to consult about the incorporation of our church. New Jersey, Tuesday 6 After twenty years preaching, they have built a very beautiful meeting house at Burlington but it is low times there in religion. At New Mills, both preachers and people appeared to feel, and the watch night was attended with some breathings after God. Thursday 8 We had a poor, dry meeting at Mount Holly. Some were alarmed with fear, lest we should make a noise as we had done in Philadelphia. Some dear country friends felt the Lord powerfully, and carried home the flame. Friday 9. I felt inward strength at Bethel, on Isaiah 63, 12. The power was present, but there is not as much religion amongst them as formerly. 
Saturday 10. My ride to Bethel was thirty miles, and thirty miles more brought me to Deerfield. I spoke very alarmingly, and to little purpose, at the Methodistical Presbyterian Church. Sunday 11. At the glass house I felt myself, and the Lord made others feel, to purpose, I hope. Thence to Salem, at three o'clock. It was leveling work, storm and thunder, whilst I opened and applied Isaiah 30, 20, 21. Monday 12. I returned to Philadelphia, where there were five criminals hanged. One of them professed conversion. Tuesday 13. Was the day of election for representatives. Preaching in the evening was to little purpose, on Arm of the Lord Awake. O Lord of Life, when shall it be? Delaware. I preached at Wilmington on the dedication of our new chapel. Thus far are we come after more than twenty years' labor in this place. Thursday 15. I preached at Dickinson's. Here we have a good house built, and a blessed foundation of living stones fixed on the chief cornerstone. After preaching at Severson's and Duck Creek Crossroads, we came on Saturday to Dover Quarterly Meeting. Here the congregation was large and serious. Sunday 18. Preached on, The Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple ordained W.I. and I.B. elders. We have had encouraging intelligence of an opening in New England. We shall send Jacob Brush to assist Jesse Lee, who has been some time visiting those parts. Reached Judge White's in the evening, and rested there on Monday. Tuesday 20. Rode to Milford, where we had a great move and noble shouting. I felt myself very unwell. We had a very comfortable love feast next morning. I was taken with a sore throat, and Brother Watcoat supplied my lack of service. I was laid up four days. A violent headache and fever attended the inflammation in my throat, with little or no perspiration. I made use of flaxseed tea, and a very great expectoration followed. Wednesday 28. I came to Lowry's at the head of Nantico. I still feel much pain, with a fever and hoarseness. I must take blame to myself for riding sometimes in the night and cold evenings without an upper coat. I am growing old, and I live much in southern climes. I lodged at Brother H.'s, who was ill with a bilious and nervous complaint. Thursday 29. Came to W. and was kindly entertained. End of Section 6. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 7 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Friday 30. We rode in the rain. It was almost enough to kill healthy men. After steeping our feet in warm water, we came to Brother Downing's. Next day we rode twenty-eight miles to Paramore's. My rest being interrupted, I rose early, and rode through the cold to the love feast, where we had great shouting. Although very weak in body, I rode thirty miles. A dish of tea and a biscuit and a half was all my food till six o'clock in the evening. Monday, November 2. I rode forty miles to Magotti Bay, and preached to a few people. The antinomians pleased them and gained them. Alas, for us! Oh, that the Lord would send an earthquake of his power among them! Tuesday 3 We had an open time at Brother Jay's. The school for the charity boys much occupies my mind. Our annual expenditure will amount to two hundred pounds, and the aid we get is but trifling. The poverty of the people, and the general scarcity of money, is the great source of our difficulties. The support of our preachers, who have families, absorbs our collections, so that neither do our elders nor the charity school get much. We have the poor, but they have no money, 
and the worldly, wicked rich we do not choose to ask. I have ridden about one hundred miles from Sunday morning till Tuesday night, at the same time very unwell with a cold and influenza, which spreads in almost every family. Wednesday 4 We had many people at Accomac Courthouse, and Power attended the word whilst Brothers E. and W. spoke. Thursday and Friday, 5-6. We held quarterly meeting at Downings. The first day the Lord was powerfully present, and the people were greatly agitated. On the second day at the love feast and sacrament there was a shout, and I believe two hundred souls praised God at one time. My soul was happy among them. Maryland, Saturday, 7. At Animesex quarterly meeting, the Lord was amongst the people on the first day. On Sunday, at the love feast, the young were greatly filled, and the power of the Most High spread throughout. It appeared as if they would have continued till night if they had not been in some measure forced to stop that we might have public worship. I stood near the window and spoke on Isaiah 64, 1 through 5. There was a stir, and several sinners went away. There were very uncommon circumstances of a supernatural kind said to be observed at this meeting. The saints of the world are dreadfully displeased at this work, which, after all, is the best evidence that it is of God. The preachers urged me to preach at Princess Anne. I did so, and many poor, afflicted people came out. I trust some will be able to say of Christ, He is altogether lovely. I felt uncommon power in preaching at Thomas Garretson's. Surely the Lord will work. At the quarterly meeting, I did not speak the first day. The second, I preached on Romans 10, 14, 15. There was a little stir, yet this is said to be the dullest or one of the dullest places in the peninsula. Thursday 12 was a warm day, and we had a heavy ride to the Lyon Chapel. There were but few hearers, owing to the great affliction that prevails. The influenza and other complaints carry off many people, and it is an awful time. Friday 13. Came to Broad Creek Chapel, where some of the wicked had broken the windows. There had been a stir at the quarterly meeting and a testimony borne against their revelings, and it was judged that on this account the injury was committed on the house. My throat was sore, and my testimony feeble, on Second Corinthians 6, 1. I rode to the head of Nanticoke, where Brother Watcote preached a warm sermon. Saturday 14. Preached at Brown's Chapel. The general affliction hindered many from attending. But we were happy together, and it was a strengthening, confirming time to many tried souls. Sunday 15. The people were shouting the praises of God when I came. After the noise and fervor had subsided, I preached on the men of Nineveh's repenting at the preaching of Jonah, and the word sunk into some hearts. Monday 16 We had a noble shout, and the people rejoiced in the Lord. Friday 20 Being the day of our quarterly meeting fast, we strove to keep it as well as our feeble bodies would admit. Saturday and Sunday, 21-22. There was a shaking among the people. Some were alarmed. Some professed to be justified, and others sanctified, whilst the wicked brought with them much of the power of Satan. I received some relief for my poor orphans. For some days past I have been kept in a humble, living, holy, conquering frame. Monday, 23. Although the northwest wind blew very strong, we crossed Choptank River and came to Bolingbroke. Here we had loud shouts and living testimonies from many of our oldest members, whilst some of our gay young Methodists were mute. Being a day of public thanksgiving, I rode to Wye, where there is a good new chapel. The rain hindered, so that we had but few hearers. Came through the rain to Tuckahoe. Friday, 27. There was a good move at Chop Tank Bridge. I ordained five persons to the office of deacons. 
Saturday, 28. Preached with some freedom at Dover. Sunday, 29. I preached at Duck Creek. Stopped and gave them a discourse at Middletown, and spent the evening with a worthy, kind friend. A number of dear old brethren accompanied me to Cokesbury, where we had an examination of the boys, and stationed eleven on charity. Thence we hastened on to Baltimore. Thursday, December 3. Our council was seated, consisting of the following persons, viz. Richard Ivey from Georgia. R. Ellis, South Carolina, E. Morris, North Carolina, Phil Bruce, North District of Virginia, James O'Kelly, South District of Virginia, L. Green, Ohio, Nelson Reed, Western Shore of Maryland, J. Everett, Eastern Shore, John Dickens, Pennsylvania, J. O. Cromwell, Jersey, and Freeborn Garrison, New York. All our business was done in love and unanimity. The concerns of the college were well attended to, as also the printing business. We formed some resolutions relative to economy and union, and others concerning the funds for the relief of our suffering preachers on the frontiers. We rose on the eve of Wednesday following. During our sitting we had preaching every night. Some few souls were stirred up, and others converted. The prudence of some had stilled the noisy ardor of our young people, and it was difficult to rekindle the fire. I collected about twenty-eight pounds for the poor, suffering preachers in the West. We spent one day in speaking our own experiences and giving an account of the progress and state of the work of God in our several districts. A spirit of union pervades the whole body, producing blessed effects and fruits. Thursday 10 this and the two following days were spent in writing and other necessary business. I also preached at town and point. Sunday 13. I delivered some alarming truths at our meeting house with some life. I preached at the German church in the afternoon, and in the evening I spoke on, The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment against the men of this generation, and condemn it, etc. Monday 14. To my comfort, I found one of Thomas Cromwell's children under deep distress. When I formerly frequented the house, she was a child. Came on to Annapolis and found the work rather dead. Tuesday 15. I preached with more liberty than the evening before. Wednesday 16. Set out for Herring Bay. It rained, and our ride was heavy. I lodged with William Weems, once a great zealot for the old church. Thursday, 17. We rode to Childs's. It was an awfully stormy, rainy day, and we had no meeting. The Lord has made bare his arms since my last visit here, and souls have been converted and sanctified. Friday, 18. Rode to Gray's. Here also the Lord hath wrought powerfully amongst the children. Virginia, Saturday, 19. Rode through Charles County to Hoes Ferry. Death, death. We had prayer at our lodgings. Mr. H. treated us very kindly. Sabbath morning, 20. I read part of the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel's prophecy and gave an exhortation. We then rode twenty-five miles through the snow to Pope's, where I spoke with some liberty. We found ourselves not at home, so we went to our friend S's. My spirit has been wounded, not a little. I know not which to pity most, the slaves or their masters. Thence we went on to the widow huts. I am ill and have little to do, which makes me worse. On Christmas Eve I made a visit to Councillor Carter a very social gentleman, a Baptist. After preaching, we had fifteen miles to ride to Sister W's, and twenty miles the next morning to Lancaster Quarterly Meeting. Sunday 27 Feeling myself unwell, Brother Watcote preached, and our public and society meeting occupied six hours and a half. Notwithstanding the rain, 
we had many to hear, both white and black. I was very sensible that the work of grace was deepened in the souls of the people. Several spoke of the pure love of God. Monday, 28. I felt much enlarged in spirit. It seemed to me as if the Lord was only beginning to work, but the antinomians oppose. Nevertheless, I have growing hopes that the glory of Zion will shortly appear. Tuesday, 29. After waiting at the ferry about four hours, we made an attempt to cross in an old boat with tattered sails, which gave way near the middle of the river. Through mercy we got safe over. Thence directing our course to Turk's Ferry, a poor old negro made out to get us across in a little flat. About eight o'clock we arrived safely at Sister D's, where we found three of the preachers waiting for us, preaching having been appointed for the morrow. We had the presence of God with us in the meeting and at the sacrament. Thursday, 31. We had a few attentive people at Brother Bellamy's. Oh, Gloucester, Gloucester, when will it be famous for religion? Finding my appointments not made, we crossed York River and came once more to my dear old friend Weldon's. I was much indisposed. January 1, 1790. No appointment for preaching. We are bound to the south, and shall proceed on as fast as we can. Saturday 2 We were refreshed in the evening. Next day, Sabbath, I preached at Chickahominy Church once more. Sinners, Pharisees, backsliders, hypocrites, and believers were faithfully warned. And of all these characters there were, doubtless, a goodly number in the large congregation which attended. Brother Bruce went to Brown's, and Brother W. and myself to Weldon's. At both these places the Lord was powerfully present in our meetings. Monday 4 We crossed James River with a fresh wind ahead, and only two poor blacks, where four ferrymen are necessary. Two brigs under sail came down full upon us, and we had hard work to get out of their way. These large ferries are dangerous and expensive. Our ferriages alone have cost us three pounds since we left Annapolis. Tuesday 5 Rested and next day preached at Brother Mooring's. I felt some power among the people, but the glory is measurably departed. The imprudent haste of the young people to marry unbelievers and divisions excited by other causes have done much injury. Thursday 7 was an ameliorating time at Ellis's church. The next day at Lane's I had many people, although it rained. I felt comfortable in speaking to them. Saturday 9. Was a cold time in a cold house at Brother M's. I felt unwell, and much dejected at the situation of the people, whom I found divided about the merits of a certain character, once a preacher among the Methodists, but now disowned and striving to make a party. This man, and the disputes for and against slavery, have been hurtful. Sunday 10 Came to Jones's church, and was much lifted up in spirit. Monday 11 I had many to hear at Mabry's. Tuesday 12 From Mabry's we came to Brunswick Quarterly Meeting where there was a considerable quickening and manifestation of the Lord's power. We had a good meeting at Roanoke Chapel. I rejoiced that the society had increased to more than a hundred souls. I received a letter from the presiding elder of this district, James O'Kelly. He makes heavy complaints of my power, and bids me stop for one year, or he must use his influence against me. Power! Power! There is not a vote given in a conference in which the presiding elder has not greatly the advantage of me. All the influence I am to gain over a company of young men in a district must be done in three weeks. The greater part of them, perhaps, are seen by me only at conference, whilst the presiding elder has had them with him all the year, and has the greatest opportunity of gaining influence. This advantage may be abused. Let the bishops look to it. But who has the power to lay an embargo on me, 
and to make of none effect the decision of all the conferences of the Union. North Carolina, Friday, 15. Crossed Roanoke, and was met by several preachers at Sister Pegram's, where the Lord was with us. Saturday, 16. I had a long ride to R. Jones's. We had a good season at the sacrament. Several spoke powerfully of the justifying and sanctifying grace of God. A hundred souls have been brought to God. Thus, the barren wilderness begins to smile. I found it a time to speak from Isaiah 52, 1. We had to ride sixteen miles, and hear, oh, what my spirit felt. It is a day of very small and feeble things, and but little union among the people. I found it needful to enforce that prayer, O Lord, revive thy work. One poor black fell to the ground and praised God. Tuesday 19 I had some freedom in preaching at Bees, but I fear there is too much vanity and antinomian leaven amongst them to permit much good to be done. Rode to Tomlinson's, but here they made no appointment. At Merritt's Chapel, on New Hope Creek, Chatham County, I enforced, How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? There was some feeling among them, but they are not a united people. Thursday 21 I rode to the Widow Snipes, twenty miles, and preached on Isaiah 45, 22. Then crossed Haw River and came to Ems, about two hours in the night, where I found a congregation waiting, to whom I spoke on, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, etc. The people were tender. Friday 22 Came to Rainey's in Orange County to a quarterly meeting, where seven of our preachers met together. The first day the people were dull. The second, our congregation was large. My subject was, We will give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. I ordained Thomas Anderson to the office of an elder. We rode through a heavy rain sixteen miles to our friend Birds. Here they have built us a complete house of the Heart of Oak. Proceeded twelve miles to Rocky River, and preached at M. Master's Chapel. Afterward we had a night meeting, and upon the whole I believe we were speaking about four hours, besides nearly two spent in prayer. We came to our friend Kay's, and were kindly entertained. Thence we went to Mr. Bell's, on Deep River, and were received in the kindest manner. Before I left the house, I felt persuaded that that family would come to experience the power of religion. Tuesday, 26. We had to make our way through a dreary path, and rode about fifty miles. We were favored by only getting a sprinkling of rain, which became very heavy after we were housed at Thomas C.'s, about eleven o'clock. Rode to Dr. King's twenty-five miles, and performed the funeral rites of Captain C., who was sick when I was here last year. I then prayed for him, and felt as if his sickness was unto death. Now I preached his funeral sermon. My text was, It is appointed unto men once to die, etc. I felt some enlargement in speaking, and a few people appeared to be moved. I read an account of the wonderful revolution in France. May the good of Protestantism and the glory of God be advanced by it. Since we crossed Roanoke River, we have passed through Warren, Granville, Wake, Chatham, Orange, Randolph, and Richmond counties in North Carolina. After passing Hedgecock Creek, I preached at Knight's Chapel on My Grace is Sufficient for Thee. There was some quickening, and I was blessed. It is no small exercise to ride twenty miles or more, as we frequently do, before twelve o'clock, taking all kinds of food and lodging, and weather, too, as it comes, whether it be good or bad. I saw the hand of the Lord in preserving my life and limbs, when my horse made an uncommon start and sprung some yards with me. It was with difficulty I kept the saddle. South Carolina we had a severe day's ride, and called at the beauty spot. The beauty here has somewhat faded. The society is disjointed, and in a poor state. We made it a fifty miles ride, or thereabouts, 
to Priors. Sunday 31 There were some signs of remaining life seen under preaching, and a little spirit and feeling in the love feast. I felt great enlargement on How shall I give thee up, Ephraim, etc. I found it heavy work. Monday, February 1 Brother W. preached at the grove. I, E., and myself spoke after him, and there were gracious signs of tenderness among the people. An elderly Baptist preacher attended, whose heart the Lord touched, and he acknowledged the power of the Most High to be present. We lodged at old friend Jay's, having ridden twenty-five miles. We were weary and hungry, having breakfasted on tea at eight o'clock, and taken nothing more till six o'clock at night. Lord, help me to bear all things without murmuring or disputing. At Flowers's there was a living stir. One soul found peace, and I had freedom in preaching. After riding fifteen miles to Sweet's Meeting House on a cold day, we had about a dozen people. Of these few, some were drunk, and began to laugh and trifle round the house. After three exhortations and prayers, we came to Port's Ferry, and had to cross in the night, and wade the low places. Came to Sister Blank, and had a comfortable table spread before us, which to us, who had ridden thirty miles through heavy rain, without eating or drinking, was almost necessary. I think our kind hostess has several of the marks St. Paul gives of a widow indeed. I have lately read Thompson's Seasons, containing upwards of two hundred pages. I find a little wheat and a great deal of chaff. I have read great authors, so-called, and wondered where they found their finery of words and phrases. Much of this might be pilfered from the seasons, without injury to the real merit of the work, and doubtless it has been plucked by literary robbers, and my wonder may cease. My own soul has peace, but I feel a death amongst the people. I hope the Lord will come and visit them in power. If they do not turn to God, I expect they will be cut off, and that soon. Saturday 6. Road to Georgetown, and on the Sabbath Brother W. preached on, In all places where I record my name, I will come in to thee, and I will bless thee. Monday 8. I gave them a close and serious address on rightly dividing the word of truth. Tuesday 9. Came to Wapitaw and preached on 1 John 4, 16, 17. Wednesday 10. Came to Charleston. Here I received good news from Baltimore and New York. About two hundred souls have been brought to God within a few weeks. I have been closely occupied in writing to Europe and to different parts of this continent. We feel a little quickening here. Brother Watcote preaches every night. Saturday 13. The preachers are coming in to the conference. I have felt fresh springs of desire in my soul for a revival of religion. Oh, may the work be general. It is a happy thing to be united, as is our society. The happy news of the revival of the work of God flies from one part of the continent to the other, and all partake of the joy. End of Section 7 Recording by Brian Keenan Section 8 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2 this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan Sunday 14 I preached twice. Next day, Monday, our conference began. Our business was conducted in great peace and love. The business of the council came before us, and it was determined that the concerns of the college and the printing should be left with the council to act decisively upon, but that no new canons should be made nor the old altered, without the consent of the conference, and that whatever was done on this head should come in the shape of advice only. We had some quickening seasons and living meetings. Several young people came under awakenings. Wednesday 17. I preached on, If thou take forth the precious from the vile, thou shalt be as my mouth. It was a searching season. Several spoke and prayed, and we had noise enough. 
The evening before, an extract of sundry letters from New York and Baltimore was read in the congregation, at which saints and sinners were affected. But we have not a sufficient breastwork. Our friends are too mute and fearful, and many of the outdoors people are violent and wicked. I have had a busy, trying time for about nine days past, and I have hopes that some hundreds in this city will be converted by this time next year. Our conference resolved on establishing Sunday schools for poor children, white and black. Friday 19. We rode to Edisto. At Guam's I preached on the Great Salvation. There appeared to be attention, and some were affected. Saturday 20. Was a dry time at Linder's. Brother Watcoat preached. I was very unwell with a headache. Sunday 21. We had a better season at Cattle Creek on Malachi 3, 1. May God arise to help these people, and revive and work mightily for and amongst them. Monday 22. We had a heavy ride to Bees. It was still more so when we came to preaching. Poor souls, the antinomian leaven brings forth death here. Some appeared hardened. Others, nevertheless, appeared a little melted. May God help these people. I was unwell, could eat but little. I was not at home. I felt as if God had departed from this house, and was miserable until I left it. Tuesday 23 We rode to ours. Here we found people of another spirit. We had a large congregation, but very blind, deaf, and dumb. O oh Lord, can these dry bones live? I spoke very close, but to little purpose. May the Lord help and stand by the poor preachers who labor on this side it is so. Wednesday 24 At Chester's and next day at Pease there was a small stir. Some here have been awakened, but they lean to Calvinism, and the love of strong drink carries almost all away. My spirit was bowed down amongst them. I spoke a little, and so did Brother Watcoat. We appointed a night meeting. There came only two men, and they were drunk. Friday 26 There came about a dozen people to hear us at Treadwell's, to whom Brother Watco preached on the works of the flesh and the fruits of the Spirit. After riding thirty miles through heavy sands, we came to Dr. Fuller's. I am strongly inclined to think I am done with this road and people. They pass for Christians. A prophet of strong drink might suit them. I was clear in not receiving anything without paying for it. Saturday 27 Rode to Campbelltown and stopped at Brother G's. Since Friday the 19th, we have ridden about 160 miles. I have been under various trials and exercises, and have some dejected hours. This also shall tend to my humiliation, and work for my good. Sunday 28 I preached on 1 Timothy 1, 15. I had a very still and unfeeling congregation. The inhabitants of this little town, Campbelltown, seemed to be sober and industrious. But even here I found some drunkards. Georgia, Monday, March 1. We crossed at Augusta in Georgia and rode to S.C. Church. I had some enlargements on Luke 4, 18, 19. Thence we proceeded to Briar Creek. Tuesday 2 I preached in an old church near Waynesboro, at Wykes in the evening, and next day at Goldfin's Old Town. The house was open and the day cold. Thursday 4 I preached with liberty in a new church near Fans Bridge. We have been exercised in public night and day. Frequently we have not more than six hours sleep. Our horses are weary, and the houses are so crowded that at night our rest is much disturbed. Jesus is not always in our dwellings, and where he is not, a pole cabin is not very agreeable. Provisions for man and horse we have plenty of. Our journeys are about thirty miles, day by day. But under all these trials I enjoy peace and patience, and have much of the love of God. Sunday 7 we had a crowded congregation at H's. Brother W. attempted to preach, but soon concluded. We lodged with Brother S. above the forks of Ogeechee. 
My mind has been much tried under so much bodily fatigue. I went to view four hundred acres of land and found it not suitably situated for a seminary of learning. Came to S's, a cold place, and cold congregation there. Wednesday, 10. Our conference began at Grant's. We had preaching every day, and there were some quickenings amongst the people. Our business was conducted in peace and unanimity. The deficiencies of the preachers, who receive a salary of $64 per annum from this conference, amounted to 74 pounds for the last year. Thursday, 11. We had a rainy day, yet a full house, and a living love feast. Some souls were converted, and others professed sanctification. I had some opening in speaking from Ezekiel 2, 7. We have a prospect of obtaining a hundred acres of land for every one hundred pounds we can raise and pay, for the support of Wesley and Whitfield School. On Monday we rode out to view three hundred acres of land offered for the above purpose. My soul has been much tried since conference began. I must strive to keep from rising too high or sinking too low. Tuesday 16 We set out on our journey and came to the new chapel at Bibb's Crossroads. I preached with some life and liberty, and ordained Brother Bennett Maxey to the office of deacon. I spent the evening at Brother Herbert's, where lie interred the remains of dear Brother Major. I was told that a poor sinner was struck with conviction at his grave, and thought he heard the voice of God calling him to repentance. I was also told of a woman who sent for Brother Andrew to preach her funeral sermon while living. She was blessed under the word, and died in peace. South Carolina, Wednesday, 17. We were kindly entertained at P.C.'s, and next day, after riding twenty-two miles to P.'s, we had an evening meeting, and were happy with a few living souls. The Presbyterians are very kind, giving us freely whatever is needful for man and horse. I have great consolations and severe trials. Friday, 19. We had some stir, especially amongst the young people, at the Widow Bowman's, on Reedy River. Saturday, 20. Rode to M's, and finding Brother Ellis was to be at C's, we hasted to see him, and rode twenty miles, crossing Enori River, near the slaughter ground, where a battle was fought in the last war. Sunday, 21. Preached to a quiet people, and had a small stir. We had a meeting in the evening at Brother Smith's. Monday, 22. I feel myself unwell with a sick and nervous headache, which returns once a month, and sometimes oftener. We have traveled about 600 miles in about three weeks, besides the time taken up in conference. Thou, Lord, wilt have mercy, and save both man and beast. I expect Providence brought us this way, to pity and to help the people. Dear Brother and Sister S. are unspeakably kind. North Carolina, Friday, 26. Rode about 22 miles. Stopped at Colonel Graham's, dripping wet with rain. He received us, poor strangers, with great kindness, and treated us hospitably. We had awful thunder, wind, and rain. I was still unwell with the complaints that terminated the life of my grandfather Asbury, whose name I bear. Perhaps it will also be my end. We were weather-bound until Monday morning, the 29th of March. For several days I have been very sick and serious. I have been enabled to look into eternity with some pleasure. I could give up the church, the college, and schools. Nevertheless, there was one drawback. What will my enemies and mistaken friends say? Why, that he hath offended the Lord, and he hath taken him away. In the afternoon I felt somewhat better. Brother Watcote preached a most excellent sermon on The kingdom of God is not in word but in power, not in sentiments or forms, but in the convincing, converting, regenerating, sanctifying power of God. I am making close application to my Bible. Reading the prophets at my leisure whilst on my journey, I met with a pious Baptist. Glory to God for what religion there is still to be found amongst all sects and denominations of people. Wednesday 31 
rode to Gilbert Town and preached at H's with some freedom, but was very unwell in the afternoon. Thursday, April 1. Rode about fifty miles through Rutherford and Burke counties. It is a day of small things here. Crossed Catawba River at Greenlee's Ford and came to our good friend White's on John's River about eight o'clock at night. When I set off in the morning, it seemed as if I should faint by the way. I was so ill with a mixed internal complaint to which I am subject. We arrived in the very nick of time, Friday being a very rainy day, and there being no necessity that day to ride. I feel happy in the prospect of death and rest. Yet am I willing to labor and to suffer the Lord's leisure. Saturday 3. Quarterly meeting began. Brother W. and myself both preached, and there was a reviving among both white and black, and I trust some souls were blessed. Sunday 4. Was a serious day. None were admitted to our private meeting but members. Many spoke, and most felt the power of God. We then hasted to the Globe Chapel, where the people met, but had not patience to wait. We had a rough road and John's River to cross twenty times. I was desired to preach Sister B.'s funeral. She was formerly a Presbyterian, then a Methodist, and last of all a Christian, and there is good hope that she died in the Lord. I was resolved to fulfill her desire, and preached on 1 Corinthians 15, 56-57, to about eight souls. Monday 5 We made an early move. After worming the stream for a while, we took through the Laurel Hill, and had to scale the mountains, which in some places were rising like the roof of a house. We came to the head of Watauga River, a most neglected place. Here the people have had their corn destroyed by frost, and many of them have moved away. It was thus we found it in Tiger's Valley. We passed by W's, a poor lodging, and slept at the Beaver Dam in a cabin without a cover, except what a few boards supplied. We had very heavy thunder and lightning and most hideous yelling of wolves around, with rain, which is frequent in the mountains. Tennessee, Tuesday, 6. We were compelled to ride through the rain and cross the stone mountain. Those who wish to know how rough it is may tread in our path. What made it worse to me was that while I was looking to see what was become of our guide, I was carried off with full force against a tree that hung across the road some distance from the ground and my head received a very great jar, which, however, was lessened by my having on a hat that was strong in the crown. We came on to the dismal place called Roan's Creek, which was pretty full. Here we took a good breakfast on our tea, bacon, and bread. Reaching Watauga, we had to swim our horses and ourselves to cross in a canoe. Up the Iron Mountain we ascended, where we had many a seat to rest and many a weary step to climb. At length we came to Greer's, and halted for the night. Wednesday 7 We reached Nelson's Chapel about one o'clock, after riding about eighteen miles. Now it is that we must prepare for danger, in going through the wilderness. I received a faithful letter from Brother Poythress in Kentucky, encouraging me to come. This letter I think well deserving of publication. I found the poor preachers indifferently clad, with emaciated bodies, and subject to hard fare. Yet I hope they are rich in faith. Friday 9 After receiving great kindness from dear Sister Nelson, we came on to Brother Bulls, who wrought for us, gratis, what we wanted in shoeing our horses. Thence we went on to Brother Gotts, and to Brother Pease, and thence, groping through the woods, to Brother Easley's. Depending on the fidelity of the Kentucky people, hastening them, and being unwilling they should wait a moment for me. We crossed Holstein at Smith's Ferry, and rode thirty miles to Amy's, where we were well entertained for our money. Coming along, I complained that the people would take no pay for their food or services. That complaint has ceased. Very unwell as I was, we pushed down Holstein to the last house. Here we had no hope of company from the eastern or western side. We turned out our horses to graze, and they strayed off, so here we are anchored indeed. 
the unsettled state of my stomach and bowels makes labor and life a burden. We are now in a house in which a man was killed by the savages. And, oh, poor creatures, they are but one remove from savages themselves. I consider myself in danger, but my God will keep me whilst thousands pray for me. Sunday 11 My soul is humble before God, waiting to see the solution of this dark providence. The man of the house is gone after some horses supposed to be stolen by Indians. I have been near fainting, but my soul is revived again, and my bodily strength is somewhat renewed. If these difficulties, which appear to impede my path, are designed to prevent my going to Kentucky, I hope to know shortly. I spent the Sabbath at Robert Beans's. In the evening, a company of eleven came to go forward. Our horses were not to be found without a great sum. Monday morning, twelve. We loaded Brother Anderson's little horse with my great bags and two pairs smaller. Four saddles with blankets and provender. We then set out and walked ten miles, and our horses were brought to us, and those who brought them were pleased to take what we pleased to give. Brother A sought the Lord by fasting and prayer, and had a strong impression that it was the will of God that I should not go with that company. Tuesday 13 We came back to A's, a poor sinner. He was highly offended that we prayed so loud in his house. He is a distiller of whiskey, and boasts of gaining three hundred pounds per annum by the brewing of his poison. We talked very plainly, and I told him that it was of necessity and not of choice we were there, that I feared the face of no man. He said he did not desire me to trouble myself about his soul. Perhaps the greatest offense was given by my speaking against distilling and slaveholding. Having now been upon expenses from Friday until this day, for four horses and three men, I judged it high time to move. Thursday 15 We rode fifty miles, and next day preached at Owens's. Saturday 17 We rode on with great violence, which made me feel very serious. Sunday 18 Brother W. preached at General Russell's on the birth, character, and office of John the Baptist. Monday 19 I resolved on taking a proper dose of tartar emetic. This has wrought me well, and I hope for better health. From December 14, 1789, to April 20, 1790, we compute to have traveled 2,578 miles. Hitherto hath the Lord helped. Glory, glory to our God. Virginia We had a good prayer meeting at General Russell's. This family is lavish in attentions and kindness. I was nursed as an only child by the good man and woman of the house, and indeed by all the family. God Almighty bless them and reward them. Thursday 22 We had a lively prayer meeting at Keywoods. Come, Lord, like thunder, and break in upon these dear young people. Friday 23 we had a very lively prayer meeting and exhortation. We trust the Lord will do something for these people before we leave the rich Holstein Valley. I feel for their state. They are settled and dwindling. I have been happy in my own soul, and have gained bodily strength. Two weeks are now spent, one in waiting on the Kentucky business, and one illness has prevented my improving, except that it has furnished time to publish my appointments on Clinch and Nolachucky. Saturday, 24. Many attended a prayer meeting at M. Henry's, but there was little life. Sunday, 25. Preached at General Russell's on Ezekiel 33, 11. I saw, I felt, I knew that some of my congregation were touched. Monday, 26. We rode through the poor valley, calling on F., who had been sick and frightened with convictions and the fear of death. We prayed, fed our horses, and rode on to Clinch River. Tuesday 27 We had a house well crowded, but there was but little stir among them. I felt for these dear souls, and judged that Providence was about to open a way for a circuit to be formed here in Russell County, for one preacher. 
Wednesday, 28. I preached at Brother B's, a frontier house, and a station. In time past, a person was killed here by the Indians. The people showed their zeal in purchasing two magazines and several hymn books. Some say nothing but whiskey will bring money, but I prove the contrary, and I give them credit. We have had cold weather and severe frosts for two nights past. We had a dreary ride down to the ford of Clinch, through a solitary plain. Many attended at L's. We rode down to Blackmore Station. Here the people have been forted on the north side of Clinch. Poor Blackmore has had a son and daughter killed by the Indians. They are of opinion here that the Cherokees were the authors of this mischief. I also received an account of two families having been killed, and of one female that was taken prisoner, and afterward retaken by the neighbors and brought back. Friday 30 Crossed Clinch about two miles below the fort. In passing along, I saw the precipice from which Blackmore's unhappy son leaped into the river, after receiving the stroke of a tomahawk in his head. I suppose, by the measure of my eye, it must be between fifty and sixty feet descent. His companion was shot dead upon the spot. This happened on the 6th of April, 1789. We came a dreary road over rocks, ridges, hills, stones, and streams, along a blind, tortuous path, to Moccasin Gap and Creek, thence to Smith's Ferry across the north branch of Holstein. Here I found some lies had been told on me. Feeling myself innocent, I was not moved. Saturday, May 1. Rested. Next day, Sabbath, I preached to a hardened people. Monday 3. I preached at Brother Payne's, and had some encouragement among our Maryland people. Sabbath night, I dreamed the guard from Kentucky came for me, and mentioned it to Brother W. In the morning, I retired to a small stream, for meditation and prayer, and whilst there saw two men come over the hills. I felt a presumption that they were Kentucky men, and so they proved to be. They were Peter Massey and John Clark, who were coming for me with the intelligence that they had left eight men below. After reading the letters and asking counsel of God, I consented to go with them. End of section 8. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 9 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Tuesday 4. We prepared ourselves and horses for our journey, and the next day came once more to Amy's. Thursday 6. Came to Crabs at the lower end of the valley, and were occupied in collecting our company. Friday 7. We formed the whole of our company at the valley station. Besides Brother W. T. and myself, we were sixteen men, having thirteen guns only. We moved on very swiftly, considering the roughness of the way, traveling, by my computation, thirty-five miles today. Next day we reached Richland Creek, and encamped on the road about nine o'clock at night, having made, by computation, forty-five miles. Kentucky, Sunday, nine. We traveled about fifty miles, and next day forty-five miles, and reached Madison Courthouse, passing the branches of Rock Castle River. On our journey we saw the rock whence the river derives its name. It is amazing and curious, with appearances the most artificial I've ever seen. It is not unlike an old church or castle in Europe. We stopped at M's, whose wife, now a tender, gracious soul, was taken prisoner by the Indians during the last war, and carried to Detroit. Tuesday 11. Crossed Kentucky River. I was strangely outdone for want of sleep, having been greatly deprived of it in my journey through the wilderness which is like being at sea in some respects, and in others worse. Our way is over mountains, steep hills, deep rivers, and muddy creeks, a thick growth of reeds for miles together, and no inhabitants but wild beasts and savage men. Sometimes, before I am aware, my ideas would be leading me to be looking out ahead for a fence, and I would, without reflection, 
try to recollect the houses we should have lodged at in the wilderness. I slept about an hour the first night, and about two the last. We ate no regular meal, our bread grew short, and I was much spent. I saw the graves of the slain, twenty-four in one camp. I learned that they had set no guard, and that they were up late, playing at cards. A poor woman of the company had dreamed three times that the Indians had surprised and killed them all. She urged her husband to entreat the people to set a guard, but they only abused him and cursed him for his pains. As the poor woman was relating her last dream, the Indians came upon the camp. She and her husband sprung away, one east, the other west, and escaped. She afterward came back and witnessed the carnage. These poor sinners appear to be ripe for destruction. I received an account of the death of another wicked wretch who was shot through the heart, although he had vaunted, with horrid oaths, that no Creek Indian could kill him. These are some of the melancholy accidents to which the country is subject for the present. As to the land, it is the richest body of fertile soil I have ever beheld. Wednesday 12 I preached for the first time at ours, on Jeremiah 50, 4, 5, and the Lord was with me. Thursday 13 Being court time, I preached in a dwelling house at Lexington, and not without some feeling. The Methodists do but little here. Others lead the way. After dinner, I rode about five miles in company with poor C.W. Ah, how many times have I eaten at this man's table in New York? And now he is without property and without grace. When about to part, I asked him if he loved God. His soul was in his eyes. He burst into tears and could scarcely speak. He did not love God, but he desired it. Our conference was held at Brother Masterson's, a very comfortable house, and kind people. We went through our business in great love and harmony. I ordained Wilson Lee, Thomas Williamson, and Barnabas M. Henry, elders. We had preaching noon and night, and souls were converted, and the fallen restored. My soul has been blessed among these people, and I am exceedingly pleased with them. I would not, for the worth of all the place, have been prevented in this visit having no doubt but that it will be for the good of the present and rising generation. It is true, such exertions of mind and body are trying, but I am supported under it. If souls are saved, it is enough. Brother Poitras is much alive to God. We fixed a plan for a school and called it Bethel, and obtained a subscription of upwards of three hundred pounds in land and money towards its establishment. Monday, 17 rode to Coleman's Chapel, about ten miles from Lexington, and preached to an unengaged people. We thence rode to I. Lewis's on the bend of Kentucky River. Lewis is an old acquaintance from Leesburg, Virginia. I was pleased to find that heaven and religion were not lost sight of in this family. Brother Lewis offered me one hundred acres of land for Bethel, on a good spot for building materials. We rode through mire and rain twenty-one miles to Francis Clark's, near Danville, where we had a numerous congregation. Saturday, 22. We had a noble shout at Brown's, and four souls professed to be converted to God. Reached the crab orchard and lodged under a tree, very feverish and unwell. A poor beginning, this. Monday, 24. We set out on our return through the wilderness with a large and helpless company. We had about fifty people, twenty of whom were armed, and five of whom might have stood fire. To preserve order and harmony, we had articles drawn up for and signed by our company, and I arranged the people for traveling according to the regulations agreed upon. Some disaffected gentlemen, who would neither sign nor come under discipline, had yet the impudence to murmur when left behind. The first night we lodged some miles beyond the hazel patch. The next day we discovered signs of Indians, and some thought they heard voices. We therefore thought it best to travel on, and did not encamp until three o'clock, halting on the east side of Cumberland River. We had gnats enough. We had an alarm, but it turned out to be a false alarm. A young gentleman, a Mr. Alexander, behaved exceedingly well. 
but his tender frame was not adequate to the fatigue to be endured, and he had well nigh fainted on the road to Cumberland Gap. Brother Massey was captain, and finding I had gained authority among the people, I acted somewhat in the capacity of an adjutant and quartermaster amongst them. At the foot of the mountain the company separated. The greater part went on with me to Powell's River. Here we slept on the earth, and next day made the grassy valley. Several of the company, who were not Methodists, expressed their high approbation of our conduct, and most affectionately invited us to their houses. The journeys of each day were as follow. Monday, 45 miles. Tuesday, 50 miles. Wednesday, 60 miles. Tennessee, Thursday, 27. By riding late, we reached Captain Amy's, where I had a bed to rest on. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 28, 29, 30. I spent at General Russell's, whose wife is converted since I left the house last. I thought then that she was not far from the kingdom of God. I found myself dispirited in public preaching. I afterward ordained I. Reagan and B. Van Pelt, local preachers, to the office of deacons. Monday, 31. Road to New River, 45 or 50 miles. Here I saw John Tunnel, very low, a mere shadow, but very humble and patient under his affliction. North Carolina, Tuesday, June 1. I rode about 45 miles to Armstrong's, and next day, about 4 o'clock, reached M. Knight's on the Yadkin River in North Carolina. Here the conference had been waiting for me nearly two weeks. We rejoiced together, and my brethren received me as one brought from the jaws of death. Our business was much matured, the critical concern of the council understood, and the plan, with its amendments, adopted. Saturday and Sunday, 5-6 Were days of the Lord's presence and power. Several were converted. We had an ordination each day. We have admitted into full connection some steady men, with dispositions and talents for the work. Monday 7. Rode through Salem Town. The Moravian brethren have the blessing of the Nether Springs, and houses, orchards, mills, stores, mechanics' shops, etc. I rode about 300 miles to Kentucky in six days, and on my return about 500 miles in nine days. Oh, what exertions for man and horse! Virginia, Wednesday 9. Came 45 miles to I. C.'s, and next day 30 miles to Sister Jones's. Friday 11. Rode to Brother I.'s, and next day late in the evening reached Petersburg. Sunday 13. I preached on Psalm 85, 6. I was weak and unwell with excessive labor and want of rest. Monday 14. Our conference began. All was peace until the council was mentioned. The young men appeared to be entirely under the influence of the elders, and turned it out of doors. I was weary, and felt but little freedom to speak on the subject. This business is to be explained to every preacher, and then it must be carried through the conferences twenty-four times, that is, through all the conferences for two years. We had some little quickenings, but no great move among the people at our public preaching. Mr. Jarrett preached for us. Friends at first, our friends again at last. There were four elders and seventeen deacons ordained. Ten young men who offered to travel, besides those who remained on trial. We have good news from a far country. Jersey flames with religion. Some hundreds are converted. The work of God does revive here, although not in the same degree as it did two years ago. In the midst of all my labor and trouble, I enjoy peace within. Saturday 19. Ended my week of business. I am crowded with letters, have much reading and writing, and the temporal concerns of the college, and the printing to attend to. Sunday 20. I spoke melting words on Hosea 11, 8. Many felt. One found peace with God. In the afternoon, I believe the power of God was felt in the hearts of some of my congregation. I did not wonder that there was not a greater work of religion in this place, 
when I learned that they were sometimes three or four weeks without preaching. Thus, Satan tries to keep preachers and people asunder. Yet some cry out, We have no faith for Petersburg. My dear old friend and fellow traveler, W., is smitten with boils, so that he cannot go on. Stopped at Brother G's. Monday 21 We had the divine presence in our worship at Sister Stringer's. I am often blessed at the houses of the fatherless and widows. Now I say to my body, Return to thy labor. To my soul, return to thy rest, and pure delight in reading, meditation, and prayer, and solitude. The shady groves are witness to my retired and sweetest hours, to sit and melt and bow alone before the Lord, whilst the melody of the birds warbles from tree to tree. How delightful! Tuesday 22 The Lord was with us at Finney's church, and God's dear children praised his name, whilst sinners felt and looked serious. Wednesday 23 I preached at Paines, an ancient and almost worn-out place. At Riles the next day I was quite unwell, and what made the matter worse was that I imprudently walked out and sat upon the ground and took fresh cold. From Riles I proceeded to the old courthouse, where I spoke with great pain. From head to foot was pain. All perspiration appeared to be quite stopped. I lodged at Jones's, a whole family snatched as brands from the burning. Saturday 26 I was so unwell that I could not preach at Pride's Church. Sunday 27 Rode to Brother Strong's, where, as there were many who had come expecting to hear me, I made a feeble attempt in the woods on Second Thessalonians 1, 5 through 9. My head was greatly afflicted. Monday morning, 28. I took a strong decoction of rue and wormwood. My fever breaks, and I feel a little better. I found perfect patience in great misery of body. Lord, make me perfect through suffering. Monday, 28. I had a few Christians and a few sinners at the widow Lacklands, and there was a small reviving among the people. The leaven of antinomianism prevails here, and the Methodists talk much about persons and opinions when they should be looking to God. Tuesday, 29. I am very weak and low in body. Lord, sanctify affliction, and make it a mean of health to my soul. Brother W. preached on, He that believeth shall not make haste. I have felt grieved in mind that there is a link broken out of twelve that should form a chain of union. I hope God will sanctify some providence to the explanation of this matter, and heal the whole. Wednesday 30 Brother W. gave us a weighty discourse on the prophetic, priestly, and kingly offices of Christ. In great weakness, I enlarged on 1 Peter 3.15, and showed that it is not enough to sanctify the Lord God in His name, word, Sabbath, ordinances, ministers, people, and worship, but that the heart must be filled with a holy, constant fear of, confidence in, and love to God. But how common is it for different denominations to ask each other of their distinguishing peculiarities? and how very rare it is for them to talk closely of the dealings of God with their own souls. As we rode on, there was a great appearance of immediate rain. I prayed that it might pass, fearing its effects in my very weak state. I was mercifully preserved. A few drops fell on me only, and I found, as I proceeded, that it had rained very heavily ahead. We had a few unfeeling souls at Swiney's. One man appeared to be hardened, to an extraordinary degree. I thought I felt his spirit as soon as I came. Thursday, July 1 I preached in a schoolhouse near Brother M's with some enlargement, but I fear to little purpose. One woman appeared to be under conviction. Friday 2 I had a painful ride of twenty-five or thirty miles to Brother C's. Saturday 3 my mind was afflicted, and my body weak. 
I was led to speak on, Be ye also ready, and some felt the word. Sunday 4 I was set at liberty, and there was a little shaking and breathing after God, while I opened and explained, And there is none calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. Afterward I rode to Brother Murphy's. I felt very weak, but patiently happy in God. Monday 5 We had some move at Ayers Church. Brother W. was much let out in exhortation and prayer. I spent the afternoon in reading and spiritual exercises. Tuesday 6 We rode to Liberty, the county town of Bedford. We set out towards Bodetort and reached Brother Mitchell's about ten o'clock the next day, and found some zeal amongst the people. Next day at E. Mitchell's, on Craig's Creek, one soul found the Lord. Friday 9 we had a tedious, tiresome journey over hills and mountains to Potts Creek. After a melting season at Brother C's, we came to Brother W's, where we were informed of the death of dear brother John Tunnell. Saturday 10 Brother Tunnell's corpse was brought to Dew's Chapel. I preached his funeral. My text, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. We were much blessed, and the power of God was eminently present. It is fourteen years since Brother Tunnel first knew the Lord, and he has spoken about thirteen years, and traveled through eight of the thirteen states. Few men as public ministers were better known or more beloved. He was a simple-hearted, artless, childlike man. For his opportunities, he was a man of good learning, had a large fund of scripture knowledge was a good historian, a sensible, improving preacher, a most affectionate friend, and a great saint. He had been wasting and declining in strength and health for eight years past, and for the last twelve months sinking into a consumption. I am humbled. Oh, let my soul be admonished to be more devoted to God. Sunday 11 The morning was rainy. About noon I set out for the Sweet Springs, and preached on 1 Corinthians 1, 23-29. A few of the gentry were kind enough to come and hear, and some were enraptured with the sermon, for it was very like the subject. The three following days I rested, and was very unwell. I had no place to preach but under the trees, and preaching here seems unseasonable with the people, except on Sundays. Thursday 15 rode to Rohoboth, where Brother W. preached, and Brother A. and myself spoke after him, and the people appeared somewhat affected. Friday 16 We had twenty miles to Greenbrier Courthouse. Here some sat as critics and judges. We had to ride thirty-one miles without food for man or horse, and to call at three houses before we could get water fit to drink. All this may serve to try our faith or patience. Saturday, 17. Some very pointed things were delivered relative to parents and children, from Genesis 18, 19. After being in public exercises from 10 till 2 o'clock, we rode in the afternoon 20 miles to the little levels of Greenbrier. On my way, I premeditated the sending of a preacher to a newly settled place in the Kenhoe County. Sunday, 18. We had a warm sermon at M. Neal's, at which many were highly offended. But I trust their false peace is broken. There are many bears in this part of the country. Not long since, a child in this neighborhood was killed by one. Monday, 19. Rode to Drinnens, whose wife was killed, and his son taken prisoner by the Indians. Tuesday, 20. I believe I never before traveled such a path as I this day rode over the mountains to reach Mr. Nelson's, in Tiger Valley. Wednesday 21 I preached at Wilson's. Here many careless people do not hear a sermon more than once in one or two years. This one of them told me. And that he and his wife had not been to preaching since I was here on my last visit. I endeavored to apply, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
Thursday, 22. My horse lost a shoe on a bad road, and next day on the mountains dropped two more. So I rode my old baggage horse along a most dreary, grown-up path to Brother C's. Saturday, 24. Attended quarterly meeting at Morgantown. I spoke on superstition, idolatry, unconditional election, and reprobation, antinomianism, universalism, and deism. Sunday, 25. Preached on Matthew 25, 31, to the end. Brother W. also gave us a sermon. And a Presbyterian minister, too. So here we had it in abundance. Monday, 26. Preached at B's, and the next day at H's. Our conference began at Uniontown on Wednesday, the 28th of July. It was conducted in peace and love. On Thursday, I preached. Pennsylvania, Saturday, 31. I spoke on education from Proverbs 22, 6. I was led to enlarge on the obligations of parents to their children, and the nature of that religious education which would be most likely to fit them for this, and which alone could qualify them for the next world. Sunday, August 1. I ordained C.C., C., I.L., and G.C. elders, and four deacons. Here there is a revival among preachers and people. Some of the societies are much engaged with God. And after we have had a few more conferences in Uniontown, I hope we shall drive Satan out, and have a glorious work. Tuesday 3. Rode to B's, and next day came to Cressop's, where I rested the following day and was employed in reading, meditation, and prayer. I had very solemn thoughts of God and His work. I want a closer walk with God, and to be more alone, and in prayer. Friday 6. We had divine breathings at the chapel. Saturday 7. We held a quarterly meeting at the Widow Colson's. There was much rain. We had many people, and but little room. These circumstances rendered the meeting in some respects uncomfortable, yet I trust it was profitable. Many souls felt the divine power, among whom were some poor backsliders. Tuesday 10 I had an attentive, well-behaved congregation at Squire Van Meter's. Oh, that they may feel the truth and effects of godliness on earth and in heaven. At Dr. Naves's, formerly Hyder's, I applied... O Ephraim, how shall I give thee up? I felt a vast weight upon my spirits for these people. End of section 9. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 10 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Wednesday, 11. We had about forty miles to ride to G, and Brock's Gap, over a severe mountain to cross. The weather was extremely warm. I viewed and pitied the case of the people on the south fork of the south branch of the Potomac. They are Germans, and have no preaching in their own language, and English preaching is taken from them. None careth for them. I am of opinion that if a preacher would come and continue amongst them for one year, riding up and down the river, preaching from house to house, it would answer a very good purpose. Virginia Came to Brother Baker's, a pious German, well settled on a branch of Shenandoah River. I had an attentive congregation of his countrymen. Saturday and Sunday, 14-15 I preached at Rockingham, where there is the beginning of a good work. We have a church built on a hill that cannot be hid. People came as far as thirty miles to preaching and some found the Lord during my stay. We have some very respectable friends here. Tuesday, 17. We had a crowd of people at Bethel, who appeared very insensible. Row down to Millerstown, properly Woodstock. Here I was permitted to preach in the Episcopal Church. Many attended, and behaved well, and I had light and liberty in speaking. Wednesday, 18. 
we had twenty-two miles to Newtown. Here they have built us a spacious chapel. Our horses are stiff and lame and sore, and the weather is oppressively warm. We have many sick, hungry, weary rides through the heat, and over hills, rocks, and mountains. Saturday and Sunday, 21-22 We held our quarterly meeting at Newtown. Many felt the power of God, particularly at the love feast. Some were of opinion that twenty were converted. Tuesday, 24 We had a melting time while I opened these words, Neither is there salvation in any other, etc. I feel a persuasion that these people will come home to God. One was deeply distressed under preaching. I rode about an hour after night in order to reach Brother Donaldson's, by which I found I had taken cold. Wednesday, 25. Our conference began at Leesburg, and we continued together until the Sabbath following, and had a happy time of peace and union. To conciliate the minds of our brethren in the South District of Virginia, who are restless about the council, I wrote their leader a letter informing him that I would take my seat in council as another member, and in that point at least waive the claims of episcopacy. Yea, I would lie down and be trodden upon, rather than knowingly injure one soul. Maryland, Monday 30 Preached at the Sugarloaf Mountain with great freedom on For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and found the work of God had been greatly furthered. Here I preached sixteen years ago. Tuesday 31 I had a blessed season at Pigman's Church, where the Lord hath wrought wonders. Wednesday, September 1 There was an appearance of good at I. Hollands, and the work goes on there. Thursday 2 At the Widow H.'s I put them in mind of my first labors amongst them from house to house, and some sinners felt and shook. Next day at Rose there was a shaking. Friday 3 At night I preached in Baltimore. O Ephraim, how shall I give thee up? Monday 6 Our conference began, was conducted in great peace and union, and ended on Wednesday 8. Thursday 9 I rode to Cokesbury. Friday 10 in the morning, philosophical lectures were delivered, and in the afternoon the boys delivered their orations, some parts of which were exceptionable and duly noticed. Saturday 11 We made some regulations relative to the order and government to be observed in the college. Sunday 12 I preached in the college hall on Matthew 25, 31, to 46 scholars. Brothers D and C spoke after me. Monday 13. Set out and next day reached Duck Creek Crossroads, where we held our conference for the eastern shore of Maryland and Delaware. One or two of our brethren felt the Virginia fire about the question of the council, but all things came into order, and the council obtained. While in session I preached twice, first on Joshua 3, 5, and the second time on Psalm 137, 6. We had a solemn, uniting, melting season, and great power attended our last meeting. Saturday, 18. At noon I set out for Philadelphia, but my saddle horse being lame, I was compelled to ride my old horse, which is only fit to carry my baggage. Sunday, 19. Dined with Brother Bond and came on to Wilmington. Whilst preaching, we had Satan inside and outside of the house, and through the windows. I believe good was done, at which he was not well pleased. A daughter of my old friend Stetham had not forgotten me. She invited me with much affection to her house. She remembered the living and dying monitions of her father, and was mindful of his friends. Pennsylvania, Monday 20 I reached the city of Philadelphia. Our brethren have built a new chapel, thirty feet square, at the south end of the city. I feel myself fatigued and unwell, occasioned by riding a rough-going horse. Tuesday, 21. This day was spent in reading, writing, and visiting. Wednesday, 22. 
The conference began in poor Pennsylvania district. All was peace and love. Our printing is in a good state. Our society in the city of Philadelphia are generally poor. Perhaps it is well. When men become rich, they sometimes forget that they are Methodists. I am weak and have been busy, and am not animated by the hope of doing good here. I have therefore been silent the whole week. I must needs go through Samaria. Friday 24 There was some feeling and profitable speaking. We also had a love feast. Next day, Saturday, I was closely employed in writing. Sunday 26 Many felt and wept, whilst I enlarged on The Lord is in His Holy Temple. At the new chapel, called Ebenezer, in the afternoon, my subject was 1 Samuel 7, 12. I first explained the text, then showed the Methodist doctrine and discipline, and the work God had wrought by them in this country. New Jersey, Monday, 27. Rode to Burlington, the place appointed for our next conference. Here I preached on Searching Jerusalem with Candles, and it was a searching season. On Tuesday night we had a shout. Then came the bulls of Bashan and broke our windows. It was well my head escaped the violence of these wicked sinners. I hope the strong power of Satan will feel a shake this conference. The session has been in great peace. Harmony has prevailed, and the council has been unanimously adopted. Wednesday 29 We had a love feast, and a genuine sweet melting ran through the house. S. Stratton stood up and declared he had followed the work of God for six months, and that he believed six hundred souls had professed conversion in that time. There is a most genuine work in several places, viz., in Flanders, Trenton, Burlington, Salem, and Bethel circuits. Glory to our wonder-working God. All hail, Eternal Father, Co-equal Son, and Everlasting Spirit, in time and forever. Amen and Amen. I delivered a discourse on Psalm 122, 6. On Friday I rode through Cross Weeks, and Allentown, and Cranberry, lodging at Dr. Jackson's. Friday, October 1. As we could not reach York, I stopped and gave them a discourse at Elizabethtown. We afterward had a safe, although a long passage, by water to New York, and found all in peace. New York Sunday 3. I preached at the old church, and in the afternoon at the new, on Matthew 25, 31 through 46. The new church is commodious, elegant, yet plain. Monday 4. We began our conference and sat with close application to business until Thursday morning. All was peace, order, and unanimity. On Thursday evening I returned to Elizabethtown. Friday 8. Rode 25 miles to Trenton and preached at night. Next day I rode through a heavy rain to Philadelphia. Pennsylvania. Sunday morning 10 was rainy. I, however, preached at St. George's Church and again in the evening. H. Willis is come hither to settle himself in life and will probably go into trade. The church has thereby lost, in part, a faithful servant. Thursday 14. I left the city, dined at Chester, and here I saw one whose soul was made dear to me by long acquaintance, now feeble in body, and deeply affected in mind. Reached Newcastle in Delaware, and once more preached there, and had a few serious hearers. Delaware, Friday 15. I did not reach Dickinson's in time. However, I spoke a little. I found Sister Dickinson wrapped in clay, whom I left sick about three weeks ago. She has been an attentive, devoted woman, has washed the saints' feet, and kindly served the dear servants of God, and I trust her soul is now in peace. I spoke a little at Duck Creek Crossroads, where nearly thirty members have been added to the society since last conference. Sunday 17 We had a gracious love feast and a very powerful meeting. Many bore a living testimony. There was great life and shouting among the people of God. 
In the evening I rode to Brother White's. Monday, 18. At Thomas White's, my soul has been made to feel very solemn. A view of the remarkable work of God. The death of some, and the deep spirituality of others. The sending out young men for the ministry, and the providing for the fatherless and widows. These are all weighty matters, and greatly occupied my mind. In the midst of all my soul panteth after God. Wednesday 20 We rode twenty miles to Milford Quarterly Meeting. They have sealed the chapel, and put the galleries in order. And what is still better, there were many living souls among them. Thursday 21 At the love feast many spoke of the dealings of God with their souls. I once more visited B. Williams, and felt my soul powerfully drawn out towards the children. The people are alive, but I fear they are not as much engaged as they were this time last year. Friday, 22. Came once more to Sister Sharkley's. Now my dear old friend is gone. Perhaps the gospel must go out of the house. I trust the dear woman is gone to heaven. I then visited the fatherless and the widow, Sister Abbott. I felt sweet peace and a solemn sense of the presence of God. Saturday, 23. Came to Lewistown. There being no preaching appointed, we rode to the lighthouse. I could but praise God that the house was kept by people who praise and love him. No drinking or swearing here. Brother H. is a Christian and a preacher, and God has owned his labors. An Irish vessel had been cast away with three hundred souls on board, all of whom perished but about forty. I asked him concerning it, and I learned that they were within sight of land, and that if they had timely thrown themselves into the sea, they were nigh enough the land to have been washed ashore, so that many more would have probably been saved. So much for a drunken captain who threw these precious lives away. Brother H. told me that he did not go near the wreck until after his return from Lewistown with a guard, that it was reported some of the crew were as ready to plunder the goods on board as others. Stricter laws are now made, and the people on this shore are greatly reformed for which they may thank the Methodists. We have a chapel built at Lewistown, and we had an agreeable Sabbath day. The people, however, have their prejudices. Mr. W., a minister of thirty or forty years' standing, has gone, since I was here last, to give an account of his stewardship, as we must all shortly do. Tuesday, 26. I preached at the Sound Chapel. Brother Everett then spoke of the sin of unbelief as the chief sin that keeps people from the blessings of the gospel. We administered the sacrament, and in the afternoon rode to Buckingham. I rejoiced in the account Brother Powell gave me of the state of religion at the Sound. He said that the Lord had owned and blessed their prayer meetings, that he thought one hundred souls had been affected and shaken, and perhaps eighteen or twenty converted, in the space of eighteen or twenty months that Brother Williams, a local deacon, was in the spirit of the work. Formerly he pleased all with his smooth speaking, but that now they cry out against him. Wednesday, 27. I felt glad in my soul, notwithstanding Brother Lee is on forbidden ground, and, in spite of prejudice and antinomianism, that souls are awakened by his ministry. I feel myself under some temptation, but I fight and conquer in the strength of Christ. Thursday, 28. I finished reading the second volume of the Arminian magazine. Notwithstanding its defects, I am persuaded it is one of the best and cheapest books in America. The life of Mr. Fletcher, the tracts, letters, and sermons are good. The poetry might be better. Saturday, 30. I feel the weakness and infirmities of flesh and blood having ridden seventy miles the two last days. At the quarterly meeting at Garretson's I was unwell, but felt divine assistance in preaching. Virginia, Sunday, 31. We had a powerful love feast, and I believe it would have been more so had God's dear children had time to speak. We had a vast crowd of people. Brother F. preached first, and I after him. I had a solemn sense of God, 
and sinners were serious. Monday, November 1 Preached at Accomac Courthouse on Romans 1, 16. We had a weighty season. A poor man who had lately professed religion appeared to be somewhat distracted. He has been a vile sinner, but I hope he will recover his right mind. The family is subject to derangement. There are some unreasonable things among the people here, but we are afraid of gathering out the tares, lest we should root up the wheat also. We must continue to observe the order of God in our own discipline. Attend to preaching, prayer, class meeting, and love feast. And then, if they will shout, why, let them shout. Wednesday 3 I preached on education from Come ye children, hearken to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The word was felt by the parents. After preaching, I rode to Littleton Longs. This neighborhood is supplied with preaching by the Episcopalians, Presbyterians, Baptists, and Methodists. All is well if the people are saved. Maryland, Thursday 4 We had but few hearers, and an uncomfortable time, at our quarterly meeting in the Anamesex Chapel. Next day we had a full house, and I preached on education. My text? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. After meeting we rode eighteen miles without our dinner, which with the disagreeable weather, made me sick. Rode twenty-five miles to Broad Creek Quarterly Meeting, and preached on Matthew 10, 37-38, and the next day on Hosea 6, 4. It was a searching time. We came off, and found the wind blowing fiercely. But when we had entered the boat, we had a sudden calm. If this were not an answer to prayer, it was as I prayed. I reproved myself for a sudden and violent laugh at the relation of a man's having given an old Negro woman her liberty because she had too much religion for him. Monday 8 We held a quarterly meeting in Dorset, in a new, unfinished house. Tuesday 9 We had a gracious love feast, and I addressed parents very seriously on Deuteronomy 6, 67. I lodged with Brother Henry Ennals, who, with his wife, has been powerfully brought to God. His slaves were freed immediately. His sister, Nancy Bassett, has gone to rest. The other two have followed the example of a dear brother. God has heard their prayers. Wednesday 10 I came to Fraser's Chapel. My spirits were very low, and I felt that there was death amongst the people. Thursday 11. Our love feast was living and powerful. I have seen a wonder of grace in Captain B. This has been the wish of my heart, the desire of my soul, and the answer to prayer, for which I am thankful to God. Friday 12. I preached at Bolingbroke to a full house on Ephraim's mixing himself among the people. Saturday 13. We had a gracious season at the love feast. In the evening I came to Allen's. The next day, being rainy, we had but one hundred hearers at Tuckahoe, whereas we expected that, had it been a clear day, we should have five or six hundred. I preached in the evening at Chop Tank Bridge to a few people. Monday 15 I see the wonders of grace, and have had severe conflicts. My soul is more and more established in God but so many persons and things occupy my time that I have not as much leisure and opportunity for prayer and communion with God and for drinking into the Holy Spirit of life and love as I could wish. We had a seasonable time at Brother White's. I was very pointed on Second Peter 2, 9. Perhaps I have spoken my last admonition to some who were present. Thursday 18 Row to Dover and next day we had quarterly meeting at Dudley's Chapel. Saturday 20 At Duck Creek Crossroads, a spirit of prayer prevails amongst the people, and God is with them. Sunday 21 At Cecil quarterly meeting, held at Dickinson's, we had many people, 
and some life. On Monday I rode to Dr. Clayton's, and next day to Cokesbury, where I continued until Monday the 29th. We then examined the students relatively to learning and religion, paid debts, and put matters in better order. We have 45 boys. The charitable subscriptions to the establishment amount to 300 pounds per annum. December 1. The council was seated in Philip Rogers's chamber in Baltimore. After some explanation, we all agreed that we had a right to manage the temporal concerns of the church and college decisively, and to recommend to the conferences, for ratification, whatever we judged might be advantageous to the spiritual well-being of the whole body. For the sake of union, we declined sending out any recommendatory propositions. We had great peace and union in all our labors. What we have done, the minutes will show. Sunday 5. I preached a funeral discourse on the death of Mrs. Murray on 2 Corinthians 15, 29-31. It was, I hope, not altogether in vain. In the afternoon I preached in Mr. Otterbein's church. I have kept no journal during the sitting of the council. I enjoy peace of soul, but such a variety of persons and subjects agitates my poor mind. Lord, keep me in perfect peace. Thursday 9. The council rose after advising a loan of one thousand pounds payable in two years for Cokesbury, and giving directions for proper books to be printed. Friday 10. I left Baltimore and reached my old friend S. Turner's. The girls who were babes when I first visited this house are now grown up, and, I trust, possess religion. Virginia, Saturday, 11. We rode through heavy rain to Alexandria, in Virginia. Sunday, 12. I preached morning and evening, but the streets being muddy and but few friends attending from the country, we had a thin congregation. Monday 13. We set out for Stafford. The weather being uncomfortable and the roads deep, we turned in at twenty miles to Mr. Dawnings, who treated us kindly. Tuesday 14. We hasted to Mrs. Waller's, where we found a few people, to whom I spoke on Romans 2, 7-9. through 9. Finding Tommy, a son of Mrs. W.'s, had genius, I gave him a pass to Cokesbury. It may be that he may serve himself, his family, and his country. Oh, that he may serve his God! Wednesday 15 Came to King George, and, cold as it was, I found nearly one hundred people had assembled at the Widow Bombies. Saturday 18 Attended the quarterly meeting at Brother Edwards's. The weather was extremely cold, and we had but few hearers. Sunday 19. After preaching at the quarterly meeting, I visited Councillor Carter, and spent the evening in much peace and love. He has the manners of a gentleman, the attainments of a scholar, and the experience of a Christian. Monday 20. The weather softening, I made haste to get across the Rappahannock, and reached Brother B's, about twenty-five miles. I found myself much chilled by my ride. My soul has been kept in great peace, and almost in constant prayer. I wish to feel so placid as to not have any acid in my temper, nor a frown or wrinkle on my brow. To bear all things, do all things, suffer all things, from the ignorance or weakness of the children of God, or the wickedness of the sons and daughters of Satan. I think my soul momently pants after more of God. End of section 10. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 11 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Thursday, 23. I preached at Brother C.S., and was very pointed. I hope it will have the good effect of preventing the sin and vanity that too often prevail at Christmas. Friday 24 Came to the Widow Clayton's, where there has been a work of God. 
I preached with liberty from Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. I cautioned the people against the sins of the times. Christmas Day I had thirty miles to Hanover. William Glendenning began before I came. When he had done, I went into the tavern-keeper's porch, but I afterward judged it best to withdraw and speak in another place. I stood in the door of a public house, and with about half of my congregation out of doors, preached on, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. The people behaved exceedingly well, and the town was very still. Sunday 26 I had a large congregation at Newcastle, to whom I spoke on, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. William Glendenning spoke after me. I am clear he is not right in his head or heart, and am therefore resolved he shall speak no more at my appointments. Monday 27 Preached at Colonel Clayton's. The people hereabouts are wealthy, and few attend preaching. Nevertheless, I was favored with their company, and had great liberty and sweetness in speaking to them. I feel as if God would yet work among them. It was in this neighborhood I was laid up four years ago. Tuesday, 28. I had many people at the widow A.S., but they did not appear to be in a good frame to receive instruction. Their Christmas company. Sinful, worldly joy. Full feeding. Together with the severity of the weather, all appeared to make against a profitable meeting. Wednesday, 29. Preached in James City. Crowded with company. I was informed of some painful circumstances relative to our dissatisfied brethren. I leave these things to God, who will bring all things to light. Contrary to my expectations, I found there was an appointment made for me to preach in Williamsburg, being the day I had intended to cross the river. Thursday 30 I preached in the city of Williamsburg, according to appointment. I felt much liberty and had some hope that Providence was about to open the way for a work in this place. Friday 31 I came on to the ferry, chilled with the cold. We had to ride seven miles. The wind was high about the time we embarked. Presently a snowstorm came on, and although wind and tide were in our favor, we had rough work in crossing. Our horses were smooth, the bottom of the boat icy, so that it was with difficulty they could keep their feet. However, kind providence brought us safe to Cobham, whence we hasted along to Brother M's, and found Brother Pop speaking, and the people shouting. I preached on Ephesians 5, 17 through 19. I afterward had an interview with Brother Pop, and a more full account of matters relative to our disaffected brethren. Thence I rode on to Brother Blunt's, but there were none to preach to. Sunday, January 2. 1791. Notwithstanding the snow was deep, we rode to Brother Cowling's. Few people attended, but we had a comfortable meeting, especially at the sacrament. Monday 3. We rode hard to get to Craney Island, and came within three miles by two o'clock. The people being dispersed, we came back to Brother Jolliffe's. Tuesday 4. I had a few to hear, to whom I spoke on Romans 13.11. I engaged R.I. as a French teacher for Cokesbury. Wednesday 5 We had a blessed time at Norfolk, whilst I applied Zechariah 12.10. Many praised the Lord aloud. I was closely employed until the moment I left town. I find the Lord has wrought in Norfolk, Portsmouth, and the country round about. North Carolina, Thursday 6. I did not reach chapel until 3 o'clock. Next day I reached Colonel Williams's, Currituck, North Carolina. Here we had a quickening time. I possess peace of mind, and feel no murmuring nor discontent. My horse is very lame, and the roads in this country are very deep. Saturday 8. After preaching at B's, I hasted to S's Ferry, on Pascotank River, where I waited about three hours. The Negroes were dancing. 
I stayed behind until all the company were over, and then crossed about eight o'clock, and about nine reached Brother P.S. Sunday Nine Preached at New Begun Church in the morning, and at Nixonton in the evening, in the courthouse, which was nearly filled. Tuesday Eleven Yesterday I rode to Brother B's, within five miles of Gates Courthouse. My fare is sometimes poor, my rides are long, my horse is lame. Yet, while Christ is mine, I feel nothing like murmuring or discontent. I have passed through Winton, Wickocon, Campbell, and Hardy counties, preaching as I journeyed, and found a few living souls. Sunday 16 Came to Gardeners to quarterly meeting where I enlarged on Peter's fall, and it was a serious, powerful meeting. I thence rode to our late brother F.'s, whose funeral rites I performed. Although the weather was cold, the congregation was large. I was importuned to visit the town, but found there were but few who really wished me to go. I, however, went and preached to them at candlelight, and many of them laughed at the foolish old prophet. Perhaps when I next come to see them, they will be more serious. Thence we hastened to Brother Jones's, whose wife lately departed this life in the full triumph of faith, and his son is engaged in horse racing. This brought to my mind young P., who, after the death of his pious father, turned away the preachers, and sinned with a high hand. But the Lord followed him, and after he had spent a good deal of the substance left him by his father, he was made a happy subject of the grace of God. I will not give up all hope for young Jones. Saturday 22 Crossed Noose River at Smith's Ferry, and came to the dwelling of the late General Hardy Bryan, a man I had often heard of and wished to see. But death, swift and sudden, reached the house before me. His son H. died the 18th of last November. His daughter Mary... December 28th, and himself the 10th instant. Each of them feared the Lord, and were happy souls. I felt strangely unwilling to believe the general was dead, until I could no longer doubt it. At the graveyard I had very solemn feelings. There was some melting among the people, whilst I enlarged on Psalm 12, 1. Sunday 23 I had very great opening on 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 14. It was on the occasion of the late lamented deaths. Surely this is loud preaching. It is one of the most awakening scenes of my life. How soon were these dear souls justified, sanctified, and called home to glory? Hail, happy dead! We toil below, but hope ere long with you to sing God's praise above. Lord, Help us to improve this providence, and always be looking and longing for glory. Monday 24 I had a most dreary ride to Trenton, Jones Courthouse. Here I met with Louis Bryan, brother to the late general. His heart and house are open. After getting some refreshment, we went to the chapel, where I preached with great freedom. There were brethren present who came to meet us from a great distance. In the evening, brothers C and L and A held meeting. Tuesday 25 I preached at Lee's Chapel. There is a very great change for the better since I was here three years ago. They have now built a very decent house for worship. I was unwell in my body, but happy in my God, and resigned to His will. Wednesday 26 preached to a large congregation at Brother D's on White Oak River. I baptized and administered the sacrament. After dinner, I rode twelve miles to L's and found the people waiting. About six, we began exhortation and prayer, and about midnight laid ourselves down to rest. Thursday 27 I had many to hear at Swansbury. The people were attentive. Oh, that God may bless his word to them. Surely all shall not be in vain. I returned to Brother T's, a mile out of town, but the people found where I was and came out. Sometimes I am tried when I cannot enjoy my hours of retirement, but we must bear all things, 
if thereby we may do good, and gain the more souls to Christ. Friday 28 We rode sixteen miles to an old chapel on the way to Richlands. The people and myself suffered from the weather. However, I spoke a little, and administered the sacrament. After which I rode, cold and hungry, sixteen miles more to Brother C. Ballard's. Sunday 30 The truth was delivered sharply and pointedly, but the people were wild and unfeeling. Tuesday, February 1 I had a large congregation at the Sand Hills. Feeling myself enlarged in spirit, although weak in body, I entered very extensively into the nature and excellencies of the gospel. We administered the Lord's Supper, and had a shaking among the people. Brothers L. and B. were there, and we rejoiced in the Lord together. We were honored with a little cabin at a distance from the other houses about eight feet wide and nine feet long, and were as happy as princes in a palace. Wednesday 2 We had our difficulties in getting along an unknown path. Arrived at D. V.'s Ford, we met with a very kind man, who gave us and our baggage a passage on a broken canoe then led us part of our way, and sent a servant to conduct us on. We reached Anderson's about two o'clock, and found many people waiting, but they appeared to be unfeeling. We were most kindly treated. The people are about to settle a newly introduced minister, so we may go off for a year or two, and by that time the way may be open for our return. I am charged with dreadful things about the council but I believe the Lord will make it appear where the mischief lies. Crossed Cape Fear River, and rode thirty miles to Sister Turner's. Here I spoke to some assembled people, some of whom felt, and my labor was not in vain in the Lord. My own soul was blessed. I was awfully impressed with the conviction that the interests of religion had been injured by backsliders and loose walkers. Saturday 5 we had many at the quarterly meeting for that part of the country. My subject was, and Peter went out and wept bitterly. Sunday 6 We had a little melting among the people at noon and in the evening. Ah, my God, how few there are who truly love thee. Monday 7 Rode to Lockwood's Folly and preached at Charlotte River to not less than one hundred people a vast congregation for so lonely a part of the world. The soil is very barren, and the country, consequently, but thinly settled. We were recommended for lodging to a certain squire's, but Providence so ordered it that we came to a simple-hearted Brother S.'s, where we were kindly received, and abundantly supplied with everything necessary for man and horse. As our time would admit, I was disposed to indulge a desire I had of going by Pyroway, about twelve miles distant. We crossed Waccamaw River. It is about one hundred and fifty yards wide. Our horses ferried themselves over by swimming. I preached in the evening on The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. South Carolina, Tuesday 8 We came a long, dreary way, missed our road, and at last reached Brother S.'s a distance of twenty-five miles, which our wandering made thirty miles. I rejoice to find that this desert country has gracious souls in it. Oh, how great the change in the flight of six years! We have now many friends, and some precious souls converted to God. Glory be to the Lord Most High! I feel power to bear all things, and leave events to God. The misconduct of other men is my grief, but not my sin so I will trust God with his own cause. Friday 11 We set out for Black River, from about six miles above Kingston, having Bull Run, Bramble Island, and Great Petey to cross. Reaching Black River, we were compelled to turn aside to Mr. S.'s rice plantation, where we procured provender for our horses, and breakfasted on our own tea. Saturday 12 Came to Georgetown through the rain. Felt myself unwell and very low in spirits. 
Sunday 13. I preached a plain, searching sermon, and some felt the word, but it is a day of small things. In the afternoon I enlarged on, How shall I give thee up, O Ephraim? The wicked youths were playing without, and inattention prevailed amongst those within. I was, and continued to be, under great dejection during my stay. Monday 14. Rode forty-five miles to Brother Sinclair Capers's, under depression of spirits, and here I received letters not at all calculated to relieve me. Charleston, Tuesday, 15. I went to church under awful distress of heart. My drooping spirits were somewhat revived in the house of God. We grow here but slowly. Thursday, 17. I had a small congregation of whites. I feel the want of religion here. Indeed, the gross immoralities of the place are obvious to every passenger in the streets. I learned that in Georgia, preachers of other denominations have had high disputes with ours. I am clear that controversy should be avoided, because we have better work to do, and because it is too common that when debates run high, there are wrong words and tempers indulged on both sides. Sunday 20. I read prayers in the morning, and Brother Ellis preached. In the afternoon, Brother Askew preached his farewell sermon. And at night I was very pointed to young people on, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, etc. Wednesday 23. Long looked for Dr. Coke came to town. He had been shipwrecked off Edisto. I found the doctor's sentiments, with regard to the council, quite changed. James O'Kelly's letters had reached London. I felt perfectly calm, and acceded to a general conference, for the sake of peace. Sunday 27 Dr. Coke preached to a very large audience in the evening. The poor sinners appeared to be a little tamed. I was much blessed in meeting the married and single men apart. I also met the married and single women. I trust there has been good done in Charleston this conference. I want to be gone into the country to enjoy sweet solitude and prayer. I have been reading three hundred pages of Taylor's sermons, where I find many instructing glosses on the scriptures. Tuesday, March 1 At night I made my last effort for this time, and the people were more attentive. I let out freely against the races. I am somewhat distressed at the uneasiness of our people, who claim a right to choose their own preachers, a thing quite new amongst Methodists. None but Mr. Hammett will do for them. We shall see how it will end. Wednesday 2 I left the city something grieved in mind. I crossed the toll bridge over Ashley River, came to Jacksonsboro, and lodged at Bonham's. Thursday 3. Came to Allen's Tavern. My host, a Yorkshireman, and his wife are attentive, obliging, and cleanly. They want nothing but religion to make them superior, in their way, to almost any I have met with in America. I proceeded on to the Salt Catchers, and thence to Cousinhatchee, where I was kindly entertained by Mr. Lambrights. Friday 4. I had a very well-dressed, serious, attentive congregation at the district courthouse. I had not much liberty. However, I endeavored to speak plainly on godliness is profitable, etc. An attentive, pious, old man thanked me for my discourse. Our horses are much hurt by long rides, having traveled one hundred miles in two days. Saturday 5. I read critically Mrs. Rowe's Devout Exercises of the Heart. I wrote nearly twenty pages to Dr. Cope on the concerns of the church. Sunday 6 Notwithstanding the heavy rain, we had many to hear at Brother Stafford's, where I enforced, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Georgia, Monday 7 I preached at Hudson's Ferry with some freedom but the people appeared wild and stupid. I was alarmed at hearing a man talking large and loud, 
thinking he was drunk, and would come in and disturb the congregation. But he was, as I afterwards learned, an antinomian. I came in a heavy storm to Brother H's. This day I passed Savannah Swamp, parts of which are not unlike the Santee and Kentucky lands. Tuesday 8. We had nearly four hundred people at ours, and I trust the Lord in some good degree breathed upon the souls present. We then rode sixteen miles and had a comfortable evening exercise at Brother R's. Wednesday 9. Preached at an old church. I was much fatigued and felt unwell. At the invitation of Mr. C., I came to Waynesboro. I lodged with Mr. Henry, a Jew. We read Hebrew part of the night, and I should have been pleased to have spent the night thus occupied with so good a scholar. Thursday 10. I preached at C.'s church. My body was wearied with labor and want of sleep. Sunday 13. Came to Georgetown at Ogichi Shoals, and found Satan was there. I leveled away on the parable of the sower. I came to Brother H's, heard heavy tidings. My soul is calm. Let the Lord look to his own house. I hasted to Scott's. Dr. Coke came in time enough to preach, and then we opened a conference. We sat very closely to our work, and had some matters of moment to attend to in the course of our deliberations. I have ridden about 250 miles in Georgia, and find the work in general very dead. The peace with the Creek Indians, the settlement of new lands, good trade, buying slaves, etc., take up the attention of the people. Sunday 20 There was a shaking amongst the people whilst I spoke on Romans 10, 21. South Carolina After meeting, I came away and rode twenty miles to Brother Herbert's that evening. Whilst Dr. Coke stayed behind to preach at Ninety-Six Town, I came on and made an appointment and preached at Finch's, and some, I know, felt the word. Wednesday 23 We crossed the Ennery, Tiger, and Broad Rivers. Saturday 26 We had white and red Indians at Catawba, the doctor and myself both preached. I had some conversation with the chiefs of the Indians about keeping up the school we have been endeavoring to establish amongst them. I asked for one of their children, but the father would not give consent, nor would the child come. My body is weak, but my mind has heaven and peace within. We closely employed our intervals of leisure in preparing different tracts for the press. Lord's Day 27 We found the people insensible at the Waxhaw's church. Some few seemed alarmed whilst Isaiah 33, 14 was opened and enforced. Wednesday 30 We came to Salisbury. I felt unwell and no freedom to speak. Dr. Coke gave them a sermon, and we then rode five miles to Bees. Next day we reached Jones's and the day after, 1st of April, M. Nights, where we opened conference in great peace. Many of the preachers related their experience, and it was a blessed season of grace. End of section 11. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 12 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan Monday 4 We rose after sitting each night, Sabbath accepted, until twelve o'clock. Several of our brethren expressed something like the perfect love of God, but they had doubts about their having retained it. Tuesday 5 We rested a while at Salem on our way, and came in the evening to Brother W's, and had a meeting there. I believe trouble is at hand but I trust God with his cause and Christ with his church. My soul drinks into holiness. Friday 8 I observed as a day of abstinence and prayer, reading and meditation. Oh, for more of heaven! 
Poor Minters's case has given occasion for sinners and for the world to laugh and talk and write. Saturday 9 We had a large congregation at A's. I felt life in speaking, although weak and weary in body. We rode seven miles to the banks of Dan River, but knew not where to cross. At length we came to the fishery, crossed in a canoe, and walked two miles in the night to T. Harrison's. Thus ended the labors of the day. Virginia, Sunday 10 Dr. Coke and myself both preached at Watson's Church, and there was some little effect produced. I spent the evening with George Adams, a true son of his worthy father, Sylvanus Adams, for kindness to the preachers. I am constantly weak and feverish in body, but my soul is uncommonly happy and calm. We moved from G. Adams's to the Widow Dix's, and thence next day to Brother Martin's. Wednesday 13. Came to Difficult Church, where we were honored with the company of some of the great. The doctor preached a noble sermon on the divinity of Christ, and I urged, It is time to seek the Lord. Afterward we preached in Charlotte and Mecklenburg, and on Sunday following came to quarterly meeting at Sister Walker's in Brunswick. Dr. Coke went to the barn, and I preached in the house. The rain rendered our meeting uncomfortable. Monday 18 Near Dinwiddie Courthouse I waited, it being the day of the election, until our brethren returned from the courthouse, and then preached in the new church on 2 Corinthians 6, 17-18. Tuesday 19 We rode to Petersburg. We agreed to take different lodgings during the sitting of the conference, the doctor at Brother Davis's and myself at Brother Harding's. Wednesday 20 I preached on Our Light Afflictions Which Are But For a Moment, etc., and there was some warmth amongst the preachers and people. The business of our conference was brought on in peace, and there was a blessing attended our speaking on our experiences and in prayer. The affair of the council was suspended until a general conference. Friday 22 Late in the evening our conference rose. Saturday 23 I preached at E. West's to a large congregation and had a little spring of power. Sunday 24 Came to Colonel Clayton's, who was very ill. We had a large collection of people and a good meeting. We were to have held our conference at the colonel's, but his illness prevented. We sat at his son, B. Clayton's, and were amply provided for. The son is not a member, but he was very kind. Monday 25 Dr. Coke and Brother I. Ellis preached, and there was some power attended the word. I found the doctor had much changed his sentiments since his last visit to this continent, and that these impressions still continued. I hope to be enabled to give up all I dare for peace's sake, and to please all men for their good to edification. We hastened our business, and on Tuesday 26th came to Newcastle. Here I preached on, How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen gathereth her brood under her wings, and ye would not. I have no doubt but the people felt the word. We came on to Hanover Town, where the doctor preached in the afternoon. Wednesday, 27. We rode thirty miles to the Widow Collins's, Caroline County, much wearied in body, but greatly comforted in God. Thursday, 28. At eleven o'clock at Pope's Chapel, the doctor preached on Pray Without Ceasing, myself on By Grace Are Ye Saved Through Faith. I was long and very close. We hasted to Port Royal, where a number of fine people were waiting to whom the doctor preached on, Ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. They expressed a desire for me to preach also, but it being late, I declined it. Friday 29 The solemn news reached our ears that the public papers had announced the death of that dear man of God, John Wesley. He died in his own house in London, in the eighty-eighth year of his age after preaching the gospel sixty-four years. When we consider his plain and nervous writings, his uncommon talent for sermonizing and journalizing, 
that he had such a steady flow of animal spirits, so much of the spirit of government in him, his knowledge as an observer, his attainments as a scholar, his experience as a Christian, I conclude his equal is not to be found among all the sons he hath brought up, nor his superior among all the sons of Adam he may have left behind. Brother Coke was sunk in spirit, and wished to hasten home immediately. For myself, notwithstanding my long absence from Mr. Wesley, and a few unpleasant expressions in some of the letters the dear old man has written to me, occasioned by the misrepresentation of others, I feel the stroke most sensibly and I expect I shall never read his works without reflecting on the loss which the Church of God and the world has sustained by his death. Dr. Coke, accompanied by Brother C. and Dr. G., set out for Baltimore in order to get the most speedy passage to England, leaving me to fill the appointments. I had a large congregation at Sister Bombry's. In the afternoon I rode to Sister Waller's, making a journey of forty miles for this day. Next day I overtook Dr. Coke and his company at Colchester. Brother Cox's horse being sick, I put my old horse in his place to carry them to Alexandria, where we arrived about three o'clock after riding forty miles by our reckoning. At Alexandria, Dr. Coke had certain information of Mr. Wesley's death. On Sabbath day he reached Baltimore and preached on the occasion of Mr. Wesley's death, and mentioned some things which gave offense. Maryland, Thursday, May 5. This day and the two following days we held conference in Baltimore, and great love and sweetness prevailed throughout the sitting. I preached to a large congregation on the Sabbath, and we had a gracious time. Monday 9. Came to Cokesbury. I found there was a vast demand for money for the establishment, there having been an expenditure of seven hundred pounds in five months. Tuesday 10. Crossed Susquehanna and came to Cecil, and next day reached Duck Creek. Our conference began, and was conducted in much peace and harmony amongst preachers and people. Our meetings in public were attended with great power. Sunday 15. Two elders and three deacons were ordained. After the ordination, I rode to Middletown, Delaware, and preached to a large congregation. Pennsylvania, Monday, 16. I rode to Newcastle and had the last interview with Dr. Coke. Surely the time to favor Newcastle is swiftly coming. In the evening I came to Chester, and next day, the 17th, arrived in Philadelphia and opened conference. We had a tender, melting account of the dealings of God with many souls, and settled our business in much peace. Mr. Hammett came from Charleston with a wonderful list of petitioners desiring his return. To this, as far as I had to say, I submitted. But, blank, I see and hear many things that might wound my spirit, if it were not that the Lord bears me up above all. Wednesday 18. I preached on, The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Friday 20. We had a fast day, and in the afternoon a feast of love. It was a time to be remembered. Some precious souls were converted. Saturday 21 I left Philadelphia for New Jersey. On the road I felt much of the spirit of prayer. New Jersey, Sunday 22 I preached in Trenton on Joel 2.17. Several preachers exhorted, and the Lord made sinners tremble. Eighteen years ago, I often slipped away from Philadelphia to Burlington one week, and to Trenton another, to keep a few souls alive. I had then no conferences to take up my time and occupy my thoughts, and now, what hath God wrought? We attended to the business of the conference with a good spirit. In the course of our sitting, we had some pleasing and some painful circumstances to excite our feelings. Tuesday, 24. I set out for New York. At Princeton I preached, and I trust a few felt the word. Passing through Kingston, I proceeded on to Mr. Jakes's, near Brunswick, making thirty-two miles. My soul is in peace, my body weak and weary. 
Wednesday, 25. Road to Elizabethtown. After dinner, I went by water to New York, and found all in peace. New York, Thursday, 26. Our conference came together in great peace and love. Our ordinary business was enlivened by the relation of experiences and by profitable observations on the work of God. Nothing would satisfy the conference and the society but my consenting to preach on the occasion of Mr. Wesley's death, which I did on Sunday, May 29. My text was 2 Timothy 3, 10, 11. I took the same subject at the old church in the morning and in the afternoon at the new church, varying but retaining the substance. Monday 30. Our conference rose, and after love feast, the preachers dispersed. We had had about thirty preachers at this conference, and not a frown, a sign of sour temper, or an unkind word was seen or heard amongst us. But I am sick, and quite outdone with constant labor. Mr. Hammett's preaching was not well received. It was supposed to be aimed at our zealous men and passionate meetings. At the new church, his preaching was still more exceptionable to those judicious persons who heard him. I expect some things will be retailed to my disadvantage. Be it so, I trust the Lord. Wednesday, June 1 I preached at New Rochelle Church. The weather was unfavorable, but we had a living meeting. Thursday, 2 We had a decent, lifeless congregation at the courthouse on the plains. In the afternoon, I preached at North Castle on Philippians 2.12. My clay is heavy, and my spirits low. Friday 3. I very sensibly feel the cold I had taken on my way to New Rochelle by riding in the rain. However, I rode to Bedford and preached in the townhouse to about 200 serious and deeply attentive hearers. Rode on to Brother H.'s and was much indisposed. Connecticut, Saturday, 4. I rode over rocks and hills, and came to Wilton, and preached to a serious, feeling, well-behaved people at Squire R.'s. In the evening I went on to Reading. Surely God will work powerfully amongst these people, and save thousands of them. We have traveled about twenty-four miles this day, over very rough roads. The weather is cold for the season. My horse is very small, and my carriage is inconvenient in such rocky, uneven, jolting ways. This country is very hilly and open, not unlike that about the peak of Derbyshire. I feel faith to believe that this visit to New England will be blessed to my own soul, and the souls of others. We are now in Connecticut, and never out of sight of a house, and sometimes we have a view of many churches and steeples, built very neatly of wood, either for use ornament, piety, policy, or interest, or it may be some of all these. I do feel as if there had been religion in this country once, and I apprehend there is a little in form and theory left. There may have been a praying ministry and people here, but I fear they are now spiritually dead, and am persuaded that family and private prayer is very little practiced. Could these people be brought to constant, fervent prayer, the Lord would come down and work wonderfully among them. I find my mind fixed on God, and the work of God. Lord's Day 5 About ten o'clock, we assembled in a barn at Reading, where we had, perhaps, three hundred serious, attentive people to hear. My subject was Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I felt freedom, and the truth came clearly to my mind. Rode in the evening twelve miles over rocks and uneven roads to Newtown. I found multitudes of people in a Presbyterian meeting-house, many of whom appeared wild in their behavior, the young laughing and playing in the galleries, and the aged below seemed to be heavy and lifeless. I was sick and weary. Nevertheless, I attempted to preach on Acts 5, 31-32, and endeavored to enlarge on, one, the humiliation of Christ, 2. His exaltation in His resurrection, ascension, glory, head of the church, a prince to give repentance and pardon to rebels. 
I felt the power of Satan, and soon ended my feeble testimony. Brother L. preached at six o'clock. I felt much weakened and wearied. My impressions relative to the people in these parts are unfavorable. Monday 6. Came to Stepney and found a few people waiting for us at Brother O's, to whom I gave an exhortation, and we had an awakening and melting time. Came on to Chestnut Hill, about twenty miles from Newtown. The people here had not had proper notice of our coming. A few, however, being informed of it, let others know, so that by the time I had exhorted and prayed, many joined them. I exhorted again about forty minutes, in as pointed a manner as I well could. After meeting, we called at E. H.'s, and obtained refreshment for man and beast. After conversing and praying with the family, we set out and reached J. H.'s in the evening, where we had a small family meeting, at which I spoke on Hosea 10.12. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Today I felt weary and heavy, and yesterday I was agitated in mind, and sorely buffeted by the enemy. But I have peace with God. Tuesday 7 Body and mind more tranquil and serene. Time was when I should have thought the prospects here were very great. The people attend in great multitudes. I find it necessary to guard against painful anxiety on the one hand, as well as against lukewarmness on the other. I judge that the spirits of men must be stirred up to expect more than in former times, and pray, preach, and converse accordingly. We came to Stratford. Good news. They have voted that the town house shall be shut. Well, where shall we preach? Some of the select men, one at least, granted access. I felt unwilling to go, as it is always my way not to push myself into any public house. We had close work on Isaiah 55, 6, 7. Some smiled, some laughed, some swore, some talked, some prayed, some wept. Had it been a house of our own, I should not have been surprised had the windows been broken. I refused to preach there any more, and it was well I did. Two of the esquires were quite displeased at our admittance. We met the class and found some gracious souls. The Methodists have a society consisting of twenty members, some of them converted, but they have no house of worship. They may now make a benefit of a calamity. Being denied the use of other houses, they will the more earnestly labor to get one of their own. The Presbyterians and the Episcopalians have each one, and both are elegant buildings. Wednesday 8 We rested at Stratford, and had meeting in Brother P.'s house. Finding that most of those who attended were serious people, I spoke on our blessed Lord's words, Matthew 11, 28-30. It was a time of comfort to the few seekers and believers present. Thursday 9. Came to New Haven, and found my appointment to preach had been published in the newspapers. Everything was quiet. We called on the sheriff. He was absent. We then put up our horses at the ball tavern, near the college yard. I was weary and unwell. I had the honor of the President S., Dr. W., and the Reverend Mr. E. to hear me, and several of the collegians, with a few scattering citizens. I talked away to them very fast, telling them some little stories, whilst the sun shone full in my face. The judges looked very grave, while I endeavored to show, one, what we must be saved from, two, what has been esteemed by the men of the world as the wisdom of preaching, three, what is meant by the foolishness of preaching. When I had done, no man spoke to me. I thought today of dear Mr. Whitefield's words to Mr. Boardman and Mr. Pilmore at their first coming over to America. Ah, said he, if ye were Calvinists, ye would take the country before ye. We visited the college chapel at the hour of prayer. I wished to go through the hole, to inspect the interior arrangements, but no one invited me. The divines were grave, and the students were attentive. They used me like a fellow Christian, in coming to hear me preach 
and like a stranger in other respects. Should Cokesbury or Baltimore ever furnish the opportunity, I, in my turn, will requite their behavior, by treating them as friends, brethren, and gentlemen. The difficulty I met with in New Haven for lodging, and for a place to hold meeting, made me feel and know the worth of Methodists more than ever. My body is fatigued and listless, my spirit tried and tempted, infirmities cleaved to me. From New Haven, through a poor country, we passed on to Northbury, where there is a large independent church. In Wallingford, the meeting house of the separatists supplied a place for our preachers. We have also used a neat Episcopal church, small indeed compared with others. I am reminded of England in traveling here. This country more resembles my own than any I have yet seen on this side the Atlantic. I preached at five o'clock in the meeting house of the separatists, a large room and small company. My subject was Second Corinthians six twenty. I alarmed the town by the excessive noise I made, and thereby enlarged my congregation. I felt more assisted than I expected. Saturday, 11. At Wallingford Farms. Here has been some stir about religion. But the people say new divinity has put out the fire. Methodists, Baptists, Separatists, etc. I felt somewhat warmed while I opened and applied, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. Some were tender, and some appeared a little alarmed. I then came to Middlefields, and lodged at the house of a niece of David Brainerd. Here we enjoy the quiet use of a meeting-house. Lord's Day 12 Very unwell, but had to preach three times. I began at ten o'clock on, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. I had the attention of the people much more than I expected. In the afternoon I enlarged, under very great weakness, on, how shall I give thee up, Ephraim? Came in haste to Middletown, where the committee favored me with the meeting-house belonging to the standing order. I felt exceedingly low in body, while I spoke to a very large, serious, and attentive congregation, and I had liberty in preaching on 1 John 3, 23. After meeting, we rode a mile out of town to get lodging. It was to the poorer classes of people that this preaching on love and charity was anciently blessed. Monday 13. Road to Haddam, where David Brainerd was born. We came through dreadful rocky ways to Captain Lee's. A congregational minister had just finished his sermon as we came in. As we did not wish to force ourselves on anyone, we went forward to Lyme, and found a free, open-hearted Baptist minister who rose from his bed and received us kindly. By this time we were weary and sleepy. I trust the Lord had a dwelling in this man's heart and house. His wife is a kind, loving soul, their children obliging, and ready to serve us cheerfully. Tuesday 14 We came over rocks, and through heat and dust, to New London. My mind has felt but little temptation to impatience until yesterday and this day. But, through grace, I do not yield thereto. It is both unreasonable and unchristian to murmur. It betters nothing. To deny ourselves and to take up our cross daily is our duty. Let us not flee from it. New London stands upon the River Thames, almost newly built since the war. This town suffered in the general burning carried on by Arnold in this quarter. The new meeting house stands on an eminence. The Episcopal Church is a pleasant, well-formed building. The new light Baptists were very kind, and some of them appeared like Methodists. My church was the courthouse. My subject, Second Peter 3, 15. I was not happy in speaking. Brother L. gave them a sermon at half-past eight o'clock. I understood there was a work of religion in this place last year. Little of it now remains. I came on to Stonington, properly so-called, a distance of ten miles, over a most dreadful road for a carriage. I would almost as soon undertake to drive over the Allegheny Mountain. From Stonington I came on to Westerly, crossing the line bridge between Connecticut and Rhode Island. 
I dropped a few words to the woman of the house where we dined, and saw very clearly that she felt them. I had some life in speaking to about one hundred people at Mr. Blank's, in Charlestown, on Revelations 3.20. One said I had fitted the people well. Another said that I had the signs of the times. End of section 12. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 13 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Rhode Island, Thursday, 16. Came to Newport. The roads were comparatively good. The ferry three miles wide. Which, however, we safely crossed in a spacious open boat, excellent in its kind. In Newport are two Presbyterian meeting houses. One new divinity, so-called, three others, regular Baptists, new lights, and Sabbatarians, one friend's meeting, and one Episcopal church. We stayed two nights at our kind friend's Brother Green, a new light Baptist. I lectured the second night from Isaiah 64, 1 through 7. There was some life amongst the people, although it was late, and the congregation like our Lord's disciples before his passion. There is also a Jew synagogue, and a Moravian chapel. I expect before many years the Methodists will also have a house for worship here. I feel the state of this people. They are settled upon their lees, and want emptying from vessel to vessel. My soul enjoys peace. Saturday, 18. We go hence to Providence, attended by our kind friend for guide. Blessed be the Lord for a refreshing rain the last night. On this journey I feel much humbled. I am unknown, and have small congregations, to which I may add a jar in sentiment. But I do not dispute. My soul is brought into close communion. I should not have felt for these people and for the preachers as I now do, had I not visited them. Perhaps I may do something for them in a future day. We came to Bristol, and should have gone farther, but Captain G. saw us, and took us to his house. At the request of a few persons, I preached in the courthouse to about a hundred people, and enforced, The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost, and found a degree of liberty. Some time ago, there was the beginning of a work here, but the few souls who began are now discouraged from meeting together. I fear religion is extinguished by confining it too much to church and Sunday service, and reading of sermons. I feel that I am not among my own people although I believe there are some who fear God, and I find reason to hope that souls have gone to glory from this town. Sunday 19 Came to Providence. I attended the ministry of Mr. M., a Baptist, in the forenoon, and Mr. S., a new light, in the afternoon. In the evening I preached with some life on Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. There are Presbyterians, Episcopalians, independents or congregationalists here. But the Baptists appear to be the leading people. I found a few gracious souls and some seeking. It has been a season of deep exercise with me while here. I have had some weighty sensations. I think the Lord will revive his work in Providence. Monday 20 I visited some serious families that truly love and fear God. The afternoon I spent very agreeably with the old prophet Mr. Snow, aged about seventy years. He was awakened by the instrumentality of Gilbert Tennant, whose memory I revere. He told me much about Mr. Whitefield, and old times, and of the ministers of old times, of himself, his awakening, and conversion to God, of his riding thirty miles to Newport, in exceeding cold weather, to bring Mr. Tennant to Providence. Having obtained more knowledge of the people, my subject was Galatians 6, 14, plain and pointed. My audience was serious and attentive. I endeavored to show, one, what it is for a man to glory in a thing. Two, what men glory in, which is not the cross of Christ. Three, what it is to glory in the cross of Christ. Four, how a person may know when he glories in the cross of Christ namely, 
by the world's being crucified to him, and he unto the world. The people here appear to be prudent, active, frugal, cultivating a spirit of good family economy, and they are kind to strangers. They have had frequent revivals of religion. I had faith to believe the Lord would shortly visit them again, and that even we shall have something to do in this town. We rested a day at Easton, and appointed meeting at five o'clock. I had good freedom on Acts 17.27, and the people felt the word. We have had a solemn, happy, and solitary retreat, and my soul entered into renewed life. Massachusetts, Thursday, 23. We rode through dust and heat to Boston. I felt much pressed in spirit, as if the door was not open. As it was court time, we were put to some difficulty in getting entertainment. It was appointed for me to preach at Murray's church, not at all pleasing to me, and that which made it worse was that I had only about twenty or thirty people to preach to in a large house. It appeared to me that those who professed friendship for us were ashamed to publish us. On Friday evening I preached again. My congregation was somewhat larger, owing perhaps to the loudness of my voice. The sinners were noisy in the streets. My subject was Revelations 3, 17, 18. I was disturbed and not at liberty, although I sought it. I have done with Boston until we can obtain a lodging, a house to preach in, and some to join us. Some things here are to be admired in the place and among the people. Their bridges are great works, and none are ashamed of labor. Of their hospitality I cannot boast. In Charleston, wicked Charleston, six years ago, a stranger, I was kindly invited to eat and drink by many, here by none. There are, I think, nine meeting houses of the establishment. Friends Meeting House, one. San Dominians, one. Universalists, one. Roman Catholics, one. Baptists, two. Episcopalians, two. The Methodists have no house, but their time may come. I preached at Slade's Tavern on my way to Lynn on, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. I was agreeably surprised to find a house raised for the Methodists. As a town, I think Lynn the perfection of beauty. It is seated on a plain, under a range of craggy hills, and open to the sea. There is a promising society, an exceedingly well-behaved congregation. These things, doubtless, made all pleasing to me. My first subject was Romans 8.33, in the afternoon Acts 4.12. Here we shall make a firm stand, and from this central point, from Lynn, shall the light of Methodism and of truth radiate through the state. Our brother Johnson is simple-hearted, and hearty in the cause. We owe our entertainment and house for worship chiefly to him. Tuesday 28 Road to Marblehead When I entered this town, my heart was more melted towards its inhabitants than to any in those parts, with the exception of Lynn. After consultation, and some altercation among themselves, the committee invited me to preach in Mr. Story's meeting-house which I did accordingly at four o'clock, on Acts 26, 17, 18. I was led to speak alarmingly, whilst I pointed out the gospel as descriptive of their misery and need of mercy. Brother Lee preached in the evening to a great number of people in and about Mr. Martin's house. Next morning, weak as I was, I could not forbear speaking to them on, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Wednesday, 29. Row to Salem. Here are five meeting-houses, two of them on the new divinity plan, that is, regeneration the first work. No prayer, repentance, or faith until this is accomplished. The other three belong to the establishment, one Episcopalian and one friend's meeting-house. I found no access to any. I lectured in the courthouse on Romans 5, 6-9. I looked upon the greater part of my congregation as judges, and I talked until they, becoming weary, began to leave me. I have done with Salem until we can get a better stand. 
I had the curiosity to visit the Calvary of the Witches, that is, those who were destroyed on the charge of witchcraft. I saw the graves of many innocent good people who were put to death, suffering persecution from those who had suffered persecution. Such and so strangely contradictory is man. I felt weakness of body and deep exercise of mind, and at times good liberty in speaking. I am now convinced that the Methodists as a body have the most religion, and am more and more confirmed in my choice. We rode to Manchester. Mr. Foster received us with great kindness. The select men granted us the privilege of the meeting-house. I lectured on Malachi 3.13 at five o'clock. Here are some feeling and understanding souls. This place has been visited for many years, and a society kept up, although the ministers did not favor the stir. Of this work, Father Lee's ministry, an aged man of that country and town, has been the principal means. For a long time he has faithfully stood his ground, praying with and exhorting the people. We were invited to lodge at a place where provision is made for the entertainment of ministers, and in the morning money was offered. I declined accepting their invitation and refused their money. Friday, July 1. Came to L's to dinner. After praying with them and speaking to each in the family, I left them to God. Thence I proceeded to tease and preached at Brown's Folly to many people. My subject, Luke 2, 10. Saturday 2. I returned home to Brother J's in Lynn. Sunday 3. My first subject was The Great Salvation. In the afternoon I spoke on Titus 2, 11, 12, and had liberty. In the evening my subject was Matthew 11, 28-30. The congregation was attentive, and my mind enjoyed sweet peace. Although, outwardly, we were uncomfortable, the meeting-house being open, and the weather very cool for the season. I feel as if God would work in these states, and give us a great harvest. My intervals of leisure have been spent in close application to my Bible, and reading Baxter's call to the unconverted. Monday 4 I took the benefit of the sea air, and began visiting. Tuesday 5 My soul is in great peace and love. Here it is a day of small things. The people have been neglected, but now the Lord has opened their eyes. Oh, what skill and patience and wisdom are needful to deal with souls. I was happy in meeting the women in class. I found but few believers, but I do believe that God will bring them all into full liberty. Wednesday 6 Found my mind stayed upon God. In the evening I had a large, attentive congregation. Thursday 7 I was engaged closely in reading. I visited and conversed freely with two families. I am informed that Lynn and Linfield afford upwards of 2,200 souls, 1791. This day, Brother Jesse Lee put a paper into my hand, proposing the election of not less than two nor more than four preachers from each conference to form a general conference in Baltimore in December 1792 to be continued annually. Saturday 9. I preached a sacramental sermon on Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Sunday 10. Preached on the Great Supper, Luke 14, a very solemn, baptizing, and sacramental season. The people chose to receive the elements sitting, as is the practice amongst Presbyterians. In the afternoon I enforced, What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? At night I spoke on, These shall go away into everlasting punishment. The Lord was among the people and I hope and trust some real good was done. Monday 11 I labor under deep exercises of soul. The sea bath I found to strengthen me. In the evening I met the men's class in Lynn, and was led to hope that a glorious work of God will be wrought here. 
several people are under awakenings at this time. My staying so long among them may be of the Lord. Tuesday 12 We had a blessed rain after nearly a month's drought. Wednesday 13 We came through Waltham, Sudbury, and Marlborough. At this last place there is a grand meeting-house, and one not less elegant in its kind for the minister. Thence we proceeded on through Northbury and Shrewsbury, to Worcester, through rain, and with pain and weariness. Mr. Chandler received us with kindness more than common, and courtesy anxious to please, calling his family together with softness of address, and in all things else being agreeable, perhaps more so than any man I have met with in America. This reception shall comfort us a little in our toil. From Worcester we journeyed on, passing through Leicester, Spencer, Brookfields, and another town. We dined at a place where the people are united and do not wish to divide the parish. Their fathers, the Puritans, divided the kingdom and the church too, and when they could not obtain liberty of conscience in England, they sought it here among wild men and beasts. At Greaves's tavern I saw a man from Vermont, who said the number of their inhabitants was ninety thousand. He invited me to send preachers among them. Friday 15 My mind has been dejected. Satan has assaulted me. I could not be fixed in prayer as I desired. We have made it one hundred and eight miles from Lynn to Springfield. I want to be with the Methodists again. Oh, how unworthy of such fellowship! Yet am I seated among the princes of thy people. At six o'clock I delivered a discourse in Mr. C.'s house on, It is time to seek the Lord, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. The people were a little moved, and one sister under deep conviction. This place is a haunt of soldiery, the armory being kept here. There appears to be little religion among the inhabitants. Connecticut, Sunday 17. Passed through Suffield to Turkey Hills, where I had a large and very criticizing congregation, to whom I preached my first discourse on John 7:17. 7, my second subject was Hebrews 6, 1. There were some feeling hearts present. The Lord will work here. On Monday I had a crowd at Proquinac, in a schoolhouse, to whom I preached on 2 Corinthians 4, 1, 2. Some were frightened, some melted, and some were offended. We came to Windsor. Mr. S. received us kindly, but did not fail to let us know how lightly he thought of us and of our principles. Here my feelings were very gloomy, and I secretly wished myself out of the way. I went to the schoolhouse and found it crowded with people. The Lord lifted me up whilst I opened and applied Galatians 3.22. I think I was given to see and feel the true state of these people. Some of them were melted, and praised God for the gospel. Tuesday 19 I came to the city of Hartford. At Mr. S.'s meeting house I was attended by three ministers. I was clear not to keep back any part of the truth, whilst I enforced Luke 7, 23. The people were mostly serious and attentive. I had an interview with Dorcas Brown, who was converted forty years ago, and in the history of whose experience there were some remarkable manifestations of the power of God, and of the interposition of his providence in answer to prayer in times of persecution and violence. Her son's case was also remarkable. He had been captured by the Indians, and was returned killed. In contradiction to this account, and the general belief, she pronounced that she should again see him in the flesh. Contrary to the expectation of all but herself, he did return, after an absence of three years and eight months. Wednesday 20 At East Hartford I felt more than usually assisted on Luke 19.10. I had an attentive, feeling congregation. On Thursday we had a gracious shower at the quarterly meeting at West Farmington, where I delivered a pointed discourse on Acts 16, 31, 32, which was blessed to some souls. Friday 22 
the Episcopal Church was open at Litchfield, where I preached with very little faith on the love of Christ. I think Morse's account of his countrymen is near the truth. Never have I seen any people who would talk so long, so correctly, and so seriously about trifles. Saturday 23 By a rocky, mountainous way, we came to Cornwall in the midst of the harvest home. We had about 150 hearers. I had openings of mind whilst I spoke on 1 Peter 3, 15. Sunday 24 Came to Canaan after preaching at a new meeting house. Here naught would satisfy but my going to the ancient Presbyterian church. I reluctantly complied and made a feeble attempt on Luke eleven thirteen. I offended and was offended. The people seemed uneasy, and wished to be gone. This is the first, and I expect will be the last time I shall speak in that house, if not in that place. Twenty-five years ago, the people in this place had religion. At present, it is to be feared, there is little or none. How it is, I know not. But at such places I feel dreadfully, as if such people were the worst of all under the sun, and at the greatest distance from God. Wednesday, 27. Although under considerable affliction of body and mind, I rode over rough ways to New Britain, where, in general, the people appeared unfeeling. Nevertheless, I found a few among them who felt the need of Christ. I was led to exhort them, and to pray with them. I am persuaded some are not far from the kingdom of God. New York, Thursday, 28. I felt some freedom at teas while speaking on 2 Timothy 3, 16. The length of the ride and the languor of my bodily powers had not enfeebled my mind. We found some gracious souls in the society. Friday 29 Came to Albany. My mind felt impressed with the value of the souls in this place. By the curves I have made in my course from Hartford to this place, I suppose I have not traveled less than 150 miles. Perpetual motion is no small trial to my body and mind, but I must cast my care upon the Lord. I am led to think the Eastern Church will find this saying hold true in the Methodists, namely, I will provoke you to jealousy by a people that were no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. They have trodden upon the Quakers, the Episcopalians, the Baptists. See now if the Methodists do not work their way. The people will not pay large money for religion if they can get it cheaper. I preached to about three hundred people in a barn at Cayman's Patent, the new stone church not being ready. Our society is promising in this place. Tuesday, August 2. Came to Hudson. I felt disagreeable sensations, a chill, hoarseness, headache, and fever. Wednesday 3 The day was unusually warm, and I was sick and felt like Jonah. I was ready to faint in my carriage. At last, through mercy, I arrived safe at kind Sister L's. I went to bed, took some chicken broth, and after a comfortable sleep felt revived. No more rest. I took the road again, and arrived at Rhinebeck by noon. My soul is in peace. I want more prayer, patience, life, and love. I walk daily, hourly, and sometimes minutely with God. Saturday 6 I had a few serious people at the Mountain Meeting House. I lodged at C's, who was formerly a shaking Quaker. Sunday 7. We received the sacrament, and then went to a small grove, where we had a green carpet of nature spreading underneath, and an umbrella of variegated leaves above us. I preached on Zechariah 12.10, to about a thousand or twelve hundred people, as it was judged. I felt solemn and recollected, and was assisted in speaking. I had some faith to believe it would be the beginning of days, and of a revival of religion. Connecticut. 
preached at Salisbury on Acts 5, 31-32. My mind is in peace. I came to Sharon, time enough to preach at three o'clock. The women crowded the house, whilst the men stood at the door, with patient attention, in the rain, which indeed many seemed scarcely to perceive. I spoke with life and freedom on Ephesians 2, 8-10. through 10. Here are some praying souls. I read, much to my comfort, Corbett's memoirs of the secrets of his heart, brought to public view after his death. End of section 13. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 14 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. New York, Friday, 12. I preached at B's on Luke 19.10 to a number of simple-hearted people. Rode to Brother J's to attend quarterly meeting. I felt weak and unwell, yet happy in God. My soul enters into deeper union with God, and into a sweet resignation and confidence in Him for His work and church. I judge that my journey to Lynn, and my rides through the country thereabouts, have made a distance of little less than five hundred miles, and thence to Albany nearly the same, and from Albany to New York not much less, with occasionally very rough roads for a carriage. Well, it is all for God, and Christ, and souls. I neither covet nor receive any man's silver or gold. Food, raiment, and a little rest is all I want. Saturday and Sunday, 1340 We began our meeting in a barn at Jackson's. I had freedom whilst enlarging on Joshua 24, 15. There was a large collection of people from far to our sacrament and love feast. Among these there was life. But the people about this place are dead. Dead. There is a curse somewhere. I doubt if one soul has been converted to God since I was here two years ago. Monday 15 I feel great power to trust God with His church and work, and am resolved on more frequent access to the throne of grace, not continuing so long as heretofore. I feel greater sweetness in so doing, and it tends more to an hourly and momently walk with God. Tuesday 16 This is a day of rest from public labor. I have uncommon trials and great liberty of spirit. My addresses to a throne of grace are frequent today. Wednesday 17 Felt a good degree of liberty at B's on Colossians 1.28. Christ formed in you the hope of glory, perfect in Christ Jesus. Ours is not the perfection of God, of Christ, of angels. Such perfection must be ours as excludes evil tempers from the heart, and yet supposes us liable to ignorance and error, while in tenements of clay. As I came along to Pease, I was ready to complain of the roughness of the roads, but I was suddenly stopped when I beheld a poor Irish woman with a heavy child on her shoulders, and without covering for head or feet. She said she was from Canada, and thus far had begged her way. Pity for her, at once, stilled all murmur of complaint for myself. On Thursday we had a gracious season at Stony Street, amongst sinners, seekers, and believers, while I applied Galatians 6.10. Saturday 20. Quarterly meeting at North Castle. It began well. I was happy in mind, although unwell, whilst I spoke to many who attended on 1 Samuel 7, 3. Sunday 21. Our congregation became unwieldy and restless. My subject, Luke 23, 3, was new, to me at least. Although my mind enjoyed some degree of peace, my frame was agitated, and my spirits hurried. I received the olive branch from Virginia. All is peace. It was obtained by a kind letter from me to O'Kelly. Saturday, 27. Quarterly meeting in Newtown. I felt freedom of mind whilst treating on Deuteronomy 5, 26. 
Sunday 28. We had a good sacramental time and a melting love feast. There are four houses of worship in this place, but I fear the Church of Christ is very small. I have lately been led into great depths of God, and sight of my danger and constant need of prayer. Monday 29. Came to New York. The weather is warm, and here is an awful season of affliction. I preached at the new church on Hebrews 5.12. We had an acceptable time and some gracious movings. Wednesday 31. We had a serious, heart-affecting time. Many were ready to break out in praises to God. I respect the kindness of the dear people here, and leave New York in faith that the Lord will return to visit them. Thursday, September 1. I visited my old friends on Staten Island. Many whom I have preached to and prayed for still keep at a distance. Friday 2. I preached in our new chapel to a large congregation on Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. Jeremiah 51, 50. It was a gracious season. After preaching, the society met, and several declared the Lord's dealings with their souls. New Jersey, Monday, 5. I rode through much rain to Monmouth, New Jersey, where I preached to a considerable congregation on The just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. There is some stir among the people. At Long Branch, within eighteen months, as I am informed, nearly fifty souls have professed conversion. Tuesday 6 I found the Lord had not left himself without witnesses at Kettle Creek. Wednesday 7 At Pease Church I learned some were offended. Blessed be God, my soul was kept in great peace. Friday 9 at Little Egg Harbor, I endeavored to speak very pointedly on Acts 13, 46. My spirit was much moved, and I think, as a preacher and visitor, I am thus far free from the blood of saints and sinners. Saturday 10. Rode a dreary mosquito path, in great weakness, to Batstow Works. Sunday 11. Preached on Luke 19, 10. I advise the people to build a house for the benefit of those men so busily employed day and night, Sabbaths not accepted, in the manufacture of iron, rude and rough, and strangely ignorant of God. Thursday 15 Having exerted myself more than my strength would well bear last evening, I feel faint, yet pursuing. I gave an exhortation to a house full of people. The evening was spent with S.H., Gracious souls, mother and children. Friday 16. Preached at seas. Here are some under awakenings, and the prospect is pleasing. Many attended the word on the Lord's Day. Several of our sisters and of our brethren on this day, and on Monday at Bethel, after sacrament, testified to the goodness of God. Pennsylvania, Tuesday 20. Wrote to Philadelphia. Here, as usual, I was closely employed in writing. I had several meetings and some awful seasons that will be remembered in eternity. This city abounds with inhabitants. It is the London of America. Wednesday 28. We rode to Strasbourg, 30 miles, where I preached at night in a respectable tavern on Acts 3, 19. I was very plain and had some energy in preaching, although unwell in body. I have faith to believe we shall have a house of worship, and that the Lord will have a people in this place. Thence to M. Bees. Hitherto the Lord hath been our helper in spite of sin and Satan. We had a good time whilst I spoke on Zechariah 12.10. After sacrament, several bore their testimony for the Lord. My soul is much humbled and brought into close communion with God. 
Yea, I rejoiced greatly to find so much religion among the people. We went hence to Brother M's, where, for two days, we had a gracious season. I preached on Acts 2, 37-38. I had openings, and was made to feel after the souls of the people. How will Satan take advantage to raise prejudice in the minds of many? At first the cry was, They are enemies to the country. That tale worn out, it is said, They will pull down the churches. They hold erroneous doctrines. I, we will labor to raise a true spiritual church. And if in doing this we injure wolves in sheep's clothing, let unfaithful ministers look to it. We shall deliver our own souls. Delaware Came to Wilmington. Alas, for poor Wilmington! When will this people open their eyes? We rode in haste thirty miles to Dees, but the people had met three hours before our arrival, and Brother E. had preached to them. I preached at the crossroads, but the minds of the people were so occupied by the approaching election that I fear there was little room for things of more importance. Finding there were no more appointments published for me, I rode through the dust thirty-two miles to Judge White's. O oh Lord, help me to watch and pray. I am afraid of losing the sweetness I feel. For months past I have felt as if in the possession of perfect love, not a moment's desire of anything but God. I have an awful view of the Reformed churches, and am determined to speak to the very hearts of the people. After attending a quarterly meeting at B's Chapel, I came to W's. We had a large congregation. After public service, we had a meeting for the local preachers, leaders, and stewards. Next morning, we had love feast for the colored brethren at sunrise, and at nine o'clock for the whites. We find new members are added every year, many living experiences, and miracles of grace in the society. Friday, October 14. Came to Brother L's. Hail, happy souls! Three out of four in this family love God. Saturday, 15. Came to Downing's Chapel, had a blessed love feast. Most of those who spoke professed sanctification. My soul was filled with God. I did what I could to put those in band who had witnessed perfect love in love feast. There is a great work of God in the lower counties of Virginia. But the antinomian doctrines, so liberally set forth by some, greatly hinder. We have rough weather. Thursday 20. The storm continued. It was thought no one could go out. We, nevertheless, ventured through heavy rains and came to Pease. At night we reached Dees, making a journey of nearly forty miles. We were wet and uncomfortable. But the Lord preserves our goings out and our comings in. Maryland, Friday, 21. Preached at Brother L's on Hebrews 8, 10-12. I think the Lord will work in this neighborhood, and take away the covering and the veil that are spread upon the minds of the people. Temptations have oppressed my soul, and disease afflicted my body. It is the Lord's power alone that can help me. I fear I am not so constant in prayer as I should be. I made an effort to establish a female school under Sister G and Sister B and endeavored to impress the necessity and expediency of band meeting on men and women, both married and single. Tuesday 25 At M's there was a living stir among some who came to the quarterly meeting from a distance. My soul is bowed down for this neighborhood. Wednesday, November 2 We crossed Chop Tank River and came to Talbot quarterly meeting. My subject on the first day was, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. We had a close love feast and some living souls. Sunday and Monday, 6-7 Attended quarterly meeting at Greensburg, commonly called Chop Tank Bridge. We had a strict and living love feast and powerful testimonies. Wednesday, 16 came to Havre de Grace, 
and thence hurried to Cokesbury, where I found all in peace. Thursday, 17. Came to the old meeting-house at Bush, and preached on Enoch Walked with God. The meeting-house at Bush is the second house built for the Methodists in the state. It is a poor building, remaining unfinished to this day, and likely so to continue. Friday, 18. We had a powerful melting time at Deer Creek. My subject was Jeremiah 14, 8 through 10. Sunday, 27. I preached at Baltimore a searching discourse on Zephaniah 1, 12. In the afternoon, I preached at the point to some unfeeling souls, and in the evening performed the funeral solemnity of my dear old friend, Sister Tribulate on Acts 16, 13 through 15. I was uncommonly drawn out this day, and truly labored in body and spirit. Monday, December 5. I went from house to house through the snow and cold, begging money for the support of the poor orphans at Cokesbury. Rode to Annapolis and preached at night. Virginia, Wednesday, December 7. A day to be remembered. We stopped once in forty-three miles. When we reached Oxen Hill Ferry, opposite to Alexandria, I was nearly frozen, being hardly able to walk or talk. We crossed the Potomac in an open boat, on whose icy bottom the horses with difficulty kept their feet, and still worse it would have been had I not thoughtfully called for some straw to strew beneath them. We had five of them on board, and the waves were high. Friday 9. Rode forty miles to Mrs. W.'s. I suffered not a little with cold. I thank God my life is spared. Sunday 11. I could not find the way to the hearts of an unfeeling people at the Widow Bombry's. Thence we went in haste to Port Royal. The inhabitants, seeing us, ran together, to whom I spoke on Acts 2.27. The people were respectful and attentive. Monday 12. Rode through a storm of snow to Brother A's. My mind enjoys peace, and although by constant traveling I am kept from the privilege of being so frequently in private prayer, yet I am preserved from anger and murmuring. My soul is wholly given up to God. I am now about entering upon the business of the conferences for the present year. All is peace. Notwithstanding I have been so highly favored, my sufferings may be lessened by an earlier move to the south. I will therefore remember to be on the south side of the Potomac by the middle of November, if circumstances allow. Wednesday 14. Came to Brother Dickinson's, Carolyn County, and waited for the preachers composing the conference in the Central District of Virginia. In the evening the brethren came together. We opened conference, and went through a great part of our minute work. All was peace and love. We had searching work in speaking experiences, and in examining the young men who offered as candidates for the ministry. Friday 16. After fasting and prayer, our conference rose. My subject at the new chapel was First Chronicles 29, 15 through 17. Saturday I rode to Hanover Town. Sunday 18. I preached at Hanover on 1 Corinthians 2.17. I rode in the evening to Brother C's. My mind was in peace. I journeyed on through Richmond, Manchester, and Petersburg, accompanied by Brothers E and K. On Friday 23rd, arriving at Lane's Chapel, where our conference began and ended in great peace. Sunday 25. I preached on John 4:14, 4, and had a comfortable season. Many spoke of the dealings of God with their souls. The examination among the preachers relative to character and experience was very close. All was meekness and love. Tuesday 27. We had a long cold ride to our kind brother Blunts. Wednesday 28. I preached on 1 Peter 4, 1 through 4. Thursday 29. 
I rode twenty-five miles, through very cold weather, without taking any refreshment, to Sister P's. On our way we had a meeting at Brother C's, where many attended, to whom I spoke with freedom on Second Timothy 2, 19-21. through 21. Here some wicked young men behaved quite out of character. Sunday, January 1, 1792 On this beginning of the new year, I preached and had liberty on Isaiah 65, 1-2. In the evening I once more cried to the people of Norfolk, Repent and be converted. My audience was attentive and tender. My body was greatly fatigued, my soul much comforted in the Lord. Religion revives here. The seed which has been sowing for twenty years begins to spring up. Norfolk flourishes. Portsmouth declines, and is already low. Thursday 5 Row to W.B.'s. There were but few people. On our way thither, Brother M. would stop to feed. I believe the Lord sent me to speak a word to a broken-hearted, forsaken, distressed woman. My soul enjoys peace, but excessive labor and bodily suffering from the cold prevent that deep communion with God I wish for. I do little except reading a few chapters in my Hebrew Bible. North Carolina, Sunday 8 I preached at the Widow Hardy's to a large congregation. I felt freedom in speaking, and the souls of the people appeared tender. The prospect of our journey ahead seemed gloomy. However, we came down in the snow and got on board a leaky flat, which we were obliged to bail as we went. The ferry was five miles wide, our horses restless, the river Roanoke rough, and the weather very cold. But the Lord brought us safe to shore, twelve miles from our destined place. We were strangers to the road, and had not an hour's sun. Nevertheless, kind providence brought us through the dark and cold to Brother Ward's about eight o'clock. Here I sold my carriage and took horse again. Thursday 19 I rode with no small difficulty to Green Hills, about two hundred miles, the roads being covered with snow and ice. Our conference began and ended in great peace and harmony. We had thirty-one preachers stationed at the different houses in the neighborhood. I find we have had a good work in the eastern district of North Carolina in the past year. For some time back I have traveled with much difficulty, having few hearers, much weakness of body, and uncomfortable weather. Monday 23. Our conference rose. I rode twenty miles through severe cold to Brother B's. Tuesday 24. Brother Morrell, my fellow traveler, was unwell. We had our horses roughed, which detained us an hour or two after the appointed time. I reached Brother T's, and said a little from Philippians 2, 14 through 16. But the people could not hear. Their souls and their bodies were cold. Finding it was twenty-two miles to my next appointment, I set off without refreshment, intending to reach Brother D's near Hillsborough. On the way, however, hearing of Brother S, a local preacher, we called on him, and he gave us freely of such things as he had. Thursday 26 I was led out with freedom on the last two verses of Hebrews 12 at M's. I find outward difficulties in my progress. The roads are covered with ice and snow, and the severity of the weather prevents my having an opportunity, when I wish, of spending time in private exercises. But, blessed be God, I am resigned, and am kept from sin, and my soul is stayed upon God. Friday 27 after riding thirty miles through ice and snow to Rainey's, I found many people waiting for me, and I began, without any refreshment, to speak on, This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1. I endeavored to point out the object of this faith. 2. Its subjects. 3. Its nature. And 4. Its victory. In our route through North Carolina, we passed through Bertie, Gates, Tyrell, Tarboro, Franklin, Wake, Chatham, 
Orange, Guilford, and Randolph counties. We have traveled nearly 800 miles since the 7th of December last passed. Seldom have I been tempted to a murmuring thought. It is now the 29th of January. I want nothing but more mental and private prayer. Tuesday 31 Yesterday and today we have ridden about 60 miles, a great deal of the way through heavy hail and rain. I gave an exhortation at seas on seeking the kingdom of God. Here we had all things richly to supply our wants, and what was still better, we found the Lord had souls in this family. South Carolina, February 1 I preached to a considerable congregation at M.D.'s on Acts 13.38. Saturday and Sunday, 4.5 I attended a quarterly meeting. Monday 6, at Flowers Church. For some time past, I have enjoyed much of God, though suffering under indisposition of body, and frequently in a crowd. I feel nothing but peace in my soul, and find power to trust Jehovah with his own cause. Tuesday 7, we reached Sister Ports. I find there is a great commotion among the people, excited by the conduct of W. Hammett, who has divided the society in Charleston and taken to himself some chaff and some wheat. This is not all. They say our house will go, too. Wednesday 8 We set off after six o'clock in the morning. Our horses being overfed, we did not push them, so that we did not reach Georgetown until near six in the evening. After my trials and hard riding, my cordial is to preach at night. Except Georgetown and Charleston, there are few places where I have not a good congregation when weather permits. I can praise God. My soul is happy in Him. By His grace I am kept from sin, and I still hope this dark cloud that lowers over us will yet break with blessings on our heads. Thursday 9 We rested, and next day came to Wapata and found that Brother S.C. had moved. We then went to his brother's, whose wife was buried that day. We were fatigued and cold, and rejoiced to find we were not compelled to take up our lodgings under a pine tree. End of section 14. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 15 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan Saturday, 11 Arrived in Charleston. I received a full and true account of Mr. Hammett's proceedings. Brothers E and P have done all things well. Mr. Hammett had three grand objections to us. One, the American preachers and people insulted him. Two, his name was not printed in our minutes. Three, the nota bene cautioning minute was directed against him. He has gone to the new market to preach, and has drawn about twenty white members after him. We are considered by him as seceders from Methodism, because we do not wear gowns and powder, and because we did not pay sufficient respect to Mr. Wesley. Sabbath 12 My subject was Isaiah 53:11. Brother H. preached in the afternoon. Tuesday 14. Our conference began. I preached at night on Luke 24, 17, and endeavored to show the low estate of the interest of Christ at that time. In our conference, we were unusually close in examination of characters, doctrines, and experience. We had great peace and some power amongst us, and received the good news of eighty souls being converted in Philadelphia, and of a revival in Connecticut. I preached a sermon to the preachers on Endure Hardness as a Good Soldier of Jesus Christ. Saturday, 18. I received an abusive anonymous letter, I believe from Mr. S., on several subjects. My spirits were low. I came from my knees to receive the letter, and having read it, I returned whence I came. I judged it prudent and expedient, 
and I think I was urged thereto by conscience to tell the people of some things relating to myself. I related to them the manner of my coming to America, how I continued during the war, the arrival of Dr. Koch, and the forming of the American Methodists into a church, and finally, why I did not commit the charge of the society in Charleston to Mr. Hammett, who was unknown, a foreigner, and did not acknowledge the authority of, nor join in connection with, the American Conference. Sunday 19 I preached on Who is on the Lord's Side. Mr. M. S. sent in his resignation. For certain reasons we were led to pass over his character, but we were wrong. It might have been better to subject it to scrutiny, although none grieved at his going from us. Monday 20. I came out of the fire. Rode to Parker's Ferry. Tuesday 21. Came to Mr. Lambright's, and next day had a heavy ride to Makesers, and missed my congregation after all, and so I did at Hudson's in Georgia. However, I spoke a few words to a few people, and it was felt. Friday, 24. We had fifty miles to ride, but had the advantage of good roads. Stopped at F's, and then came on to Brother M's. He and his father have kindly entertained us as the servants of the Lord. Saturday, 25. I had an attentive and feeling people at Providence, where I saw C., and learned that poor Henry, the Jew, mentioned March 9, 1791, was dead, and died wretched in body and mind, a few months after my departure. Let preachers or people catch me in Waynesboro until things are altered and bettered. Since last Monday, I have ridden 180 miles, and was obliged to ride on, though late, to prevent man and beast being on the road on the Sabbath day. My mind was powerfully struck with a sense of the great duty of preaching in all companies, of always speaking boldly and freely for God as if in the pulpit. Georgia, Sabbath morning, 26. I made frequent visits to the throne of grace, and feel my soul comforted in God's word. Instead of thy fathers, thou shalt have sons, whom thou shalt make princes in all the land. I feel solemn. The burden of the work lies on me. The preachers have left and are leaving the field. Monday, 27. We rode thirty miles to White Oak Meeting House. A painful journey. The weather was cold and the house open. The people, however, were attentive. It is not pleasing to the flesh to take only a little tea at seven o'clock in the morning and then go until six at night before we have a table spread. And ah, how few Christian houses. I had my trials in the evening. Tuesday, 28. We rode through the snow to Little River, and a few people met us at S's. I preached on Second Timothy 4, 2 through 4. Without staying to eat, we rode on to Washington, making thirty miles this day also. We collected our conference, and had great searching and sifting and were under the necessity of suspending one. We were very close in examining characters and principles. Each preacher spoke his experience, and made his observations relative to the work of God since last conference. Brother Hull accompanies me, and H. Herbert repairs to Alexandria, in Virginia. I hope in future there will be harmony among the brethren. If souls are converted to God, it answers no valuable purpose thereafter to disciple them to ourselves. I preached on the marriage supper, and took occasion to show how some are kept from, and others lose, the grace of God by the unlawful use of lawful things. Saturday, March 3 Rode to Fishing Creek, and had an uncomfortable time on the Sabbath at Bibb's Crossroads. South Carolina Monday, 5. I left Georgia and lodged near Whitehall in South Carolina. Tuesday, 6. Rode 50 miles to Brother Finch's. Here the brethren gave me a meeting on Wednesday. The congregation was small and the people unengaged. 
rode that evening to Odell's, and the next day to Waters. Sunday, 11. Preached at Smith's on Romans 5, 1 through 3, and kept the holy, solemn Sabbath as a day of rest for man and beast. North Carolina, Monday, 12. Rode 40 miles to Major Moore's, cold and weary. I have read two volumes of Gordon's American Revolution, containing about 1,000 pages. We came to the Widow M's, here we heard that fifty poor wandering sinners had been brought back to God in this wild place, and we rejoiced at the glad tidings. Friday 16 I was very much chilled in riding twenty-five miles over the mountains to Wiltshire's. At three o'clock I preached on Hebrews 3, 12 through 14. I was very unwell and in much pain. There was a poor man in the house who was wild enough to swim the river on a mare with another man behind him. What a mercy that he was not drowned. Saturday, 17. I felt death in some measure at this place. Brother Hull preached and I exhorted. Sunday, 18. We had a close love feast and a few testimonies of the power and love of Christ. There was some little melting also amongst the people, but it is hard to civilize, methodize, and spiritualize. Sin, Satan, flesh, and hell are against us. We have rested two days besides Sabbaths and ridden 250 miles in about two weeks. Our entertainment is generally mean. Monday 19. Our horses' backs being bruised, we had our difficulties in getting to Rehoboth. We were well nigh cast away in going to the Widow W's. It was very dark, and we were bewildered in the woods. My saddle turned, and I slipped from my horse, but received no harm. I had to walk nearly half a mile through mud and water to reach the house. Tuesday 20. I came to Gordon's on the Yadkin. It is seven years since I was here. Dead. Dead. The world, the devil, antinomianism in doctrine and practice. I was led out in preaching on Deuteronomy 33, 29. Wednesday 21. We started for Holstein. After riding about fifteen miles, we stopped to feed, and a woman directed us along the new way over the Elkspur. We found ourselves in a wilderness. The weather was very cold, and the night coming on, we were at a loss what to do. Whilst we were wishfully looking about us, to our great satisfaction we discovered a house. It was clean and comfortable, and we were well entertained. Virginia, Thursday, 22. We made an early start for Friend Osborne's on New River, fifteen miles distant. Here we were generously entertained. After talking and praying together, we were guided across the river, for which I was thankful. Arriving at Fox Creek, we crossed it eleven times, and tarried that night with C., a nominal member of the Society of Friends, who used us very well. Friday, 23. Rode twelve miles to S.'s. After dinner, exhortation, and prayer, we came down the South Fork and crossed the Middle Fork of Holstein River. Saturday, 24. Came to the Salt Works, and on Sunday preached on, Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Monday, 26. I had enlargement in preaching to an attentive congregation at Abingdon Courthouse. Tuesday, 27 preached at Owens on This People Have I Formed for Myself. Thursday 29 We had many people to hear at Charles Baker's, to whom I preached with some life. We took half a day to have the Smith's work done in fitting our horses for the journey through the wilderness. Tennessee Rode 24 miles to Mr. Wise on the main Holstein and the next day 18 miles to Hawkins Courthouse, and thence to Crabs. We have confused accounts of Indians. 
our guard rested on the Sabbath day within four miles of the wilderness. Saturday 31 I heard a company had arrived from Kentucky at Crabs. This man's son and a Mr. Henderson have been killed by the Indians since I was here last. Sunday, April 1 I preached to all the people I could collect. Monday 2 We entered the wilderness and reached Robinson Station. Two of the company were on foot, carrying their packs, and women there are with their children. These encumbrances make us move slowly and heavily. Kentucky, Tuesday 3 We reached Richland Creek and were preserved from harm. About two o'clock it began to rain and continued most of the day. After crossing the Laurel River, which we were compelled to swim, we came to Rock Castle Station, where we found such a set of sinners as made it next to hell itself. Our corn here cost us a dollar per bushel. Wednesday 4 This morning we again swam the river, and also the west fork thereof. My little horse was ready to fail in the course of the day. I was steeped in the water up to the waist. About seven o'clock, with hard pushing, we reached the crab orchard. How much I have suffered in this journey is only known to God and myself. What added much to its disagreeableness is the extreme filthiness of the houses. I was seized with a severe flux, which followed me eight days. For some of the time I kept up, but at last found myself under the necessity of taking to my bed. Tuesday 10 I endured as severe pain as perhaps I ever felt. I made use of small portions of rhubarb, and also obtained some good claret, of which I drank a bottle in three days, and was almost well, so that on Sunday following I preached a sermon an hour long. In the course of my affliction I have felt myself very low. I have had serious views of eternity, and was free from the fear of death. I stopped and lodged during my illness with Mr. Willis Green, who showed me all possible attention and kindness. I wrote and sent to Mr. Rice, a Presbyterian minister, a commendation of his speech, delivered in a convention in Kentucky, on the natural rights of mankind. I gave him an exhortation to call on the Methodists on his way to Philadelphia, and, if convenient, to preach in our houses. Tuesday, 11. I wrote an address on behalf of Bethel School. The weather was wet and stopped us until Friday. Friday 20. Rode to Clark Station, and on Saturday preached on David's charge to Solomon. Sunday 22. I preached a long and perhaps a terrible sermon, some may think, on Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Monday 23. I wrote to Bethel. I found it necessary to change the plan of the house, to make it more comfortable to the scholars in cold weather. I am too much in company, and hear so much about Indians, convention, treaty, killing, and scalping, that my attention is drawn more to these things than I could wish. I found it good to get alone in the woods and converse with God. Wednesday 25 was a rainy, damp day. However, we rode to meet the conference, where I was closely employed with the traveling and local preachers, with the leaders and stewards. I met the married men and women apart, and we had great consolation in the Lord. Vast crowds of people attended public worship. The spirit of matrimony is very prevalent here. In one circuit, both preachers are settled. The land is good, the country new, and indeed all possible facilities to the comfortable maintenance of a family are offered to an industrious, prudent pair. Monday 30 Came to Ells. An alarm was spreading of a depredation committed by the Indians on the east and west frontiers of the settlement. In the former, report says one man was killed. In the latter, many men, with women and children. Everything is in motion. 
there having been so many about me at conference, my rest was much broken. I hoped now to repair it, and get refreshed before I set out to return through the wilderness. But the continual arrival of people until midnight, the barking of dogs, and other annoyances, prevented. Next night we reached the crab orchard, where thirty or forty people were compelled to crowd into one mean house. We could get no more rest here than we did in the wilderness. We came the old way by Skaggs Creek and Rock Castle, supposing it to be safer, as it was a road less frequented, and therefore less liable to be waylaid by the savages. My body by this time is well tried. I had a violent fever and pain in the head, such as I had not lately felt. I stretched myself on the cold ground, and borrowing clothes to keep me warm, by the mercy of God I slept four or five hours. Next morning we set off early, and passed beyond Richland Creek. Here we were in danger, if anywhere. I could have slept, but was afraid. Seeing the drowsiness of the company, I walked the encampment, and watched the sentries the whole night. Early next morning we made our way to Robinson Station. We had the best company I ever met with, thirty-six good travelers, and a few warriors. But we had a pack-horse, some old men, and two tired horses. These were not the best part. Virginia, Saturday, May 5 Through infinite mercy we came safe to crabs. Rest, poor house of clay, from such exertions. Return, O my soul, to thy rest. Monday 7 I came to Young's, a comfortable quiet house, within six miles of Radcliffe's, whose wife and children were murdered by the Indians. Here I slept comfortably. Tuesday 8 We came to Brother Baker's, where we rested two days, and had our horses shod. Friday 11 Rode to Half Acres, about fifty miles, and came in about eleven o'clock. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We were engaged in the business of conference at Holstein. I had a meeting with the men, a lively one with the women, most of whose hearts the Lord touched. Tuesday, fifteen. We came to Russell's old place, at Seven Mile Ford and next day set out for Greenbrier and reached seas. My spirits were too lively and disposed to gaiety, which indulged perhaps too far, made me feel mean before the Lord. Thursday 17 Rode to Hogs, and next day to Ems, forty miles each day. The roads were better than I expected. Saturday 19 Rode twenty miles. My weary body feels the want of rest, but my heart rejoiced to meet with the brethren who were waiting for me. I am more than ever convinced of the need and propriety of annual conferences, and of greater changes among the preachers. I am sensible the western parts have suffered by my absence. I lament this, and deplore my loss of strict communion with God, occasioned by the necessity I am under of constant riding, change of place, company, and sometimes disagreeable company, loss of sleep, and the difficulties of clambering over rocks and mountains, and journeying at the rate of seven or eight hundred miles per month, and sometimes forty or fifty miles a day. These have been a part of my labors, and make no small share of my hindrances. I crossed the Canaway at Paris's ferry. Here I conversed with a man who informed me a brother preacher had called there, and, as he said, was peevish. The dear man was just at death's door, and though his exercises and bodily infirmities may have pressed him sore, and excited expressions of discontent, he was, nevertheless, a meek and holy servant of God. My informant also mentioned another, who had been a member, and who would swear horribly and drink to excess. It is proper, I notice, that I did not receive these accounts from a professor of religion. I thought within myself, see how we are watched. Ah, we little think oftentimes how narrowly our conduct, our tempers, are observed by the world. 
and poor sinners still less imagine how strictly we watch them, and how well this habit of observation and the intimate knowledge we gain of our own hearts makes us competent judges of their cases, and enables us so justly and so powerfully to condemn their wickedness. Sunday 20 I preached at Rehoboth on Isaiah 55, 12. There was no great move. Brothers H and C both spoke after me. Weary world, when will it end? My mind and body feel dull and heavy, but still my soul drinks deeper into God. We rode about 160 miles from the Rich Valley to Greenbrier Conference. Talking too much and praying too little caused me to feel barrenness of soul. We had a hope that not less than ten souls were converted during the conference. At preaching, I myself, having a violent headache, retired. The Lord was with them at the sacrament. After which, the doors being opened, many came in, and the meeting continued until nearly sunset. We had a most solemn ordination on Thursday morning. Afterward, we rode through Greenbrier by the town on to Brother W.'s, a distance of thirty-six miles. My headache still continuing, Brother Hope Hull preached, and I retired to rest. Friday, 26. We rode twenty-six miles to the Little Levels. Oh, what a solitary country is this! We have now one hundred and twenty miles before us, fifty of which is a wilderness. There is a guard at two houses on our route, but I do not fear. Nature is spent with labor. I would not live always. Hail happy death. Nothing but holiness, perfect love, and then glory for me. Saturday 26 My body is much wearied, my bowels being much disordered. The water, the milk, and the bread are like physic to me. We now thought it necessary to be moving. It was dreary work as we rode along the dreary path to Dee's. One of my companions, as well as myself, was unwell. From Dee's we had still forty miles to go, over hills and mountains. This, I think, equaled, if not exceeded, any road I had ever traveled. We at length reached Tiger's Valley. We stopped at Captain S.'s, where there were several families crowded together, for fear of the Indians. The upper end of the valley has been depopulated. One family has been destroyed since I was last here. The captain's wife was decent, kind, and sensible. Thence we went on to W's, where I got some fowl soup. Thence a few miles to blank, where the woman of the house was kind and attentive. But a still, a mill, a store, cause much company, and some not of the most agreeable kind. Tuesday 29 we hasted to O's in the cove, where we met with a most kind and affectionate reception. But oh, the flies for the horses, and the gnats for the men! And no food, nor even good water to be had. I slept well, although forced ever and anon to stir a little. Wednesday 30 We had a dreary path over desperate hills for fifty miles. No food for man or beast which caused both to begin to fail very sensibly. My bowels continued to be disordered, and had I not procured a little wine, I suppose I should have failed altogether. Pennsylvania, Thursday, 31. Both men and horses traveled sore and wearily to Uniontown. Oh, how good are clean houses, plentiful tables, and populous villages, when compared with the rough world we came through. Here I turned out our poor horses to pasture and to rest, after riding them nearly three hundred miles in eight days. End of section 15. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 16 of Journal of Rev. Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Friday, June 1. Wrote letters to send over the mountains. Saturday, 2. I began to feel lame, 
and had a severe touch of the rheumatism, accompanied with a high fever, which occasioned great pain to me while sitting in conference. I found it necessary to remove, by exchange, six of the preachers from this to the eastern district. Sunday 10 Having been too unwell to attend preaching through the week, I now ventured in public. A great crowd of people attended, and there was some melting and moving among them. I feel the death of this district. I see what is wanting here, discipline and the preaching a present and full salvation, and the enforcement of the doctrine of sanctification. I have been variously tried, and was constrained to be cheerful. We have founded a seminary of learning called Union School. Brother C. Conway is manager, who also has charge of the district. This establishment is designed for instruction in grammar, languages, and the sciences. I have had some awful thoughts lest my lameness should grow upon me, and render me useless. I sometimes have fears that I am too slack in speaking in public, at conferences. I also feel the want of time and places to pursue my practice of solitary prayer, being frequently obliged to ride all the day and late at night, that I may in time reach the appointed places to preach. Tuesday 12 We ascended Laurel Hill, and after forty miles riding reached M's, quite weary. Came to I C's and found the Lord was still in this house. I preached and felt a melting heart, and there was some move in the congregation. I find myself recruited in body and mind, and I feel as if God would work once more amongst this people. I was informed that Mr. Hammett had sent abroad circular letters, and had been railing against the presiding eldership, etc. I am not surprised that he should find fault with the office. Its duties he was a man not likely to fulfill. Yet had it not been for the power attached to it, how greatly might Mr. Hammett have confused the society in Charleston, and perplexed the preachers in the district. The Lord will see to his own house. Maryland I preached at Fort Cumberland, in our new house, to many people. Dined with Mr. D., at whose house I was entertained the first time I visited this town. Oh, that each of the family may be everlastingly saved. It is now three years since I came down this road. Swift-winged time, oh, how it flies! My body is in better health, and my soul in great peace. I feel no wrong temper. Oh, that my whole heart might be running out in holiness after God. Lord's Day 17 We had a solemn meeting, whilst I enlarged on... Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. It was a good season. Virginia, Monday, 18. Road to Bath. Here I had the opportunity of writing to all the connected preachers in the district. Friday, 22. In the evening I preached with some assistance on Luke 19:10. Saturday, 23. I attended quarterly meeting at the Widow Flint's. Here I had the first sight of Mr. Hammett's and Brother Thomas Morrell's attacks on each other, or rather Mr. Hammett's against the Methodists, and Brother Morrell's reply. Had Brother M. known more, he would have replied better. Mr. H.'s quotation of a clause in my confidential letter to Brother S.D. is not altogether just. He has also misquoted the caution, leaving out the word district, which when retained, shows it to have been American, and to have been directed against American apostates and impostors. Sabbath Day 24 We had a living love feast, although the house was crowded and warm, almost past sufferance. Tuesday 26 I had a sweet opening at the quarterly meeting on Ephesians 2.12. I met the preachers, leaders, and stewards, and they resolved to enter more fully into the spirit of discipline. Next day I preached on, My Spirit Shall Not Always Strive with Man. Pennsylvania Rode twenty-two miles to S-Town, weary and warm. The people were waiting, and I began on, An Adulterous and Sinful Generation. This is a poor place for religion. Friday 29 
I rode nearly fifty miles through excessive heat, and felt somewhat like Jonah. Saturday 30. I was taken up with writing letters, having received accounts from Cokesbury. The college seems to be the weighty concern for the present. Sunday, July 1. I had heavy work, no freedom at DW's. Nothing will do here but discipline. I felt my spirit much humbled before the Lord, and a willingness to suffer. Tuesday 3. Road to A. Kegil. It was the harvest home. I feel it my duty to press the people of God to go on to holiness of heart and life. As the next morning was rainy, we stayed until the afternoon, and then rode to see our old brother M. Behem. We had a tender feeling season on 1 John 1, 8, on Salvation from All Sin. At Strasbourg in the afternoon, we had a solemn meeting. A young woman who was married a few minutes before worship began was powerfully struck under the word and wept greatly. Oh, may she mourn until a second marriage takes place in her soul. Friday 6. We had a long ride to Morgantown. We came in at eleven o'clock, being much fatigued. I discoursed on the likeness between Moses and Christ in the academical church. This building is well designed for a school and a church. I directed Esquire Morgan to one of our local preachers as a teacher. We set out for Coventry Forge, but we missed our way, and came to Brother Meredith's in the valley. I prayed heartily for, and spoke plainly to, the young people. Oh, that the Lord would follow them powerfully! Saturday 7 This day my soul enjoyed the presence of God. I dined at Radnor, and went into Philadelphia. Sunday 8 I preached at Ebenezer Church on James 4, 8, at St. George's Church on Mark 8, 38. I had large accounts from the eastward, and am requested to send them more preachers. After twenty years' standing of the house in our hands, the galleries are put up in our old new church. Monday and Tuesday, 9-10 Employed in reading and writing, I wish to be alone. Oh, how sweet is solitude! Wednesday, 11 I sought and obtained peace between two brethren who had, unhappily, been at variance. New Jersey, Thursday, 12. Rode through great heat and dust to Burlington, New Jersey. Here I had many of my old and some new hearers, but some are much wiser than they were twenty years ago. We had a cold time of it whilst I spoke on Hebrews 4, 7. Friday, 13. After preaching at Blank's, we rode on to Brother H.'s. He is resolved that after he and his wife are served, the remainder of his whole estate shall go to the church, his plantation to be rented, and the annual income to be applied as the conference held for Pennsylvania and the Jerseys shall please to direct. New York, Sunday, 15. Preached at our church on Staten Island. I was very close on the law and the gospel. A few felt, but it was a dry time. Lord, help us. Monday 16. We hasted to V's Ferry, but found ourselves detained by the absence of both boats, so that we did not so soon as we expected reach New York. I did not find that life and harmony here that there have been in times past. I have just now obtained and am reading Mr. Wesley's Life the work of Dr. Koch and Mr. Moore, containing 542 pages. It is in general well compiled, but the history of American Methodism is inaccurate in some of its details, and in some which are interesting. For some days past I have been occupied in reading and in meeting the several women's classes, and found the Lord was amongst them. As very probably all of my life which I shall be able to write will be found in my journal, it will not be improper to relate something of my earlier years, and to give a brief account of my first labors in the ministry. I was born in Old England, near the foot of Hampstead Bridge, in the parish of Handsworth, 
about four miles from Birmingham, in Staffordshire, and according to the best of my after-knowledge, on the twentieth or twenty-first day of August, in the year of our Lord, 1745. My father's name was Joseph, and my mother's Elizabeth Asbury. They were people in common life, were remarkable for honesty and industry, and had all things needful to enjoy. Had my father been as saving as laborious, he might have been wealthy. As it was, it was his province to be employed as a farmer and gardener by the two richest families in the parish. My parents had but two children, a daughter called Sarah and myself. My lovely sister died in infancy. She was a favorite, and my dear mother, being very affectionate, sunk into deep distress at the loss of a darling child, from which she was not relieved for many years. It was under this dispensation that God was pleased to open the eyes of her mind, she living in a very dark, dark, dark day and place. She now began to read almost constantly when leisure presented the opportunity. When a child, I thought it strange my mother should stand by a large window, poring over a book for hours together. From my childhood, I may say, I have neither dared an oath nor hazarded a lie. The love of truth is not natural, but the habit of telling it I acquired very early. And so well was I taught, that my conscience would never permit me to swear profanely. I learned from my parents a certain form of words for prayer, and I well remember my mother strongly urged my father to family reading and prayer. The singing of psalms was much practiced by them both. My foible was the ordinary foible of children, fondness for play. But I abhorred mischief and wickedness, although my mates were amongst the vilest of the vile, for lying, swearing, fighting, and whatever else boys of their age and evil habits were likely to be guilty of. From such society I very often returned home uneasy and melancholy, and although driven away by my better principles, still I would return, hoping to find happiness where I never found it. Sometimes I was much ridiculed and called Methodist Parson, because my mother invited any people who had the appearance of religion to her house. I was sent to school early, and began to read the Bible between six and seven years of age, and greatly delighted in the historical part of it. My schoolmaster was a great churl, and used to beat me cruelly. This drove me to prayer, and it appeared to me that God was near to me. My father, having but the one son, greatly desired to keep me at school, he cared not how long. But in this design he was disappointed. For my master, by his severity, had filled me with such horrible dread that with me anything was preferable to going to school. I lived some time in one of the wealthiest and most ungodly families we had in the parish. Here I became vain, but not openly wicked. Some months after this I returned home, and made my choice when about thirteen years and a half old, to learn a branch of business at which I wrought about six years and a half. During this time I enjoyed great liberty, and in the family was treated more like a son or an equal than an apprentice. Soon after I entered on that business, God sent a pious man, not a Methodist, into our neighborhood, and my mother invited him to our house. By his conversation and prayers, I was awakened before I was fourteen years of age. It was now easy and pleasing to leave my company, and I began to pray morning and evening, being drawn by the cords of love, as with the bands of a man. I soon left our blind priest and went to West Bromwich Church. Here I heard Ryland, Stillingfleet, Talbot, Bagnall, Mansfield, Hawes, and Venn, great names and esteemed gospel ministers. I became very serious, reading a great deal, Whitefield and Senex sermons, and every good book I could meet with. It was not long before I began to inquire of my mother who, where, what were the Methodists. She gave me a favorable account, and directed me to a person that could take me to Wensbury to hear them. I soon found this was not the church, but it was better. The people were so devout, men and women kneeling down, saying Amen. Now, behold, they were singing hymns, sweet sound. Why, strange to tell. The preacher had no prayer book, and yet he prayed wonderfully. 
What was yet more extraordinary, the man took his text, and had no sermon book. Thought I, this is wonderful indeed. It is certainly a strange way, but the best way. He talked about confidence, assurance, etc., of which all my flights and hopes fell short. I had no deep convictions, nor had I committed any deep known sins. At one sermon, some time after, my companion was powerfully wrought on. I was exceedingly grieved that I could not weep like him. Yet I knew myself to be in a state of unbelief. On a certain time when we were praying in my father's barn, I believed the Lord pardoned my sins and justified my soul. But my companions reasoned me out of this belief, saying, Mr. Mather said, a believer was as happy as if he was in heaven. I thought I was not as happy as I would be there, and gave up my confidence, and that for months. Yet I was happy, free from guilt and fear, and had power over sin, and felt great inward joy. After this, we met for reading and prayer, and had large and good meetings, and were much persecuted, until the persons at whose houses we held them were afraid, and they were discontinued. I then held meetings frequently at my father's house, exhorting the people there, as also at Sutton Coalfield, and several souls professed to find peace through my labors. I met class a while at Bromwich Heath, and met in band at Wensbury. I had preached some months before I publicly appeared in the Methodist meeting-houses. When my labors became more public and extensive, some were amazed, not knowing how I had exercised elsewhere. Behold me now, a local preacher, the humble and willing servant of any and of every preacher that called on me by night or by day, being ready, with hasty steps, to go far and wide to do good, visiting Derbyshire, Staffordshire, Warwickshire, Worcestershire, and indeed almost every place within my reach, for the sake of precious souls, preaching generally three, four, and five times a week, and at the same time pursuing my calling. I think when I was between twenty-one and twenty-two years of age, I gave myself up to God and His work, after acting as a local preacher near the space of five years. It is now the 19th of July, 1792. I have been laboring for God and souls about thirty years or upwards. Some time after I had obtained a clear witness of my acceptance with God, the Lord showed me, in the heat of youth and youthful blood, the evil of my heart. For a short time I enjoyed, as I thought, the pure and perfect love of God. But this happy frame did not long continue, although at seasons I was greatly blessed. Whilst I was a traveling preacher in England, I was much tempted, finding myself exceedingly ignorant of almost everything a minister of the gospel ought to know. How I came to America, and the events which have happened since, my journal will show. Yesterday I preached in New York on Who is on the Lord's Side. I had some life in speaking, but there was little move in the congregation. O Lord, hasten a revival of thy work. This city has been agitated about the choice of governor. It would be better for them all to be on the Lord's side. The standard is set up. Who declares for the Lord? The wicked, the carnal professors, carnal ministers, and apostates are the Lord's enemies. Sunday 22 Was a melting time with many hearts in the old church. My subject, 1 John 1, 6-7 in the afternoon, although very unwell, I labored hard in the new church, but the people were exceedingly insensible. There was a little shaking under Brother Hull in the old church in the evening. Monday, 23. We set out for Lynn and made our way through Bedford, riding fifty miles the first day. I prayed in four houses and felt much given up on the way. Connecticut, Tuesday, 24. Rain today, after which we came to Reading, and although it was late and the evening damp, I was unwilling to omit the opportunity of speaking to the people. Brother Hull, my fellow traveler, went to bed very ill. God has wrought in this town. The spirit of prayer is amongst the people, and several souls have been brought to God. Wednesday, 25. We came to Newtown and fed, thence to Waterbury. 
Brother H. is still very ill. Here we were entertained kindly, and at small charges. The people submitted and were attentive to prayer. Thence we continued on to Southerington. We dined at a public house, where we had cheap, good, plain usage. Our host told us it was the misfortune of the Methodists to fall in with some of the most ignorant, poor, and disreputable people in the state. My answer was, the poor have the gospel preached to them, that it had been aforetime asked, have any of the rulers believed on him? Came to the city of Hartford, and thence went on to East Hartford. I was alarming on Revelations 21, 8. Brother H. is still very sick, and for my poor self I am tempted to fretfulness. But by grace I was kept in peace, and blessed in speaking. The next day we came through the extreme heat to Stafford, and attended a quarterly meeting, where we had a crowd of people in a new open house. I was very unwell, and much tempted, but I had good liberty in preaching. My subject was Colossians 2, 6. On Sunday I was very pointed on Romans 1, 18. There has been a work in Tallinn Circuit. I suppose 150 souls have been converted, and twice the number under awakenings in different societies around. I felt very solemn among them. Brothers Smith and Rayner have been owned of the Lord in these parts. Massachusetts We came through Ashford, Pomfret, Menden, and Douglas. We lodged at a tavern, where the people were very obliging and attentive to prayer. Thence we rode to Medfields to dinner. Thence through Dover, Newton, Cambridge, Malden, to Lynn which we reached about midnight, having traveled sixty-five miles. My soul, meanwhile, continually filled with the goodness of God. Thursday, August 2 Our conference met, consisting of eight preachers, much united, beside myself. In Lynn we have the outside of a house completed, and what is best of all, several souls profess to be converted to God. I preached on 1 John 4, 1 through 6, and had some life, but was too formal. There was preaching every night through the sitting of the conference. Saturday 4 I preached an ordination sermon to a very solemn congregation on 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Sabbath morning 5 I preached on 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20. In the afternoon, Brother A preached and I afterward gave them a farewell exhortation, and there were some affectionate feelings excited amongst the people. Many were moved, and felt a great desire to speak in the love feast, but they had not courage. Oh, that we had more apostolical preaching! Monday 6 We took leave of town, making a hasty flight. We dined at Cambridge. The rain drove us for shelter under the hospitable roof of Mr. Howe. The kind family here accepted of family worship. Tuesday 7 We came through Brookfield and Shrewsbury to Worcester. After resting, we briskly pursued our way to Brookfield. We found that we had stopped at the wrong house. Some wicked, laboring young men were intoxicated, singing psalms and song tunes for their amusement. One man railed on and cursed us because he was not told all he wanted to know. Wednesday 8. We came to Belcher Town, and were kindly entertained at W's. Thence we pushed on to Hadley, crossed Connecticut River, and stopped at Northampton. Ah, where is the blessedness of which we formerly heard in this place? I inquired of our host, but received little satisfactory information. I proposed prayer, but found it was not well received. I went to bed weary and unwell and about half-past six o'clock next morning set out again over the rocks and uneven roads, across the mountain, having passed through Worthington, Chesterfield, and Partridgefield. I wondered to see the people settled here so thickly, among the rocks, where the soil can only be cultivated by the iron hand of active, laborious industry. I should prefer any part of the Allegheny where it is not too rocky, because the land is better. We made it nearly forty miles to Pittsfield, and our journey was more disagreeable from the falling of a heavy shower. 
we have now ridden about one hundred and seventy miles from Lynn, in four days. My mind has been variously exercised, and my body much fatigued. If I have been kept from sin, to the Lord's name be all the glory. Pittsfield is a pleasant plain, extending from mountain to mountain. The population may consist of two thousand souls. There is a grand meeting house and steeple, both as white and glistening as Solomon's temple. The minister, as I learn, is on the new divinity plan. I heard the experience of one of the first settlers in the town, who was clearly brought out of bondage. But by resting in unfailing perseverance, he again grew cold. Of late he has been stirred up and restored by the instrumentality of the Methodists. I was pleased to enjoy the privilege of retiring alone to the cooling sylvan shades in frequent converse with my best friend. End of section 16. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 17 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Saturday, 11. We held our meeting in a noble house, built for Baptists, Separatists, or somebody, and is now occupied by the Methodists. There was a large and attentive congregation, and some melting amongst the people, with whom the Lord is at work. Sunday 12 I was so unwell that I concluded not to go to meeting, but was at last persuaded along. I felt enlargement in preaching, and the people were tender and attentive. It has been said, the eastern people are not to be moved. It is true, they are too much accustomed to hear systematical preaching to be moved by a systematical sermon, even from a Methodist. But they have their feelings, and touch but the right string, and they will be moved. I became weary of staying three days in one house. Mr. Stevens was very kind. His wife was under heavy heart awakenings. New York we set out and came to Lebanon in the state of New York. The medical waters here are warm and very soft, pure and light, with no small quantity of fixed air. I found a poor bathhouse. Here the devil's tents are set up, and, as is common at these his encampments, his children are doing his drudgery. I baptized F.'s child. He and his wife came out from amongst the Shakers, where they had lived in celibacy many years. At the request of the people, notwithstanding my barrenness at Brother W.'s, I delivered a discourse on 1 Peter 3.15. My audience appeared to be strangers to our way. Mr. K.A., a Presbyterian minister, bore his testimony in favor of the word delivered, and recommended it to his people. We then came to Bethlehem, and the next day I preached at the house of a Baptist to about three hundred people. It was a searching, moving time. I also baptized and administered the Lord's Supper. I then went a small distance to lodge, but I felt not myself at home, the worship of God not being in the house. I now began to bring up my reading in the New Testament. Wednesday 15 came to Albany and had a joyful, happy conference, twenty-one preachers being present. We constituted two deacons and four elders. Each preacher was called upon to speak of his exercises and observations since our last annual session. We examined our doctrines and whether our faith was still firm in those which were believed and taught amongst us. We appointed Jonathan Newman as a missionary to the whites and Indians on the frontiers. We also sent another to Cataraqui. Before we rose, we propounded a few questions of theology, namely, 1. How were we to deal with sinners? 2. How should we treat with mourners? 3. Which way should we address hypocrites? 4. How can we deal with backsliders? 5. What is the best for believers? We had preaching in the market houses in Albany and notwithstanding our hurry and crowd, we were happy, and had living testimonies from preachers and people. I trust two hundred have been converted in the district since last conference. Monday 20 
I came to Cayman's Patent, and had a degree of light in preaching in the new church on Ephesians 1, 18, 19. After preaching, we hasted to Hudson, thirty-two miles. On our way, we called on a friend whose wretched wife had made an attempt to poison him and two others by strewing bane on the meat they ate. The dose wrought so powerfully that they threw it up, and so she, Satan, and Hell were all disappointed. I lodged with Brother W. He and his wife were kind, dear souls to me, when sick here last year. Now I am well. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I had to ride thirty-five miles to Rhinebeck. The weather was extremely warm and dry. We hasted along, and arriving a little before five o'clock, found the people waiting. I preached in a schoolhouse, which, by enlargement, makes a good church, so called. I had reason to fear, from former and later information, that Brother Blank was not as useful nor as acceptable here as I could wish. From a sense of duty, I mentioned this to him with great tenderness. At first it proved some trial to him. But when Brother Blank and Brother Blank confirmed what I had said, and I assured him that a desire to promote the cause of God was the only motive that led me to mention this to him, he resumed his former cheerfulness, and we parted in peace. It was appointed for me to preach at a place forty-five miles distant. But the weather being extremely warm, and our horses weary, we did not get in until eight o'clock, in consequence of which many people were disappointed. Thursday, 23. I breakfasted at Governor Van Cortlandt's. I feel as if the Lord had been striving here. Saturday, 25. Came to the quarterly meeting at New Rochelle. The Lord gave light and liberty in speaking. We had a meeting with the local preachers, stewards, and leaders who were present. Mr. Hammett's rejoinder has made its appearance. And the Manners has also come to town to spread his doctrine and distribute his books. Were he a gracious man, I cannot think he would write as he does against Mr. Wesley and Mr. Fletcher. Perhaps he will find it rather easier to write and print books than to sell and pay the cost of publishing them. Sunday 26 I preached to a vast congregation, with liberty, on 1 Corinthians 3, 15, 16. Many hearts were touched, and we had a blessed season at love feast and sacrament. Monday, 27. Came to New York and open conference, twenty-eight preachers being present. We spent most of the afternoon in prayer, and nearly all the preachers gave an account of what each one had seen and felt since last conference. The young gave us their experience, and there were several who professed sanctification. Awful H. haunted us one day, requesting us to give him an honorable discharge from the connection but we shall publish him expelled. He is the Wheatley of America. Friday 31 We had a solemn love feast, the lower floor of the house being nearly filled. Several of the brethren professed a perfect love. Others had lost the witness. My mind has been so bent to the business of the conference that I have slept but little this week. Connecticut is supplied much to my mind. Several very promising young men having been admitted this conference. The societies are in harmony, but not as lively as they ought to be. I went to hear Dr. L., but was greatly disappointed. He had such a rumbling voice that I could understand but little in that great house. How elegant the building! How small the appearances of religion! Lord, have mercy upon the Reformed churches! O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I was much obliged to my friend for renewing my clothing and giving me a little pocket money. This is better than five hundred pounds per annum. I told some of our preachers, who were very poor, how happy they were, and that probably, had they more, their wants would proportionably increase. My soul is humble, and by grace is kept holy. I do the best I can, and leave the event to the Lord. If others do wrong, they must answer for themselves now, and at the day of judgment. Sunday, September 2 
I preached a preparatory sermon on 1 Corinthians 5, 7, 8, previously to the administration of the sacrament. It was observed what a fitness of similarity there was between the Passover and the Supper of the Lord. The simplicity and purity of the latter, bread instead of the flesh of an animal, and wine instead of the blood of the creature. Wine, the blood of Christ, and grace, the life of our souls. It was shown who were proper communicants, true penitents and real believers, not with the leaven of malice and wickedness, acid, bitter, and puffing up, but the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, uprightness of heart, and sound experience. I now leave New York for one whole year, under the hope and prophecy that this will be a year of the Lord's power with them. New Jersey We had severe crossing the North River. It was as much as ever the horses could do to keep their feet. We came to Newark, and thence to Elizabethtown in Jersey. I now began to unbend my mind, and became very heavy. I went upstairs, sat in my chair, rested my head, and slept solidly. But a kind friend would have me waked, which made me sick. Tuesday 4 I pursued my journey through Woodbridge, and came to Brunswick. The weather was very warm, the roads dusty, and our journeys long. We reached Milford Town in the evening. Wednesday 5 passed through Crosswicks and Burlington, and came to Philadelphia. I found I was too late, the preachers having waited a day for me to come and open the conference. Thursday 6. We had great peace in our conference. The preachers gave a feeling account of the work of God. We had more preachers than we needed this time. Both they and the people were lively. Most of our brethren in the ministry can now stand the greatest exertions. Sabbath morning, nine. We had a melting love feast. The mouths of many were open to declare the loving kindness of the Lord. I preached, but did not like their ill-contrived house. At Ebenezer I had an attentive congregation to whom I spoke on Philippians 1, 18. At night the mobility came in, like the roaring of the sea. Boys were around the doors, and the streets were in an uproar. They had been alarmed by a shout the night before, which, probably, was one cause of the congregation being so large. Brother A went to prayer. A person cried out. Brother C joined in prayer. The wicked were collected to oppose. I felt the powers of darkness were very strong. After ending my discourse, Brother M rose up and mentioned the shocking conduct he had observed among them. Fighting, swearing, threatening, etc. But where are the watchmen? Asleep. Where are the magistrates? Dozing at home. This is a wicked, horribly wicked city. And if the people do not reform, I think they will be let loose upon one another, or else God will send the pestilence amongst them, and slay them by hundreds and thousands. The spirit of prayer has departed, and the spiritual watchmen have ceased to cry aloud among all sects and denominations. For their unfaithfulness they will be smitten in anger. For sleepy silence in the house of God, which ought to resound with the voice of praise and frequent prayer, the Lord will visit their streets with the silence of desolation. Delaware, Monday 10 I left Philadelphia, dined at Chester, and preached at Wilmington in the evening. The next day I rode to Duck Creek Crossroads, State of Delaware, to hold conference. We were full of business, and had life and liberty. I met the leaders and local brethren in the ministry, and we had a powerful time. I requested them to give an account of their past and present experience, the state of their respective families, and the classes they had the charge of, together with the prospects of religion where they lived. They understood me, and spoke much to the purpose. We parted with a good love feast, from which the gay and the worldly, at least, were excluded if we did not keep out sinners, Pharisees, and hypocrites. Saturday 15 Wrote to Camden. To Dr. Barrett, a true son of a worthy father, we are chiefly indebted for a neat, economical meeting-house. 
I had so many friends I knew not where to go. My attendance on conferences and quarterly meetings has lately been so constant, I found it expedient to make a sudden change and come home. In my way, I stopped at a friend's house. The woman had been early a member. The man not of us. I pressed family prayer upon her from divine authority. I saw her tears and heard her promises. Came home to T. White's. I resolved on the establishment of a prayer meeting for the women before I go hence. I felt my soul greatly quickened of late, to bear and suffer all things, and to feel nothing but love. If we are tried by Christian people, it is chiefly for want of grace or knowledge in them, or us, or both. They are objects of pity, not of anger. This day is spent in reading, writing, meditation, and prayer. To be retired and solitary is desirable after the presence of crowds and the labors, various and unceasing, to which I am called. When our Lord was pursued by the people, he, as a man, would hide himself. I thought if my brethren would not spare me, I must spare myself. I have been reading Dr. Langdon on the Revelation, and find little new or very spiritual. He is like the Newtons and all the historical interpreters. One thing is wanting. And might not an interpreter show the present time foretold by these signs, which plainly point to the why and wherefore it is, that some are Christian bishops and Christian dissertators on prophecy? A bishopric with one, or two, or three thousand sterling a year as an appendage might determine the most hesitating in their choice. I see no reason why a heathen philosopher, who had enough of this world's wisdom to see the advantages of wealth and honors, should not say, Give me a bishopric and I will be a Christian. In the eastern states also there are very good and sufficient reasons for the faith of the favored ministry. Ease, honor, interest, what follows? Idolatry, superstition, death. Tuesday, 18. Continued at Judge W.'s and spoke a few words to a few people. Wednesday, 19. We came to Milford and had a solemn time on Genesis 6, 3. Here I held a conference with the local preachers, and was pleased at the accounts they gave of their prospects of religion in their neighborhoods. Thursday 20 We had a moving feast of charity, and a close, searching time in public. My subject, 2 Timothy 3, 20, 21. Friday 21 I came to Broad Creek with a heavy heart. We had a blessed time in the love feast. Many souls had longings for sanctification, and some boldly professed it. I felt as if it would be long before I should again visit this house. A poor man attempted to come near me. Being encouraged by my speaking to him, he approached, and told me with a full heart that about that time, five years past, the Lord spoke through me to his conviction at Moore's Chapel. Tuesday 25 Attended quarterly meeting at Miles Chapel, where I met with a few serious people. The second day we had a few church folks, something wild. Virginia, Thursday, 27. Crossed Pocomoke two L's, at Dowings's at night. Brother Everett was sick. I had a large congregation at Garrison Chapel, and was much blessed on Romans 8, 29-30. I had a comfortable conference with the leaders, stewards, local preachers, and exhorters, and we had a living love feast. Sunday 30 We had a crowded congregation, and some melting amongst the people, while I enlarged on, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. 1. I endeavored to point out the genuine marks of a Christian. 2. Remove the objection against these marks. And 3. Persuade by applying to the hopes and fears of my hearers. Monday, October 1 I had a kind of chill and headache, and was very unwell. Yet I rode about forty miles to Littleton Lawns. I went quick to bed. Maryland I attended the quarterly meeting in Dorset on the last day. We had few people. 
thence to Henry Ennall's, where young sister Kane was struck with conviction at family prayer. She followed us to quarterly meeting, at Easton, under deep distress, and returning, found peace where she found conviction three days before. We had great plainness, and were much stirred up in the conference with our local brethren. The congregation was large the second day, and the people were more quiet than common, perhaps because we were so. Thence we rode to Choptank, now Greensboro, and preached on Ephesians 2.17, and some power went through the house. I had a good conference with the local brethren, making close inquiries relative to themselves, their families, and the societies to which they respectively belong. I stopped a day at Judge White's, and read in haste the most essential parts of Jefferson's notes. I have thought it may be I am safer to be occasionally among the people of the world than wholly confined to the indulgent people of God. He who sometimes suffers from a famine will the better know how to relish a feast. Saturday 13 We had many gracious souls at Bordley's barn. I was greatly weakened by preaching, but I hope souls were spiritually strengthened. We had a gracious season in conference with the local brethren, men who felt for the cause of God. Two professed to find the Lord, and it was said two were awakened the first evening of the quarterly meeting. Sunday 14 We had a great love feast. The women led the way. I preached on, Thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. A larger or more attentive congregation has not, perhaps, been seen in these parts. I feel more than ever the necessity of preaching sanctification. Monday 15 Wrote to Chestertown. Here I was warmly importuned to preach, and submitting to the desire of my friends, I enlarged on 1 John 2.18, and was very pointed and alarming, at which some were offended. Saturday 20. Road to Back Creek. Being detained at the ferry, I did not get in until after night, which made me unwell. Monday 22. Road to Cokesbury. All is not well here. Saturday 27. I came to Baltimore. Here I only stopped to feed myself and horses, and then proceeded on to T.C.'s, and had a little rest in peace. Sunday, 28. Contrary to my wish, I was constrained to ride to Annapolis, which I reached about eleven o'clock, and gave them a sermon on 1 Peter 3, 18, with some help and liberty. Monday, 29. We opened our district conference in great peace and love, and so it ended. Tuesday, 30. Came to Baltimore in a storm of rain. Whilst we were sitting in the room at Mr. Rogers's, in came Dr. Coke, of whose arrival we had not heard, and whom we embraced with great love. I felt awful at the general conference, which began November 1, 1792. At my desire they appointed a moderator and preparatory committee to keep order and bring forward the business with regularity. We had heavy debates on the first, second, and third sections of our form of discipline. My power to station the preachers without an appeal was much debated, but finally carried by a very large majority. Perhaps a new bishop, new conference, and new laws would have better pleased some. I have been much grieved for others, and distressed with the burden I bear, and must hereafter bear. O my soul, enter into rest. Ah, who am I, that the burden of the work should lie on my heart, hands, and head? End of section 17. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 18 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Thursday 8. Having taken cold and had my rest broken, I went to bed to bring on a free perspiration, and from this I received relief. My soul breathed unto God, and I was exceedingly happy in his love. 
Some individuals among the preachers having their jealousies about my influence in the conference, I gave the matter wholly up to them, and to Dr. Koch, who presided. Meantime, I sent them the following letter. My dear brethren, let my absence give you no pain. Dr. Koch presides. I am happily excused from assisting to make laws by which myself am to be governed. I have only to obey and execute. I am happy in the consideration that I never stationed a preacher through enmity, or as a punishment. I have acted for the glory of God, the good of the people, and to promote the usefulness of the preachers. Are you sure that, if you please yourselves, the people will be as fully satisfied? They often say, Let us have such a preacher. And sometimes we will not have such a preacher. We will sooner pay him to stay at home. Perhaps I must say, His appeal forced him upon you. I am one, ye are many. I am as willing to serve you as ever. I want not to sit in any man's way. I scorn to solicit votes. I am a very trembling, poor creature to hear praise or dispraise. Speak your minds freely. But remember, you are only making laws for the present time. It may be that, as in some other things, so in this, a future day may give you further light. I am yours, etc., Francis Asbury. I am not fond of altercations. We cannot please everybody, and sometimes not ourselves. I am resigned. Mr. O'Kelly, being disappointed in not getting an appeal from any station made by me, withdrew from the connection, and went off. For himself, the conference well knew he could not complain of the regulation. He had been located to the South District of Virginia for about ten succeeding years, and upon his plan might have located himself, and any preacher or set of preachers, to the district, whether the people wished to have them or not. The general conference went through the discipline, articles of faith, forms of baptism, matrimony, and the burial of the dead, as also the offices of ordination. The conference ended in peace, after voting another general conference to be held four years hence. By desire of my brethren, I preached once on 1 Peter 3, 8. My mind was kept in peace, and my soul enjoyed rest in the stronghold. Thursday 15. I was comforted at the women's class meeting. I appointed three prayer meetings for them, sisters K, O, and F, to be the leaders of them. If this is regularly attended to, I think good will follow. Friday 16. I left Baltimore, and, contrary to my first intention, called on the widow H., whose daughter was awakened the last time I was here, and still continues to be happy in the Lord. I met the sisters here, and urged prayer meeting. Perhaps it was for this I unexpectedly came here. Virginia, Saturday, 17. Brother Ira Ellis and myself came on to Georgetown, and thence to Alexandria, making a ride of forty miles. Here the preachers were waiting for the district conference. Sunday, 18. I preached in our small, neatly finished house. Monday, 19. We had a close sitting in conference, and completed our work in one day. Tuesday, 20. We set out southwardly. The day was very stormy, and we had a gale in crossing the river at Colchester, and came to our newly made friend Wards, near Dumfries. Wednesday, 21. Six of us set out, and rode fifty-three miles to D. Dickinson's, in Carolyn County. So much for an American Episcopos. Traveling in such haste, I could not be as much in mental prayer as I desired, although I enjoyed many moments of sweet converse with God. The mischief has begun. Brother Blank called here and vented his sorrows, and told what the general conference had done. I was closely employed in reading The Curse of Divisions and my Hebrew Bible. Sunday 25 Came to Manchester and preached in the afternoon, and felt life amongst the people and the preachers who were met for the district conference. I met the preachers in band, and found their fears were greatly removed. 
union and love prevailed, and all things went on well. W. M. Kendry and R. H. sent me their resignation in writing. We agreed to let our displeased brethren still preach among us, and, as Mr. O'Kelly is almost worn out, the conference acceded to my proposal of giving him his forty pounds per annum. Footnote, for a part of that year he received it, but refused, and left us to form a new and pure church. End of footnote. As when he travelled in the connection, provided he was peaceable, and forbore to excite divisions among the brethren. The general conference and the district conferences have kept us a long time from our work. But after all Satan's spite, I think our sifting and shaking will be for good. I expect a glorious revival will take place in America, and thousands be brought to God. Thursday 29 Came to Petersburg. Myself and several others preached during our stay. Saturday, December 1 I had a few attentive hearers at Brother Bonner's, of whom I inquired, Where is the blessedness ye spake of? Sunday 2 Rode fifteen miles to G's Chapel, where we had a full house, and I felt life and love in speaking to the young people. I lodged with Brother G, and was very much moved to lay a plan for a district school. Monday 3 Preached at R's Chapel. Cold house and languid people. Came to Brother Cox's in the evening. I am not conscious of inward or outward sin, yet I do not feel that inward life I wish. I have lately read our Cure of Church Divisions, and much of the Word of God. Tuesday 4 Preached at Maybury's Chapel, and the next day at J. Mason's, where we had a full house and a comfortable time. Thursday 6 Rode through the rain to Edward Drumgold's. Here I found a few friends, and formed a constitution for a district school, which, with a little alteration, will form a general rule for any part of the continent. Saturday 8 I once more visited Owen Myrick, whose wife is gone, and from all we can learn departed in a good old age, in triumph to glory. The dear old man is much dispirited. We spent the evening together very solemnly, remembering the occurrences of nineteen years ago, now gone as yesterday, short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. The cause of his slaves was not forgotten. Sunday 9 I came once more to Roanoke Chapel and gave them a discourse on Ephesians 2.13. R. and I. Ellis gave an exhortation. I met the society. We then rode six miles and got to our quarters about sunset. Monday 10 We crossed Roanoke at Black's Ferry and directed our course for Lewisburg. We passed Warrington and missed our way. We remembered the name of William Myrick, and inquiring after him, found he lived nearly on our way. We accordingly called on him, and were gladly received, and kindly entertained. Memory is good in distress. Had we not housed here, we should have had our difficulties in getting to Sister L's. Tuesday 11 Wrote to H's near Lewisburg. Here I met the preachers in conference, and we were closely employed until Saturday morning. We had about forty preachers from the two districts in North Carolina. Our labors finished, we rode to Noose River. Sunday 16, preached at Merritt's. Monday 17. Rode fifteen miles to S's. Preached on Christ, the believer's wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. We had a difficult road in going to Haw River, but a kind providence brought us along very well, although the weather was exceedingly cold. We crossed the stream by fording about half past eight o'clock, and about ten arrived at ours, very cold and in much pain. I know not why, but so it is, that I cannot feel that I hold such sweet communion with God in cold weather as in warm. It may be that, nature being oppressed, commands the mind to suffer with the body. 
the great love and union which prevailed at the late conference makes me hope many souls will be converted in the ensuing year. An account was brought in of the conversion of about three hundred souls last week within its limits, chiefly in the lowland circuits. Glory be to God. I feel that he is with us, and I have good evidence that fifteen or eighteen hundred souls have professed to have been converted in the United States within the last twelve months. At Rainey's, a congregation of willing, patient souls was called hastily together, to whom I preached on Second Peter 1, 4. I was led out on the corruption that is in the world, arising from three grand sources, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Wednesday 19. I was detained until about ten o'clock, and then rode on to S's and dined. We then hastened on to Deep River, and lodged at Mr. B's. Lord, show kindness to those who have succored me. Thursday 20. I took a route along a new path below the narrows of P.D., and after riding forty-five or fifty miles, came in, cold and hungry, about seven o'clock, and found a congregation waiting. I was fatigued, and could say but little to them. Friday 21. I rode thirty miles to Rocky River, had few to hear. Saturday 22. The people were attentive and behaved well at Anson Courthouse. In the evening we had a weary ride to Brother Jackson's. Sunday 23. We attended from ten till one o'clock in a house built of poles. Here were light and ventilators plenty. We rode this evening twenty miles to Mr. Blakeney's. The rain caught us in the woods, and we were well steeped. Arriving, we found a good house, table, and bed, which was some relief to weather-beaten pilgrims. Christmas Eve We rode in the rain twenty-five miles to our kind brother Horton's, and found many people had gathered. South Carolina, Christmas Day Although the weather was cold and damp, and unhealthy, with signs of snow, we rode forty-five miles to dear Brother Remberts, kind and good, rich and liberal, who has done more for the poor Methodists than any man in South Carolina. The Lord grant that he, with his whole household, may find mercy in that day. Wednesday 26 Preached at quarterly meeting on 1 Peter 4.13 I was pleased to hear the young men exhort and sing after sacrament. I felt uncommonly melted. Tears involuntarily burst from my eyes. God was there. Thursday 27 I had a long cold ride of forty-five miles to Brother Bowman's near Santee. I was overtaken on my way by rain mingled with hail, which ended in snow, covering the ground six or eight inches deep. The unfinished state of the houses, lying on the floor, thin clothing, and inclement weather, keep me in a state of indisposition. Friday 28 We had to cross Santee and ride thirty-five miles to dear sister Browings's. The weather still very cold. Saturday 29 Rode thirty-three miles to Charleston and found our little flock in peace and a small revival amongst them. Mr. Hammett has raised a grand house, and has written an appeal to the British Conference. He represents Dr. Coke as a sacrilegious tyrant and murderer. I have no doubt but the doctor will be able to make good his cause. As to Hammett, time will show the man and the people who have made lies their refuge. Sunday 30 Brother I. S. preached in the forenoon. In the afternoon I said a little on Isaiah 9, 6, 7. The blacks were hardly restrained from crying out aloud, Oh, that God would bless the wild and wicked inhabitants of this city! I am happy to find that our principal friends have increased in religion. Accounts from Philadelphia are pleasing. Souls are converted to God. There is also a move in New York and their numbers are daily increasing. On reviewing the labors of the last six weeks, 
I find we have rested about fourteen days at conferences, and ridden at least seven hundred miles. January 3, 1793 From Wednesday, December 26, to this day, Sunday accepted, we sat in conference in this city. Friday 4 I was unwell, yet I set out and reached Mr. G's on Edisto River. A few people met me here in the evening, but I was unwell and weary and sleepy and very unfit for public exercise. Saturday 5 Rode fifty miles to ours and rested on the Sabbath. I had a meeting with eight or ten souls. The people in these parts are much given up to sin. They have a little charity for the Baptists, but none at all for the Methodists. Monday 7. We rode thirty-seven miles to Tees, where, had we not begged and promised to pay well for it, I know not if we should have been taken in. Georgia, Tuesday 8. We passed Augusta, and rode thirty-seven miles to H's, where we were treated kindly. Thence next day to Washington, forty-four miles. I was taken ill at Brother M's. Thursday 10. Met our dear brethren in conference. We had great peace and union. The Carolina preachers came up to change with those in Georgia. All things happened well. Bless the Lord, O my soul. We now agreed to unite the Georgia and South Carolina conferences, to meet in the fork of Saluda and Broad Rivers on the 1st of January, 1794. Our sitting ended in exceeding great love. Sabbath 13. We had sacrament, love feast, and ordination. I felt very serious, and was very pointed on Acts 20, 26-27. I have now had an opportunity of speaking in Washington. Most of the people attended to hear this man that rambles through the United States. In due time I shall, with permission, visit Georgia. Monday 14. I preached in the new house at Grant's on He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. 1. The Christian soldier has to overcome the world, sin, and the devil with his temptations. 2. He fights under the banner of Christ, who is the captain of his salvation. 3. His armor is described by St. Paul, Ephesians 6. 4. His inheritance, Christian tempers, and the things promised to the seven churches, and finally glory, will be his God, giving him wisdom, truth, love. He shall be my son. A son partakes of the nature and property of the Father, and doeth his will. So it is with those who are the children of God. Our dear Georgia brethren seem to think some of us shall visit them no more. They appear to be much humbled, and will not give up the traveling preachers. I am now bound for Savannah, where I may see the former walks of a dear Wesley and Whitefield, whom I hope to meet in the new Jerusalem. Wednesday 16 We had to swim Long Creek. We had few to hear at H's, but they felt the word, and we had a good time. When the weather is open and the sun shines, the days are generally warm in this country, but the nights are cold and the house is open. Saturday 19 Was taken up in reading Osterwald's Christian Theology. It is simple, plain, and interesting. Sunday 20 I preached at Bethel on Peter 2, 24-25. I had a full congregation and great freedom in speaking. The house was a miserable one. Wednesday 23 I came to Buckhead. A few people had gathered, to whom I gave an exhortation. Reached Jay's, making it thirty-three miles without refreshment, being out from seven to seven o'clock again. Friday 25 I rode fifteen miles to my very loving friend Brother D's. Here my mind was exercised with what I heard and felt. 
Mr. Matthews wrote Brother D he had been taught my iniquity, to which Mr. H, his brother, gave his sanction. And why was I thus charged? Because I did not establish Mr. Wesley's absolute authority over the American connection. For myself, this I had submitted to. But the Americans were too jealous to bind themselves to yield to him in all things relative to church government. Mr. Wesley was a man they had never seen, was three thousand miles off. How might submission in such a case be expected? Brother Coke and myself gave offense to the connection by enforcing Mr. Wesley's will in some matters, for which I do not blame Mr. Wesley. Like other great men, he had his elbow friends, and like other people, I had my enemies. Tuesday, 29. We reach Savannah. Next day I rode twelve miles along a fine sandy road to view the ruins of Mr. Whitefield's orphan house. We found the place, and having seen the copper plate, which I recognized, I felt very awful. The wings are yet standing, though much injured, and the schoolhouse still more. It is reported that Mr. Whitefield observed, whilst eating his last dinner in the house, this house was built for God, and cursed be the man that puts it to any other use. The land for the support of the school is of little value, except two rice plantations, which we passed in our route. I returned to Savannah, and preached on Luke 19.10, to a serious people, with whom I had liberty. Friday, February 1. I came to Ebenezer, and had a pleasing interview with Mr. Bergman. He cannot speak much English. The Lord has certainly something in design for this man, more than to be buried in this place. We rode through rice plantations for nearly two miles, and were entangled in the swamp. Oh, how dreadful to be here in the dark! Saturday, too. I am not enough in prayer. I have said more than was for the glory of God concerning those who have left the American connection, and who have reviled Mr. Wesley, Mr. Fletcher, Dr. Coke, and poor me. Oh, that I could trust the Lord more than I do, and leave his cause wholly in his own hands. This being Saturday, we rest to read and write, having ridden since Monday morning about 124 miles. I reflect upon the present ruin of the orphan house, and taking a view of the money expended, the persons employed, the preachers sent over, I was led to inquire, where are they, and how has it sped? The earth, the army, the Baptists, the church, the independents, have swallowed them all up at this windmill end of the continent. A wretched country, this. But there are souls, precious souls, worth worlds. I was offered the use of the courthouse to preach in, but the night being cold and windy prevented. I preached at Mr. M's. We want a house here, which I expect we shall obtain. I suppose there are five hundred houses of all sorts, and if I guess well, about two thousand inhabitants. There is one Lutheran church, with perhaps fifty or sixty members. Goshen Church is about forty by twenty-five, well finished. Mr. B. and the congregation have given it to us, on condition that we supply them with preaching on Sabbath days, once in two or even three weeks. I lodged at our kind W's, crossed the Savannah at the Sister Ferry, and came on to Black Swamp, and in the dark got pretty well scratched by the trees. South Carolina, Sunday 3 Preached at Black Swamp Church on 2 Corinthians 3, 9. The subject was pointed, and the people were attentive. End of Section 18 Recording by Brian Keenan Section 19 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Monday 4. I preached at Perisburg to a full house. Some of the women appeared to feel the word. We had a heavy ride. I was faint and low-spirited at the view which I could not fail to take of the state of professors and sinners. I had about fifty hearers, 
and was invited to a friend's house, but thought it best to pursue my journey. We came to Salt Catcher's Bridge, where we stopped to pay our fare. But oh, the scent of rum, and men filled with it! How shocking! Who could enter such a house? I hoped for quiet private entertainment at Red Hill, but the gentleman refused to receive us for love, money, or hospitality's sake. I then sent Brother R. to know if we could get in at the next Negro quarter. Into the house we might be permitted to enter, but we could get no corn for our horses, and no bed for ourselves. Overseers dare not, and their employers will not receive strangers. They are too proud to sell, and too covetous to give. At length we providentially reached a Mr. C.'s, a schoolmaster and minister. We bought some corn for our horses, and had tea and bread and cheese for ourselves. I saw some beautiful boys at this house. Had these children the opportunity of a northern education, what choice young men they might make. I was happy in the house, and pleased with two poor blacks, who were much moved under prayer. Next morning I set out about six o'clock and passing the fish-pond, we came on slowly to Parker's Ferry. I found my appointment to meet Brother Jackson was not properly made, and as it was out of my way, I made a sudden turn to G's, on Edisto River. After dinner I met with Blank, who offered to be our guide. But when I began to show him his folly, and the dangerous state of his soul, he soon left us, and we had to beat our way through the swamps as well as we could. He said he had killed a negro worth sixty pounds, and a valuable horse with racing. Pushing on, we found our way to the ferry, and crossed about eight o'clock. I laid me down at nine, and rose again at seven o'clock in the morning, and set out. Traveling through heavy rains, deep swamps in dark nights, makes both man and beast feel the effect of yesterday's journey of forty-five miles. My mind has been severely agitated this tour. I have ridden about six hundred and fifty miles in one month, lacking one day. Charleston, Friday 8 I have got through Mr. Wesley's journal as far as 1782. Finding the subscription set on foot at the conference to purchase a burying ground and build a house was likely to succeed, we began to think about looking out for a lot. I also see a prospect of stationing two preachers here. Sunday 10 I preached with some life on Ezekiel 36, 26 But, alas, the people are so dissipated and so ignorant of gospel truth that it is difficult to preach to them. But I cannot spare, though they keep their course to hell. At night I spoke on Isaiah 6, 8-10. Our congregation consists of five hundred souls and upwards, three hundred being black. I have seen Mr. Johnson, the last president of the Orphan House in Georgia, who confirmed what I had written respecting it. Charleston is a growing, busy, dreadfully dissipated place. The printed list of vessels in the harbor sets forth 53 ships, 55 brigs, 25 sloops, 25 schooners, 7 snows, and 2 barks, besides pilot boats and coasters. Monday 11. Met the women's class, white and black, and had a powerful meeting. They agreed to hold a prayer meeting once a week amongst themselves. Tuesday 12. I make it my work to visit every afternoon. I happily met with Mr. Wesley's journal, bringing the date down to two years before his death. I could not but specially notice that his latter days were more abundant in labors and that he preached in places formerly unnoticed. He made this observation so fixed on my mind that it is rare, a mere miracle, for a Methodist to increase in wealth and not decrease in grace. I have now read the third volume of Gordon's History, Burnham's Select Martyrology, and Memoirs of Dying Saints. We have 217 traveling preachers and about 50,000 members in the United States. Glory to God in the highest. Saturday 16 I met the stewards and leaders. It was agreed that every other meeting should be purely spiritual, speaking experience and opening their hearts to each other. Sunday 17 I preached on Romans 3, 11 through 21. 
in the evening was very low, but was very plain on Luke 16.31. The building of a new house, and stationing another preacher in this city, and the state of this and the Georgia districts, with things relative to individuals in this society, do not work to my mind. I felt as if the charm was near breaking. Some wish union. Others will come back. The union must first take place with Dr. C., then with the British Conference, and then with the American. I ask, who made us twain, and strove to scatter firebrands, arrows, and death through the whole continent? Wednesday 20 I had an interview with Dr. A., who came from the north for his health. Seeing him so low, and fearing he would die if he stayed here, I hastily invited him to ride out into the country with me. Thursday 21 We left the city on small horses, with heavy baggage. We came to the cypress swamp in the night, following a poor negro, who waded through as a guide, and not expecting to find it as bad as it was. At length we came to Sister B's, and were kindly received. I found no appointments were made for me, owing to Brother Blank being sick. Friday 22 We set out for Santee, but missed our way, and took the road to Four Holds Bridge, being six miles out of our course. We again directed our course to Santee, and after coming within sight of Manigo's Ferry, I took a wrong road, and went three miles up the river. We came to Mr. H.'s, where we were comfortable, and had whatever we wanted. Saturday 23 We had our difficulties in getting across the river. The overseer had moved the flat to the middle ground, and would not suffer anyone to have it. I entreated him in behalf of the sick, but in vain. Had we waited a few minutes longer, our dear brother B. would have been there to conduct us. I have lately had cross winds. The roads, myself, Satan, and my sick companion, Dr. A., have all been matter of trial to me. Sunday 24 I preached the funeral of our brother B. on Isaiah 57, 1. The congregation was large and attentive, but appeared stupid and unfeeling. Monday 25 Came to Brother B.'s, the weather as sultry as in the month of July in the north. We rode thirty miles. Thursday 28 The weather was exceedingly cold, so that we declined going to the chapel, but had a comfortable meeting at Brother R.'s on Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Saturday, March 2 We crossed the water at E.'s Ferry and came to Father M.'s, an Englishman, from Epworth who was formerly converted, but, living under antinomian dotages, he lost the blessing. I trust the Lord hath again restored him by means of our labors. Here we have a chapel and society. Sunday 3 This day was rainy, yet nearly four hundred souls came together. But I could not fix the attention of the people, nor get them to understand. Monday 4 came to H's, and thence through Columbia, the capital of South Carolina. Brother Ellis, who was nearly risen from the dead, accompanied me from M's. Having left one sick man, I now take up another. We came to a house five miles from Columbia. We got a little bread, drank our own tea, had our horses fed, and paid two dollars next morning. So the matter ended. Tuesday 5 we had our difficulties in crossing the river, which was rising, and in beating up Cedar Creek fifteen miles, much of it through the woods. In the evening we came greatly wearied to ours, and were kindly entertained. It may be that Providence sent us here for some good. The man and his wife feel the want of religion. Wednesday 6 We came to Little River Bridge crossed at S's Ferry, and at length came, thoroughly wearied, to Brother Finch's. I expect we have been forced to ride twenty or thirty miles out of our way among strangers, on account of high waters. My mind has been variously tried. I have been employed in improving myself in the Hebrew tones and points, this being my horseback study. Thursday 7 Preached at F's. 
I consulted the minds of our brethren about building a house for conference, preaching, and a district school. But I have no ground to believe that our well-laid plan will be executed. Our preachers are unskillful, and our friends have little money. Friday 8 The rains continued, and the waters kept up. Crossed Ennery, high and rising powerfully. Tiger River being impassable, we rode to Cokesbridge, and had a hungry time. Came to Brother W.'s near Union Courthouse. I next day preached to a few people at the open meeting house, with some spiritual opening and sweetness. We were closely employed in writing subscriptions for the district school, and copies of the constitutions. Great rains still continue. Thursday 14. I preached at Flat Rock, in an open house, to an unfeeling people. Thence we came to Pacolet. The waters were up, but for our money we got across in a flat that had drifted and was taken up. Friday 15. Came to Father S.'s, a German, first a Baptist, then a Methodist, but last, and best of all, a Christian. Saturday and Sunday, 1617. Attended quarterly meeting in Union Circuit. There were no elders present. I preached on Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, and felt a great death among the people. Sunday we administered the sacrament and held love feast. I desired D. A. to preach, and Brother G. to exhort, whilst I retired to write to I. S., desiring him to take the presidentship of Union, Catawba, Little P. D., Great P. D., Anson and Santee circuits. The people hereabouts have been poorly handled by those who, whilst they made a great profession of religion, maintained antinomian principles and practice. I have been unwell, occasioned by the change of seasons, houses, and tables. Came to Brother M's on Sunday evening to get a day of rest. I feel the want of religion in families, congregations, and societies. I have traveled about three hundred miles the last three weeks, and have escaped the excessive rains, but have had to wrestle with floods. North Carolina, Monday, 18. I spent in writing sundry letters to the North, and in my favorite study. Tuesday, 19. I had a full house at L's. I felt very unfit for public exercises, both in body and mind. I have little desire to come here again. We can hardly get entertainment. We want brethren and children here. A woman invited us to her house, but when I understood the distance, I determined to haste along, and made it about thirty miles to F's, in the cove of the mountain, where we rested in peace, after getting a little Indian bread, fried bacon, and drinking some of our tea. Our lodging was on a bed set upon forks, and clapboards laid across, in an earthen floor cabin. But worse than all the rest, these people decline in religion. I feel awful for them on this account. Next morning about sunrise, we took the path up the mountain. I sent D.A. to Dr. Busnell's, to inquire if there was any expectation of my coming to Burke to preach. For being indisposed, I intended to turn aside to John's River. D.A. returned, and the doctor's nephew pursued, and brought us to town, where I gave them a plain, pointed sermon on, The Son of Man is come to seek and save that which was lost. Every one, young and old, lawyers, doctors, and clerks, were obliging, attentive, and serious. Dr. Busnell is a man I have heard of these twenty years, but knew him not until now. He descended from the Bohemians. His son Joseph was happily brought home to God by means of the Methodists. He lived to God, and died in Winchester about twelve months ago. The doctor's usage to me was that of a gentleman and Christian. The transition with respect to entertainment was very great. Here we had a table, bed, room, and whatever we wanted. But all this could not give me rest, having a return of my rheumatic and nervous complaints. Friday 22 Rode up to John's River. I am heavy, cannot attend study nor mental prayer, and company is irksome. Oh, that my soul were always flaming with perfect love! In the evening eight of us met together, 
and conversed on the work of God. All was love. Brother P. gave us an animating sermon on By Whom Shall Jacob Arise, For He Is Small. Sunday 24 I preached on 1 Corinthians 14, 3. There was a noise and a shaking each day. Some were awakened. One professed to be converted, and several to be quickened. The meeting lasted from 9 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. While he was yet speaking, there came also another. I heard there was a conference appointed at Reese's Chapel in Charlotte County, Virginia, to form what they call a free constitution and a pure church, and to reject me and my creatures. I know not whose hand is in this. I hope they will call themselves by another name. Only let them settle in congregations and tax the people and I know how it will work. If we, the itinerant connection, would give the government into the hands of a local ministry, as some would have it, and tax the people to pay preachers for Sabbath work, this would please such men. But this we dare not do. Whenever the people are unwilling to receive us, and think they can do better, we will quietly withdraw from them. And if those who wish the change can serve them better than we have done, well... Perhaps some of them may think with blank, in Georgia, that I am the greatest villain on the continent. I bid such adieu, and appeal to the bar of God. I have no time to contend, having better work to do. If we lose some children, God will give us more. Ah, this is the mercy, the justice of some, who, under God, owe their all to me, and my tyrants, so-called. The Lord judge between them and me. There appears to be a general quickening in the Yadkin circuit, and about eight souls have professed conversion there in the last three months. Monday 25 I rested and prepared to cross the Harmon Harim, the multitude of mountains. Tuesday 26 We wrought up the meanders of John's River to the globe, and met a few people at Mr. Moore's, a Baptist, a very kind head of a respectable family. Wednesday 27. We began our journey over the great ridge of mountains. We had not gone far before we saw and felt the snow. The sharpness of the air gave me a deep cold, not unlike an influenza. We came to the head of Watauga River, stopped at Mr. S.'s, and had some enlargement on, the promise is to you and to your children, etc. My soul felt for these neglected people. It may be, by my coming this way, Providence will so order it that I shall send them a preacher. We hasted on to Cove's Creek, invited ourselves to stay at Seas, where we made our own tea, obtained some butter and milk, and some most excellent Irish potatoes. We were presented with a little flax for our beds, on which we spread our coats and blankets, and three of us slept before a large fire. Thursday, 28. We made an early start, and came to the beaver dam. Three years ago, we slept here in a cabin without a cover. We made a breakfast at Mr. W.'s, and then attempted the iron or stone mountain, which is steep like the roof of a house. I found it difficult and trying to my lungs to walk up it. Descending the mountain, we had to jump down the steep stairs, from two to three and four feet. At the foot of this mountain, our guide left us to a man on foot. He soon declined, and we made the best of our way to Duggar's Ford, on Rowan's Creek. We came down the river, where there are plenty of large, round, rolling stones, and the stream was rapid. My horse began to grow dull, and intermittent fever and a deep cold disordered me much. I was under obligations to Henry Hill, my new aide, who was ready to do anything for me in his power. Perhaps Providence moved him to offer to travel with me, and his father to recommend him. Twenty years ago, a rude open loft did not affect me. Now it seldom fails to injure me. Tennessee, Friday, 29. We took our journey deliberately. We passed Doe River at the fork and came through the gap, a most gloomy scene, not unlike the shades of death in the Allegheny Mountain. Mr. L., a kind Presbyterian, fed our horses gratis. I must give the Presbyterians the preference for respect to ministers. We prayed and came on to blank, 
a kind people. But to our sorrow we find it low times for religion on Holstein and Watauga rivers. In Green Circuit there is some increase. My way opens, and I think I shall go to Kentucky. I laid my hands on what is called the Principles of Politeness, imitated from Chesterfield. It contains some judicious remarks, and shows the author to have been a man of sense and education, but of no religion. He recommends some things contrary thereto. Tuesday, April 2. Our conference began at Nelson's, near Jonesboro, in the New Territory. We have only four or five families of Methodists here. We had sweet peace in our conference. Wednesday 3. I gave an exhortation after brothers H. and M. H. had preached, and there was a melting among the people. Thursday 4. I had a happy time at my old friend C.'s. I am pained for his children, who are yet unconverted. Friday 5. Rode to Nolachucky and attended a meeting at Squire E.'s, where I had about two hundred hearers. We have formed a society in this place of thirty-one members, most of them new. There are appearances of danger on the road to Kentucky, but the Lord is with us. We have formed a company of nine men, five of whom are preachers, who are well armed and mounted. Saturday 6. Road to Green Blank, and crossed the Grand Island Ford of Nolichucky. The lowlands are very rich, the uplands barren. Stopped and fed at Green Courthouse. Here was brought a corpse to the grave in a covered carriage drawn by four horses. Solemn sight. Be instructed, O my soul. A whiskey-toper gave me a cheer of success as one of John Wesley's congregation. I came on alone through heavy rains, over bad hills and poor ridges, to Brother Van Pelt's, on Lick Creek. He is brother to Peter, my old first friend on Staten Island. I was weary, damp, and hungry, but had a comfortable habitation and kind, loving people, who heard, refreshed, and fed me. We had a large congregation at Brother Van Pelt's chapel, where I had liberty in speaking. I left the young men to entertain the people a while longer, and returned and read Mr. Wesley's sermon on riches. If reports be true, there is danger in journeying through the wilderness, but I do not fear. We go armed. If God suffer Satan to drive the Indians on us, if it be his will, he will teach our hands to war, and our fingers to fight and conquer. Monday 8 Our guard appeared, fixed and armed, for the wilderness. We came down to ease, and were well entertained. Thence we proceeded on to the main branch of Holstein, which, being swelled, we crossed in a flat. Thence to ours, where I found the reports relative to the Indians were true. They had killed the post and one or two more, and taken some prisoners. I had not much thought or fear about them. Tuesday 9. We came off. There were only eight in our company, and eight in the other, two women and three children. We had two poor sinners that set themselves to work wickedness. They would not let us go foremost, so we took it patiently and followed up to the Cumberland Station. I went to Robinson Station, where the soldiers behaved civilly. We gave them two exhortations and had prayer with them. They honored me with the swinging hammock, a bearskin, which was as great a favor to me as the governor's bed. Here I slept well. Kentucky, East Line, Wednesday 10. We hasted on our way, meeting with our troubles at the foot of Cumberland Mountain. We then went foremost, and traveled at a great rate, the roads being uncommonly good. We fed on the banks of Cumberland River, and kept up the head of rich lands. We then pushed through Little and Big Laurel to the Hazel Patch, Hood's Station. Here there was high life below stairs, talking, laughing, etc. We had a troop of poor, very poor sinners. I gave dreadful offense by a prayer I made. After resting here from three to six, we urged our way along the new road to Rock Castle, fed at the deserted station, and hasted to Willis Green's, but missing our way did not get in until eight o'clock. 
A supper at that time was good, and a bed was better, having not slept in one for three nights, and having ridden one hundred miles in two days. I felt so well in the morning I was ready to set out for Salt River. I went to Danville and set myself down in Mr. Rice's church, thence to F. Clark's, where I was not expected, but was quite welcome. I left my aid and pack horse at G's to rest. End of section 19. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 20 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Saturday 13. We rode 33 miles down to a quarterly meeting at Humphreys Chapel. Here my presence surprised the brethren. The state of the work here appears to be low. I had some light, life, and liberty in preaching, and some felt the word. We closed our meeting after several had joined in prayer. Lord, remember the labors of this day. Let not thy faithful word fall to the ground. From the quarterly meeting we came to Colonel Harding's. He has been gone some time, as a commissioner, to treat with the Indians. If he is dead, here is a widow and six children left. I cannot yet give him up for lost. We had a large congregation at W's, where I was led out on Psalm 34, 17 through 20. I cannot stand quarterly meetings every day. None need desire to be an American bishop upon our plan for the ease, honor, or interest that attends the office. From my present views and feelings, I am led to wish the conference would elect another bishop, which might afford me some help. Tuesday 16. Rode thirty miles without food for man or horse. I was uncomfortable when I came into the neighborhood of W's. There is a falling away among the people. Lord, help me to bear up in the evil day. Let me not disquiet myself and kill man and horse in vain. Thursday 18. I rode sixteen miles to Clark Station to attend the quarterly meeting. My winter's clothing, the heat of the weather, and my great exertions in traveling caused me to be heavy with sleep. Yet, blessed be God, I live continually in His presence, and Christ is all in all to my soul. Friday 19 I preached a short, pointed sermon, and the preachers and members were moved. Sunday 21 We had sacrament and love feast and some spoke much to the purpose. My subject was Hebrews 6, 4 through 8. The congregation was very large. I endeavored to show, first, how far people may advance in the grace of God, second, by what degrees they may apostatize, third, the impossibility of a recovery when they arrive at a certain degree of wickedness, one, because they sin against God, Christ, and the Eternal Spirit, and lose all they ever felt or knew. 2. Every means is lost upon them. To sin against the remedy is to be undone without it. The difference between those who are recoverable and those who are not. Such are not who deny the work to be of God, persecute, and say the devil was the author of it. The others acknowledge the work that it was of God, and have some regard for his people. Lastly, that the only security pointed out by the apostles against apostasy is to go on to perfection. Tuesday 23 I was at Bethel, the place intended for a school. Sunday 28 We had sacrament and love feast and some living testimonies. Monday 29 Rode through the rain to Lexington. I stopped at C. White's once more. Oh, that God may help him safe to glory. Came to Brother Morgan's. I felt awful and solemn, and some dejection of mind. Ah, want of religion is too visible in most houses. Tuesday 30, Wednesday, May 1, Thursday 2. We spent in conference, and in openly speaking our minds to each other. We ended under the melting, praying, praising power of God. We appointed trustees for the school, and made sundry regulations relative thereto. 
We read the form of discipline through, section by section, in conference. Friday 3 I preached on Habakkuk 3, 2. I first pointed out the distinguishing marks of a work of God. Second, the subjects. Third, the instruments. Fourth, the means. If ever I delivered my own soul, I think I have done it this day. Some people were moved in an extraordinary manner, shouting and jumping at a strange rate. Saturday 4. Came to Bethel to meet the trustees. Sunday 5. We had an awful time whilst I opened and applied, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. It was a feeling melting time, among old and young, and I am persuaded good was certainly done this day. I feel a good deal tried in spirit, yet, blessed be God, I still have peace within. God is all to me. I want more faith to trust Him with my life, and all I have and am. Tuesday 7 We rode down to the crab orchard, where we found company enough, some of whom were very wild. We had a company of our own and refused to go with them. Some of them gave us very abusive language, and one man went upon a hill above us and fired a pistol towards our company. We resolved to travel in our order and bound ourselves by honor and conscience to support and defend each other and to see every man through the wilderness. But we could not depend upon wicked and unprincipled men who would leave and neglect us and even curse us to our faces. Nor were we at liberty to mix with swearers, liars, drunkards. And, for aught we know, this may not be the worst with some. We were about fourteen or fifteen in company, and had twelve guns and pistols. We rode on near the defeated camp, and rested till three o'clock under great suspicion of Indians. We pushed forward, and by riding forty-five miles on Wednesday, and about the same distance on Thursday, we came safe to Robinson Station, about eight o'clock. Friday 10. We rode leisurely from the edge of the wilderness, crossed Holstein, and about one o'clock came to Brother E's, it being about sixteen miles. Tennessee, Saturday 11. We came to Brother Van Pelt's, with whom we rested on the Sabbath. I have traveled between five and six hundred miles in the last four weeks, and have rested from riding fifteen days at conferences, and other places. I have been much distressed with this night work, no regular meals, nor sleep, and it is difficult to keep up prayer in such rude companies as we have been exposed to. I have also been severely afflicted through the whole journey. Monday 13 was a day of great trial. We rode about forty-six miles, stopped at blank, where, through carelessness, I nearly had been burnt up. Tuesday 14. At eleven o'clock we came to bees. The subject was, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Sisters W. and H., making some clothing, and repairing my burnt raiment next day, we could not move until eight o'clock. We then set out without a guide, missed our road, and came in about two o'clock. We found the people patiently waiting, to whom I preached on, Ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Virginia, Thursday, 16. Came to Abingdon. Felt very heavy. I, however, preached in the courthouse to a very genteel people on the words of Joshua, Ye cannot serve God, etc., Saturday, 18. Came to Sister Russell's. I am very solemn. I feel the want of the dear man who, I trust, is now in Abraham's bosom, and hope ere long to see him there. He was a general officer in the Continental Army, where he underwent great fatigue. He was powerfully brought to God, and for a few years past was a living flame, and a blessing to his neighborhood. He went in the dead of winter on a visit to his friends, was seized with an influenza, and ended his life from home. Oh, that the gospel may continue in this house. I preached on Hebrews 12, 1 through 4, and there followed several exhortations. We then administered the sacrament, and there was weeping and shouting among the people. Our exercises lasted about five hours.
I have little rest by night or by day. Lord, help thy poor dust. I feel unexpected storms, within, from various quarters. Perhaps it is designed for my humiliation. It is a sin in thought that I am afraid of. None but Jesus can support us by his merit, his spirit, his righteousness, his intercession, that is, Christ in all, for all, through all, and in every mean and word and work. Monday 20 Rode to seas and was well steeped in rain. Here I wrote a plan for a district school. Wednesday 22 we rode forty-five miles to H's, where we had many people. About five o'clock, on our way over the hills, we felt the rain without, and hunger within. Next day we crossed Walker's Mountain, and in the evening met Brother M. at Monday's. Friday 24 Came to Rehoboth, in the sinks of Greenbrier, where we held our conference. I was greatly comforted at the sight of Brothers B. J. and Alice Cox. We had peace in our conference, and were happy in our cabin. I learned that mischief is begun in the lower parts of Virginia. J. O. Kelly and some of the local preachers are the promoters and encouragers of divisions among the brethren. Tuesday, 28. We passed the Sweet Springs, and crossed a rough mountain to Brother Drew's, on Potts Creek. I wrote many letters to the South District of Virginia, to confirm the souls of the people and guard them against the division that is attempted among them. Came to E. Mitchell's, crossed James River near the mouth of Craigus Creek, but was prevented by the rain from pursuing our journey. We spent the evening comfortably at Sister Pryor's. Friday 31 Rode forty-five miles to Moore's Furnace, and lodged with kind Brother R. Saturday, June 1 we came to Staunton, a very unpleasing place to me. There are an Episcopal church, a courthouse, good taverns, and stores here. We went to Mr. Blank's, expecting to find a friend. After making the trial, we thought it best to return and take lodging in a tavern. Thence we proceeded on to Rocktown, a beautiful place. Here I felt myself stiff and weary, and troubled with rheumatic pains. Sweet sleep was quite welcome. My congregation was small, the people not having proper notice of my coming. Satan has been sowing discord here, and has hindered the work of God. But I hope the approaching quarterly meeting will be a blessing to them, and that we shall not toil in vain. The loss of sleep, and other circumstances, made me very heavy, and brought on a sick headache, which I had not felt for some time. I spent the evening with Dr. Dulaney rose and took the rain next morning as usual, having had rain for eight or ten days successively. On my way I was met by an old German, who shook me by the hand, and said he wished he might be worthy to wash my feet. Yea, thought I, if you knew what a poor sinful creature I am, you would hardly look at one so unworthy. But Jesus lives. O precious Christ, thou art mine, and I am thine. Came to Newtown the roads exceeding miry, and our horses very tired. We are glad to get a little rest at Brother Phelps's. My soul has been much tried by Satan, and I am pained for the work of God. In my six months' travel, I find that six acceptable preachers are preparing to settle themselves in the world and leave the itinerancy. Thursday 6 We came to Winchester, where they have built an excellent house, and we have better times than I expected. Here nothing would do but I must preach, notwithstanding the lanes and streets of the town were so filled with mire, owing to the late rains. Friday 7 We rode to Bath, that seat of sin. Here we continued to rest ourselves. My public work was a sermon on the Sabbath. A number of our society from various parts being here, I have an opportunity of receiving and answering many letters. I am afraid I shall spend nine or ten days here to little purpose. I employ myself in reading Thomas a Kempis and the Bible. I also have an opportunity of going alone into the silent grove, and of viewing the continent, and examining my own heart. 
I hope for some relief from my rheumatic complaint which has so oppressed me for six months past. The people here are so gay and idle that I doubt there being much good done among them. The troubles of the East and West meet me as I pass. Maryland, Sunday 16. A number of us crossed the ferry at the mouth of Great Capon, and made our way through great heat to Old Town, thirty-two miles. We were obliged to ride moderately, or the excessive warmth of the weather might have killed our horses. We had no small consolation in uniting the brethren from three districts in conference, whose names only were before known to each other. I gave them one sermon on, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Our conference sat three days successively, very closely employed. Thursday 20 I had some little time to read, write, and pray. My congregation was careless and unfeeling. I enforced David's charge to Solomon. Methinks it ought to be with those who have to do with souls, as with a tender-feeling physician that attends a patient. Does the fever rage, or the delirium continue? His countenance is sad, and when labor and medicine fail, and the symptoms continue or grow worse, he is then forced, as a skillful physician, to pronounce his patient incurable, whilst a quack flatters and sees no danger. Such is the difference between a true minister of Christ and a false teacher, when applied to the souls of men. Friday 21 we rode thirty-five miles to F's, and thirty-five more the next day to Fort Littleton. Our roads are rough. I am sick. Our fare is coarse. But it is enough. I am to die. I have been under violent temptations. Lord, keep me every moment. Our horses were out of the way, so that we could not pursue our journey. I was desirous to be doing good somewhere, and was led to speak to a woman unknown to me, and urged her to pray three times a day. She appeared tender, and with tears promised so to do. Perhaps this labor may not be lost. I have had the happiness to hear that my labor of this kind at the widow H.'s, when there last, was successful, and that a woman was wrought upon to give herself to God, and found peace. We collected the little persecuted society, to whom I preached on, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. They were poor, but very kind. Thence we proceeded on to Juniata, crossed to Mifflin Town, and came to H.M.'s. Thursday 27. Was to me a day of trial. We set out late towards Northumberland. Night coming on, we stopped at Penn's Creek. Next morning we went to Northumberland to breakfast. It has a little chapel that serves as a schoolhouse, belonging to the Methodists. We have a few kind, respectable friends, whose circumstances are comfortable. I gave them a sermon on John 14, 6, and in the afternoon paid Sunbury a visit. The people here are almost all Dutch. I was enabled to speak alarming words on Acts 4, 12. July 2 after preaching on the grace of God appearing to all men, we wrought up the hills and narrows to Wyoming. We stopped at a poor house. Nevertheless, they were rich enough to sell us a half bushel of oats, and had sense enough to make us pay well for them. We reached Mr. P's about eleven o'clock. I found riding in the night caused a return of my rheumatic complaint through my breast and shoulders. But all is well. The Lord is with us. Thursday 4. Being the anniversary of the American independence, there was a great noise among the sinners. A few of us went down to Shawnee, called a few people from their work, and found it good for us to be there. Sunday 7. The Lord has spoken in awful peals of thunder. Oh, what havoc was made here fifteen years ago! Most of the inhabitants were either cut off or driven away. The people might have clothed themselves in sackcloth and ashes the third, if in white and glory the fourth of July. The inhabitants here are very wicked, but I feel as if the Lord would return. I hope brothers F, I, and P will be owned of the Lord. 
the man at whose house I was to preach, made a frolic the day before. It was said he sent a mile across the river for one of his neighbors, taking him from his work, and telling him he was about to bleed to death. This falsity was invented, I suppose, to incline the man to come. The people would not come to his house. I had to walk a mile through burning heat to preach. I was severely exercised in mind, hardly knowing where to go to get a quiet, clean place to lie down. Monday 8 I took the wilderness through the mountains, up Lackawanny, on the twelve-mile swamp. This place is famous for dirt and lofty hemlock. We lodged in the middle of the swamp at S's, and made out better than we expected. Next morning we set out in the rain, without breakfast. When we came to the ferry, a man took us to his house, and gave us some bread, butter, and some buckwheat, and then charged us four shillings and two pence, although we found our own tea and sugar. The place we should have called at was a little farther on the way. On the fifth, after very sultry weather, there came a whirlwind, and a very great storm, in which there fell hail of such a size that three stones filled a pint measure. This went through Hudson some distance from us. New Jersey, Wednesday, 10. We came to Broadheads, and were totally unknown. I was sick, and stopped for breakfast. They suspected we were preachers. One asked Brother Hill who I was. Being informed, the mother, son, and daughter came running with tears to speak with me. I stopped and gave them a sermon at Marbletown. I found the work of God going on among the low Dutch. These, of all the people in America, we have done the least with. New York, Saturday, 13. We rode to Cayman's Patent. We had a good quarterly meeting. Many newly converted souls testified of the goodness of God and of the power of His grace. From thence to Albany with reluctance, and lectured being Sabbath evening. I felt the wickedness of the people, but we had a melting season among the preachers in our conference. Great changes will be made among the preachers from this conference. Some will be sent to New Jersey, others to Rhode Island and Massachusetts. The people of Albany roll in wealth. They have no heart to invite any of the servants of God to their houses. Unless a great change should take place, we shall have no more conferences here. I am tired down with fatigue and labor, under great weakness of body. Yet I must haste to Lynn. It may be to meet trouble. But my days will be short. My suffering time will soon be o'er. Then shall I sigh and weep no more. My ransomed soul shall soar away, to sing God's praise in endless day. We hope two hundred souls have been awakened, and as many converted, in Albany District the past year. Our friends are happy here, not being distressed with divisions in the church, nor by war with the Indians, as they are to the southward. According to our reckoning, we make it about 447 miles from Old Town to Albany, to come the mountainous road through the woods, and to come by Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York, it is 600 miles. Saturday 20. The congregation being small, and the preachers sleepy, made it a task for me to preach at Rose Chapel. Sunday 21. There was a breath of life in the love feast. I was enabled to be close in preaching on Matthew 18, 3. Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. In my introduction, I showed that the being converted here mentioned is the same word which in other places is translated born again, answering to the new creation and resurrection. In this discourse, I took occasion to show the miserable state of the unconverted, both present and future, and the exercises that converted souls do and must pass through, that they must be made as little children, wholly dependent on God, possessing meekness of spirit, and freed from the guilt, power, and nature of sin. My mind enjoyed peace, but I was grieved at seeing a number of young, unfeeling sinners assembled at a tavern on the Lord's Day. Connecticut, Monday, 22. 
We rode fifteen miles to Sharon, two miles from Litchfield. There is a little move among the people of this place. Tuesday, 23. Came to H's. I rested in a very solitary shade, and was comforted in my own mind. Perhaps the old man is right, who says, Not many of this generation will enter into the promised land, but their children. Came to East Hartford, and find it still a day of small things. Falling under deep dejection, such as I had not known for months, I concluded to preach this evening for my own consolation on Thou that teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? We passed through and spent a night at Wyndham, a pleasant town, thence through Canterbury and Plainfield, where our preachers from Connecticut have visited. But it is a dry land, little rain in a double sense. Thence I came upon the state of Rhode Island, stopped in Coventry, and found that the two preachers stationed here have been running over almost the whole state, and had formed but few societies. When I came to Providence, I, Martin, told me that under the present difficulties they had agreed not to forward the preachers of the Methodists among them, nor to befriend them. I asked for a tavern, and was directed to General T's, where I was used well. Some were displeased at our praying, and acted much like sodomites. Oh, the enmity and wickedness that is in the human heart! In the morning I was visited by Mr. Wilson. I gave him my mind freely, and left him. The secret of the matter was, that many in that congregation would have been kind to us, but meeting with Mr. Blank, coming from Ireland, once a traveling preacher, he settled with them. Their convenience suited his interest. But the people can hear us in the schoolhouse, and if any are awakened, they will join the church over the bridge. Massachusetts We had heavy work for man and horse to reach Easton. Our money grew short. End of section 20. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 21 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Sunday 28. Reading the scripture in the congregation appeared to be a new thing among the people. I gave them a lecture under the apple trees on Isaiah 35, 3-6, and trust my labor was not lost. Monday, 29. We rode upwards of thirty miles through great heat to Lynn. On our way we fed our horses and bought a cake and some cheese for ourselves. Surely we are a spectacle to men and angels. The last nine days we have ridden upwards of two hundred miles, and all things taken together, I think it worse than the wilderness. The country abounds with rocks, hills, and stones, and the heat is intense, such as is seldom known in these parts. Tuesday 30. Preached in Lynn on Second Chronicles 15, 2, the prophecy of Azariah by the Spirit. 1. We are to seek Jehovah in the means, by the direction of the Word and Spirit, through Christ by repentance and faith. 2. The Lord will be with his people, as a Father and God, in his wisdom, love, truth, and mercy, at all times and places, in every strait and difficulty. 3. We should be with God as his children, to fear, trust in, worship, and serve him. 4. The breach of the covenant by idolatry, departing from the love, fear, and confidence they have in him. 5 that the Lord will withdraw from such souls. August. We have only about three hundred members in this district, yet we have a call for seven or eight preachers. Although our members are few, our hearers are many. Sunday 4. We had preaching at six, twelve, two, and seven o'clock, and administered the Lord's Supper also. I have now finished my work at Lynn. Circumstances have occurred which have made this conference more painful than any one conference beside. Monday 5. We rode to Cambridge. On our way, we called on Mr. Adams, and found him and his wife under deep exercise of mind. We then came to Waltham, where many attended. 
Things appear strange here, but several souls are under awakenings, and there is hope the Lord will work. The harvest is great. The living, faithful laborers are few. We hasted to West Ham, and found a congregation at the Baptist Meeting House. From West Ham we came two miles to Needham. Here the majority of the people prefer the Methodist preachers, and want to pay them by a tax on the people. But brothers Smith and Hill absolutely refused this plan, for which I commend them. I gave them a sermon, and found some feeling souls. Wednesday 7 We passed several little towns, and came to Milford, about nineteen miles from Needham. Here they have a good priest's house, and meeting house. All appear to be in peace and fullness of bread. About three hundred were soon collected, to whom I preached on, The love of Christ constraineth us, etc. The man at whose house we lodged was very kind, and told me his father held society meeting in the house where we preached, and, except conditional perseverance, preached our doctrines. We rode through Minden, Douglas, Thompson, Woodstock, up to Pomfret, missing our way, and being very unwell, as I have been for some time with an inflammation in my throat, we concluded to turn in at a tavern, and spend the night in pain. Pain begets invention. I now began to think, what shall I do? I am my own physician. I sent for two blisters, applied both to my ears, and then began to march to Ashford. I turned in at Mr. W.'s, and met brothers T. and S., and was dragged out to baptize a household, whilst I had a fever. The weather was excessively warm, like Carolina. I had an awful night. Connecticut, Saturday, 10. Came to Brother H.'s. Here I grew worse. This night I had some discharges, and was somewhat relieved. For a few days I felt some pain in my left foot. It now inflamed more and more, until I could scarcely put it to the floor. I applied a poultice, and spent the Sabbath in private, and was closely engaged in reading the scriptures. Monday 12. Our conference sat at Tolland. Lame as I was, I went through the business, and notwithstanding I was tired out with labor, heat, and pain, and company, I must also preach. So I submitted, and endeavored to apply Second Timothy 2, 24-26. Being unable to ride on horseback, I drove on in a carriage through the rain, over the rocks, in the dark, and came to Dr. Steele's at Ellington. Yesterday the pain seized my right foot. I am now not able to move from my horse to a house. An attack of this kind generally terminates in about eight days. Thursday 15 Came in Brother S.'s carriage to Hartford. From what we can gather, we are encouraged to hope that upwards of three hundred souls have been awakened, and more than two hundred converted to God the last year. If this work goes on, Satan will be laboring by all means, and by every instrument. From Hartford I came to Middletown. I slept at E. F.'s, who was the first separate minister on the west of Connecticut River, a man who had labored and written much. Had his learning been equal to his piety and good sense, the standing order would have trembled under his hand. Who would think his church would vote him out, when old and gray-headed, because he could not subscribe to the new divinity? He is now, as he saith, like a broken vessel, upwards of four score years of age. His wife and children favor us. I came to New Haven, thence to Derby, and had a return of the inflammation in my throat. Came to West Haven, very unwell. I had heavy work to get to Reading, being lame in both feet. I laid myself down on the roadside, and felt like Jonah or Elijah. I took to my bed at Reading. Monday 19 Rode ten miles on horseback, and thirteen in a carriage to Bedford, and rested a day at dear Widow Banks's, where I was at home. Oh, how sweet is one day's rest! New York, Wednesday, 21. When I came near the White Plains, my horse started, and threw me into a mill-race, knee-deep in water, my hands inside in the dirt. 
my shoulder was hurt by the fall. I stopped at a house, shifted my clothes, and prayed with the people. If any of these people are awakened by my stopping there, all will be well. This day I made out to ride thirty-three miles. Thursday, 22. Came to New York. The weather is extremely warm. Great afflictions prevail here. Fluxes, fevers, influences. It is very sickly also in Philadelphia. I have found by secret search that I have not preached sanctification as I should have done. If I am restored, this shall be my theme more pointedly than ever, God being my helper. I have been sick upwards of four months, during which time I have attended to my business, and ridden, I suppose, not less than three thousand miles. I kept close house in New York until Sunday 25. Then I attempted to preach on Romans 13, 10 through 12. The weather being warm and dry, I caught an influenza which held me four days, and this in addition to my fevers and lameness. The effects of this weather were sensibly felt by every member of conference, some of whom were so indisposed that they could not attend. We made a collection of forty pounds for the relief of the preachers on the frontiers of New York and Connecticut. We have awful accounts from Philadelphia, which made me feel too much like a man, and too little like a Christian. New Jersey, Monday, September 2. I rested. Tuesday 3 dined at Elizabethtown on my way to Philadelphia. Wednesday 4 I reached Trenton and received a letter from Brother M. K. Y., requesting me to come to Burlington, and that it was doubtful whether it were prudent to go to Philadelphia on account of the contagion that then prevailed in that city. I did not reach Burlington so soon as was expected, and the preachers went on to Philadelphia. I preached in Burlington, and the people were very solemn. Pennsylvania, Friday 6. We rode to the city. Ah, how the ways mourn! How low-spirited are the people whilst making their escape! I found it awful indeed. I judge the people die from fifty to one hundred in a day. Some of our friends are dying, others flying. Sunday 8 I preached on Isaiah 58, 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. The people of this city are alarmed, and well they may be. I went down to Ebenezer, a church in the lower part of the city, but my strength was gone. However, I endeavored to open and apply Micah 6, 9. The streets are now depopulated, and the city wears a gloomy aspect. All night long my ears and heart were wounded with the cry of fire. Oh, how awful! And what made it still more serious, two young men were killed by the fall of a wall. One of them was a valuable member of our society. Poor Philadelphia, the lofty city, he layeth it low. I am very unwell. My system is quite weak. I feel the want of pure air. We appointed Tuesday ninth to be observed as a day of humiliation. I preached on First Kings 8, 37 through 40, and had a large and very serious weeping congregation. The preachers left the city on Monday. I continued in order to have the minutes of conference printed. Wednesday 11. We left the city, solemn as death. The people of Derby and Chester are sickly, and they are greatly alarmed at Wilmington. I found a quiet retreat at Friend Bonds, near Newcastle. Maryland. Came to the quarterly meeting at the crossroads, where there were crowds of people. I gave them a sermon on, Yea, in the way of thy judgments have we waited for thee. I showed, 1. That God sent pestilence, famine, locusts, blasting, mildew, and caterpillars, and that only the church and people of God know and believe his judgments. 2 that God's people waited for him in the way of his judgments, and three, that they improved and profited by them. About one o'clock we set out and rode thirty-two miles to Thomas White's, and spent one day at my former home. 
Sunday 15. We rode twenty miles to Milford, and had a comfortable love feast. I preached to many on Second Chronicles 7, 13 through 15. I preached a labored sermon at Quantee's quarterly meeting. The second day, Brother G. preached on, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. My finishing stroke was to show them the way to ruin. So we parted. Thursday 19. We rode to Accomac and had a comfortable quarterly meeting at Downings. I met the located official members, and we had sweet fellowship together. Sunday 22. After a gracious love feast and preaching on Jeremiah 17, 9, 10, I returned, weak in body, and under dejection of mind, to C's Chapel, a ride of twenty miles. This is one of the most awful places I ever visited, according to my feelings. I had only courage to exhort for a few minutes. Brother S., one of our elders, gave it as his opinion that two hundred people had died in the bounds of Somerset Circuit the last summer. I searched the continent for the travels of sin and true godliness. Now they are printed and bound together and sell well. Our Americans are not fools. No books sell like those on plain, practical subjects, as the Saints Rest, Baxter's Call, Alina's Alarm, and Thomas a Kempis. I came to B.E.'s to quarterly meeting. We had a solemn time, though our congregation was small. Friday, 27. We came to Easton, 25 miles. Here the people pretended to be afraid of my communicating the infection of the yellow fever, although I had been out of Philadelphia from the 9th to the 26th instant. I gave them a long discourse, and then rode to Hillsborough, and thence to Judge White's. Sickness prevails in every house, but there are not so many deaths as might be expected from general afflictions. Monday 30. I preached at quarterly meeting on The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. 1. Originally, independently, communicatively good. 2. He knoweth, loveth, approveth, and delivereth those that put their trust in him. Tuesday, October 1. I came early to Churchill, and felt myself solemnly engaged with God. In the evening I was enabled to give a close, alarming exhortation on the present alarming and awful times. Wednesday 2 I endeavored to enforce, at Wharton's, let us search and try our ways, and turn again to the Lord. The wind being contrary, we rode twenty miles to Brother B's, through dust and draught. Brother B conveyed me to northeast on Thursday, and Friday 4, after disputing the passage at the ferry with Mr. R., I rode to Cokesbury. I had left Philadelphia, and knew not that a pass was necessary, until I came to the ferry. Mr. Barney, who was a health officer, behaved like a gentleman, and gave me a true and honorable certificate. I found matters in a poor state at college, five hundred pounds in debt, and our employers nearly seven hundred pounds in arrears. Thursday 10. Came to Baltimore, passed the guard against the plague in Philadelphia, set for prudence, one hundred miles off. Oh, the plague of sin! Would to God we were more guarded against its baleful influence! I was sick, weary, and feeble. Yet, preaching being appointed for me in town, I sounded the alarm on Jeremiah 13:16, Give glory to God before he cause darkness, etc. Friday, 11, I hasted to Annapolis. Saturday, 12. Attended a quarterly meeting at Bignall's in a large tobacco house, where I enlarged on the weighty words of our Lord. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Monday, 14. I opened and applied the charge given by David to Solomon at G.R.'s, well adapted to the children of the Methodists. Tuesday, 15. I had a large congregation of serious women at Captain Weems's. To these I preached on John 14, 16. 1. 
Christ is the way to God by precept, example, and power. 2. The truth. The true Messiah. Revealing the truths of God. The standard and judge of all. 3. The life by his merit and spirit. Leading to the knowledge of God in his perfections and glory. Wednesday 16. I enlarged on, Without me ye can do nothing, and applied it to sinners, Pharisees, hypocrites, backsliders, believers, and sanctified souls. Saturday 19. I attended a quarterly meeting at H's, where I exhorted the people to forget the things that are behind and to reach towards the things that are before, i.e., establishment in grace, walking with God, resignation to His will, meekness, humility, perfect love, a glorious resurrection, and eternal glory. Leave the things that are behind. See Hebrews 6, 1 and 5, 12. Leave these, so as not to rest in conviction, repentance, faith, justification, nor in church ordinances, as being the whole of religion, or any part thereof, any farther than as they lead us to Christ. We had some life in the love feast, and in public service. But there is a dearth here. The circuit has suffered for want of a preacher. Sabbath 20 I came to Baltimore and preached on Amos 3, 6-8. through 8. Monday 21 Our conference began. I was well pleased with the stations, and the faithful talk most of our brethren gave us of their experience and exercises. I preached a charity sermon on Hath God Cast Away His People? We collected 27 pounds, which was augmented to 43 pounds, and applied it to the supplying the wants of the distressed preachers. Sunday 27 I preached and ordained elders and deacons at the point, and at night in town spoke on Jeremiah 9, 12 through 14. Monday 28 I left Baltimore in a cool, stormy day. We dined with Captain White on the north branch of the Patuxent, and had only time to warm, eat, drink, and pray. We hasted on to S. Turner's. We stopped on the way at the house of some old, forgotten English people. I talked plainly to the poor old woman, and commended the family to God in prayer. I wrote to my old friend A's, and spent the evening in Christian conversation, writing, and prayer. Virginia, Tuesday, 29. Five of us came to Stafford Courthouse. The next day we dined and prayed at F's, and in the evening reached Collins's, an old stand in Carolyn County. Friday, November 1. We breakfasted at Ellis's Tavern, and next day rode to Richmond and Manchester and came to bees, and preached to a congregation mostly women. Thence we proceeded to J.A.'s. I was so hoarse it was with difficulty I spoke to the people. In six days we have ridden two hundred and twenty miles. Sunday 3 We had to ride ten miles to quarterly meeting at T's Chapel. I did not expect to be heard. But to my great surprise, I had not spoken long before my voice was clear. We had a melting time under Brother John Easter, was much blessed with the local brethren. Brothers W. and A. were recommended to the office of deacons, and ordained. Brother W., with two others, are appointed to wait on me at the ensuing conference. What for will then be better known. Tuesday 5 I wrote to Brother Bees, and the next day preached at Charity Chapel. It was a day appointed by the bishop and committee of the Episcopal Church to be observed as a day of fasting. I feel my mind greatly eased relative to those who have lately separated from us and set out as reformers. Let the Lord look to his own church. Thursday 7 We had a serious congregation at Cumberland Quarterly Meeting. Some appeared to be much engaged. My Sabbath day's journey was from Sister L's to a new chapel in Prince Edward, twenty miles, where, after preaching on Matthew twenty-four, twelve through fourteen, 
I was led to say a few things for myself, as to my coming to and staying in America, of the exercise of that power which was given by the first and confirmed by the last general conference. Many of the people thought me not that monster I had been represented. I thought this the more necessary here, as great pains had been taken to misrepresent and injure me in this congregation and neighborhood. So it is. When I am absent, some will say what they please of me. After sacrament we came, weary and hungry, to Brother R.'s, by whom we were kindly entertained. My soul is stayed on the Lord, although Satan will push at me by means of the world, the flesh, and false brethren. Tuesday 12 I preached at Brother T.'s on Nottaway River. The people here have been unsettled by the divisions which a few persons have endeavored to make in our societies. Thursday 14 Rode from Brother N.'s to Salem, and, after preaching, to Brother M.'s in Brunswick, making it about thirty miles, without eating or drinking. Friday 15 I had a few serious souls at Rose's Creek. Here I received the happy tidings from John Dickens that he, with his family, had been preserved during the late contagion in the city of Philadelphia. Sunday 17 At Merritt's Chapel, the weather was rainy and uncomfortable, and Brother E. very unwell. The next day I rode from Brother F.'s, about twenty miles, to preach a funeral discourse on the death of our dear Brother Cox. The Lord's power was present. Brother Bruce preached at Jones's Chapel on Sowing to the Flesh. I was happy in God at Brother P.'s in the evening. The next day I stayed at the chapel until it appeared as if I was well nigh chilled through, and to cure me had to ride twelve miles to Brother Moss's, thence twenty miles to Brother Bonner's, where I met several of the brethren in great peace and love. Came to J. Smith's and had a good season on Ephesians 4, 22 through 25. The seeds of discord have been sown here, but they have not taken deep root. Several of the preachers came in, and we spent the evening, and were happy together. Sunday 24 Hasted to Petersburg, came in a little before noon, and preached on Isaiah 66, 4, 5. Monday 25, and the following days, were spent in conference. The preachers were united, and the Lord was with us of a truth. There were fifty-five preachers present. I had some difficulties respecting the stations, but there was a willingness among the brethren to go where they were appointed, and all was well. Our disaffected brethren have had a meeting at the Piney Grove, in Amelia Circuit, and appointed three men to attend this conference. One of these delegates appears to be satisfied, and has received ordination amongst us since he was delegated by them. The other two appeared, and we gave them a long talk. My mind has been closely employed in the business of the conference, so that I have slept only about sixteen hours in four nights. End of section 21. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 22 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Friday 29. Rode 19 miles and preached at Mrs. Cox's barn. The next day we reached Brother Moorings in Surrey. Sunday, December 1. My mind was in a state of heaviness. I endeavored to preach on 2 Corinthians 13, 5. It is heavy times here, but the work is the Lord's, and I wish to leave it all to Him. In discoursing on the above text, I pursued nearly the following method. 1. Such as profess to have experienced religion should examine whether they have not let some fundamental doctrines slip. 2. Examine into the nature and effects of faith. It is the substance of things hoped for, in a penitent state, and the evidence of things not seen, in a justified state. 3. They should know themselves, whether they are seekers, believers, or backsliders. 4. 
they should prove themselves to themselves, to their ministers, the world, and the church of God. 5. That if they have heart religion, Christ is in them, the meek, loving, pure mind of Christ. Monday 2. Came to Ellison's Chapel in Sussex. Tuesday 3. Preached at Lane's Chapel. It was low times and cold weather. Thence to my old friend Moss's, near Sussex Courthouse. I have lately read Blair's sermons, where I find some very beautiful things. They contain good moral philosophy. And his sermon on gentleness is worthy of the taste of Queen Charlotte. And if money were anything towards paying for knowledge, I should think that sermon worth two hundred pounds sterling, which some say the Queen gave him. Thursday 5 After riding several miles out of my way, I came to dear brother and sister Parham's, two Israelites indeed. I was unwell, yet spent the evening comfortably. Next day I had a long ride to Pelham's in Greensville where I enlarged to a small, serious congregation on 2 Corinthians 12, 15, the grand subjects of the faithful minister's care. Saturday 7 Rode through the rain to Woolsey's barn, now Dromgoole's chapel. Next day we had but twenty miles to ride for our Sabbath day's journey. Came to Roanoke and enlarged on Ephesians 3, 7, 8, in which I showed, first, how a minister of Christ is made. Second, to whom he is to preach. Third, what he is to preach, namely, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Fourth, the humble opinion the ministers of Christ entertain of themselves. North Carolina, Monday 9. Crossed Roanoke in a flat with seven horses, but we were mercifully preserved. Came to Warrenton. I had a violent pain in my head, and, my horse's back being injured, I stopped at Myrick's, having ridden only twenty miles. Tuesday 10. Came to Lewisburg and held our conference at Green Hills, about a mile from town. Great peace and unity prevailed amongst us. The preachers cheerfully signed an instrument, expressing their determination to submit to, and abide by, what the general conference has done. Friday 13. Our conference rose. It was agreed that the next conference should be held in Petersburg. There the preachers from North Carolina, Greenbrier, the Center and South Districts of Virginia may all meet, and change properly, and unite together for their own and the people's good. Saturday 14. Road to Father P. B.'s. Oh, that the last days of ancient Methodists may be the best. I have a cold and pains, but there is ease in peace, and love, and communion with God. Sunday 15 We had as many people at Father B's as we could find room for. I delivered some alarming words from Isaiah 65, 2. Monday 16 Rode up the noose, fed at Tompkins's, and hasted to the widow Carson's, about forty miles. Tuesday, 17. After riding about 26 miles to ours, I gave them a short discourse on The Foundation of God Standeth Sure. After eating, we had to ride 16 or 18 miles in the evening home with Brother McGee. In the morning we crossed Deep River in a flat, not without danger, thence down Caraway Creek to Randolph Town, thence to Huary at Fuller's Ford. Here we were assisted by some young men with a canoe. Thank the Lord, both men and horses were preserved. The young men sometimes prayed, and sometimes swore. After riding three miles, came to Woods, but Russell's was the place of preaching, where I found some who had heard me in Virginia many years past. I labored to speak, although my throat was very sore. The hearts of the people appeared to be cold, as well as their bodies. Friday 20. I had to ride thirty miles by two o'clock, but was so poorly I declined preaching. Saturday and Sunday I spent at I. Randall's. I gave place to brothers M. K. and B. 
On Sunday evening, I gave the family a discourse at W. Randall's. Monday 23. Crossed Rocky River. This is a bold stream. It rises in Mecklenburg, North Carolina, and, after running 80 or 90 miles, empties itself into P.D., a little below Montgomery. South Carolina. Came to Blakeney's, on the waters of Lynch's Creek. Here I preached to about 40 people, it being Christmas Day. Thursday, 26. We crossed various branches which empty into P.D. about 10 miles below Ports Ferry. We passed the Hanging Rock to J.H.'s. Friday, 27. We set out at sunrise. The weather was cold and frosty. We made it 22 miles to Camden. After dinner, we crossed the river and came to Marshall's. Saturday, 28. We set out very early and came through Pine and Oak Barrens, 25 miles. About 1 o'clock, I was willing to sit down and rest. I have lately felt all the grace I had put to trial. Through mercy I am kept from sin, and long to be perfect in faith and patience, love and suffering. I am sometimes tempted to wish to die, but I fear it is wrong. I rather choose to wait the Lord's time. Sunday 29 With some difficulty I attended at the meeting house near Marshall's. Monday 30 we rode forty-five miles to Brother Cook's, on Broad River, and the next day to Brother Finch's. Here we are to have about thirty preachers from South Carolina and Georgia. We were straightened for room, having only twelve feet square to confer, sleep, and for the accommodation of those who were sick. Brother B was attacked with the dysentery. Wednesday, January 1, 1794 we removed Brother B into a room without fire. We hastened the business of our conference as fast as we could. After sitting in a close room with a very large fire, I retired into the woods nearly an hour, and was seized with a severe chill, an inveterate cough and fever, with a sick stomach. With difficulty, I sat in conference the following day, and I could get but little rest. Brother B's moving so frequently, and the brethren's talking disturbed me. Sick as I was, I had to ordain four elders and six deacons. Never did I perform with such a burden. I took a powerful emetic. I was attended by Dr. D. I found I must go somewhere to get rest. The day was cloudy and threatened snow. However, Brother R. E. and myself made out to get seven miles to dear old Brother A. Yergin's house. The next day came on a heavy fall of snow, which continued two days, and was from six to ten inches deep. I had to let some blood. I made use of flaxseed and afterward of betony tea, both which were of use to me. I must be humble before the Lord, and have great searching of heart. Monday 13 Rode thirty miles, although the weather was damp and unpromising, and came to Herbert's store, on Broad River. I was so weak that my exercise and clothing almost overcame me. The next day we passed Connolly's Ferry, and got nothing for ourselves until we had ridden forty-six miles to Colonel Rumpf's, where we had everything, and were free and comfortable. Sunday 19. Rode to the Cypress, where I could not rest without giving them a little sermon. Monday 20. I reached the city of Charleston. Here I began to rest. My cold grew better. Dr. Ramsey directed me to the use of laudanum, nitre, and bark, after cleansing the stomach with an emetic. The kindness of Sister Hughes was very great. I have written largely to the West, and declined visiting those parts this year. The American Alps, the deep snows, and great rains, swimming the creeks and rivers, riding in the night, sleeping on the earthen floors, more or less of which I must experience, if I go to the western country, might at this time cost me my life. I have only been able to preach four times in three weeks. I have had sweet peace at times since I have been here. The love of meetings, especially those for prayer, the increase of hearers, the attention of the people, 
my own better feelings, and the increasing hope of good that prevails among the preachers lead me to think that the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the expectation of the poor fail. I have been pleased in reading Prince's Christian History, of about four hundred pages. It was a cordial to my soul in the time of my affliction. It is Methodism in all its parts. I have a great desire to reprint an abridgment of it, to show the apostate children what their fathers were. I have read Gordon's history of the American Revolution. Here we view the suffering straits of the American army, and, what is greatly interesting, General Washington's taking his farewell of his officers. What an affecting scene! I could not but feel through the whole of the description. What, then, was the sight? Oh, how minds are made great with affliction and suffering! Poor Beverly Allen, who has been going from bad to worse these seven or eight years, speaking against me to preachers and people, and writing to Mr. Wesley and Dr. Coke, and being thereby the source of most of the mischief that has followed. And lastly, having been agent for Mr. Blank, is now secured in jail for shooting Major Forsyth through the head. The Major was marshal for the Federal Court in Georgia, and was about to serve a writ upon B.A. The masterpiece of all is, a petition is prepared, declaring him to have shown marks of insanity previous to his killing the Major. The poor Methodists also must unjustly be put to the rack on his account, although he has been expelled from amongst us these two years. I have had my opinion of him these nine years, and gave Dr. C. my thoughts of him before his ordination. I pity, I pray for him, that, if his life be given up to justice, his soul may yet be saved. Friday, February 14. I enjoy peace of mind, and am closely employed in reading my Bible, and a collection of sermons delivered at Berry Street, 1733, by Watts, Gaius, Jennings, Neal, Hubbard, and Price, containing upwards of five hundred pages. Sunday 16 I preached in the morning on Philippians 2.30, and in the evening again. I was tried in spirit. I had not more than one hundred white people to hear me. Brother S. and myself let loose, and according to custom they fled. They cannot, they will not, endure sound doctrine. Monday 17, I was employed in reading and visiting. Tuesday 18. I feel restless to move on, and my wish is to die in the field. I have had a time of deep dejection of spirits, affliction of body, loss of sleep, and trouble of soul. I have, in the course of my stay here, had frequent visits from the blacks, among whom I find some gracious souls. Wednesday 19. I find this to be a barren place. I long to go to my work. When gloomy melancholy comes on, I find it best to think as little as may be about distressing subjects. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday I visited sundry families. It seems as if a strange providence holds me here. I am sometimes afraid to eat, drink, or even to talk, unless it be of God and religion. I shall certainly feel a paradise when I go hence. I am not unemployed, yet I might be much better occupied for God and souls. Tuesday 25 Last evening we had a love feast, and the poor Africans spoke livingly of the goodness of God. I am now preparing to leave this city, where I have experienced consolation, afflictions, tribulations, and labor. Friday 28 I now leave Charleston, the seat of Satan, dissipation, and folly. Ten months hereafter, with the permission of divine providence, I expect to see it again. My horse proving unruly, and unwilling to take the boat to Hadrill's Point, we changed our course, crossed at Clemens Ferry, and then came the road to Lenore's Ferry. We passed the plantations of the Great, lying east and west, their rice fields under water, we got no refreshment until we came to S's, thirty-four miles, except the little our horses got at the ferry. Saturday, March 1. 
we set out in great spirits, having sixteen miles to the ferry, where we were detained six hours. We hoped to have been in Georgetown by sunset. Now we thought of traveling until midnight. We came to Cedar Creek, which we found in a bad state. We stayed at the ferry, being persuaded we could not reach Georgetown time enough for meeting. Sabbath morning. We directed our course westward, and came along, drooping and solitary, to M's Ferry, about twenty-five miles. We rode up to a large house, and were asked in to drink brandy. Three men and two women appeared to be set in to drink the pure stuff, glass after glass. We were glad to retreat. There came on a storm of rain, with thunder and lightning. I was unwilling to go to blank, expecting the same kind of Sabbath devotion there. We traveled a most dreadful road to Black River, and had plenty of water above and below us. After riding fifteen miles, we came to the Widow Bees, where we got a shelter. Still, we had our fears. There is such a quantity of water in the swamp and lowlands, that our feet are kept very uncomfortable, and some places are impassable. Isaac Smith, in all these difficulties and trials of swamps, colds, rains, and starvation, was my faithful companion. After riding twenty-seven miles without eating, how good were the potatoes and fried gammon! We then had only ten miles to Brother Remberts, where we arrived about seven o'clock. I confess my soul and body have been sorely tried. What blanks are in this country, and how much worse are rice plantations! If a man of war is a floating hell, these are standing ones, wicked masters, overseers, and negroes, cursing, drinking, no sabbaths, no sermons. But hush, perhaps my journal will never see the light, and if it does, matters may mend before that time, and it is probable I shall be beyond their envy or goodwill. O oh, wretched priests, thus to lead the people on in blindness! Thursday 6. We had family meeting at Brother R.'s. I gave them a long discourse on the last words of David, Second Samuel 23, 5. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure, for this is all my salvation and all my desire, pleasure or delight, although he make it not to grow. 1. I considered how we enter into covenant with God. 2. On man's part it is ordered to repent, believe, love, obey, suffer, etc., and, in a word, to attend to every duty God hath enjoined. 3. That this is all the delight of a gracious soul, that his eternal all is rested upon the covenant relations he bears to the Lord. David appears, 1. To have been looking to Solomon's peaceable kingdom. 2. To Christ who was to come to David's seed. 3. Parents and gracious souls may say, the commonwealth, the church, their families, etc., are not as they could wish, yet God is their portion. What distresses were experienced in the families of ancient saints? See the history of the families of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Eli, Samuel, David, and others of whom we read. My time is short. This may be my last to speak, or theirs to hear. We are not only creatures of a year, but of a day, an hour. Sunday 9 I preached on Romans 5, 20, 21. Monday 10 We held a little conference to provide for Charleston, Georgetown, Edisto, and Santee. Some are afraid that if we retain none among us who trade in slaves, the preachers will not be supported. But my fear is that we shall not be able to supply this state with preachers. Tuesday 11 I had to preach to the respectable people of Camden, where I suppose I had two hundred hearers in the courthouse. It was heavy work, my body and faith being both weak. Some trifled, some felt, and perhaps more understood. Wednesday 12. We missed our way to the chapel called Granny's Quarter, and made it thirty miles to Horton's, at the Hanging Rock, 
on a very warm day, without any refreshment except a little biscuit. Thursday 13. Rode thirty miles more to the Waxaws, after preaching at the chapel in the woods. I went to Brother T's, where we had a room to ourselves, and our horses were richly fed. This was a great favor, such as we do not generally receive in this country. Saturday 15. We set out under discouraging prospects, having had a heavy rain the night before. We came to Shepherd's, where we had to swim our horses alongside a canoe, and had they not struggled powerfully, and freed themselves from among the bushes and grapevines, they had certainly drowned. We returned across the stream, and then brought them down the creek, to a place where there were no trees in the way, and we got safe across. Sunday 16 The water is being still high, our passage difficult, and having no inclination to travel on the Sabbath, we continued at S's, where we stayed the night before. Notice was circulated through the neighborhood, and by eleven o'clock there was collected a congregation of sixty or seventy people. Monday 17. We set out and passed Charlotte in Mecklenburg. Here I learned that meeting was appointed for me at A's. I came to L Hills, where I met with N W and D A, having ridden thirty-four miles. By the time I reached Justice White's, I shall make out to have ridden about one thousand miles in three months, and to have stopped six weeks of the time with great reluctance. I preached at blank on Second Timothy two twelve through seventeen. I gave one the marks of a Christian, one of which is that he suffers persecution, two the marks of heretics and schismatics, the former oppose the established doctrines of the gospel, the latter will divide Christians. 3. That we must continue in what we have been taught by the Word, the Spirit, and faithful ministers of Christ. 4. That the Holy Scriptures are the standard sufficient for ministers and people, to furnish them to every good work. Thursday 20. I directed my course, in company with my faithful fellow laborer, Tobias Gibson, up the Catabaw, settled mostly by the Dutch a barren spot for religion. Having ridden in pain twenty-four miles, we came, weary and hungry, to O's Tavern, and were glad to take what came to hand. Four miles forward, we came to Howe's Ford, upon Catabaw River, where we could neither get a canoe nor guide. We entered the water in an improper place, and were soon among the rocks and in the whirlpools. My head swam, and my horse was affrighted. The water was to my knees, and it was with difficulty we retreated to the same shore. We then called to a man on the other side, who came and piloted us across, for which I paid him well. My horse being afraid to take the water a second time, Brother Gibson crossed, and sent me his, and our guide took mine across. We went on, but our troubles were not at an end. Night came on, and it was very dark. It rained heavily, with powerful lightning and thunder. We could not find the path that turned out to Connell's. In this situation we continued until midnight or past. At last we found a path, which we followed till we came to dear old Father Harper's plantation. We made for the house and called. He answered, but wondered who it could be. He inquired whence we came. I told him we would tell that when we came in, for it was raining so powerfully we had not much time to talk. When I came dripping into the house, he cried, God bless your soul, is it Brother Asbury? Wife, get up. Having had my feet and legs wet for six or seven hours causes me to feel very stiff. Friday 21 We set forward towards Brother White's and took our time to ride twelve miles. End of section 22 Recording by Brian Keenan Section 23 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Heenan. Saturday 22. My soul enjoys peace, but oh, for more of God. This campaign has made me groan, being burdened. 
bad news on my coming to the mountains. Neither preachers nor elders have visited Suanino since last October. Poor people, poor preachers that are not more stable. But all flesh is grass, and I am grass. I have provided brothers G and L for the westward. I wrote a plan for stationing, and desired the dear preachers to be as I am in the work. I have no interest, no passions in their appointments. My only aim is to care and provide for the flock of Christ. I see I must not leave Charleston till the third or fourth week in March. Then the rains will subside, and the creeks and rivers be passable. And so shall we escape the danger of drowning ourselves and horses. I feel that my sufferings have been good preaching to me, especially in crossing the waters. I am solemnly moved in not visiting my Holstein and Kentucky brethren. It may be their interest to desire the preservation of my life. While living I may supply them with preachers, and with men and money. I feel resolved to be wholly the Lord's, weak as I am. I have done nothing, I am nothing, only for Christ. Or I had long since been cut off as an unfaithful servant. Christ is all, and in all I do, or it had not been done, or when done had by no means been acceptable. North Carolina, Sunday, 23. My subject at Justice White's was Hebrews 2, 1 through 3. I had more people than I expected. I have visited this place once a year, but Mr. K and L have both failed coming at all. I pity them and the people. If I could think myself of any account, I might say, with Mr. Wesley, if it be so while I am alive, what will it be after my death? I have written several letters to the westward to supply my lack of service. I am mightily wrought upon for New Hampshire, province of Maine, Vermont, and Lower Canada. Saturday 29 Started for Nolentons and came part of the way alone. After winding about the creeks and hills, came to a cabin. Here I found a few serious people, to whom I preached on 1 Timothy 4, 8 after which I spent the evening with dear Brother S. in his clean cabin. Sunday 30 After riding about five miles, I came to a meeting-house. It was a cabin half-floored, with long open windows between the logs. Monday 31 I had the house filled with serious people, and found much to say on Ruth 1, 16, 17. Whatever weight there might have been in the discourse— I was happy in my own soul. Tuesday, April 1 I was very happy whilst riding alone down to Dr. Brown's. On my way I saw Babel, the Baptist Methodist house, about which there has been so much quarreling. It is made of logs and is no great matter. I am astonished at professors, old professors, neglecting family and private prayer. Lord, help! for there is but little genuine religion in the world. Wednesday 2 Came to E's Meeting House near Hunting Creek, in Surrey County. Here I met with some old disciples from Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia, who have known me these twenty-two years. Our meeting was attended with mutual pleasure. My soul enjoyed much sweetness with these people. There has been some trouble amongst them, but I know God is with them. I was secretly led to treat on sanctification at W's, and if the Lord will help me, I am resolved to speak more on this blessed doctrine. After preaching, I came to Cokesbury School, at Hardy Jones. It is twenty feet square, two stories high, well set out with doors and windows. This house is not too large, as some others are. It stands on a beautiful eminence, and overlooks the lowlands and River Yadkin. Monday 7. I set out alone, and, missing my way, got entangled in the bush and thickets, and made it about twenty miles. Although it was a trial to me, it might be intended to prevent the poor people from being disappointed, who came late. I had the pleasure of dining and drinking tea with a Moravian minister, who has the charge of the congregation at Muddy Creek. Next day I called at Salem. I rode twenty miles to Levin Wards, on the headwaters of Dan River, Stokes County. I was greatly fatigued, but having no appointment to preach, after a good night's rest, I was much refreshed. 
having little opportunity of being alone, I wandered into the field for solitude. I met with P.S. from Old Lynn, a child of Providence. After passing solemn scenes at sea, he was taken and left in the lowlands of North Carolina, first a Christian, then a preacher. He was stationed in Guilford, but offered himself a volunteer for Suanino, which station hath been vacant nearly six months, one of the preachers appointed there being sick, and the other married. And now, because I have power to send a preacher to these poor people, some are pleased to account me and call me a despot. Friday 11 I went to Simpson's house. I was greatly chilled and unable to preach. The house was very open, but Brother B sounded away bravely. It appeared as if my fingers were nearly frozen. I went home with Brother C and had everything comfortable. Saturday 12 I had a small congregation, but a good time with some feeling souls at Brother J's on my choice subject, Hebrews 3.12. We have rumors of war with England. But the Lord reigneth, although the earth be so much disquieted. I spent the evening with brothers B and S. I was in the clouds on Sunday, 13. My body was full of pain, and my mind much dejected. I came through Rockingham and saw my old friends, lodged with Father Lowe, who is seventy-six years of age, and happy in God. Monday, 14. Brother Sands set out for Swanino. Had I ventured to Kentucky, how should I have stood the wilderness, with four or five days of such cold, rainy weather as we have lately had? I was thankful to God that I changed my course. I feel wholly devoted to God, and greatly wish to see more fruit of my labor. Friday 18 I rose early, crossed Pudding Creek, Bannister, and Bearskin, and came to Brother C's, five miles from Pennsylvania Courthouse. I met with my old friends Jones and W.D., and had a comfortable meeting. Virginia, Monday, 21. Rode with Brothers B. and M., who met me the day before, to Brother Landrum's, and gave them a short sermon. I was happy in the company of the dear preachers. O oh, my soul, trust thou in the Lord. O oh, for Zion's glory. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Wednesday 23 I attended the funeral of R.O., who, I learn, died of a consumption, in the fear and love of God. I was too systematical for my congregation, who were wild and unawakened. I baptized a few children, then crossed Symes Ferry, and came twelve miles to Brother Spencer's in Charlotte County. Here, report saith, that there is sad work with those who have left us, and who are now exerting themselves to form as strong a party as they can. The principal of these are J.O.K., E.A., J.K., and J.C. I learn by a letter from J. Ellis that matters are not desperate. This letter, with some others, I shall reserve for a future day. If the real cause of this division was known, I think it would appear that one wanted to be immovably fixed in a district. Another wanted money. A third wanted ordination. A fourth wanted liberty to do as he pleased about slaves, and not to be called to an account, etc. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday I spent in private application. Sunday, 27. I had a crowded congregation at Reeves Chapel. Those who had just left us appeared very shy. I was very unwell, and said but little on the division. I told them how long I had been in the country, how I had labored, and what I had gained. After all, we shall see what the end of all this work will be. Wednesday 30 I preached, though not of choice, at Charlotte Courthouse. Here Mr. Blank met me, and charged me with saying at Blank that they would take off my head, I told him I did not remember to have said so, but if I did, I must certainly have meant the episcopacy of our church. He answered that in that I was very right. He strove to do it with all his might. Yet he talked of union, and hoped I would do my part. At what? Why, to destroy. First, the episcopacy, and then the conference, or at least its power and authority. 
I went to Major R's and was treated very kindly. Saturday, May 3. I had a serious congregation and a good meeting at C's. Came to Pride's Church in Amelia County, where there are no very great prospects. I was at the kind widow C's on Appomattox River, thence to Brother H's, where I was attended by Brothers F, M, B, T, and W. I learn I am set forth as an enemy to the country, that I am laying up money to carry away to England or elsewhere. But in the midst of all, I bless God for peace in my spirit. Let them curse, but God will bless, and his faithful preachers will love and pity me. Friday 9 After preaching at S's Chapel on Peter's Denial, I rode to Brother G's twenty miles. My mind was heavy, my body weak and feeble. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place. I ordained Brother G and baptized his son Philip. A dreadful rumor followed me from last Sabbath. I felt humble and thankful that I could suffer. I think more of religion now than ever. O oh, my God, I am thine. Glory to Christ forever. Monday 12 Rode forty miles to S's and preached the next day. But it seemed as if my discourse had almost as well have been Greek. Such spiritual death prevails among the people. After preaching, brothers H. B. W. and myself rode to Brother W.'s in Campbell County. I preached in the courthouse at New London, where I had a large, serious, and polite congregation. I dined with my old friend, countryman, and neighbor, Joseph Perkins, who is superintendent of the armory. In this county, Bedford, there are thirteen societies of Methodists, three or four of which are large. There are about ten local preachers, who labor for Christ and souls. Saturday and Sunday, 17 and 18 Was quarterly meeting at Wilson's Chapel. The first day I gave place to Brother B. Sabbath day, after sacrament and love feast, I preached on Revelations 3.20. The people within were serious. Those without had their own talk and entertainment. I kept the Sabbath in the crowd in the best manner I could. I came off under rain and clouds to a town called Liberty, and preached in the courthouse, but did not find freedom to eat bread or drink water in that place. Why should I receive aught from those who renounce my service? I went to friend S's, who has a godly wife, and was kindly entertained. I wish to serve the Methodists who can hear with candor, but I am not fond of preaching at places where the prejudices of the people run so high. Tuesday 20. I had about 150 hearers at Edson's and had liberty in preaching. Brothers M and B assisted me. My soul is in peace and perfect love. I purpose to preach present conviction, conversion, and sanctification. I might do many things better than I do, but this I discover not till afterward. Christ is all to my soul. If my labors are not blessed, Yet my soul shall rejoice in the Lord and be blessed. Thursday 22 Came to M. on the Mill Creek, in Botetourts County, where I was met by Brother I. E., who assisted me next day in preparing the minutes. Saturday 24 Preached at Fincastle, and had a very few to hear, except our own people. Came the same evening to E. M.'s, where we were to hold our conference. Here I met the brethren from Kentucky, and received a number of letters. Sunday 25 I was enabled to preach a searching discourse to near one thousand souls on Isaiah 52, 8. Monday 26 We were closely employed in the business of the conference. Wednesday 28 We went over the mountain to Rockbridge County. We crossed the north branch of James River half a mile from the town of Lexington, dined at the Red House, and came to Mr. F.'s on the south branch of Shenandoah. Thence I urged my way by Stanton through the rain, without any boots, and having sold my oil cloth a few days before, I was wet from head to foot. My mind is in peace, waiting till my change come, hanging on Jesus for everlasting rest. We have a valuable house here, Newtown, 
and three local preachers. At Charlestown, a good house and one local preacher. I feel as though it would be a long time before I go through this country again. For some days, I have had an inflammatory complaint in my ear. It is now removed into my mouth. I spent Monday 26th and Tuesday 27th at Brother Blank's, and was very much indisposed. Came to Winchester. Here is a good meeting house. I had many to hear my very feeble testimony on Romans 5.10. Dr. Blank made a gargle of rose leaves, nitre, and spirits of vitriol, which was of use to my throat. I came on Thursday to J. H.'s, and employed Brother A. to preach, my throat continuing very bad. I found my mind greatly resigned to the will of God under my affliction. Sick, wet, and weary, I found a comfortable retreat in the house of R. Hampson. I have not been so thoroughly soaked in two years. I think I have need of a leathern coat that will stand all weathers. I got two men to canoe me across the river. They brought me over safe, and appeared to be satisfied with a quarter of a dollar each. Saturday was an awful day to me. My ear was exceedingly painful. Sunday, June 1 I ventured to the church in the rain, and bore a feeble testimony for nearly an hour on Second Peter 1, 4. It was with difficulty I could attend the conference. My throat and passage to the ear being inflamed, and I had also a chill and high fever. We had preaching morning, noon, and night, and had peace and consolation in our deliberations. On the last day of the conference I delivered a discourse on 1 Corinthians 1, 5, and we concluded with a solemn sacrament. I next came to Shenandoah County. We have had awful rains for about two weeks. To these I have been exposed in my afflicted state. Sunday 8 Preached at Newtown, little notice being given, and few people attending. Monday 9. Rested at Brother Phelps. My mind is in peace, but I feel the spiritual death of the people. They are not what they were in religion. I am now on the head branches of Opekin. I stopped a while at J.H.'s and then came on to Shepherdstown. It was a very instructing time to me. I cannot pretend to preach, yet I talk a little to the dear people, who flock to see and hear me by hundreds. I hope to be as much resigned to a life of affliction as a life of health, and thus may I be perfect in love and wholly crucified with Christ. I concluded, after my high fever and my being forced to bed, that it was out of the question for me to attempt to speak. But when I saw the people coming on every side, and thought, this may be the last time, and considered I had not been there for nearly five years, I took my staff, faintly ascended the hill, and held forth on 1 John 1, 6, 7, and felt strengthened, having a clear view of the word of God. After meeting we administered the sacrament, and I then returned to my bed. I preached at Fredericktown, rode to Liberty. When I came there, I was so faint, and my strength so spent, that I felt as if I could by no means attempt to preach. But after Brother R. had sung a hymn and prayed, I made a feeble attempt on Galatians 1, 11, 12. Maryland, Tuesday, 17. I rode twenty-three miles to the Stone Chapel, where I preached on Peter's denial of his Lord. Wednesday, 18. I once more came to Baltimore, where, after having rested a little, I submitted to have my likeness taken. It seems they will want a copy. If they wait longer, perhaps they may miss it. Those who have gone from us in Virginia have drawn a picture of me, which is not taken from the life. We called a meeting at Cokesbury, and made some regulations relative to the salaries of the teachers and the board of the students. I returned to Baltimore, and spent Sabbath day 22nd there, and found the people but dull. Brother M.C. took his stand at the windmill between town and point. My soul was quickened whilst applying these words, Every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. I was grieved to find the hearts of the people so cold in religion. The world is a thief, 
stealing the heart from God. Monday 23 Set out for Philadelphia. Spent a day at college. Wednesday 25 I reached J.H.'s, very unwell with bodily infirmities, but I found Christ with me. Next day we breakfasted with Brother M. at Newport, dined at Chester, and preached in the evening at Philadelphia, after riding forty miles. I was weak and heavy in body and soul. I spent Friday in writing to my brethren in various parts who called for my advice. Pennsylvania, Sunday, 29. I preached at the New African Church. Our colored brethren are to be governed by the doctrine and discipline of the Methodists. We had some stir among the people at Ebenezer. In the evening we had a cold time at the great church on Amos 4.11. This has been a hard day's work. New Jersey, Monday, 30. I rode to Trenton, an exceedingly warm day, and preached in the evening. We rode to Kingston thence to Brunswick, thence to Bonham Town, and were weary enough when we got to Mr. B.'s. Poor Brother S. almost fainted, and went outdone to bed. Came to Elizabeth Town, and was grieved at the conduct of some of the preachers. Oh, how careful should each one be, lest he become a stumbling block and destroy precious souls! As I cannot help, so neither am I to answer for other men's sins. Wednesday, July 2. I gave them a close discourse on 2 Corinthians 7, 1. I had four Methodist and one Presbyterian minister to hear me, and we had some life in our souls. Thursday, 3. Came faint and weary to Powell's Hook, and felt my mind solemn and devoted to God. Thence crossed over to New York, and found my friends kind and full of the world. New York, Friday 4. Was the anniversary of independence. I preached on Second Peter 3, 20, 21, wherein, 1. I showed that all real Christians had escaped the pollutions of the world. 2. That it is possible for them to be entangled therein again and overcome. 3. That when this is the case, they turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. 4 that the last state of such is worse than the first. For God is provoked, Christ slighted, the spirit grieved, religion dishonored, their understanding is darkened, the will is perverted, the conscience becomes insensible, and all the affections unmoved under the means of grace. They keep the wisdom of the serpent, but lose the harmlessness of the dove. At dinner Mr. P. spoke a word in favor of Mr. G., who was once with us, as also he had been. This brought on an explanation of matters. My answer was, 1. That I did not make rules, but had to execute them. 2. That anyone who desired me to act unconstitutionally either insulted me as an individual, or the conference as a body of men. I hardly know sometimes where to set my foot. I must be always on my guard, and take heed to what I say of and before anyone. Lord, make me upright in heart and life before Thee and all men. Sunday 6 My mind was much agitated about trifles. I preached in the morning on Hebrews 13 and 12, and we had a little move at the sacrament. At 3 I preached in the new house, and again in the evening at the old house, and gave a close exhortation to the society. Monday 7 came to Berrien's near Kingsbridge, and thence to the White Plains, and dined with Lawyer H., a member of our society. I preached at Chester Courthouse to about one hundred people. Here are some living, gracious souls. Came in the evening to King Street. I am not conscious of having sinned, but I feel the infirmities of flesh and blood, and am in continual heaviness through manifold temptations. We had a sultry afternoon and a rough ride over the rocks and hills to Bedford, where I had a feeble time in the townhouse, on the fall of Peter. I was sick, sore, tempted, and grieved, and bade Bedford farewell. Connecticut, Thursday 10. Came to Norwich, 
16 miles, thence to Fairfield, 12 miles, and in the evening reached Poconac, making nearly 40 miles, in very great debility of body. End of section 23. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 24 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Friday, 11. We came to New Haven, thence to North Haven, thence to Middlefields. The rain took us as we crossed the mountains, and made it heavy work. We found it poor times. Were I to be paid by man for my services, I should rate them very high. It is so painful at present for me to ride, that a small sum would not tempt me to travel forty miles a day. I bless the Lord for daily afflictions of body and mind. Oh, may these things terminate in my total resignation to the will of God. Saturday 12. The rain detained us till noon. I then came to Middletown and preached at three o'clock in the separate meeting-house with some life. I lodged with the old prophet Frothingham. After this dear old man had labored and suffered many years, and had been imprisoned three times for the cause of Christ, after he grew old and his memory failed, and he could not receive the new divinity, they mistook and rested his words, and his congregation turned him out to starve. But the Lord will provide. Sunday 13. Was a great day. We had a love feast, and I preached in the courthouse, morning and evening, and Brother S. in the afternoon. Monday 14. Rode 14 miles to the city of Hartford and preached once more in Strong's Church, and I roared out wonderfully on Matthew 11, 28-30. Next day we came five miles to Spencer's in Hartford, where we have a neat house, forty by thirty-four feet. Thence I rode fifteen miles to Coventry, where I had a large congregation and a comfortable meeting. Wednesday 16. We had to make our way through heat, rocks, and dust to gargles, at the wonderful waterworks erected on the falls of the river, and thence to Pomfret's, making in all thirty-three miles. Thursday, 17. We came a very rough path of five miles to Douglas, then hasted twelve miles to Menden, thence to Milford three miles. We stopped at Mr. Blank's, and Brother R. went forward to supply my place. I was not able, nor was there time to speak much after he had done. The heat was intense, and there was very little shade, this country being long since untimbered. Friday 18. Rode nineteen miles to Needham. If possible, the heat and dust were greater than before, so that by the time we reached the appointment, we were nearly spent. Here we met with Brother T, and were grieved at the account of the improper conduct of blank, which causes noise, smoke, and fire enough. Saturday, 19. Came to Waltham to a quarterly meeting. At three o'clock I gave them a discourse on the little flock to comfort the affrighted sheep. Sabbath day we had love feast at eight o'clock, sermon at half past ten o'clock, and again in the afternoon. There was some life in the love feast and sacrament also. Massachusetts, Monday, 21. I came to Boston unwell in body and with a heavy heart. I passed the road and bridge from the university to Boston, a noble road and grand bridge. We have very agreeable lodging in this town, but have to preach, as did our Lord, in an upper room. We had a prayer meeting, and the Lord was present to bless us. Labor and affliction of body and mind make my poor heart sad, and spirits sink. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, thou shalt yet praise him. Tuesday 22 I took up my cross and preached in a large room which was full enough and warm enough. I stood over the street. The boys and jack tars made a noise, but mine was loudest. There was fire in the smoke. Some, I think, felt the word, and we shall yet have a work in Boston. 
My talk was strange and true to some. Wednesday, 23. I now go hence to Lynn, once the joy, now the grief of our hearts. But we must go through all for Christ and souls. Sunday, 27. I gave them a sermon in the forenoon, and another in the afternoon. I could but rejoice in the prospect of leaving Lynn on Monday morning. The society here began in union. It is now incorporated in order to prevent the Methodists from being obliged, by law, to pay congregational tax. I left Boston and passed Roxbury, Dorchester, Milton, Stoughton, and Easton, making it upwards of forty miles. Tuesday, 29. Rode through Attlebury to Providence. I had no freedom to eat bread or drink water in that place. I found a calm retreat at General Lippelt's, where we can rest ourselves. The Lord is in this family. I am content to stay a day and give them a sermon. Rhode Island, Thursday, 31. I left General Lippelt's and set out for New London. Connecticut, Friday, August 1. Brother R. preached in the evening in New London. Saturday 2. I made my appearance in the courthouse and preached to about 700 people with considerable freedom. Sunday 3. We had love feast in the upper room of the courthouse, where some spoke feelingly. Our sermon and sacrament took up three hours. God is certainly among these people. We have set on foot a subscription to build a house of worship, and have appointed seven trustees. Monday 4. Was one of the warmest days we have known. We left New London and came through Norwich twelve miles. This is a well-improved country, producing fine clover, oats, and flax. We passed Wyndham and Mansfield. We were met by a powerful thunder gust but stepping into a house escaped its effects. This is one advantage which we have in traveling in the eastern rather than the western country. In the latter, oftentimes there is not a house for miles. In the former, there are houses always in sight. We passed fine streams and excellent meadows, but the heat was excessive, and we had no shade except now and then a spreading tree. Our horses were as though they had been ridden through a brook of water. We purchased our dinner on the way, and it was sweet. We labored hard till eight o'clock, and came sick and weary to Father Pease, not less, in my judgment, than forty miles. Thursday 7. A day of rest and affliction of body. Came to Tolland very unwell. I find my soul stayed upon God in perfect love, and wait His holy will in all things. Saturday 9. I preached in a schoolhouse at the north end of Tolland, and had the house filled. Sunday 10 Brother R., though sick, went to Coventry, and I was left alone at Tolland, where I preached in the forenoon on Acts 2, 37-38, with some freedom, and in the afternoon on Colossians 2, 6, and found it heavy work. After meeting, I was taken with a dysentery, attended with great sinking of bodily powers, which held me most of the night. Monday I was better, and preached in a schoolhouse at Ellington. I felt great dejection of spirit, but no guilt or condemnation. Ah, here are the iron walls of prejudice. But God can break them down. Out of fifteen United States, thirteen are free, but two are fettered with ecclesiastical chains, taxed to support ministers, who are chosen by a small committee, and settled for life. My simple prophecy is that this must come to an end with the present century. The Rhode Islanders began in time and are free. Hail, sons of liberty! Who first began the war? Was it not Connecticut and Massachusetts? And priests are now saddled upon them. Oh, what a happy people would these be if they were not thus priest-ridden! It is well for me that I am not stretching along, while my body is so weak and the heat so intense. Brother Roberts is with me, and we both only do the work of one man in public. 
I heard blank read a most severe letter from a citizen of Vermont to the clergy and Christians of Connecticut, striking at the foundation and principle of the hierarchy, and the policy of Yale College, and the independent order. It was expressive of the determination of the Vermonters to continue free from ecclesiastical fetters, to follow the Bible, and give liberty, equal liberty, to all denominations of professing Christians. If so, why may not the Methodists, who have been repeatedly solicited, visit these people also? Tuesday 12 I rode over the rocks to the square ponds, and found our meeting-house as I left it two years ago, open and unfinished. We have here a few gracious souls. I preached on Luke 13, 24, and lodged with Brother C., who was exceedingly kind to man and horse. Wednesday 13. Came to Brother M.'s on a branch of the Alimantic. Our friends and the people in North Stafford had appointed for me to preach in Mr. Blank's meeting-house. To this I submitted, but it was not my choice. I was loud, plain, and pointed, on Romans 8, 6, 7. Mr. Blank was present, and after meeting, kindly invited me to his house. The soil of this country is naturally poor, but made rich by cultivation. It is blessed with good stone to build chimneys, and to make walls or fences, that may boast of strength and duration to the end of time. I went beyond my strength at Brother M's. We had a crowd of hearers, and some melting among the people. I felt myself so moved that I could not be calm. I gave them a sermon in West Stafford, on Hebrews 3, 12 through 14. I am awfully afraid many in these parts have departed from the love, favor, and fear of God. I was led to treat particularly on unbelief as the soul-destroying sin. It keepeth men from turning to God, and it is by this sin that the heart first departs from God, to prevent which Christians ought to exhort one another daily, lest they be hardened through the deceitfulness thereof, and so become castaways. Came to Squire S.'s. In the evening I felt much hurt by the exertions I had made for precious souls. Saturday 16. I rode up the hills, where we had some close talk. I observed there was good attention, and some melting in the congregation. I came to L.S.'s. Here some of the young people are with us, and the old people prefer hearing the Methodists preach to the hearing of sermons read. Sunday 17 I came to the new chapel in Wilbraham, forty by thirty-four feet, neatly designed on the Episcopal plan. I was unwell and under heaviness of mind. I preached to about four hundred people, who were very attentive, but appeared to be very little moved. The standing order have moved their house into the street, not far from ours, and they think and say they can make the Methodist people pay them. But I presume in this they are mistaken. Monday 18 Came to S.B.'s and was at home feeling comfortable in body and mind. Tuesday, 19. I preached at Mr. R.'s, and was led on a sudden to open and apply Philippians 2, 12, 13. 1. Who are addressed? Christian believers. 2. The leading subject, future and eternal salvation, to avoid legality, antinomianism, and lukewarmness. 3 that he hath and doth work in them to will and to do, to resist temptation, to be sanctified, and to be finally saved. 4. They should work out their own salvation by being found in every means of grace, attending to mercy, justice, truth, and love. 5. With fear where many have failed, with trembling where many have fallen. Some were not well pleased at this anti-Calvinistic doctrine, but I cannot help that. I have been much tried, and much blessed, weak in body, but I trust happy in Christ, in the precious love of Jesus. Wednesday 20 I had a quiet retreat at Brother W.'s. 
my mind enjoys peace, and my soul shall breathe after the salvation of dearly bought souls. Mr. S., a minister of the Standing Order, held a meeting near us at the same time. Whether this were in opposition or not, he knoweth. I preached on, Seek the Lord, and ye shall live. 1. The death to which those are exposed who have not found the Lord. 2. The life those do and shall enjoy who have found and do live to the Lord. A life of faith, love, and holiness here, and glory hereafter. 3. We must seek Him in all the means of grace. Rode in the evening to Father A's in Springfield, a kind family. Here I gave them a short sermon on Acts 2.22. I showed, 1. What we must be saved from. 2. That we cannot save ourselves. 3. On whom we must call for salvation. 4. That whosoever thus calls on the name of the Lord, without distinction of age, nation, or character, shall be saved. Friday 22. We came to Mother Kay's in Enfield, a capital town in Massachusetts. The inhabitants, one hundred and fifty miles up the river, send down the white pine logs by means of the freshets at the breaking up of the winter and frost. The people up the stream mark them, and the people here take them up, and are paid for it, or purchase the logs. It is said that if the proprietor is paid for two-thirds of those he puts into the river, he is content and well rewarded for his labor. Sunday 24 I was well attended at the separate meeting-house, where I applied Acts 5, 29-33. We had a solemn sacrament, but, oh, my soul is distressed at the formality of these people. Brother Roberts preached in the afternoon to a crowded house, and at five o'clock I had to preach to a few sermon-stupefied hearers of different denominations. O oh, my Lord, when wilt thou again visit the people of this place? I have read Loman on the Jewish government. Strange that it should be so much like the British government, and ancient New England. But the wonder ceases when we know the writer was an Englishman. Now I suppose I have found out how the Bostonians were moved to call the General Assembly a court, and their members deputies. They followed Loman. Tuesday, 26. I rode twelve miles to Wapping. I was happy to have an opportunity of retreating a little into much-loved solitude at Captain S.'s, a man of good sense and great kindness. I had some enlargement on Isaiah 55, 6 through 9, and was enabled to speak with power and demonstration. I preached at T.S.'s barn. My spirits were sunk at the wickedness of the people of this place. My subject was Isaiah 64, 1 through 7. Oh, what mountains are in the way! Idolatry, superstition, prejudice of education, infidelity, riches, honors, and the pleasures of the world. Verse 7, none calleth. Prayer of every kind is almost wholly neglected. That stirreth up himself. Oh, how might men address their own souls, as, O oh, my soul, Hast thou had conviction, penitence, faith, regeneration? Art thou ready to enter the unseen, unknown state of happiness, and stand before God? Or wilt thou be content to make thy bed in hell? I lodged at the oldest house in Windsor, with another brother S., not unlike the captain. Notwithstanding his certificate from the Methodists, he has been taxed to pay a ministry he heareth not. O liberty, O priestcraft, so all that withdraw must pay the ministry. I can scarcely find a breath of living, holy, spiritual religion here, except amongst a few women in East Hartford. If there should continue to be peace in America, yet I am afraid that God will punish the people himself for their wickedness. It may be by pestilence, or civil discord, or internal plague. Saturday 30. We were called upon to baptize a child, which Mr. Blank refused to do, because the parents owned the covenant and have now broken it. 
This is the way to bind people to the good old church. Sunday 31 My affliction of body and mind was great at Spencertown. Yet I had a solemn time in preaching in the new tabernacle to about 400 people on Luke 24, 45 through 48. After an hour's recess, we came together again, and some were offended and others convicted, while I enlarged on The Promise is to You and Your Children. I was in public exercise about five hours, including sacrament, and was so outdone with heat, labor, and sickness that I could take but little rest that night. Monday, September 1 I rode to the plains of Ellington, and next day to Wilbraham, and was kindly treated by S.S. I preached at the next house, and we had a dreadful talk to a miserable, faithless people. We rode two miles in the heat, and I was near fainting, and felt almost like Jonah. Thursday 4 We opened our conference with what preachers were present. I was still weak in body. I lodged with Abel Bliss, whose son was educated, and not spoiled, at Cokesbury. Friday 5 We had a full house, and hasted through much business. Saturday 6 Brother L. R. and myself preached. My subject was Malachi 3, 1 through 4. I treated on the coming and work of John the Baptist, the coming, work, and doctrine of Christ and his changing the ordinances and priesthood, with the ministry and discipline of the church. Sunday 7 We spent from eight to nine o'clock in prayer. A sermon, three exhortations, and the sacrament followed. We parted at three o'clock, and I came to Enfield, and got my dinner at seven o'clock in the evening. Monday 8 We spent this day on the road, passing Windsor and East Hartford, and came to the city. The next day we reached Middletown, where I was taken ill. We have a call for preachers to go to New Hampshire and to the province of Maine. Wednesday 10 We rose at three, and set out at five o'clock, and breakfasted at North Haven. We came in the evening to Stratford, and had a little meeting, although I was heavy, sick, and sleepy. Thursday 11. We rode to General W.'s. Here I learned they guard Kingsbridge, and will not suffer anyone to pass from New Haven. It is also said, the pestilential fever prevails in the city of New York, having been brought there by a brig from the islands. I thought it best to stop, and consult the preachers in the Albany district, before I go into the city. As the yellow fever is so prevalent in the West Indies, and our vessels continually trading there. The United States will partake, I fear, of their plagues, and so the Lord will punish us for our sins and prodigality. I only wish to be holy, and then let come whatever the Lord pleases. I came through Poconoc, Fairfield, and Norwalk, but there is no room for the Methodists in those places. We had a pleasant ride within sight of Long Island on the Saltwater Creeks, where there are tide mills which work very swiftly and powerfully. Brothers R. and P. left me to attend the quarterly meeting at Dantown, and I spent my time in retirement. Friday 12 I filled my minute book and read freely in the Bible. This book is so much hated by some. As for me, I will love and read it more than ever. Saturday 13 Very warm, and I was very faint. I preached in a new open house and had a sweet comforting time on Luke 12, 32 Here I met Brother Dunham from Upper Canada, who wants more preachers in that province. Sunday 14 Although very unwell, I crept out to administer the sacrament and preached a little on Romans 13, 11. I must needs go through Bedford. Oh, how should I learn, whatever I think, to say but little. It was the sin of meek Moses, when pressed hard, to speak unadvisedly with his lips. This country is so rough and ridgy that we cannot get forwards except it be along the road to the landing, 
or to some capital place. New York My horse having wandered and left me, I borrowed a horse, and on Monday rode to Lawyer H.'s, and the next day came in a carriage to New Rochelle. After preaching on Hebrews 3.12, I lodged near the place I preached at twenty-three years ago. Wednesday 17. I came near Kingsbridge, and found that it was not as had been reported concerning the malignant fever in New York. Perhaps a dozen might have taken the infection from a vessel. But it hath not spread, and the weather became propitious by rain and pure winds. On Thursday the 18th I came into the city. Sunday 21. I preached in the old house on Psalm 132 at the new church in the afternoon on Psalm 1, and at Brooklyn in the evening. Here our brethren have built a very good house. The labors of the day, pain of body, and my concern for the peace of the church tended to keep me from proper rest, and caused an awful night. Monday 22 We opened conference and sat closely to our business. Several of our preachers want to know what they shall do when they grow old. I might also ask, what shall I do? Perhaps many of them will not live to grow old. End of section 24. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 25 of Journal of the Reverend Francis S. Perry, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Tuesday, 23. I preached with liberty, but on Thursday night I had a powerful temptation before I went into the church, which sat so heavily on me that I could not preach. Yet I trust I was kept from sin. My sleep is so little that my head becomes dizzy and distresses me much. Four hours sleep in the night is as much as I can obtain. We concluded our work and observed Friday as a day of abstinence and prayer, and had a good time at our love feast. Sunday, 28. Preached at ten o'clock at Brooklyn, in the afternoon at the new church on Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. I ordained seven deacons and five elders, and in the evening at the old church I preached again. We had the best time at the last, at least it was so to me. All day I was straightened in my throat and in my heart. We collected two hundred and fifty dollars for the relief of the preachers in distress. This has been a serious week to me. Money could not purchase the labor and exercise I have gone through. At this conference it was resolved that nothing but an English free day school should be kept at Cokesbury. Monday 29 I did not sleep after three o'clock in the morning. Came to the boat at seven o'clock, but could not get across till one o'clock, which, to my no small grief, prevented my attending my appointment on Staten Island. New Jersey, Tuesday 30. Rose at three o'clock. Set out at five o'clock and rode forty-two miles to Milford and preached. But I found this heavy work. Wednesday, October 1. I had some life in preaching at Cross Week's Meeting House. I then came to Brother Hancock's and took sweet counsel with my old friend, whose wife I received as a member of society, twenty-two years ago. I was in suspense about going through Philadelphia, lest I should not reach Baltimore in due time. Now report saith that they have stopped the Baltimore stage on account of the malignant fever, which rages powerfully at the point. There is a great stir among the people concerning the Western insurrection. The people have risen up against government on account of the excise law relative to the distillation of spirits. A number of the militia are called out. Thus trouble comes on in church and state. O oh, my Lord, give us help, for vain is the help of man. Thursday 2 I came to Burlington, and as I had not had a day to myself for some time, I took one now, to read, write, and fill up my journal, etc. I feel for the church and continent, but the Lord sitteth above the water floods, and remaineth a king forever. 
I preached at Burlington, and the people were serious. Pennsylvania, Saturday 4 Brother M. and myself came to Philadelphia, and on Sunday 5 I preached three times, and was not a little fatigued with this day's labor. I felt assisted and had some openings in preaching. Monday 6 Our conference began, and our matters were talked over freely. Our session continued until Friday, by which time I felt tired of the city, and had a desire to be on horseback. I felt liberty in preaching to the citizens, and indulged some hope of a revival of religion among them. Saturday 11 Rode thirty-five miles to Sister Grace's, at Coventry, who, with her daughter and granddaughter, is, I trust, happy in God. I visited this house twenty years ago. Sister Grace, when in a delirium, was singing and talking about God. I spent a solitary Sabbath at her house, and was happy in speaking at her door, she being sick. Monday 13 Brother Cook and myself had a heavy ride of nearly fifty miles to J. H.'s, which we accomplished by traveling a little in the night. Tuesday 14 I preached at Bethel on Back Creek, and on Wednesday 15 crossed Elk River and came to quarterly meeting at Hart's Meeting House. I spent the evening with my dear son in Jesus, D.S. I cannot give him up. Maryland, Thursday 16. Crossed Susquehanna and came to Cokesbury College. I found it twelve hundred pounds in debt, and that there were between five hundred and six hundred pounds due us. Three hundred pounds of what we owe ought now to be paid. Saturday, 18. We came to Perry Hall. The preachers were afraid to go into Baltimore, but the brethren from there came out to calm their fears and invited them in. I have been hurried, and have not as much time for retirement as my soul panteth for. Yet I desire nothing but Christ. Monday, 20. We rode to Baltimore and in the afternoon opened our conference. We had about fifty preachers, including probationers. Our business was conducted in peace and love. Myself and others being unwell, we sat only six hours in the day. Tuesday 21 I gave them a sermon on Exodus 32 at 26. We had a list of names from Fairfax, who required an explanation of a minute in our form of discipline, relative to the trial of members, inquiring whether the select members were as witnesses or judges and had power to vote members in or out of society. Section 8, page 56. We answered them. Our collegiate matters now come to a crisis. We now make a sudden and dead pause. We mean to incorporate and breathe and take some better plan. If we cannot have a Christian school, that is, a school under Christian discipline and pious teachers, we will have none. I had peace of mind, but not much rest. Sunday 26 We had a comfortable love feast, but were prevented from attending our other meetings by the excessive rains. The next day I came to Elk Ridge, where I saw, after twenty-two years' labor, a well-designed frame of a new house for public worship. A few good women are trustees. The storm prevented me from having a congregation here also. Came to J. Holland's, where I had a few hearers, and had a comfortable time. It was like paradise regained among the old Methodists. Virginia, Thursday 30. Crossed the Potomac at the mouth of Goose Creek, and came unexpected by the brethren to Leesburg. Thence we journeyed on through Prince William and Fauquier counties. We passed Germantown and came along Rogue's Road to Norman's Ferry on Rappahannock. After a disagreeable journey and being exposed to uncomfortable weather, on Tuesday the 4th of November we came safe to Father Kobler's in Culpeper County. Thank the Lord there is here and there a house for God. At Father Kay's I had many women and but few men to hear. Some of the men are gone to war, some to their sports, and some have no desire to hear. 
we rode ten miles to Brother Fry's. After a long absence of ten years, I am here again. My mind is in great peace, and the preachers and people appear pleased to see me. I learned that about the month of June last died the great politician, Richard Henry Lee, of Westmoreland County, one who took an active part in promoting the independence of the United States of America. Oh, when will liberty be extended to the sable sons of Africa? We trust the happy period will come, when universal light shall shine through all the earth, and Jesus shall reign, where'er the sun does his successive journeys run, his kingdom spread from shore to shore, till moons shall wax and wane no more. Thursday 6 I had some life, and there was a small stir on the minds of some at Fry's, where we had a crowd of preachers and people. Friday 7 Crossed one of the south branches of Rappahannock, called the Rapid Ann, and came thirty miles to J.L.'s in Louisa County. Saturday and Sunday, 8-9 Attended the quarterly meeting at Last Lee's Meeting House. We had a large congregation, a quickening sacrament, and life in the love feast. I feel it necessary to retire and humble myself before the Lord. I have been crowded with company, and have had much talk, and I find a solitary walk very agreeable. I attended a few appointments in Hanover and Goochland counties, and on Saturday 15 came to the city of Richmond about five o'clock and preached to a few people in Mr. Parrott's storehouse. Sunday 16 We came to a church near Brother B's, where were gathered many people, among whom were some sons of division. Here were many pale faces, and, as I was told afterward, some who had been making solemn promises in their affliction wondered how I should know and speak so pertinently on that subject. Thence we came to Brother I. M.'s in Chesterfield, and the next day crossed Appomattox and Nottoway Rivers, and reached to B. Jones in Brunswick County, on our way to Brunswick Quarterly Meeting at Merritt's Chapel. It was rather a dull time, although I had some freedom in speaking, and we had a good love feast. Saturday and Sunday, 22-23 Attended a quarterly meeting at Jones's Chapel in Sussex County, where we had many people. I preached on Deuteronomy 9-12, too applicable to many of these souls. The rumor of the smallpox being at Petersburg, and only ten or twelve out of seventy or eighty of the preachers having had it, it caused us to think of holding our conference at Sister Mabry's in Greenville County, where there are fifteen or sixteen houses that will receive and entertain the preachers. After sending Brother Hutt to Petersburg, it was, by a majority of the preachers present, judged most prudent to hold the conference at the place just mentioned. Monday 24 About thirty preachers were collected together. I am crowded too much for my head and heart. When I sit and hear people talk on unprofitable subjects, it clouds my head and grieves my spirit, even if I say nothing. Tuesday 25 We opened our conference and had great siftings and searchings, especially on the subject of slavery. The preachers, almost unanimously, entered into an agreement and resolution not to hold slaves in any state where the law will allow them to manumit them, on pain of forfeiture of their honor and their place in the itinerant connection, and in any state where the law will not admit of manumission. They agreed to pay them the worth of their labor, and when they die, to leave them to some person or persons, or the society, in trust, to bring about their liberty. After raising and applying what money we could, which was about fifty pounds, we calculated that one-fourth of the preachers at this conference had received for their salary the past year about ten pounds, one-half from about twelve to fifteen pounds, and one-fourth their full quarterage, sixty-four dollars. We had great peace, and not one preacher objected to his station. We sent an apology to our brethren in Petersburg for not having held conference there, according to appointment, for reasons already assigned. We were greatly obliged to our friends in Greenville for accommodating the conference. 
men and horses were well entertained, all for love. Monday, December 1. I rode twenty-seven miles, and on Tuesday, too, I preached at F.B.'s, twelve miles from Petersburg. Wednesday, 3. Came to J. Smith's and had a comfortable season. Brother S. has been on the verge of eternity, and was blessed with delightful prospects of glory, but the Lord has raised him up again. Thursday, 4. Came to Graves Chapel, very unwell. Here lived Brother Lewis Lloyd, who left this world this year. He was an old preacher, and professed perfect love fifteen years before his death, and finally departed in the triumphs of faith. Friday 5 I preached at Rivers's chapel, and made it twenty miles by the time I reached Brother Petham's in Greenville. I was heavy in body and spirit. I am not conscious of having sinned, yet I suffer on account of the people. I delighted myself in reading some of Doddridge's sermons to young people. To the young persons present, I preached at Brother P's on Saturday, and on Sunday 7 rode twenty-eight or thirty miles to Brother Pops on Rose's Creek, where I enlarged on Peter's Vall. Our burdensome stone, Ebenezer, now gives us some trouble and care. If we can employ good men, keep up discipline, and maintain credit, it may come to something. Monday 8. I performed the funeral rites of Sister W. on Waquay Creek, Brunswick County. We had a full house of unfeeling people, and the word of the Lord was a burden. I opened the Bible on Jeremiah 14.10. Let anyone read it as an awful portion. It may be it is as true to these people as it was to Israel. I had a meeting with the trustees of Ebenezer School. Matters are very discouraging. People in general care too little for the education of their children. Tuesday 9 Preached at Williams's Meeting House. These are a poor people, not impoverished with slaves. But they have a good meeting house, with a glass window behind the pulpit, so that we can see to read without raising a shutter and receiving all the wind that comes, though this is in Lunenburg County, near Mother Ogburn's, where we used to have our melting seasons twenty years ago. We dined with the gracious aged people, and in the evening crossed Meherin and came to S. Holmes's, an ancient stand in Mecklenburg. Next day I preached at Salem, where there is the best house we have in the country part of Virginia. In this neighborhood there has been a society standing for twenty-one years. Rode in the evening to Brother Speds, rich and full, and a friend to freedom. Thursday, 11. Preached and administered the sacrament at Young's Chapel, and came in the evening to T. Jones's. Dear Sister Jones is gone to rest, after two years of deep affliction. She has had a painful journey through life, but her persecutions and troubles are now at an end, and heaven will compensate for all. She made choice of Job 3.17 for her funeral text and with great deliberation disposed of her property. I preached her funeral on Friday 12th, and found it a serious day to me. I never saw her more than twice or thrice, and we have interchanged a few letters. She was doubtless a woman of sense, vivacity, and grace. She wrote to admiration, all in raptures. She would pray in any place, and before any people. She reproved with pointed severity and sung with great sweetness. North Carolina, Saturday 13. We crossed Roanoke and came to Mr. Smith's in Granville County. On Sunday 16th, crossed Mountain and Grassy Creeks, and came to Brother Owens's, whose wife is a true daughter of D. Grant, my dear old friend in Georgia. He was among the last fruits of that great man Mr. Davies, when he labored in Hanover, in Virginia, Forty years ago. Monday 15. Crossed the head streams of Tar River, which are only small branches, and rode on to ours, where I had an appointment, and found I had another twenty-five miles forward at L's. So I left Brother C to fill up my place, and went forward to the ladder, 
where I preach to about two hundred people. I feel weak in body and mind, yet find my soul stayed upon God. Still onwards I go, fainting yet fighting. Thursday 18. I have a long journey to Charleston, South Carolina, and but thirteen days to perform it, having appointed to be there the first of January. Friday 19. We rode twenty-five miles through a powerful fall of rain, but we wrought our way through the swamps, floating and sinking as we went. Saturday 20. It snowed as powerfully as it rained yesterday. However, we set out for Salem about nine o'clock, and forded two creeks, but the third we swam. Brother Ward went in, and after a pause I followed, but being cloaked up, my horse nearly slipped from under me. One foot was properly soaked. I walked about one mile and rode another, and reached the town about twelve o'clock, just as they were ringing the bell. Feeling the want of a fire, I went to the tavern, but I found but one fireplace there. I sat down with the company and dried my feet a little, until my companions came along. I have need of power, and I am accused of having too much, to stand such days as this. My soul is kept in peace and communion with God, and, through grace, I will not murmur at my sufferings whilst the salvation of souls is my end and aim. We found a home at Father Hills, from Maryland, about three o'clock, having ridden nineteen miles today and thirty yesterday. I was thankful for a house and friends, and an opportunity of putting into port. It is a comfort to remember there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Sunday 21 I came to Cokesbury School, and after preaching on 1 Corinthians 15:58. I rode down to Brother Charles Caton's. Here a few souls have been brought to God since I was in these parts in May last. Monday 22 We were detained some time at Long's Ferry by a wagon and a number of horses. Mrs. Blank entertained us very kindly, and her husband gave us a hearty welcome when he came home and found out who we were. It was expected by some that I should preach at Salisbury, but I did not. So we rode on and reached the widow bees about eight o'clock at night, having ridden thirty miles. Tuesday, 23. We set out at sunrise. The morning was cold and frosty. We rode ten miles and fed at A's. Thence we hasted twenty-five miles to J.R.'s, took a late dinner, and rode to W.R.'s, making upwards of forty miles. Next day we had to swim Rocky River. We then passed Newtown and made it thirty miles to Jackson's. Thursday, 25. Christmas Day. We changed our course and took the Grand Camden Road to Great Lynch's Creek, thirty miles. When I came to Mr. Evans's and told my name, I was invited to stay, and it was well for us that we did. Friday, 26. I came off about sunrise and made forty miles to Publius James Remberts. I was hungry, sore, and very low-spirited. Here we found a warm house, comfortable table, which was very acceptable, good bed and fire, with very kind friends. Lord, dispose us to humility before Thee, and bless our benefactors. James Rogers and Samuel Cowles were my faithful attendants. I hear my friend John Hughes of Charleston is dead. From what I learn of him in his last illness, I trust the dear old man is gone safe. William Adams and Captain Darrell of the same place have been cast away and drowned. Strange changes take place in a very short time. O oh my God, help me to be each moment on my guard, ready for death and judgment. The land we came through yesterday is poor, and but thinly settled, a plantation once in three or four miles. The long-leaved lofty pines have a grand appearance. Sunday evening, 28. Rode after preaching to Brother Bradford's. Monday, 29th, to Bowman's. Tuesday, 30th, we had to wrestle with Santee Swamp for three hours, having to wade the flat ground then under water. 
but through mercy we got safe over at last. We hasted on, and came in the evening to the house of a very kind Frenchman, who entertained us gratis. Wednesday 31 Myself, with the main body of the preachers, came into the city of Charleston. I felt faint and unwell after the fatigues I had passed through on my journey. Thursday, January 1, 1795 Being New Year's Day, I was called upon to preach, unwell as I was, which I did on Psalm 90, 12. We entered on the business of our conference, and continued until Wednesday 7th. We had preaching every night during the sitting of conference. It was the request of the conference that I should preach them a sermon on Tuesday night, with which I complied, and made choice of Jeremiah 23, 29 through 32. In times past I have endeavored to keep on traveling all the year, but I now judge it meet to stay in Charleston a little longer and then take the field. Yet it is with fear and trembling. Sunday 11. Brothers I, C, and G, being about to leave the city, I gave place to them to perform the services of the Sabbath. I heard part of a discourse by Mr. Furman on partial and total backsliding. I thought he spoke well, and that it was an excellent sermon. I doubt if he had more than seventy white hearers. A vast number in the city do not attend to the worship of God anywhere. Monday 12. The remaining members of the conference left the city. Brother Bruce and myself must now lay our shoulders to the work. I have my feelings and fears about staying in Charleston, but grace is sufficient. I wish to give my all to God, and whether I read, write, preach, or visit, to do it all to His glory, and to employ my precious time profitably. And am I yet alive, with death so near? How many of my friends in this city, and in other places, are gone into eternity? I hear very little from the preachers in the north. End of section 25. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 26 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Tuesday 13. I had a comfortable season in the church on the words of St. Paul to the Galatians. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? In this discourse I observed how great was the affection between the Christian societies in ancient Galatia and St. Paul until the Judaizing teachers came in among them. The province of Galatia was in Lesser Asia, and when the ancient Gauls, or Galatae, wanted to extend their province, they penetrated through Italy and Greece, and went into Asia, and pillaged the country as far south as Babylon. But one hundred and twenty thousand, being defeated by a handful of Jews, and Attalus, king of Pergamus, having forced them from his territory, they settled here. Among these the gospel was planted by St. Paul, Acts 16.6, 6, who had but just left the country when the schism began by means of the teachers of the ceremonial law. In this church there have been a great number of bishops, and some councils and synods, but for near eight hundred years the tyranny of the Mohammedans, Saracens, and Turks hath almost exterminated the very name of Christianity. I observed, one, that there is a proper portion of truth which is applicable to everyone's case. Two, that it is a bad sign when a man is esteemed an enemy for telling the truth, as if falsehood alone were pleasing. Wednesday 14 I preached at Brother Wells's on It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. This cannot be the language of any but gracious souls. Sinners think all these things are against them, and wonder what they have done more than others, that they are thus afflicted. I treated of afflictions of body and mind, personal and family, in the church and in the state. Ah, my Lord, by whom shall Jacob arise, for he is very small. Sunday 18 I preached in the morning on Exodus 20, the first and second commandments. 
in the afternoon on the affliction and conversion of Manasseh. Second Chronicles 33, 12, 13. One young man behaved amiss, for which I reproved him. Perhaps he might be among those in the evening who made a riot, broke the windows, and beat open the doors. Tuesday 20. I read Mr. Flavel on Keeping the Heart, where I found some weighty sayings. I preached in the evening, and Brother Bruce exhorted. Mr. Blank came home with me, pleading and crying to God, and acknowledging his sin. Who knoweth but he will turn, repent, and find mercy? The desperate wickedness of this people grieves and distresses my soul, so that I am almost in continual heaviness. Yet through grace I trust I am kept from sin. I spent part of this week in writing and reviewing some explanatory notes on our form of discipline. Sunday 25 I preached morning and afternoon. My soul at seasons wadeth through deep waters for this city and society. It cannot, in my opinion, continue long in its present situation. Perhaps a dispensation of mercy or judgment is near. Wednesday 28 I finished reading the history of the French Revolution, containing about 800 pages, and a surprising history it is. They have had heavy struggles with monarchy, aristocracy, and democracy, and have had martyrs of each and every form. Thursday 29 I am sensible of not being enough in prayer. This gives me pain. There came on a violent, awful storm of rain. And what should I do upon the road in such weather? Charleston is, to me, one of the most serious places I ever was in. Saturday 31 I was in a most distressed, gloomy state of body and mind. I employed myself in reading, writing, and prayer, but very uncomfortably. Sunday, February 1 Still heavy is my heart, still sink my spirits down. I went to the church and lectured on the second table of the law, attending particularly to our Lord's comment on each precept. In the afternoon I enlarged on Jeremiah 31, 33, and I do hope there was some stir in the hearts of the people. I had an afflictive night by the labors of the day. I began reading Berridge's Christian World Unmasked. How like the man and his conversation, which I heard by the hour thirty years ago. I think there is some tartness in his Christian remarks on the checks, and dear Mr. Fletcher, of whom I have heard Mr. Barrage speak in terms of very great respect. I was insulted on the pavement with some as horrible sayings as could come out of a creature's mouth on this side of hell. When I pray in my room with a few poor old women, those who walk the streets will shout at me. The unparalleled wickedness of the people of this place and the spirit of contention among the professors of religion most severely agitate my mind. I now spend my time in running hastily through the first volume of the Hebrew Bible. Thursday 5. I was deeply dejected. I have been lately more subject to melancholy than for many years past. And how can I help it? The white and worldly people are intolerably ignorant of God. Playing, dancing, swearing, racing... These are their common practices and pursuits. Our few male members do not attend preaching, and I fear there is hardly one who walks with God. The women and Africans attend our meetings, and some few strangers also. Perhaps it may be necessary for me to know how wicked the world is, in order that I may do more as a president minister. There is some similarity between my stay here and at Bath in Virginia. Oh, how I should prize a quiet retreat in the woods. In Mr. Wesley's journal, volume 1, page 154, I find he observes, I set myself carefully to read N. Machiavel's celebrated book. I began, says Mr. W., with a prejudice in his favor, having been often informed he had been misunderstood and greatly misrepresented. I weighed the sentiments it contained, compared one passage with another, and endeavor to form a cool, impartial judgment. 
and my most deliberate judgment is that if all the other doctrines of devils which have been committed to writing since letters were in the world were collected together in one volume, it would fall short of this. And should a prince form himself by this book, so openly recommending hypocrisy, treachery, lying, robbery, oppression, adultery, and murder of all kinds, Domitian or Nero would be angels of light compared to that man. No wonder that Dr. Blank should say that the Methodist preachers were men of true Machiavellian principles. Judge Reader This is the justice. This is the mercy we are to expect from some priests. And why? Because we spoil their reading trade. Sunday 8 I preached on Psalm 8, 4. Brother Bruce entertained us on that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I met the society, read the rules of discipline, and gave a close talk about conformity to the world. I have now finished the first volume of Mr. Wesley's journal. I admire his candor and the soundness of his sentiments, but I need say but little, as it will be shortly published and speak for itself. Monday 9 The people have high work below stairs laid off for each day this week. The Western Regiment parades today, the Eastern tomorrow. Wednesday is the President's birthday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday come on the races. I intend to keep close to my room, except when attending meetings in the evenings. I am in the furnace. May I come out purified like gold. It is a dark providence holds me here. Mr. Phillips is here and in want of money. Our friends opened their hearts and gave him a twenty or thirty dollars. He is not clear on original sin, so that we cannot and dare not employ him. Yet, notwithstanding his sentiments, I hope he is a good man. But, good or bad, he ought not to starve. Monday 16 I rode out to take the air, and saw the wandering air balloon. I am persuaded there are gracious souls among Mr. Hammett's people, some of whom have left him, and will perhaps return. I was employed in reading Mr. Wesley's journal, and I am now convinced of the great difficulty of journalizing. Mr. Wesley was, doubtless, a man of very general knowledge, learning, and reading, to which we may add a lively wit and humor. Yet, I think I see too much credulity, long, flat narrations, and coarse letters taken from others in his journal. But when I come to his own thoughts, they are lively, sentimental, interesting, and instructing. The journal of a minister of the gospel should be theological, only it will be well to wink at many things we see and hear, since men's feelings grow more and more refined. Sunday 22 I had no small inflammation in my ear, yet after I got to preaching I was long and loud, warm and very pointed. Our congregations are uncommonly large. I was recollecting, by the help of Mr. Wesley's journal, how long it had been since I became acquainted with the Methodists. I was awakened, as I think, when about thirteen years six months old. At the age of sixteen I began to read and pray in the public congregation. One year, six months after this, publicly to exhort and expound God's holy word. At twenty-one I traveled much, and in the beginning of my twenty-second year I traveled altogether. I was nine months in Staffordshire and other adjoining shires, two years in Bedfordshire Circuit and two in Salisbury Circuit. Mr. Wesley, in his journal, seems to think that the cause of the hindrance of the work of God is wholly and entirely in man. But may we not ask, with reverence, hath not God sometimes, for his own purposes, withheld his power, that no flesh might glory in his sight, but feel that he is all in all? Wednesday 25. We had a love feast for the Africans, and many gave in their experiences with life. In the evening we had a love feast for the whites. I have had a long stay here, and now rejoice in the hope of going again into the field to work. Nothing would have kept me here but the hope of preserving my health the other ten months of the year, which will enable me to run through North and South Carolina, 
the new territory, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Province of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and sometimes Kentucky. Friday 27 we observed as a general fast. I was weak in body and afflicted with the headache. Yet I met the people in the church and read Joel 2, 12 through 18. I prayed, I wept before the Lord. I fasted from two o'clock on Thursday until half past five on Friday. I wish we could have solemn monthly fasts and love feasts before sacrament. I hope the Lord will look upon us generally throughout the continent and take away our reproach. Mr. Wesley lived to see two general revivals of religion, one at the beginning, the other about thirty-six years ago, though doubtless they had generally a gradual growth of religion. We also have had two revivals, one at the beginning, the other about seven years ago. The third revival has now taken place in England, and I hope ours will soon follow. Saturday 28 I attended the meeting of the stewards, and directed that each of the three stewards in rotation should receive and pay all monies for one-third of the year, and then give place to another for the same time. I also appointed a clerk to attend particularly to the books. Sunday, March 1 I preached in the forenoon and afternoon, and it was thought the arrows of the Almighty flew abroad. We had a melting sacrament with white and colored people. About half a dozen of Mr. Hammett's people from Trinity attended. The people have had much dust cast in their eyes in this place, but now they begin to see more clearly. I am now about packing up in order to take my leave of this city. I am sure faithful preaching will be blessed. I have effectually worn myself out, and I feared we should not have strength to ride over the barren sands. We accordingly set out, and rode twenty-two miles to G's, tried it since I have been here. My parting subject was 1 Corinthians 16, 23-24. The congregation was very large, and if the people are prudent and the preachers faithful, we shall have a work in this place. The poor Africans brought their blessings, and wishes, and prayers. Dear souls, may the Lord provide them pastors after his own heart. Thursday 5 I left this seat of wickedness, not without both grief and joy. I never saw so great a prospect here, and doubt if there hath been such a one since the place was first settled. We cross Ashley River about ten miles from town. Here was a bridge of value, which was so damaged by the worms and barnacles that it stood only two years. Sister G, her family, and a wagon were on it when it gave way. It sunk with them into the water, but they received no injury. We rode thirty-five miles, eating some biscuit with a little wine and water, and came to Mr. Eccles's Beach Hill, near Edisto River. I was somewhat wearied, but happy in my solitary retreat. I think I have not spent my time in vain in Charleston. First, I have had near as many hearers as I could have found in the country. Secondly, there hath been real fruit among the white and colored people, and such as may, with care, be preserved. I gave them a sermon at Squire Eccles's near two hours long. My soul has peace, and by the help of God I must hasten eastward and heavenward. Saturday 7. We came to Lindsay's, and after preaching to about sixty people, had to ride twelve miles to Cattle Creek after four o'clock. Nor was that the worst. A storm of thunder and rain came on, and had we not stopped, we should have been steeped from head to foot. Sunday 8. We had about four hundred people at the church, among whom were a few that loved and feared God, and many that are stupid and have become hardened under the preaching of the gospel. I spent Monday nine at Brother M's, and felt the society in the city near my heart. Wednesday 11 We rode to S's, where I gave them a long talk on 
the grace of God that bringeth salvation, etc. I thought the weather was too fine to continue so long. So we made a push, and rode eighteen miles to Pease at the ponds, where we supped and breakfasted at our own expense, and brought provision for our horses. About midnight the rain began to patter on the long shingles. What could we do? If we stayed, our provision would be where we stopped to eat and feed and then rode eighteen miles more to the widow Pope's on Little Saluda. Saturday 14. I came to A's chapel, but the weather was so exceedingly cold, and the house so open, that we went to the dwelling house, where I preached and prayed, and, the people said, stormed and scolded. When meeting was over, I saw the new still house, which, as George Fox said, struck at my life and we found it necessary to deal plainly with Brother Blank about his distillery, and to tell him what we apprehended would be the consequence if persisted in. Its natural tendency would be to corrupt his family, and the neighborhood, and to destroy the society. Oh, that the snare of Satan may be forever broken! We came to G's meeting-house, where we had as wild and disorderly a congregation as could well be without words and blows. I preached a little, and stormed a great deal, but all would not do. It was an awful day to me, but I hope my labor was not wholly in vain. I lodged at D. Erpses, who came from Berkeley to Saluda, and has been a preacher twenty years. I ordained him deacon, and joined his daughter to a husband. Thence I came to Jay's, where was another wedding. I had work enough, the bishop, the wedding... I could hardly keep them serious. I preached on Isaiah 35, 3-7, and had an open time. Wednesday 18. I rode to ours and preached. Thursday 19, and the two following days, we had work enough to write subscription papers to be sent abroad for the purpose of collecting one hundred pounds to finish Bethel School, and secure the land. But my expectations are small. The people have so little sense of God and religion. Saturday I opened the new house on 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, and on Sunday we had a sermon and love feast. Tuesday 24 Crossed Ennery at Anderson's Ford in a canoe, and Tiger at Crenshaw's Ford, and came to Brother G's near the Fish Dam Ford on Broad River. What a confluence of waters flows into the Santee in about two hundred miles, on a straight line, from the mouth, and in its meanders three hundred or more. Wednesday 25 I preached and administered the sacrament at a store near the Fish Dam Ford. This part of the country hath been settled about forty years. Thursday 26 I found some assistance on Jeremiah 31, 34, 35, at Gregory's Meeting House, in the woods, and I hope it was not altogether in vain. Last night I spent an hour with the blacks in their quarters, and it was well received by them. It will never do to meet them with the whites. By this means our preachers lose all their fruit. Many reasons might be assigned for this. O oh, my soul, rest in the Lord from moment to moment. All the places I have visited this week are new, and I hope the Lord will work at some or all of them. I exhorted our people to teach their slaves to read. This is greatly wanting. They would then understand preaching much better. We crossed Pacolet and came to Pease. My mind was under deep exercises on account of the state of religion in this neighborhood. Sunday 29 Was an awful day. Perhaps the most awful I shall ever spend in this place. My comfort was in the woods with the Lord. Monday 30 I rode forty miles to M's. My body is weak, and so is my faith for this part of the vineyard. God is my portion, saith my soul. This country improves in cultivation, wickedness, mills, and stills. A prophet of strong drink would be acceptable to many of these people. I believe that the Methodist preachers keep clear, both by precept and example. 
Would to God the members did so too. Lord, have pity on weeping, bleeding Zion. Wednesday, April 1 We rode thirty miles through a barren country, and came, weak and hungry, to Brother B's clean, comfortable house, and had all things agreeable. I find it hard to ride eight or nine hours without any other nourishment but a little bread and tea. Friday 3. Was a rainy day. I had some talk with a few blacks, and was comfortable and happy. We lose much by not meeting these people alone. I find, generally, that those who are held by professors of religion are hard to move. North Carolina. Saturday and Sunday, 4-5. Quarterly meeting at Daniel Asbury's Meeting House. I notice many attend preaching at such times as these, who appear wild, and do not know how to behave themselves. In the afternoon I met the poor blacks by themselves, and was greatly blessed. Monday 6. We crossed Catawba, rode thirty-five miles, and came to Brother Fitzhugh's, where we met with kind treatment to sweeten the bitter cup of a hard and hungry day's ride. Thursday 9 crossed Hunting Creek, and came to A's Meeting House in Surrey County. Here I had near three hundred hearers, to whom I preached on Hebrews 5, 12 through 14, and had more enlarged views of this subject than I ever had before. We have had a good work here. Fifty souls are lately brought in. Appearances are greatly changed for the better since I was here eleven months ago. Friday 10. We came to G's in Wilkes County. I feel awful. I fear lest darkness should be felt here. Ah, Lord, help me to go through good and evil report, prosperity and adversity, storms and calms, kindness and unkindness, friends and enemies, life and death, in the spirit and practice of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sunday 12. I preached the funeral of Grandmother G, aged 87 or 88 years. Monday 13. We took our acceptable departure. I cannot live where God is not acknowledged. I passed through the heart of Wilkes County. Here is a poor prospect of religion among all sects. We came in the evening to the house of a poor, honest man. Bless God, we can embrace the poor cabins and find shelter. The people are kind and free with what they have. Wednesday 15 I preached on Hebrews 4, 1, to many people, collected from various parts, at Brother White's, on John's River, and was greatly assisted. Thursday 16 We had preaching, and were engaged in writing letters and copying the minutes. My soul enjoys sweet peace but I see an awful danger of losing that simple walking and living in the enjoyment of God. End of section 26. Recording by Brian Keenan. Section 27 of Journal of the Reverend Francis S. Perry, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Friday 17, I observed as a day of rigid fasting. This I cannot do more than once a month. I am frequently obliged to go on three cups of tea with a little bread for eight or nine hours, and to ride many miles, and preach, and perform my other ministerial labors. Sunday 19. We had a crowded congregation, and a moving season at the sacrament. Monday and Tuesday we directed our course up John's River. Wednesday 22. Crossed the ridge and kept on to the westward. We went Major J. White's path and found it abundantly better than the old one. We reached the top of the ridge in about six miles. Here we found ourselves among fruitful hills. Then we had a good path for six miles more, except where there were some laurel branches and roots. We stopped at S's, and it was well we did, or we should have been well-nigh starved, both man and horse. I went on to D's, and thence to Nelson's, 
where I met with brothers B, A, and W, ancient men among us. I stood the fatigue, and sleeping three in a bed, better than I expected. From White's to Nelson's is eighty miles. We crossed the Wataba about twenty times. At supper we ate of the perch that are taken in great plenty from Smith's Fish Spring. I judged there must be a subterraneous communication from that to the river. I felt uncomfortable in my mind, as I feared the Lord had left this place. I was led to speak with life and power on, Will ye also go away? I spent a night with Brother Whitaker. I wish his wife may not love him to death. Tennessee, Monday, 27. We hasted to F. Ernest's on Nolachucky River, where we hold our Western Conference. Here six brethren from Kentucky met us, and we opened our conference with twenty-three preachers, fifteen of whom were members. We received every man's account of himself and his late labors, and inquired of each man's character among his brethren. Our business was conducted with great love and harmony. Our brethren have built a meeting-house, and I must needs preach the first sermon, which I did on Exodus twenty twenty four. Notwithstanding it was a time of great scarcity, we were well and most kindly entertained. Friday, May 1 We rode thirty miles to Holstein, without food for man or horse. But when we came to Brother Baker's, we had food and friendship. My feelings were disagreeable. In addition to the heat of the weather and the fatigue I have gone through, I have not slept five hours a night, one night with another, for five nights past. Saturday 2 On our way we called to see Father A, where we fed and prayed, and in the evening reached Abingdon, being the time and place of the sitting of the district court. Virginia, Sunday 3 I gave them a sermon and although it was so public a time, we had great decency in the congregation. Rode thirteen miles in the evening. Monday 4 We rode thirty-five miles to the head branches of the main Holstein, and the next day reached Alfred's on New River. Wednesday 6 We rode to Pepier's Ferry, and made it thirty-five miles to M. Daniel's. Thursday we rode to Brother W.'s, near Fincastle, thirty-eight miles. The toils of this journey have been great, the weather sultry, the rides long, and roads rough. We suffered from irregularity in food and lodging. Although the people are very kind, and give us the best they have, and that without fee or reward, so that I have only spent about two shillings in riding about two hundred miles. I hope posterity will be bettered by my feeble efforts. I have ridden two hundred and twenty miles in seven days and a half, and am so exceedingly outdone and oppressed with pain, weariness, and want of sleep, that I have hardly courage to do anything. Hail, happy day of rest! It draws nigh, and this labor and toil will soon be at an end. Saturday night. I conferred with the traveling and local preachers at E. Mitchell's. Sunday 10, the preachers and people were solemn, whilst I enforced, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Monday 11. I rode 40 miles to Mr. Blaker's at the Calf Pasture, and the next day 35 to Moore's. Wednesday 13, rode 24 miles to Rocktown, and preached at 3 o'clock, and again the next day. Here I met the trustees of our school, to whom I read my thoughts on education. In the evening I left the town, and on Friday 15 rode 40 miles. Saturday 16 I had a hard push to Newtown Quarterly Meeting, where, after delivering a short discourse, I held a conference with the local preachers and leaders. I enjoyed myself among these people. They are not quite as lively as heretofore, but God is still with them. Sabbath day, after sacrament, love feast, and ordination, I preached with some freedom on Second Peter three seventeen eighteen. Upon the whole, my soul is refreshed, although I have been on the run, and have written none in my journal for more than a week. Monday 18 
we rode to Charlestown, Jefferson County, and lodged with a pious physician. Next morning breakfasted with J. H., and then came to Harper's Ferry, where the impending rocks impressed the mind of the traveler with terror, and should they fall, would crush him to pieces. This scene is truly awful and romantic. We came to S. Phillips, but were not expected until next week, so I directed my course to Baltimore. Maryland, Wednesday 20. I passed Fredericktown, thence to Liberty Town, where I stopped, conversed, and prayed, and then came on to Brother Warfield's, thirty miles. Thursday 21. We set out for Baltimore. The rain came on very heavily. I have not felt, nor seen such, since the 6th of March, since which time I have ridden about 1,200 miles. This day I heard of the death of one among my best friends in America, Judge White of Kent County, in the state of Delaware. This news was attended with an awful shock to me. I have met with nothing like it in the death of any friend on the continent. Lord, help us all to live out our short day to thy glory. I have lived days, weeks, and months in his house. Oh, that his removal may be sanctified to my good and the good of the family. He was about sixty-five years of age. He was a friend to the poor and oppressed. He had been a professed churchman, and was united to the Methodist connection about seventeen or eighteen years. His house and heart were always open, and he was a faithful friend to liberty in spirit and practice. He was a most indulgent husband, a tender father, and an affectionate friend. He professed perfect love and great peace, living and dying. Sunday 24. I preached twice in town, and was delivered from my gloomy state of mind. I spent part of the week in visiting from house to house. I feel happy in speaking to all I find, whether parents, children, or servants. I see no other way. The common means will not do. Baxter, Wesley, and our form of discipline say, Go into every house. I would go farther and say, Go into every kitchen and shop. Address all, aged and young, on the salvation of their souls. Wednesday 27 I read The Dawn of Universal Peace, and the second and third volumes of Walker's Sermons. Thursday my mind was under deep exercises, unknown to all but God alone. Saturday 30 I met the Africans to consult about building a house, and forming a distinct African, yet Methodist, church. Friday, June 5. I came in peace to Cokesbury, stayed on Saturday, and gave them a sermon on the shortness of time, thence came through dust and heat to northeast. Sunday I preached within the frame of a house that has begun, to a number of sinners. Monday 8. I preached twice, and came in the evening to Mr. Bassett's, on the manor. I have great inward distress in my soul. I felt, when in prayer, as if the Lord would restore Sister Moore to health. Time will determine whether the impression is of the Lord. Tuesday 9. We hasted on to Georgetown. Some are of opinion that blank will receive two hundred pounds per annum or more, glebe subscriptions, etc., this is more than sixty-four dollars, and even that he seldom received among us. He was always very generous, and did not serve us for money. He did certainly run well. I was low in body and mind, and very flat in preaching. Dear Brother B., who attended me with his carriage to Northeast the last time I was here, is now gone to rest. Oh, how short is the life of man! We must needs come on to Chestertown, still languid in body, and my spirits under an awful fit of dejection at reviewing the state of persons and things. I was quite unwell, and crowded with company. My subject in town was Psalm 51, 9 through 13. We then rode fifteen miles home with Brother C., my body and spirit still very low. O oh, my Lord, help me through all my afflictions. 
Ah, what a comfortable thing it is to be among the ancient Methodists. But this is not always my place. Indeed, it cannot be. Thursday 11. Still under awful depression. I am not conscious of any sin, even in thought, but the imprudence and unfaithfulness of others bear heavily on my heart. I feel a degree of willingness to decline, die, and enter into rest. For the first time, I visited Centerville and preached in the new house. Some of the people felt awful. I saw Dr. Hall, who was greatly changed since 1792, and under deep exercise about preaching, so that he cannot attend to his practice, and appears to be lost in thought. I wrote to him to try Baltimore. It is a pity such a man of sentiment, learning, and fine feeling should be lost. I rode home with R.W., he is rich in the world, but wants more of the life of religion. He appears still to love the preachers and the cause of God. I received information that Dr. M.'s wife, before she died, manumitted her favorite servant maid. Not long after, the doctor himself was called away, but before his removal he manumitted all his slaves. This man claimed no high gospel light, and professed no more religion than the generality of the world among us do. I have a hope that God is preparing me for greater usefulness in my latter days. Oh, how happy should I be, if, after laboring thirty years, as I sometimes fear, to very little profit, it should hereafter appear that hundreds have been converted by my ministry. Of late I have had but little to do, but pray, preach, ride, converse, and take my necessary refreshment. Saturday 13. We crossed Chop Tank River at Ennell's Ferry. We had nine men, three horses, and a carriage on board, and a very indifferent boat. But through a kind providence we got safe over. When I first landed, I felt a damp on my spirits, which I feared was ominous of persons and things. Our friends were loving at the Dorset Quarterly Meeting, but not very lively. However, there was some stir in the love feast. At eleven o'clock we had nearly a thousand people collected, but they are awfully hardened. We had a heavy time. I felt much like what I suppose Jonah felt. We were furnished richly with the comforts of life. I came to the dwelling house of my dear friend Judge White, whose death I have already mentioned. It was like his funeral to me. I learned since I came here, and I think it worthy of observation, that just before he died, unknown to his wife, he had showed Samuel, his son, his books, and given directions concerning his house, etc. He then came to his wife and said, I feel as I never felt before, and gave certain directions concerning his burial. Delaware, Wednesday, 17. I had a solemn season at Dover. I spent the evening with Dr. A. Ridgely in the late dwelling house of his father. In some houses we serve the fathers, not the children, in some the children, not the fathers, and in some we serve both parents and children. Thursday 18. I preached at Duck Creek Crossroads, where there has been a great revival of religion. Friday 19. I set out for Philadelphia, and came to White Clay and Red Clay Creeks. I saw my old friend S.H. once more. I must needs preach, although I had ridden thirty-five or forty miles. Next day I called at Chester, and found my dear sister Withy unwell and in trouble. Oh, may I meet her in heaven at last! Pennsylvania, Sunday, 21. I preached in the city of Philadelphia three times, not with the success I would wish. I was exceedingly assisted in meeting the classes, in which I spent three days, and am now of opinion that there is more religion among the society than I expected. I trust both they and myself will remember this visit for days to come. I was also much quickened in meeting the local preachers and leaders, who spoke feelingly of the state of their souls and the work of God. I now go hence to meet new troubles, and to labor while feeble life shall last. Thursday 25 
I rode to Crossweeks. Friday 26. Although very poorly, I reached Brother B's. I was happy in this family, and addressed most of them concerning their souls. New Jersey, Saturday 27. I came to Elizabethtown, and found Brother Morrill, who had been bled and physicked almost to death, on the recovery. My troubles are greater than ever. My body is weak, and my spirits very low. At the request of my friends, I stayed in town until Sunday, and was assisted in a manner I least expected in preaching to about eighty people from 1 Corinthians 15, 58. After sermon, I called the society together, and had a melting time in speaking personally to each. I attended the Bowery Church in the afternoon, and the minister spoke largely on that your faith might not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. New York, Monday, 29. I came to New York the new way by Newark Bridges, which are well established over Second and Passaic Rivers. It is the nearest way to New York, and preserves the traveler from heat in the summer and cold in the winter, from mosquitoes and delays by winds and other incidents. I began meeting the women's classes, and felt happy, and found the Lord was amongst the sisters. Saturday, July 4. Being the anniversary of independence, the bells ringing, drums beating, guns firing, and orations on liberty, and equality too, are not forgotten. I see the need of being more watchful among the best of men. A spirit of love exists among the preachers, but we are far from being as spiritual as we ought to be. The Reverend Mr. Ogden was kind enough to present me with his first volume, on Revealed Religion. It contains a soft yet general answer to the deistical, atheistical oracle of the day, Thomas Paine. It is a most excellent compilation, taken from a great number of ancient and modern writers on the side of truth, and will be new to common readers. So far as I have read, I can recommend it to those who wish for full information on the subject. I met the official members of the Society and had some close talk on the doctrine and discipline of the Church. I asked if they wished to be Methodists. But how could I suppose anything else, when they had been a society of nearly thirty years standing? Sunday 5 I preached in Brooklyn in the morning, and returned to assist in the sacrament in the afternoon at the new church. I then met the black classes, and preached at half-past six. I close my day's work by meeting two men's classes. Monday 6. I met nine classes, so that I have now spoken to most of the members here, one by one. I left the city in peace, and received of their bounty towards bearing my expenses. We came to Stamford, where I preached in a private house. Connecticut. Rode thirty-three miles to Stratford. The prospects here are great as to the fruits of the earth. My body was weak, and my faith still more so. However, I gave them a sermon on John 3, 19-21, and the house was crowded inside and out. Friday 10 We had a very warm ride, 14 miles, to New Haven. I think it as sultry here as it was the 10th of June in Delaware. Nothing would do but I must preach in Dr. Edwards's meeting-house, which I did, on these words, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord. Saturday 11 I came to Middletown. We had a prayer meeting, and I spent some time in visiting from house to house. Sunday 12 Brother Roberts being indisposed, I had to give them two sermons at the farms, and one at the courthouse. Monday 13. We had some life at Middle Haddam. Tuesday 14 preached at New London about six o'clock, where I found most of the preachers present. Wednesday 15 we opened our conference, which consisted of about twenty members, and sat until noon on Saturday. We had great peace in our conference but some exercises relative to the externals arose from the ancient contest about baptism, 
these people being originally connected with those that are of that line. Oh, what wisdom, meekness, patience, and prudence are necessary. Our brethren were exceedingly kind, and I hope this conference will be for the good of the people in this place, and thousands besides. Monday 20 We took our leave of town, and set off for our respective appointments. Two of our British brethren from the West Indies, Harper and Kingston, who had fled here to save their lives, that is, if possible, to recover their health, were with us. I was pleased to see our preachers ready to give their strange brethren a little of the little they had. I came to Norwich, fifteen miles, and preached at eight o'clock a.m. in the academy, formerly the separate meeting-house. It was a most awful time of heat. Rhode Island, Tuesday, 21. We rode twelve miles to Plainfield, and after resting and feeding we came to Coventry, in Providence. My fatigue and indisposition made me glad to get to bed. The people here have made some attempts to improve the state of the roads, and really they need it, for they are properly made up of rocks and stones. Wednesday, 22. At Brother L's I ordained D.M.C. from Passamaquoddy, who is as one born out of due time. He has been laboring between the British and American boundaries. I consider it fifty hard miles from New London to General Lippelt's. We have been the best of three days riding it, through the intense heat, and last year I rode it in one day. I feel him moving towards these people, as though the Lord would get himself a name and have a people to praise him in this place. I feel myself greatly humbled before the Lord, for the peace and union in our late conference, and the satisfaction expressed by the preachers on receiving their stations. Thursday 23 We came in the evening to Providence. When we entered the town, some drunken fellows raised a cry and shout, and made a sacrifice of the Methodists to hell. Mr. Blank is now pastor of, and the tenant house is shot against us. I wished to ride on, and not to stop in town. But Mr. Robertson, an ancient Englishman, constrained us to turn in with him. We dined at Milton, and made it thirty miles to Boston, where I preached twice on the Sabbath, though very unwell, in a room that will hold about two hundred and fifty people. It seemed as if we hardly had either cursing or blessing among the people here. I have no doubt but that if we had a house, we should command a large congregation. But we labor under great inconveniences where we preach at present. I feel myself feeble in body and faint in spirit. Yet Christ is mine, and I hope to be his in time and forever. Amen. Massachusetts, Monday, 27. I rode through some rain to Lynn. I was much shut up and distressed in my public exercises. My congregations were large and lifeless. Since I have been in Lynn, I have visited Wood's End and Gravesend, met five classes, visited about one dozen families, and talked to them personally about their souls, and prayed with them. I have filled up intervals in reading my Bible, and the second volume of Mr. Wesley's sermons. Oh, how I wish our preachers and people to read his journals, sermons, and notes. My body is afflicted, but my soul is serene. Thursday 30. I preached on Isaiah 55, 10, 11. Friday was an excessively rainy day. My spirits were sunk into dejection. I feel no passion, but grieve and sorrow. To move, move, seems to be my life. I now lament that I did not set off with the young men to the province of Maine. There are some tender, gracious souls in this town, especially among the members of society. End of section 27. Recording by Brian Keenan.